How else do you even start other than saying goodbye 2023 and then make a fluffing yeah. sound? Oh, Piss gosh. off. <laughs> Go away. I'm making don't a like new you. friend. I have no His friends name's in 2024. 2024. Yeah. And we're gonna we're gonna see if he sucks balls or not. <laughs> we're gonna find out. Hey, twenty twenty four, you you chill? And he's just like looking at you with a cap of face. That's what it would be. Uh -huh. Please be yeah. chill. <laughs> you wouldn't lie to us, would you, twenty twenty four? Yeah. <laughs> you wouldn't do that. You wouldn't set us up for incredible and insane disappointment after all we've been through. You know yeah, what's funny too is twenty twenty two, uh our coverage ended with Ragnarok and Andor, which is like nice, <laughs> not bad. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> quite, it's quite neat, you know. Also, hello, Definitely chat. Ending on a high note. Welcome, hey, welcome everyone. to the hey, live stream. There. Wait, this is live. I'm sorry. Everything I like you just said is, is is now everyone knows about. Oh it. man, I'm gonna get in trouble. Ooh. How are uh, how are you two feeling after your uh, your little streamy streams there? You you doing all good. right? Good. You yeah. make it, you find your computers well, all right? You making do okay? It was funny. It's almost yeah. like holy shit, something like thirty plus shots, or whatever. And it's like yeah, but nine hours. So it's <laughs> you know what I mean. It's, uh... That you you understand that would absolutely that would kill me. I, I am very aware. What you do to get hyper drunk, Mel does in between shots. Like this. <laughs> because I've I've had like the like I've had shots and stuff of liquor at parties and events and things, and that stuff like it hits me like a freight train. I would be dead. That would kill me. <laughs> in some I ways, I would just become a zombie at the end. I'd just be making noises from off screen as I'm slumped on the floor. And then I would just pass out and cry for Boromir again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> in some ways, I'm jealous. In others, I am not. It's a, it's a, a give and take, you know. It's a exchange, risk reward or something. But I fully recommend getting hyper drunk and playing Simpsons Hit and Run to anyone out there. Oh, yeah. Bloodborne less so because it's difficult. <laughs> I can't wait for that super cut so I can finally know what I said all evening. Yeah, it'll reveal to you the secrets of the stream. But anyway. Welcome to EFAP number 265. Yeah. Why are you saying it like it's a question? You wrote it down. Hmm? You wrote <laughs> it. <laughs> what are you saying it like it's a question? I said it. 265? Yeah, sort of I said it. Inflection. You okay? Like Do you do more. inspect every single thing about the way I say words? You, you're you're right, bud? The one who's taken 44 shots? Right, yeah. <laughs> Sit down. Anyway, we got a guest wow. today, a wonderful newbie, to, to EFAP anyway, but it's been recommended, I think, in Super Chats about 10 billion times. So, we did it. That That's that's exclusively why. We bring these people on because we hate them, but we know that you guys want to see them. We're like, ugh, <laughs> fine. They always hate us by the end of the stream. But... Yay! That's how it's done. That's how you do it correctly, any good podcast. But, welcome to EFAP. Patrician TV, how you doing? Good, thank you, thank you. Um, I've been recommended to come on this show since I basically started getting views. Mm. Um, when I released my Morrowind video, it was like the same day that H Bomber guy did a Fallout New Vegas video. So I was getting comments from his viewers, and I was getting comments from your viewers. Uh, <laughs> kind of that was in fun. parallel. The Venn diagrams of uh, that; those are interesting circles there. I've, yeah, th I had a long battle with uh, with H Bomber guy. The meme is like Matthew Matosis makes a ridiculously long video. H Bomber guy responds to it with a ridiculously long video. I responded to that with a ridiculously long video, and mm -hmm. all of them get longer as it goes. Um, there's a few of those in relation to I think Fallout as well. There's there's YouTubers who've responded to each other over and over again, and it's just that that's yes, there's there's a five part rabbit hole <laughs> of Fallout Three discourse um, that I think in total is about thirty two hours long. Did they manage to answer the question of whether or not the game is good? Uh, no, they just go back and forth <laughs> no. and something start insulting each other's character. So far, we've settled on baby. <laughs> We're getting there. Fallout um, 3 is one of the games of all time. It truly it's is. It's one of the first games of its kind that I ever played. It was back on the Xbox 360 when it came out. It was one of the first games I just sort of lost myself in. Because mm -hmm. um, I guess I was a little late to the party when it came to video games. But I won't, I'll never forget it. For better or worse, I'll never forget my experience playing Fallout 3. Which is weird, because I have a similar thing of I was late to games. I joined in at GameCube properly. I played Game Boy before that, but I don't really consider that like as extensive as jumping into all kinds of genres. Wow. But at the same time, Fallout 3 was uh, the first of those types of games that I played. And I remember softlocking myself and cursing the game forever. 
uh, in <laughs> May. I don't know if Bethesda would ever make their game soft lockable. <laughs> that doesn't sound like the, the the tight design that they're known for. And uh, yeah, That's it true. was it was rather upsetting. And I remember Fred coming over and be like, "You didn't make any additional saves." And I was like, "Why should I have to? <laughs> like, that doesn't <laughs> make any sense. Why am I gonna do two saves at a time?" And he was like, "Kinda." Oh, quite so a bit more than two saves. Yeah. <laughs> Is, uh, trying to let it's me a down skill easy. you learn and you fall into that trap the first time that you play a Bethesda game and realize that you've uh, game overed your save. It's making it's like making a deal with the devil, sort of. But the devil is known to be like to I, I guess there's two interpretations <laughs> of the devil. One of them is that he's the prince of lies. And the other is that he follows his deals to the letter uh, perfectly. And right. That's how, how he tricks you. So Bethesda games are kind of like both of those simultaneously. So it feels to play them. And apparently that hasn't changed over the course of, what, like 20 years? How long has it been <laughs> since their first game that was relatively popular? And what, Morrowind's uh, they're first... 20 years old now? Morrowind right? came out in 2002. Damn. Oh, yeah. yeah, I did a 20th anniversary video in 2021, 2022, somewhere in there. Well, um, I think Not the plan... Ever since. The plan mm. today is to try and look over the year of 2023 and judge it. Let's see if it was any good or any bad. And I'm already looking at what we're going to be talking about. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> fucking hell. Uh, it'll be funny. It'll be funny to remember everything that's that's happened. Because it really does feel like uh, some of these things, I'm like, oh, that was when that was? Okay, yeah, sure. Yeah, when you, when you get it in a big pile, when you, like, check, and then you remember, oh, yeah, that was this year. Oh, that was this year. Oh, that was this yep. year. Yeah, <laughs> I'm kind of like that, too. Oh. I have a... I have a bad, um, I'm not good at putting like dates to things. I'm terrible uh, at like it. Like what, what year did this game come out? What year did this movie come out? Even if it was between the last couple of years, I, I, it's, it's tough to kind of keep it all straight. So I had to I get, barely a, get a remember list. when my videos come out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of the same with that. Um, so yeah, you know, what, what, what we'll do then is, uh, between you myself, like organize it by like we go movies, then TV shows, then games. Something like I was going to do all of it, just just oh, running on all of okay. it, because we will be bouncing between oh. movies and TV from just looking at our history of the year for sure, with some games sure. thrown in, of course, uh, for good measure. I love but, um, games. Well, yeah, I will start at what is absolute zero in the story of the new year to new year, which is uh, remember our New Year's stream last year <laughs> yeah i do remember no it. i literally don't tell me about it mother <laughs> oh it was so great and fun we got everyone yeah? together and we just celebrated had some drinks talked about the the past the 2022 i guess at that time oh, what a oh. year what a year 2020 which was filled was. with ups and downs and all kinds joy of and happiness a famous mm -hmm. episode that uh everyone loves and and i'm sure is representative of a brilliant start to a wonderful year well, that's all that needs to be said about that, so I guess I can move on to the first mm -hmm. thing we covered. Do you know what our first coverage was of 2023? No, I no. don't. It was defending uh, the assessment that... Oh, no, wait, sorry, that's that was the second thing. First thing was Glass Onion. <laughs> oh, oh, no! Glass Onion oh, came out no. at the end of last year, didn't it? Well, the thing is, I'm not necessarily going perfectly by timeline on that one, just whatever comes after our last... Uh, our last New oh, Year's right. party, okay. you know? Um, right. Because, um, yeah, yeah I, I, I remember I Glass like... Onion being the end of the oh, year. damn onions. And oh. I'm going to be honest, I hate onions. I, I really hate onions. Damn. I, I and don't. this movie has... No, well, all right. <laughs> uh, this, movie has, this movie has further solidified my hatred for onions. I despise them in virtually all of their forms. Onion powder can be okay, but at that point, it's not even like an onion. Rags, onions make sense. You know, they make sense. They have layers. They, they, they're like a, they're a, a food. You know, they make sense. Glass onion doesn't make sense. So I don't know why it would further your hatred for an unrelated. You know, food. I think half of it is the movie itself, and half of it is the meta surrounding that movie, and how every fucking philosophy major and film connoisseur and YouTuber was like, "Oh no, it's supposed to be shit." Da, da, da. It's like no, I, I, I hated I agree. the, I hated the discourse. <laughs> Surrounding this movie, I'm not. Uh, I, uh... I'm not kidding when I say Glass Onion is actually one of the competitors for worst film of all time. Uh, it's just it's competition is so stiff. Yeah, it's, it's like it's, it's uh, it's not hyperbolic. What a fucking foul movie! It's so awful. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's it everything. is made. It is made more painful by what Rag said. The conversation surrounding those films. Yes. you can't have real conversations about Ryan Johnson films. It's fucking annoying. 
I can't believe he's gotten away it's, with it like three like times. He's kind of like an inverse Zack Snyder in a way. What, where you can't uh, have real conversations about his Well, sort of well. where even though the stuff that he makes is really, really bad, people sort of latch on to like what it's trying to do or elements of what it's trying to do, and they kind of um, run with that instead of really um, looking into what the thing actually is. Uh, oh, I, sure I, guess I get what you mean. Um, um, kind of. I don't know about... It feels like it's not contrarianism for... It's contrarianism to not like his glass out... Like, glass... Uh, glass out. <laughs> knives out. Glass, glass out. Movies. Because that's, that, that, that's a common sentiment is... He's a bad match for Star Wars, but otherwise he's a good storyteller. Well, you There's don't know something... how many layers of irony a person's operating upon. Ugh. You really don't. It's the ultimate internet shield. There it's like the donkey are... thing. There are people who will try to be contrary to the contrarians, and they'll loop back to the original position. Mm. That's true. Well, That's true. I, what, I, I was, what I was going to say was the safety. But three times he's gotten away with like the assessment being, you guys didn't realize that's on purpose. Like when you point out something that's really <laughs> retarded, and it's like, wow, right. that the is the response is like, oh, all right, okay. I would love yeah. to hear his thoughts about that. It's like, people think you you did this on purpose. Like, they think your shit is shitty on purpose. It's like, what? What, what do you mean? It's, it's all about it's phrasing, like really right? It's really hard to make it work. It's like, yeah, you failed horribly. Because he would say, like, yes, it is subversive on purpose. It does challenge the ideas. About, you know, no, 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 yeah. stupid. Stupid. He's sweating profusely, <laughs> convincing himself that's what he wanted to do. Hey, man, you know, he has the character say, it's just dumb. Like, mm-mm. Mm -hmm. And that oh, well, in that case, pay. it's all justified. And now yeah. and he's going to get to make a third one and get paid millions and millions and millions of dollars. Yeah, it'll and be on the way. It up. We'll check it out on when it comes out. Uh, deal with Netflix. Hmm. Anyway, <laughs> the, I guess, partner to that would be uh, the next episode we did, which was uh, checking out Pillar of Garbage's video on Critical Drinker on Glass Onion. Uh, oh, that was a really bad video. It yeah. was awful. He, he outright called him like a, a liar who's trying to like destroy discourse about films that he personally takes issue with because of, and then like would try and make it political and stuff. Absolute piss of a video. The kind of thing that we often cover because uh, you know it's it's just what the hell are you doing? Why are you ruining everything? And I'm sorry, Glass Onion was pretty bad. That's kind of the, just the conclusion. Uh, yeah, I mean, and then when they, destroying the Mona, wasn't that, that was a thing that came out recently, right? That uh, Daniel Craig, like, was kind of hesitant about the, the whole Mona Lisa thing, and like, that they, they had a conversation mm -hmm. about yeah, it. Yeah, because that was a stupid fucking thing to do. <laughs> it's it's really hard to defend, <laughs> well, you have burning to, the Mona you Lisa. Have to, you have to burn civilization's prize works of art to own the rich people. Only everybody. People. Well, because the, the thing about it as well is it's in, in uni like, there are, there's a context which you could burn the Mona Lisa and it would be a good event in a film. It's really fucking hard to do that. Well, is what kind it of is. sat down uh, and thought about it for a long time and you were very well, talented, you might be able to come up with something. Yeah, maybe. You know, it's like, uh, like in, in Bean when he destroys the painting and then draws the funny the, face. That's actually a really good comparison because Whistler's mother is still a very valued image. Oh, well, but the wasn't that the... The reason why I brought it up is because that was what Ryan Johnson cited. He cited that film. <laughs> what they did oh. for that page is why they could do it. It's so funny to compare the fucking main character Glass Onion to Mr. Mr. Bean. Bean. <laughs> like, Mr. Bean did it, so I can't. Oh yeah, and Mr. Mr. Bean was suitably horrified by the uh, by what he had done. Yes. And then, do you remember the Do you remember the reaction? I can't remember his name, the actor's name, or the character's Rowan name. Rowan Atkinson. You, you remember? No, 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 no. The, the <laughs> guy, the other guy, the other guy in the movie, the other, the American guy. The American that he was, like, guy in the movie. With. Yeah, do you remember? Oh, you, he, you talking about, like, the, the janitor stuff. guy or whatever? Is he a janitor? I, I don't know. Like, uh, but, but his reaction of just like, oh, God, oh, the, gee, Mother Mary. Oh, Joseph, that God, guy. Geez. Sorry, I thought you were talking about Glass yeah. Onion again. I was like, okay. Yeah, no, oh, no, no, no. he's from Ali McBeal. I forget his name, but yes, I know you're talking about. And yes, his reaction is hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> But it's just funny that though he looked at that and it's like, yeah, that's what we did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that would be a good splice, I think. His reaction to Whistler's mother's desecration, but with the Mona Lisa scenes. But, yeah. Oh, God, Jesus. <laughs> and then him <laughs> trying to frame uh, uh, fucking Norton for it. Edward Norton, yeah. Jeez. And then it really, she really is a despicable that. character. Absolutely, yeah. And all of those fuckers going away for perjury. <laughs> mm -hmm. So proud of themselves, that convince themselves to be good guys after the whole building explodes and they all miraculously <laughs> survive. 
man. Remember as well the imagery of all the houses exploding? I'm pretty sure the pillar of garbage guy said, Fireballs like, there's everywhere. no reason to believe anyone would be hurt. There's no reason to believe <laughs> I mean, explosions don't hurt. Nah. It'd be fine. fine. It's like a little breeze in the in the wind, you know? No, yeah. well, I guess just air that moves really quickly. Come on. Hmm. Yeah. So I guess the way I could try and do this is by saying, uh, "Well, that's I that's." Mean, I was gonna say maybe pass it over to you because you, you're gonna have more than I am probably. Well, so I the next the next thing I, the first big thing that we were covering this year was The Last of Us because that came out in January. The uh, that was the, the first. Uh, well, it depends on your definition, Bree, because we also covered Velma before that. <laughs> oh, you wait, know, did that come no, out it was really year? early, wasn't it? I remember thinking because She Hulk ends. The previous year, and then they say, like, "Well, that that was fucking awful, and you can't really get much worse than that." But I'm pretty sure Velma is only twelve days into the new year, so it took oh, twelve oh, days to come year? up with something that was worse than She-Hulk. What a new Mindy year was! Uh, <laughs> yeah, Mendy was determined to ruin the year early for yeah, all I, of us. I, uh, I completely forgot about that show. <laughs> well, season two is coming out soon, so you'll have to remember it again. It got a wow, season shit, two. We that's ain't watching that shit. <laughs> you I, guys I, can I all do that. that. Yeah. I just remember all the tweets. I was like, "This is the most watched cartoon on. Where did it come out on HBO? HBO or, uh, uh, on Max? Yeah, yeah, that's like flag was. It was weirdly more specific. or something like this is the top ranked premiere viewing for an HBO original Max anime yeah, yeah. show. It's like, how many qualifica uh, like qualifiers <laughs> do you need to pile into that like, to get that figure? It was basically the only one. <laughs> Yeah, it's like saying Hitler is the top, uh, is, is the most well-known Fuhrer of the artists. Third Reich, yeah. Like, that is true. It's quite an accolade. <laughs> we also had done the trailer reaction for Mandalorian, so that's on the way, you know? Uh, yes, that was in March. People were very excited, I think. Because, yeah, I was gonna say, some of these I can't know for sure, because, like, the first time, the first episode of The Last of Us was an hour for us, as in like the final thing. So it took a while to edit. So it could have been, you know, the timelines are all this, that, and the other. I'm just going by our releases. But yeah, uh, Velma, we watched two episodes and we decided we would never watch anything to do with it ever again. Um, yep, pretty, uh, pretty horrific. Uh -huh. That was some. Re that was really bad. There, there's nothing like it. There's really foul. Like it. Uh, it's a good, good word for it. Foul. Stay away from it. Um, good luck on season two, Mindy. I believe in you. It can't hmm. be worse. Oh, uh, don't you know it can? Because <laughs> they haven't, they haven't like raped Scooby Doo in a ditch yet. So like, there's still plenty of plenty of say, opportunities. Of yeah. Cows, yeah. dogs, whatever left to sacrifice. It was funny as well. Just like Velma killed Efab. It's like it is one of the few things that we were just like, no, absolutely no more. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, anyway, <laughs> um, we made that. We made the right decision. We made the right decision. I saw you guys' coverage. I was like, I'm not going to touch that show ever. No, mm -hmm. it's it's horrific. It's radioactive. It's the elephant's foot of media. At True. the best of times. Uh, which does push us to The Last of Us, I guess, then. That was really good. Yeah, it was really good. Last of Us uh, was, was very good. Yeah, I was very, yeah, very pleased was. with The Last of Us. We were lucky to get an adaptation that was even close to the game, as opposed to what all of the options it could have been. Uh, yeah, we were worried throughout it. If anyone's familiar with our coverage of it, it was a uh, anxious, just constantly. Uh, myself and Fringy are very familiar with the game, so mm -hmm. constantly knowing exactly. And we had John with us, who um, he's he's pretty familiar with it, right? The game. I'm yeah. trying to remember. Yeah, and uh, they made changes, uh, most notably probably that they they're both playing like, off versions of the game. They're not quite one-to-one -one with the game, the two of them. Um, oh, no, Joe yeah, and Ellie. there was the uh, big Kansas arc that wasn't in the... Like, yeah. it was a, a remix and mostly original. The, uh... uh plus, um, plus, uh, yeah, like, new backstories for a few characters. Obviously, kind of a different structure. So it was, like, uh, pretty close, but also some notable deviations. But um, I I don't know how this has happened, but because I've been super chatted on other streams as well. But like we're we're back to people are claiming Bella Ramsey can't act at all. I'm confused. I thought we uh, we killed that myth. To, huh. Also back to it being mid. It's a mid show. It's not very good. We we are. Uh... Well, wait, what is, does does, does I, mid mean? Not very good. I never know what mid actually means. Mid means average. Right. Average well, it's better than average. Say it as an insult, but. In yeah. any case, just on Bella Ramsey, I think it was was it episode four that we were like, oh shit, she can act really well, actually. Yeah, uh, it took a little while for her to 
get there, I think. But I think a lot of that isn't necessarily your fault. It's the material, it but clearly. The first three episodes were... It was by episode four that it felt like we were starting to focus in on that core pair, you know, that, that um, like Joel and Ellie, whereas the first three episodes, there was a lot of Joel stuff, uh, there was a lot of building up the world, there was obviously the big, um, in episode three, they weren't in that one much at all. Yeah. Right, yeah. But particularly um, the five, cannibals five. and the finale, we were quite happy with, like, they were very good. Yeah. Um... It was, you know, you get your normal stuff, as like stretches and plot armor and everything, but uh, as TV shows go, it scored pretty well, considering. I'd say so, yeah. And, it's, uh, it's yeah. one of the Honestly, shows of 2023. I definitely wouldn't want to re-roll the, 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 yeah. the dice of fate to get another, you know, crack at yeah, it. I'm very happy. Like, I don't want to, like, relitigate the arguments. We talked about it during our coverage. Mm -hmm. Like... <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's um my my assumption is that everyone's preparing to hate season two, and so they'd rather not be attached. It's like let's just get um, it over with, sort of thing. And I'm just like, I just think we should is... be clear and appreciate season one for what it is before season two ruins everything. If if it does, yeah. How much of they that is have, rooted uh, yeah. in what the director has said online? Uh, some of the the um, controversial takes going around. Uh, yeah, I mean, he said some silly things, like, about video games. Um, I remember there was that interview that he did where he was talking about The Last of Us as if it was, like, the first video game ever to have a story. Uh, uh, that was really <laughs> um, he also I, I said they went for that... experience, not for fun. I, I may be paraphrasing him, but uh, he, he is in that camp of game director who very much wants to be in the film industry more than the Oh, you're oh, talking about Neil. Yeah, Neil Druckmann's reputation is... Uh, dead at this point with like yeah, online people he, he says a lot of stupid things yeah um, and i do get the impression there are a few people like that in the gaming industry that i don't really understand like why do you why do you want to make video games when you well, so well, a lot of it is that they just failed out videos. of the film industry and mm. we got stuck with them and yeah, with them got the refuse of the film industry came to games hey, it's like oh no random. Yeah. I think it's worth mentioning too that the uh, it had a lot working against it, and the show was nowhere near as as bad or as inaccurate as expected. Like um, that last episode, um, they are screwed if they accurately and faithfully adapt the Last of Us two now. Oh yeah, because Joel just, was justified yeah, yeah. again. They didn't change they it. Step on the rake again. I really wonder how they're going to change it because I think they're going to change it. Not I think so too. There's I, I no way they don't. Right. The they've seen know. all of the backlash. They've mm -hmm. seen all of the discourse surrounding it. They've had all this time for them to just do it again. It, it th they'd be I'm, fools. I'm going to flip a coin and say they'll double down on what they made. That tends to be the game industry response to things. Is yeah, well, to just double down. I don't think they'll kill Pedro it. Pascal uh, in episode one or even two. No, I would, I would have thought they'd keep him around for a while. Also, I think they can always bring him back in flashbacks. Yeah, well, there is that, which they on. will probably definitely do, actually. But someone just said better than expected doesn't mean it's good. I didn't say it better than expected is why it's good. It's good on its own. It's, it's also better yeah, than it's expected. Good, which is better than expected. Mm -hmm. <laughs> They'll double down and make Ellie kill him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, the season I, one's I, safe. Uh, it's a package. You can, uh, right. you I feel can like, um, have that whole story. Kind of, kind of like represented in a sense and then that kind of continued with a few other cases as the year went on of like we are halo i f i hate halo the show not the game <laughs> i despise um, it I, I hate that show it makes me um, angry well, just before you continue available for free and refuse to watch it uh just just before you detail exactly what the fuck is wrong with that uh entry halo was the year before right Halo was 2022. The yes, reason why I'm bringing it up. No, 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 wait. Uh, um, so, the, before you detail, I was just going to say that, like, I don't like people treating The Last of Us show like people should treat The Halo show. It's, like, absolutely insane no. that The Last of Us show would mm -hmm. get that kind of uh, ire when I think it's absolutely Last of Us to the game and the comments from and Neil Druckmann himself and, and, like, a lot of surrounding meta stuff that had everything and everyone working against The Last of Us show. It was. Uh, it did. It really had to struggle to earn any kind of respect, which I think was really unfair. And those people focus on every negative thing when it did so many things well. Um, mm -hmm. If you're curious about any of this, we've got coverage on every episode. Go check it out. Yep. <laughs> Go That's ahead, right. Uh, we, got, uh, we do. What I was going to say was that um, Halo Season 1 very much feels like it was 
kind of like at the tail end of what video game at it's kind of like between worlds. yeah what they we used to be used kind of in video game adaptations being really embarrassed of what they were uh which was really annoying um that was super would... lame considering that these adaptations were far and away like worse than the things that they were like worse than the ips that they were trying to extract as much as they could from them but like halo exists in the middle realm of we're at a point where we will use the iconography of whatever it is we're adapting. We'll make sure that we have, like, the Warthogs and Banshees and Rifles and Spartans and Armor and everything like that. But in terms of actually the adapting... Rifles were automatic in the show, but... Uh, yeah, yeah, there's, there's uh, that. But, like, in, in terms of adapting the substance, it's like, well, no, this is still, like, an embarrassing, stupid video game, and we're, we're well, movie seems, guys, we're TV it guys. It seems we're spiteful wired. to me. Like, they outright were just... Uh, it, it's like a leech. I feel like the showrunners of that show were parasites who um, used I, it to yeah. tell a story that they wanted to that tell. they wanted to tell, absolutely. And they dressed because... it up into some Halo imagery, but ultimately on... what they did with it was, was it was a complete and total bastardization of Halo. It was on uh, Paramount, wasn't it? Yes. Paramount Plus. They oh, yeah. seem to draw yeah. that kind of talent that doesn't like the source material that they adapt. <laughs> What's interesting, um, too, is that I noticed in the ads on TV for Paramount Plus, they would they would have essentially all of the characters from all their shows and stuff like sitting on a mountaintop or whatever in front of a board. I remember that. And, but they, they never had any Halo characters in the commercials. Because, um, apparently hmm. the show was successful. I mean, successful enough that it's getting a season two. I really wonder if it's going to get a season three. Wasn't um, it always going to get a season two, though? Season because two. even, I was about to say, even if it was even worse, like, well, it's difficult, but yeah, sure. I I, they probably still would have gotten it because Halo, it was going to be given a strong chance. Like it was uh, like, it's a Halo yeah, TV show with a high budget. Let's go, you know? Kind of funny because Halo has gotten more chances than a lot of other video games, considering yeah. that it's been dragged through the dirt for the last decade. Uh, but I I don't know. I think I think the sentiment is so negative towards season one that season two is is probably uh gonna be in trouble. But the point being that it's like, yeah, we'll use the iconography, but in terms of actually adapting the story, like, fuck that. We're not doing that. We're doing our own thing because we're, we're fucking movie guys. We're TV guys. We're not like those yeah. game writers who managed yeah, to make something for like kids, that. And juvenile. That the best whole objective. They also had to make a video game. Um, with these... <laughs> like with mechanics and levels that like spanned across several hours, and they somehow managed to do it with a lot less money. Whereas The Last of Us, it's like, it's kind of like in this newer era of Oh, we might actually like adapt the story. <laughs> we might actually adapt the story that exists in the game. I mean, it's not impossible some, yeah. that someone who hates Halo could make something good out of a Halo adaptation, but like, why even take that risk? Why don't you hire someone who loves Halo? They desperately uh, need yeah. money, and Microsoft's willing to pay them. Um, or Microsoft spends I mean, spend money to ruin. I was Microsoft say, spends a lot of money to ruin everything. To are they not aware <laughs> they could make a lot more money if they just, uh, you know? Well, they can barely uh, run the game I mean, studio that makes the Halo games to mm, make good yeah. things. It's not a yeah. surprise that they can't manage but a TV show. Halo is so easy, man. Like Halo One, you can adapt Halo One and break each of the main chapters of that game into an They've episode. Already novelized and them. Game. A ten episode season. You can have episode one be. I mean, like remember the, the first of autumn. The second episode is them arriving on Halo. The third episode is the Truth and yeah. Reconciliation. The first like, Halo like already have a book based show. around the first Halo. You would be better yeah. off um, adapting one of the novelizations, like Fall of Reach, than you would actually well, adapting it looks one like of the games, about to especially the first Halo game. It looks like with season two, that's what they're about to bastardize is the Fall of Reach, which is um. I think I think the closer that they get to the games, the more it's going to make me really angry now because um they've ruined the the framework. It's fucked, and so like if they now want to start, oh, well, we'll start actually pulling stuff from the games. Like I I don't want to see Arbiter now, but they're going to ruin him. I bet uh -huh. you he'll be, like, he'll be some goober. Um, because, yeah, he'll be some idiot. And, and, and it's like, he'll be dumb as know, everyone else in the show is, unfortunately. And if they manage to get a season three, I wouldn't be surprised if they're like, all right, fuck, let's let's try and get Johnson in now. Let's try and throw him in there and see if that can like fix everything. Um, but it won't. It's screwed. Uh, but that was 2022. I was just bringing it up to say that I think uh, <laughs> that was something that 2023 feels like. And then, you know, later on with the Mario movie, it's like, OK, so OK, I and then plus like Sonic 2 kind of, which came out the year before of like. I'm not talking necessarily about quality, all right? But like, 
like, but at the very least, the whole like, hmm, maybe we should actually like try to adapt more from the stuff that we're uh, adapting. You know, yeah, it was, Which, yeah, like the Mario movie was clearly made by people who gave a damn about Mario as a franchise. Yeah, um, yeah. and yeah, it's like the opposite of Halo, and it was like a decent movie. Um, I enjoyed it and had fun, but I never got that horrific slimy taste of these people are just parading around its corpse in order to make money off its name. Mm -hmm. So that was nice. Yeah, I mean, you know, have people... The, the, the idea that you got the One Piece adaptation that did really well and people really loved combined with uh, the Mario movie, and then you find out that there is a guiding hand, or at least someone... Or a, a, an entity that that says like no and yes based on the their uh, interest mm -hmm. in, in the original IP is like maybe have that too. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's not going to well, yeah, guarantee but... anything, I guess, but it's just it just seems like a box that's worth ticking. Well, yeah, because oh, it's always a question of do they learn the right lessons from any given thing, or do they just think oh video game adaptations go 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 go. But like as for you know, making yeah. sure that you get people who know what they're doing. Like, I mean, Fallout's coming out pretty soon. We'll see about that one. Mm, I was going to yeah, mention that because uh, Todd Howard is involved in producing on the Fallout show. Uh, so. Well, it might be good I anyway. Find really, I find that really funny because I feel like you tell <laughs> a lot of people that and it's not going to mean anything. It means nothing to me. That just It just means nothing to me. <laughs> Do you think the show has a design document? Uh, <laughs> it probably has a more extensive one just because that's the nation Hollywood really can't get away with not having one compared to gaming. Yeah, you might be right there. Well, we will see. We will see. I'm <clears throat> I'm interested. During... I'm not really, you know, attached to Fallout, so I don't feel like I have any like investment in it, but you know, it's, it's, you can do a lot of cool stuff with it. Hopefully, fingers crossed. During the release of The Last of Us, we covered uh the the triple threat of the menu, Puss in Boots, The Last Wish, and Pinocchio. Oh, Puss in Boots, that was good uh, shit. Puss in Boots. Oh, we got around to them in 2023. I think all, all three of them are pretty cool <laughs> movies. Um, yeah, the yeah. Menu, the menu was cool, uh, but Puss in Boots too, and I really like Pinocchio. Puss in Boots too, though. Ooh. Ooh, yeah, Puss in Boots movie. is one of my favorite movies. <laughs> um, I, I really, really love it. It's... It, Kind of came out of nowhere, in a way. Like, I don't think people had these kinds of expectations for it. Certainly not after watching Puss in Boots 1. That movie's meh. <laughs> but then with this one was like, we're going to do all these different characters, all of these antagonists. It's going to be emotional. It's going to be wonderful to look at with a great style. It's going to be... It, it's just... It's going to have everything. It's going to do all the stuff. It kind of has the... um, In a little way, it's similar to Godzilla in the sense of... They were willing to take a premise or ideas or characters and just really do all sorts of stuff with them. There's clearly uh, a story well, they wanted to tell and a lot of stuff that they wanted to do. It's just wound tight thematically. Um, like it's yeah. an exploration of essentially, you know, Puss confronting his own mortality and coming out. Like that's a really good, we've talked a lot about how, you know, deconstruction, right? Deconstruction of a protagonist and how many times it's been done really poorly over the last few years. Like, Puss in Boots would be what I'd point to as a really good example of how you deconstruct and then reconstruct your uh, protagonist. Of He has a value system that, he's been, that has been crafted over, you know, the prior stories. And then that worldview is shattered, and he's brought down to a low, and then he has to reconstruct his value system in a way that, like, now deals with his new realizations and understandings about his own mortality. That's really cool. That's a really cool idea, and it's done really well. And he's not even he's not the only character who gets extensive development in the film. Yeah. Well, yeah, <laughs> of the one, two, three, four, arguably five antagonists and the villain, each one of them is, like, super interesting. Um, mm -hmm. Every character they're doing something with, nothing's wasted. It takes advantage of all of the opportunities that it can use. Um, and I think it's an excellent example of how you can tell, really have very mature um, and nuanced messages in what in, in a show that's appropriate for children. You know, you uh, don't have to point out in chat. It's like old Pixar feels like it's more in keeping with old Pixar of a film that is like everybody can get something out of it. Yeah, uh, it's it's willing to be or, mature uh, and serious. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I arguably remember, adult uh, themes. I, yeah. I would say that it is. Theater, it does have adult themes, and, um, absolutely. It was the, the scene when um when he meets death and then he slashes at him and then the blood. When I saw the blood, blood actual blood, 
yeah. trickling down from like his head. When I saw that, I was like, oh, oh. Oh, all okay. right, all right. Yeah, especially because there's a oh, lot wait, of jokes in the scene before that. Um, yeah, well, it's just a very sort of harsh cut to reality here of oh shit. Like that, in a way, was one of the most pleasing thing. things about the film, though, is that it goes on to do you know quite deep and complex things. But the fact that it hits so many of the the really basic fundamentals of character introduction, which it sounds like damning with faint praise to say that not much modern media does that anymore, but just something simple like introducing your nominal hero, your protagonist, showing him being incredibly skillful, as we all know he is, in order actually to big up the villain, not to big up the protagonist, so that you've shown him being incredibly skillful. So all you have to do to give the villain a sense of real uh, potency is just then to show the protagonist, who you've just seen to be skillful, being in fear of this person who hasn't even yet done very much, to, you know, you don't have to have a villain which goes around destroying planets to get the impression the villain is a strong and powerful thing. You just have to show that impression via your skillful protagonist. He's afraid of him, therefore we know he's a villain. And it sounds really basic and simple, but and we're coming up to February. Compare Death's introduction in Puss in Boots to Kang's introduction <laughs> in the MCU, which uh, is like the complete opposite. Who? We don't talk is... about him anymore. We no, don't, no, I don't know. Who's that? It's, that it's, it's the complete know, opposite depiction, that. though, right? Because, like, you know, Kang is, is killed off in both of his first two appearances by pretty incompetent people and the villain the, well, the first villain you encounter in Puss in Boots is, is just the complete opposite in, in the way it's introduced the way it's written it's so solidly done and from the solid foundation you can then go and do genuinely really interesting things but getting the bases right is the most important thing that film did I think yeah, um, you can tell me things about people or organizations but if I never see it and you never show it to me then I just won't believe you Puss in Boots. <laughs> it's, it's, it's another sort of oh, how good that film is, though. The fact that you know, it's not just that it's surprisingly good for a Puss in Boots film. It's the fact that it can still come up as a positive reference a year later. And it probably will still continue to come up. Like this time next year, you'll still get people saying, oh, yeah, Puss in Boots actually did this particular thing really, really well. And it's gone down as quite a, I don't know if it'll be timeless, but it's certainly got a lot of longevity. And it's used as like a positive comparison to all of the shit media that's around. I don't see why I would forget this film. And I'd be happy to rewatch it every once in a while. I, yeah, it yeah. was a joy to rewatch. Um, when I was at a friend's place, we, uh, we rewatched it. And boy, it, it fucking holds up. It gets better on a rewatch. Um, to, uh, but yeah. We're talking a lot about this 2022 well, movie. <laughs> it's not talk about good things. I already explained. It's it's EFAP and the year. It's okay? EFAP, our yeah, year, year on, involved right. this because we we are late to a lot of stuff. We were late to our game. How right. long did it take us to cover that? Did contain the memories of Puss in Boots. The last. <laughs> this is, this so is when we yeah. discovered it. So it's our 2023. 2023 Damn, makes right. us reflect on our mortality. So it's very thematically appropriate. Yeah, uh, I don't know what it is, uh, uh, that the blood, they they really made it feel, uh... It's bright. It's very bright and conspicuous. It's and quite, it's, and it's, almost and subtle as well on his hand. the face of this terrified character. Uh, they just did a very good job making it real, and it's like, what the hell are we doing here? The main character's bleeding. And it's like, everyone can bleed in action scenes, you know, have like a mark on the side of their mouth or their eye. After a big old scuff up, as well, but but this one felt like it was like, am I about to die? Lo yeah, like mm -hmm. liquid blood running down their face. Absolutely. And yeah, just it him different. getting terrified. Uh, really good choice, nice and bold, and uh, I'm glad they did it. Just um, I think I think you know it's something we don't talk about that much, but like give give uh, kids a little bit more credit, make some more it's serious stories it, yeah. involved. Well, it's been yeah, used as a weird like shield for. Uh, things that are supposed to be for children. It's like it doesn't matter. It doesn't make any sense. It's for children. It's like why do you want your children to see dumbass shit? What's <laughs> yeah. wrong with you? What, we've got, we got Lion King. What, we've got the Great Mouse what, Detective. What well, I mean, I, you know, it's just like The Incredibles has a, a. There's like a lot of that film that, as a kid, you might not like understand or notice. <laughs> you know, like The Incredibles yeah. in particular feels like it's got a lot of, uh, I guess, more mature like themes and elements in it. And that film came out twenty years ago. Yeah, I absolutely. We'll it's because like, it used to be sort of understood that you know kids don't tend to take themselves to see uh, films at the cinema, for example. So like, you have to give the parents who are taking them something to resonate with as well. The difference is though, I think we've sort of started to assume that the parents themselves are children. So children's media now, like yeah, you get the, the constant deflection in in any video on anything that is perceived as being for kids. Well, it's just kids entertainment. What did you expect? So, no, it's like it's the most important entertainment is kids entertainment. 
it's more important than adult entertainment is because these are the kids who will grow up being, you know, they have formative experiences based on the media yes, that they are shown by their parents. If you want better media today, or if you want better media in 30 years, show your kids better media today. Because if they grow up watching like <laughs> modern Marvel stuff, then in 30 years, you're going to get at best modern Marvel stuff. Like you want kids to have really great experiences with media and adults ideally can take something from the same because a lot of these things, The Incredibles has been brought up, Puss in Boots is another example. A lot of these things have really important lessons and because they're perceived as being for children, they don't fly too far up their own ass with thematic messaging. They are approachable, but they actually get to cover a lot of stuff that nominally serious entertainment either thinks is below it or just doesn't think is, is worth rehashing. It's interesting to look at, um, like if you look at, you know, during the golden age of Pixar, that like all of those films have like some sort of central message or idea that they're bound by. And it's like, in it, it's, it feels like a lot of those films there, it was, the, the focus was we've got like one, one very specific point or idea that we want to revolve around rather than getting too lost in like four or five or six, like a, a whole bunch of different like themes and sub themes and stuff like that that these stories were wound really tight in terms of the core objectives that they had. Um, partly because, like, the simpler you can make it, the easier it is to to grasp, right, for uh, for kids. If you can just present, like, one really strong theme that they can walk away uh, from it with. Um, meanwhile, it feels like, you know, a I find it funny, like, because uh, I've seen a few people make the comparison that's like, yeah, I mean, you're invariably going to compare Puss in Boots to, like, other, especially Disney films that have come out recently. You compare it to, like, Wish. What's that film about? What's that one got to say? You What's, know, you know I'm anybody sure watch it's it? about being true to yourself or something. I'm sure. Because mm. um, we talk about sludge a lot, right, with, with these different films, as if it doesn't apply as well to the equivalent for kids as movies they'll never remember. Versus movies that will be downright formative and inspirational to their later years. So, it's, it's, you know, like a puss in boots could encourage them for a long time to be courageous while watching Wish. I don't know what to tell I, I'm not going to, like, pretend like I watched it. <laughs> so it's just like a mess from what I gather about, in terms of the message it's trying to get across in that film. And then everyone keeps talking about how the villain is right, which is awkward. Um, that is pretty funny. Wow. It feels like, uh, feel like uh, Disney villains have gotten a lot lamer uh, recently. You remember, like, how, and, and also just, like, man, some of those villain deaths were brutal in the, uh, in the older Disney, like, Clayton. I mean, the Black Jean. Cauldron, man. That was, oh, yeah, yeah, like, fucking Black intense. Gilmore. Oh, yeah. That's, I wish they did that more. That was cool. Yeah, that was cool. <laughs> like, these crazy Yeah, villain kill this deaths. evil bastard in a spectacular way. He's a real jerk. <laughs> Scar getting mauled by all the, uh, hyenas as he engulfed in flames. It's like, dude, that's, that's cool as shit. <laughs> Oh. Uh, you know, the menu and Pinocchio are also neat. I, uh, I was gonna say, I'd wanna also make a note again that Pinocchio was, like, re really well-crafted film. It was film. a delight to watch. Mm. Absolutely it was... amazing animation and art. It had really cool and potent emotional beats as well. That was, like, a, that was a really cool movie. Yeah, a very, very unusual take on the Pinocchio story, with its mm -hmm. mysticism and some political stuff thrown in there. Feels like a movie that's definitely of a different time period. Um, not at all what I expected going in, but it had a great cast. And again, it's worth saying again, the animation is like it's the best looking of its kind I've ever seen. It it looks it looks suspiciously good. Um, it's um, <laughs> suspicious. The, the thing is, it's hard for me to if, like if you were to ask me what's the best looking like stop motion animated film, I feel like I can't answer that question because it, it feels like depending on which studio it's from, what the film is, that you're going to get very sort of different, like, styles that they're going for. You know, like, I love the Aardman style with, like, Wallace and Gromit, um, but I really like the style that they, like, Coraline's style is really cool. Um, uh, Corpse Bride has a really cool art style, uh, mm -hmm. and this one has a really cool and unique uh, style it's going for, too. Just appreciating it. <laughs> yeah, no, I see you got them up there. It's really... <laughs> oh, God, look at how detailed they are, you know? Like it's it's really... It's almost distracting it. how good it looks. Yeah. Because you, you can't help but think as you're watching it of all the effort and the attention um, to detail that went into like it. The nature of, uh, of stop-motion animated films is that, like, when you're watching it, like, every scene is kind of inviting you to think about how much effort went into crafting it. There's, like, so much detail in these films with, uh, like, backgrounds and props and characters 
and uh, movement as well. It's like, the, it's so immaculate. Yeah. And the menu <laughs> is uh, kind of like an interesting film as well in terms of just it's like meta, you know? Yeah, I enjoyed Where what I, the menu made me think about. Um, yeah. Very, very meta. I, it's almost I, meta of no meta. Idea. Like when I went in to watch it, I just it was like, I had time to kill him and watch the movie. I didn't see any trailers when I was watching. I'm like, ah, this feels like it's about film. And truly, <laughs> this is a conversation in making. A film about art itself and how it's ruined by all of you. And then I point into chat. Yeah. Um, no. So I guess uh, something I'd r remind us of is because we're still in the month of January. There were some video games that came out in January. I just want to list list them because oh it's an goodness. interesting little uh, collection so there was hi-fi rush which has anybody here played that i've heard good things but i have, I have not uh, which, which yeah. one sorry say again hi-fi rush uh i played it a little bit it's pretty fun uh That's what mark heard. actually recommended that one to me and i checked it out i played like the first chapter or something it was pretty fun but just other things came around so i never finished it but uh yeah it's good i would recommend yeah. it from what i've played maybe it still um, gets poopy but i don't think so the next one is one that I'm pretty sure most of us played, which was uh, one of my favorite games of the year, Dead Space Remake. Oh, yeah. That was really Easily good. one of the best of the year. High, yep. high, high recommendations oh, for the game. Dead Space Remake. What a Heck joy yeah. that was to play. To the point, if you're only um, going to play one Dead Space, probably that one. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. In a good way, <laughs> it is a replacement for the original. It takes the, the original, up. and it was clearly made by people who adore the original and love mm -hmm. it, and want to, you know, More give like them modern D take on oh it. Oh my god. More like D-Make? Yeah, someone said that. Why? Yeah, why? It's better in, <laughs> like, I think literally every way. Um, and, well, I love, and I love I, the I first Dead that... Space. Well, maybe not literally every way. Some maybe. of the characters take a, aren't quite as good, but, sure, like, but still. Some of the like, characters geez. get dramatic, like... Like a lot more, like Kendra's way better. In, she in is, the yeah. That you are I mean, original. Nicole is the sort of standout for yeah. you know a character and that Isaac, was expanded. Isaac is a character now who yeah. gets to express his perspective during uh during this story. And plus, she had a whole bunch of cool like side stories. But yeah, it feels like Nicole got a whole bunch of new material. It was really a, cool. the full price texture pack. What? A f uh, come on, <laughs> you think really it's just a texture the pack? You're insane. insane. You're well, nuts. again, you're, nuts. It, you're crazy. At that nuts. point, it comes across as like, wait, 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 have you? Have you played them? Because like all of us played the original and the new one, and, and, and like it's. I've played the original many times. I've probably Same. beaten it through. It it's it's one of the two games on the Xbox 360. I got all. Didn't they uglify Nicole? Oh, <laughs> Nicole no. is oh. oh yes. Go away, Melanie. We're gonna return. Oh no. Um, but yeah, it's a it's a great remake. I mean, I, I don't see how anybody could like scoff at the incredible art direction and sound design in the remake. Mm -hmm. It's like. It, I think I think we've talked about it a lot. Like I think it's got like the best lighting in, in terms of implementing it in gameplay of dark being truly dark, and your flashlight being like this sort of penetrating brightness that is integral to like interacting in those small spaces, like the small dark spaces. That was super impressive. Yeah, um, um, it's it's an it's a incredible atmosphere and environment. It is. I mean, you gotta experience it to really understand how good it feels to play that game. Um, it, it, it's got the, the more modern, you know, shooting elements in terms of how smooth it is, the higher frame rates. Because, um, I mean, Dead Space, the first one, it was kind of came up, uh, came out at a time where if you wanted to play some of the ports on PC, then you weren't yeah, really... Yeah, the port is a little rough. Then, with ports rough, yeah. Um, it took, I mean, Dead Space 2 plays like a modern game, but... Dead Space 1 is, is yeah, it's uh, definitely a console game that was poorly ported, but um, highly we can't, leave the month, we can't leave the month of January without mentioning uh, my game of the year, Forspoken. I was about to mention. Forspoken. <laughs> um, <laughs> it actually came out good. before the other two. Did it come out? I thought it came out like the end of the month. I was yeah, trying to, I wrote I down, I wrote down all the dates. Uh, it came out on the 24th. Uh, Hi-Fi Rush was the 25th, and Dead Space was the 27th. Oh, all right. So yeah, well, I was gonna say, are we done talking about Dead Space? I mean, it was just a, in terms of culture, it's a really cool thing Dead that Space. happened. Uh, well, not even well, that. Just uh, the fact I that we saw, got it uh, was really awesome. I oh saw yeah. Someone mm -hmm. say Alan Wake two, and then put a bunch of the greater than signs afterward. Sorry, what are they saying? 
I, the, I guess the Alouette 2 is dramatically better than the Dead Space remake. Metal. You you stop it. Stop. <laughs> don't 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 get me started on that piece of let shit. It, game. Let them troll. It's all right. They can have no. you know. there. We'll get there. We'll like to do a little it's trolling it's on EFAP. We're a little trollers. PTSD from that game. Um, Do yeah, things like have that. to happen for you to get PTSD? Or shut up, Rex. <laughs> uh, things yeah, do think, happen. Uh, They're awful. Oh no! Yeah, Dead Space remake coming out and being successful, which I believe it was. I certainly don't remember hearing any talk about it being like unsuccessful to where they'll never do another one. Um, that's a good. That's a good thing. It's a good thing. Well, yeah, and it's just really cool, that, especially because like it's it's rare that all of us had pretty strong investment in Dead Space as an IP, and that yeah. we were always ready to see it revived or put in a, play, a better place. It's a it's a famous story of just being crushed into the wrong. It was it was a definitely a niche audience, and it was like pushed into being mainstream, and it killed it. Like it, um, it really unfortunate that Dead Space's time was coinciding with cover shooters at their uh their prime and it was like yeah we got to get more of that in dead space the the opening of dead space yeah. 3 will forever make me cringe inside it's funny because dead space 3 was the least successful one um mm. as a what they did dead space, the problem was the games were really expensive to make like dead space 2 had a pretty big budget i think it needed to sell like five million copies to break even and it didn't sell that much but it sold well it's like oh shit damn uh oh uh but hey maybe maybe times it you know, maybe maybe it'll have a better chance this time around. I'm not well, yeah, sure, maybe. Though. I don't know if we get in Dead Space Two remake, but obviously we'll be jumping right on it if they did. Yeah, anything. So. Ooh, yeah, baby. So full spoken. <laughs> uh, spoken. Yeah, I've only seen uh, things about it. Look, cringe I, as fuck. <laughs> I, find, I find it immensely fascinating because, like, the big cringe line that everybody is making fun of was in like that game's reveal trailer that came out like a year before that, and mm -hmm. like nobody noticed, I guess. Um, but then, like, that fucking ad on Twitter came out. I, I don't know if I've ever seen one ad on Twitter destroy a game in a studio. Like, it's <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's like they so channeled their inner Battlefield 5 for horrific trailers, and they decided <laughs> to not say, hold my beer. Because, like, I mean, I mean, it's embarrassing. And apparently, like, the game is just filled with a lot of shitty writing like that. It's not just a one-off. It's just not... And also, the thing, because I think what I was curious about is... Yeah, but like, is the game itself, like the actual video game, okay? Like the gameplay? I've heard mixed I've, things about it. I've heard it's pretty meh at best. Yeah. Um, dev, uh, dev I've heard it's got a right? lot of issues. Yeah, yeah, I was about to say, yeah, mm. Dev, uh, a friend of the channel, Short Fat Otaku, did a, uh, did a video on Forspoken. And based on what he said, I was not impressed. I'm not chomping at the bit to play Forspoken. No. But, uh, it's kind of when like Five a Spoken weird... comes out, maybe they'll correct in, in, you know, in the uh, sequel. Yeah, yeah. The, yeah. It's, uh, it's a bit of like an interesting thing in terms of work, because uh, Square Enix, I think it was it was either this year or last year, like Square Enix essentially like sold off all of their like Western, all of the Western developers uh, that was in their company, because it's something that's been going on for the last decade is that like they've... Uh, Square Enix has, like, been consistently unhappy with the amount of money that the games that they've made in the West have made. I remember it was so distinctly that Tomb Raider 2013 sold, like, 6 million copies, and that wasn't good enough. Um, like, that Hitman sold, like, Hitman Absolution sold, like, 2, 3 million copies, and that wasn't good enough. Um, they killed Deus Ex so that they could make that Avengers game. Uh, and that was not a good idea. And so now they don't have, I don't think they have Western developers anymore. All of them now exist elsewhere, like, um, owned by a different company. Uh, but this one was made by, like, a, a Japanese studio, but obviously trying to appeal to Western audiences, um, to then fail more spectacularly, <laughs> like, than any ever attempt that they've done before. To where I don't think they're ever going to do it again. I think that that might be it in terms of them Didn't trying they go to... out of business? Yes, the they were developer? shut down basically like a month after the game came out and folded mm. into Square Enix. I just killed a, a game studio with my mind. <laughs> yeah, that was with my <laughs> freaking mind. Yeah. That just. Uh, uh, everybody, oh man, that, that, that this is happened. something. That, uh, remember, everybody, everybody blamed Joss Whedon for uh for the writing. Do you remember that? Wait for oh, they did that again. Yeah, all of oh, do you not remember that? All of the tweets that we're talking about the 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 clip, the well, he gets blamed for so much. It's hard to keep track. Okay, <laughs> it's the, funny because in our space we blame uh, Borderlands. Oh, what, for the writing of this. Oh, yeah, because Borderlands is hyper like self referential and memey and shit, mm. right? 
Yes. In defense of in defense of the Borderlands writers, they're probably like thirty now. So <laughs> give them a little bit of cut them a little bit of slack. Oh my god. <laughs> No, I, I, I actually, I enjoyed the first Borderlands, and f I enjoyed the second one. I never played the yeah. third, so. It gets worse as it goes on. I, um, I tried to play the third the one for a while, but it just wasn't the same. I don't know, it just wasn't as fun. Even the gameplay, I don't know, there was something about it, and I was just like, eh. I feel like the guns in the first Borderlands were actually way more varied and interesting than in the second one. Like, there were, I think technically, mathematically, there were more guns in the second, but they didn't feel as different as a lot of the stuff that you could get in the first game. Like, the first game was willing to actually have, like, very, like, kind of crazy and out there guns to the point where sometimes you'd find one that was just almost, like, virtually unusable. But <laughs> that was a price that you'd pay to get all the good and interesting ones. Um, but, yeah, <laughs> People are like saying, like, Joel and Joss, we are responsible for all the ills of the world. Everything. Uh, the that's J's. an old meme. I don't know. It's, it's an just, old meme. Uh, it's, it's, the point. it's not everybody. It's not like Avengers is funny. The first Avengers, Avengers is a good <laughs> movie and it's funny. Uh, that's true. Yes. Just because other films and games and shit can't emulate the comedy, they try and they fail. So, <laughs> I recently uh, rewatched Firefly and Serenity, and uh, man, the amount of witty dialogue throughout. The, it's it's so funny Great. to be like. Uh, it's so comfy because basically every scene you're expecting, you're probably gonna laugh here and there just because of some uh, sort of clever back and forth line. Um, it's a master of balancing drama yeah. and comedy into uh, one formula. And it, it's yeah, because been... when shit hits the fan, Mel's just serious when he has to be. It's a good captain. It's great. This is what I, I think Joss Whedon's relatively known for is balancing tones, and uh, it's it's difficult. And you don't, I think what's happened is over time, and it's, it's more than just Marvel at this point, as people have noticed, is um, people are just throwing in jokes all over the place. And uh, there's this, the attitude of, combined with, uh, we're, we're in on the joke too. The, the content itself is like, we're not, we're not taking this that seriously. We're just having some fun. Even, uh, even we watched the first season of The Nevers, and you can yeah. tell from the dialogue of the characters, like, oh, we got some, we got some, you know, snap and some wit here. This is kind of nice. I like it. It's nice to have dialogue that uh, make you want to die inside, that sort of thing. Hooray! I want to live. Yeah, I know this isn't like a new game, um, in terms of, but it came out in January. Metroid Prime Remastered. Oh, I still haven't played that. That's still on my list. It's a cool <laughs> remaster. It's a real cool remaster of yeah, one of the best games ever made. Um, so that's like an easy one for if someone's got a Switch and they haven't played Metroid Prime to just play that. Yeah, Metroid mm. Prime Remastered. Yeah, it is. It really often good. tops the. It's it's usually within the top three of all like you know top games of all time lists. Metro Prime it gets up there. It's excellent. It's it really good. So well made. Hyper solid. <laughs> it's, it's so tight. Uh, and oddly, I like... never played the first Metroid Prime, but I did play Echoes, the sequel, and that kind of left a bit of an impression on me because of when I played it and what I was used to playing. So I do. Yeah. Metroid Prime 2, the Prime is like an easy one to recommend because it's essentially the core Metroid framework uh, yeah. taken to 3D, whereas with like 2 and 3, there are differences to the structure. Like I, I mean, didn't like 3. Something about well, three, it, I, I never liked it. has got an area split across like different planets, so it's not like one fully interconnected space. It has like these, it's, it's a little bit more segmented. Obviously 2, it had like the... The light and the dark, uh, you yeah, know, the light world and the dark and world like... and the light and dark guns. It's, and you know, people, I think people have like mixed opinions on all that. <laughs> like, I liked it. It's a problem like when you it. when you fucking totally nail it with the first one. It's like sequel. You're like, yeah, I guess. Yeah, we'll try something <laughs> a little different. Yeah, try something a little bit different. Prime, um, Prime is one of the most beautiful examples of converting from two D to three D. Uh, they did such an oh, amazing yeah. job. It's kind I of it's kind of amazing. From... How well I they did it. And Echoes, I remember this still, that if you killed an enemy with the light beam, you'd get ammo for the dark beam mm -hmm. and vice versa. So you always were able to, like, you wouldn't ever just, like, randomly run out, you know? While encouraging so you to switch. Like, oh. Yeah, I was like, oh, okay, it's nice, it's interesting. It's, and the soundtrack, uh, too, man. It had multi... Oh, oh yeah, the opening oh, theme is really good. And oh, it had multiplayer, dude, too. Oh, it had split-screen multiplayer. Oh, dude, the Talon Overworld, like, the, the second version of that theme is so fucking amazing. Fendrana 
drifts both the main theme and the depths. Oh, I love it. It's so good. Metroid Prime soundtrack is phenomenal. Um on oh, it, it's and they it carry an almost well. retro y kind of spacey it's the uh it's the it's sound you know, to I, it i don't know what the instrument is but you know like because a lot of like 50s and 60s if it feels like the alien the alien sound right the high whistle sort of thing is right in there. yeah, yeah. That, as well as like that, a lot of cool remixes you know like of uh of, it's of, got uh, a very uneasy sort of like something, something's kind of off. Um, it it feels alien. I mean, is a way to kind of describe it. Mm -hmm. Kind of a. Uh, it depends on um. Depends on like which, because some of them are very eerie, but some of them are just like beautiful. Um, just like really beautiful. Um, like again, Fendrana Drifts has a lot of really like beautiful chords and like melodies. Um, it's it's. God, that game's so fucking good. <laughs> Yeah, the, so, all, yeah, all the mentioning of that is just ever go play Metroid Prime if you haven't because oh, you, yeah. you haven't played Metroid Prime, and if you have played Metroid Prime, get the get it on Switch as well. It's a really cool remaster that feels like it's um they made very considered updates of not trying to like obfuscate the uh um the the like original art direction of the game. Well, where are we at that point? Because. <laughs> But uh, next up for us would be Quantum Mania of all things. Oh, yeah, God. Quantum, Quantum Mania, my our dear, old, our good friend, our um, wonderful, wonderful friend. It's funny. Quantum it's been Mania. some time since it came out. I was like, "What is it? What is its legacy now?" It's just like I don't know. It's just an embarrassment. It doesn't really. have one. No one remembers it. Trash. No one. It's like Love and Thunder, and you know uh, the Marvels it's, it's already. A set it's of those just, it's already been forgotten. Great big terrible sure. films. The harbinger for the beginning of the end of uh of superhero like media dominance. Mm. If it was like Quantum Mania yeah. was the one where as much as Thor had its like reputation kind of tank really quickly and, and everybody basically forgot about um Wakanda Forever. If it was like uh with, with Quantum Mania it kinda opened the door on the conversation of man, Marvel fucking sucks. <laughs> it definitely was a big step, yeah, to get that normalized i mean we've been saying it years before we said it before it was cool we said it when it yeah. was you know accurate so it took um, us 10 hours to go through that film it, yeah. yeah i believe it i mean there's a little shit in there in your, uh, in your video yeah <laughs> this is, yeah, as concise as we could get it scripting where when me and Fringy did a video talking about the production of that video we started pointing out new things we we're like a oh, good god <laughs> like new problems <laughs> <laughs> like gotta stop um yeah, an absolute disaster, and is it is a bit of a milestone in the uh, the box office sort of decline. Though almost every entry uh, has been a milestone in the box office decline, even DC. Well, yeah, cause, uh, I mean, oh, well, yeah, DC was. <laughs> I mean, because they kicked off the year. Well, not there yet, but with good old Shazam: Fury of the Gods, which oh, felt that like was last year too. Where Jesus, it just. That was another case where it feels like by before it had even come out, everybody had accepted that it was like a bullshit clown movie. Yeah, you remember that thing of like what was it, o John Oliver, like on a one of those late night talk shows making jokes about like oh yeah yeah everybody's really excited for Shazam too, and it's like mm. and then and then uh, which which host was it? It was it, it was clear that he was like oh shit I I don't know am I like in a position where I can like actually openly shit on that film <laughs> considering. <laughs> probably just had like the director of zachary levi on to talk about it who yeah I, I think zachary levi really didn't quite get it like it's like why why is this film getting this treatment and it's just like uh, oh, a combination shit, of mate. things it's well it's not bad. it being shit doesn't make it special right <laughs> it's, it's... uh i guess so yeah it's Maybe right it's... in there because it was it was a shit one that was in a sequence of very shit movies the oh, and for the record was primed against it very awful film. We went through every oh, yeah, part of that terrible. plot line. Yeah. Absolutely terrible. Yeah, to say it, it's profoundly mediocre. No, it's a lot worse than that. If it no, was it's, mediocre, it's awful. Was yeah, don't let it slip by on being mediocre. Yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was really bad, but it feels like um, I think it's because Shazam of all the DC stuff felt the most like fucking Marvel sludge. Kind of like that's what it was goal was of like yeah, you know, we got the funny banter and memes and stuff. That's like what we do in superhero films. It felt like it was closer to that, as well as like one that's harder to justify its existence because it's like fucking Shazam, you know? It's not like a character that anybody's particularly... Well, I don't know, wait, 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 I'll clarify that. The movie version, <laughs> at the very least, is not one. Because yeah. I'm pretty sure that like what I hear is that Shazam kind of actually has like cool lore and stuff. Uh, but yeah. it's kind of been 
structured and, and bastardized in a lot of adaptations. Um, I remember it was a thing with Injustice where, like, Shazam gets killed in a way that was, like, really... It was, like, effortless for Superman. I remember that pissed people off because Shazam is, like, super powerful. Um, but yeah, the, the, the point being that it was, like, the movie version of Shazam, at the very least, had, like, it was just clownish. Just felt, like, clownish. And when, and when it's clownish, well, people are gonna clown on it, aren't they? That's what yeah. happened. It also, it doesn't have any kind of unique place anymore. I, I wonder whether Deadpool, as well, is gonna meet this, this exact same problem, which is, like, quite apart from all of the movie's individual faults, of which there are a great many, well, once you've started to get, you know, it's okay when you've got the majority of superhero films being at least semi-serious and trying to tell a story, and then you have the one that sort of sits alongside it, kind of ironically metering the whole franchise. And Deadpool does that, it takes the piss out of the established and serious films, and it's it's kind of like a, it's an optional bonus extra, which you can see if you're a bit, you know, overwhelmed by the dark seriousness of the overarching franchise. But once the entire superhero thing becomes pretty much that in its tone, like all of them are cheap jokes, all of them are lazy, yeah. mm. all of them are just vaguely kind of there to be, like, I guess they think they're entertaining and that's about it, then what's the point? What's the unique selling point for a character like Shazam anymore? Because it's the kind of the Ant Man has the same problem. If Ant Man and Shazam have pretty much, in large parts, the same tone, which is they don't take themselves seriously even in their serious moments, then why, like, why do I even bother watching Shazam? I barely, barely yeah. remember anything about Boots that. Boots took film. itself seriously. Yeah, it did. It had some funny moments in it, but you know, funny moments kind of require that there's a serious thing to play off of. You can't just have I... constantly quip, quip, quip. We had this conversation the other day about like the kind of um. It's really, it feels really lame how many things have been coming out recently that don't have the confidence to essentially be what they are and take themselves seriously to where, like, if, if, it, if it takes an absurd prem, well, I guess on its face an absurd premise for a film like, like you know, for example, like Big Lizard, um, not anything like, the, the point being that, you know, they'll take something that is like a seemingly absurd premise and, and because they're like so insecure about the thing that they're doing, They'll keep looking at the camera and like, ah, this is silly though, isn't it? Ah, yeah, no, we we can we can make fun of ourselves. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Yeah, we don't like, really give a like, shit. You're like knocking. You're you're like lowering the the ceiling for yourselves of like the kind of um payoffs that you can hit compared to, for instance, if you made like a big lizard movie that took itself seriously and had something to say and isn't doing like wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Yeah, aren't we like a silly premise? Um, aren't we silly? Yeah, we're in on the joke too, guys. That if you take yourself seriously with the premise that you're doing and try to make something that's good, that that approach, you know, the audience picks up on that. If you're not even taking, if you don't even believe in your own film, why would your audience believe in it, you know? I think there's a time and place for all styles and even that one, but uh, it's been weird that it's been 100% of everything Disney have put out. Uh, at least with Marvel. Because that's, that's where the Marvel humor criticism comes in for... Um, that, but it seems to have bled into a lot of other stuff, and it's just a lame thing that everyone's over at this point. And, uh, you know, they need to realize this shit faster because they can make money if they start making things people want to see and find more endearing, which at this point is taking things a bit more seriously. Taking mm -hmm. stupid shit more seriously. Yep. And, and having jokes actually stem from the character who's telling them as opposed to them just being, you can just put them on any person. Yeah. Take Modoc's death in Ant-Man. You could find the exact same reaction and style of humor in Shazam or Thor Love and Thunder. Like any given Marvel or any superhero character these days could have reacted in that way in that scene because none of these jokes stem from these people or the stories they're a part of anymore. It's just, yeah, that, that's in, in the script and we've just earmarked it for this film. But we could have put it in five or six others. Dude, that, an interchangeable don't remind me of Modoc's death. That's so, it was so gross. That man yeah, saved yeah. the multiverse. And they're all there like, oh yeah, what a loser you are, ha ha. And I think it's... It's not a set on the thing. The the it, oh yeah, like a character who didn't deserve like yeah. a heroic send off. Like dude, he just saved the multiverse. He died to save everybody. I feel like that's got to be worth something. Uh, whether or not mm -hmm. it you know redeems him from any and all particular things. I I find it interesting because like a lot of those conversations come up for um you know, like Darth Vader. It's like how much how much is he redeemed? Quote unquote, and it's like it's a big conversation and. I've said before, but like him dying there cuts off conversation. Cuts off a lot of difficult problems uh, that you'd have to deal with in terms of what happens to him next. Um, you know, jail and all that stuff potentially. And, uh, the relationship that he may or may not have with the Empire going forward, and how much information or um, operations he would be influential in. I still think it would be a really interesting story to see what would happen. It's just that um, 
you know, they didn't necessarily have to answer that question. And Modok was in that position. And another thing is, um, we talked about it with Baromir, characters who are there that can give the person who is dying what they need before they, they're gone, all of them knew exactly what Modok's insecurities were, and they did fuck all to look after him at all. And you might be like, oh, yeah, yeah, well, yeah. whatever, he's like a monster. It's like, he died to save them. Like, you... Yeah, exactly. It's gotta be um, worth something. It has to be. But, but I guess Modok had to look after himself and give himself all of the reassurances that he needed, you know? Yeah, because he's... he's, he's yeah. He died in Avenger. They didn't say that. They all make fun of him, but yeah, he's uh, he's doing... And that's the thing, all of those and lines, all missed more. opportunities. You could have had uh, Scott telling him that, or Cassie telling him he's, uh, yeah. he's not a monster at all. But instead, they all laughed at his sacrifice because, look, he's got a big head. They're making fun of him because of his problem. It's not his fault that he's horrifically it's just deformed. Even a problem anyway. No. Well, I guess it's kind of his fault, but... At the same time, <laughs> well, I suppose in a way, you know, he was beauty crazy, at every size. He was a crazy goober in the first film, but they're making fun of him when he saved the multiverse. It's not nice. No. Also, hi, John. Hello. Hello, hey. John CJG. How you doing? Of the popular internet show, Every Frame of Pause. Yeah. <laughs> also, are we in the chief? And countless. <laughs> Secondary. Yeah. Others. <laughs> We're just talking about how great the year is. It was. We're talking about our favorite character, Modok. Um, mm. How Modoc. about you tell the audience what you feel about Modok? M. Modokington. Oh, Modok? Oh, geez. Um, <laughs> I mean, I love whole... him too. <laughs> What's been up with you? <laughs> that whole film was a train wreck. Modok was just like <laughs> yet another blemish. It's like, you know, it's just a sea of dog shit. It's, it just. Modok didn't really stand out to me in that way, is what I'm saying. I mean, I, he was, he looked really amusing. I was going to say, he I stood out to the whole world for the way he looked. He stood out to a lot of us for uh, how he was the only character with, like, worthwhile writing attached to him, somehow. And then he also doesn't stand out in that he's just as shit as everything else is in the MCU, so... <laughs> uh, what a place for him to uh, occupy. Yeah. I guess... This is uh because we're in the month of February. Uh, I don't know that I don't know if anybody played it, but Hogwarts Legacy came out in February. Oh, I, did oh, I played some it quite of a that bit. Game. I missed that I one. I heard it's a game. It's fine. I got in but... trouble for suggesting I was going to make a video about it. Oof! <gasps> How bold of you, Gadzooks. Did you? So you did play it then? Quite a bit. Yes, uh, did... I was playing it recently, uh, considering a one year later style video for it. Hmm. How does it uh, compare in the the world of gaming? Uh, it is a. I want to say it's like an average video game, and I mean that as a compliment because I find a lot of things uh, kind of distasteful. It kind of transitions from being a uh, Harry Potter school simulator to just kind of UB slop at the end there. But every now and then, I enjoy a good round of McDonald's, so I'm there for slop sometimes. Yeah. Is it like a good framework for future games, like a that, that could be built on in a way that's like more interesting? Uh, the legacy storyline is a bit questionable. They would probably either have to create a new protagonist or not. Um, I think they picked the year, the year five that they did because of the issues that uh, teleportation would cause uh, in setting. Uh, given the what in the Harry character. Potter game? Yeah. <laughs> Um, I think it's all right. The, probably the most questionable thing is carrying over the killing curse into this into, into a second game. Oh yeah. Um, I don't I don't know shit about Harry Potter, so I can't like. I can't, what do you mean? Belly armor, no, no. a Vada Kedavra thing that you can just say the words and then people just die, um, is... which is slightly overpowered. You guys, well, you have to have like, intent behind it. That's the gendering. that's the rule set, and that makes the player character the biggest sociopath because you can just <laughs> go around killing people willy-nilly that you don't even really know <laughs> uh you guys are clearly huge harry potter fans is there a reason why avada kedavra is so close to abracadabra when it's the killing and most serious case rowling is a hack <laughs> yeah, I, was wondering if I, the exact I was, same thing. Yeah, I was like why would you want to associate with the scariest curse of all time with the goofy <laughs> magic thing oh <laughs> wait i thought i thought it was a pokemon reference <laughs> Oh, oh nice, Abra and Kadabra nice. and Alakazam, yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I will say that J.K. Rowling and uh, the Harry Potter franchise is probably the worst part of Hogwarts Legacy. Um, I felt that the game showed that that universe actually has quite a bit of potential when it's not being created by her or 
in that kind of blood purism plot line that uh, Harry Potter has. Yeah, that seemed to be a really big deal, which always did strike me as odd that that was such a huge central thing. And calling someone a mud blood was like the worst insult ever. As a kid, I was like, oh, I guess they take it seriously, I guess. I don't know. I, I don't know. Maybe. Maybe they didn't quite it's, sell it's the cultural way of, of, of getting into the the, the world it's itself. It's not the like, best fictional the design universe the, word. It's not no, but there's a lot <laughs> of uh, appropriately magic in the world construction. Like so, some of it is genuinely quite lovely to look at, um, and the books themselves are they are there's there's imagination that goes into them. But on the level of plot, most Pretty of the much. books just evolve into that they are just effectively murder mystery stories. That's what J.K. Rowling always wanted to do. It's what she's always read, and though it's no coincidence that's what she went on to write afterwards. Um, and when it comes to actually building out the world with characters and factions, she really doesn't have a huge amount of imagination, which I think is where the whole mudblood thing comes in. It's like, what's the shorthand way of creating uh, an obviously evil group of people? What's like their one thing they'll be focused on? Well, they're basically kind of wizard Nazis who are obsessed with Aryan bloodlines. That's easy, and it's been done, so we'll, we'll just chuck that in there, because then you know that the evil bald man is definitely bad, because he believes in, like, race, for example. Um, and it's it's not the most that's not the most compelling part of it. I thought that the game itself translates a lot of the the better elements of the world of the books quite nicely, but it, it sort of it falls down in the same way the books do. The stories kind of lack towards certainly toward the end. Um, once you get over the initial joy of of seeing all of this familiar stuff, and you get down into the the plot that's supposed to carry you along, you start looking at it. And say, that's really formulaic, and I've seen that a dozen times before. And also, a lot of the stuff you're doing around it to try and make the world feel more fleshed out, like the puzzle systems, are so simplistic that like my five year old would be able to solve most of this stuff. Wait, you have a five year old? So, uh, no, no, a five year old, so <laughs> not my five year old. <laughs> unless unless there's someone lying around here that I, I haven't been aware of. Um, it's possible, but I don't think it's true. But it's yeah, like the game. I've played it a couple of times, and I've also gone back to it a couple of times. Just like if I've got nothing else to do, I think oh, I, I remember bits of this being enjoyable. Let's see if I can finish it this time. The answer is always no. But you know, there's a good couple of hours of vague enjoyment in there somewhere. Hey, uh, someone in chat wanted to inform. The, the, the same praise was not given to Forspoken, so <laughs> there's something in there. It uh, is kind of an inverse Bethesda game where it is similar in that it lacks a strong central vision and it's got all these disparate ideas that don't really work together. And yet it has just enough charm with a lot of its mechanics that it can still compel you to play it, even though parts of it are pretty bad. Well, uh, it's like the first part of it, I found it really slow, like sometimes yeah. in a yes. good way, sometimes in a bad way. Um, I kind of like the mechanics of it, like the shooting spells felt like this weird novel in between place between fighting and like shooting a gun. There's like, there's a bit of a delay in like shooting spells and then stuff just blows up as if you like shot. That's real guns. There's something about casting spells that I enjoy, but it was just, it takes so long to like get going. Yeah. But then, like, when I was in the, like, I picked Ravenclaw, and I'm wandering around the commons room, and I'm soaking in, like, all these students are sitting around having oh, conversations. Oh, you get a house? And I've had it. Yes. What, that was, you were a Ravenclaw based in Red Pilled. Yeah, well, you, 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 you pick one of the houses, right? You, you The sorting hat puts you in one. Oh, and you also so get it. A, how does what if you it disagree select? with a hat? So you had, it's so you, you, you do a game, questionnaire. Was, there's only two questions in the questionnaire, so it's like it's one of the least. It, I, I wanted a bit for, more for depth four houses. There's, there's four only houses. two questions. Yeah, <laughs> wait a second. <laughs> it says I think you should probably go into one of these houses, and you can still say no. I think I should be in the other one. The shorting hat says okay, that's fine. So like, sure. you get put in Hufflepuff, and you can just say no, fuck it. I want to be Slytherin, and it says fine. Yeah, that's that's all good. Yeah, if I um, got it, if I went to Hogwarts and it put me in Hufflepuff, I'd just be like, you know what? I don't I really I just want to quit. Be Which is funny just, because yeah. it's actually the second best house in the game. What's it? I mean, <laughs> Gryffindor isn't the best, is it? No, uh, the best oh, is Slytherin, okay. and then Hufflepuff, Based. and that has to do with the content. There's like a single quest that uh, the house will unlock. That's lame. Like you, uh, oh, so, uh, think so? But yeah, if if well, it depends on what you mean by uh, better with content. Like if it's literally, it's just, it's just it's very early in the game. It's a single quest, but when you play a Slytherin character, you feel a lot more attached to kind of the side characters because the main kind of character-driven plotline involves a lot of Slytherin characters. Yeah, you would wouldn't you want that? It was. Uh, you think that being in a house would almost be like choosing a, um, like a star sign. In... Yeah, I actually quite vibed with it coming from Elder Scrolls. It's kind of a semi-exclusive kind of faction perk system that encourages replayability. 
I quite as long as we can all agree that Hufflepuffs are fucking losers, well, yeah, yeah. then I think we're well, yeah. I'm, I'm totally up for exclusive content based on houses, but not for like one of them being explicitly the best one, once you understand enough about the game. It reminds me of like, if they're a couple all balanced of the... and encourage well, ability, Yeah, I mean fine. best in terms of the story that gets told in there. Even that, uh, it'd be nice if you know, they, they put as much effort into the right of all four of them. I would have thought Gryffindor would end up with the best story. Uh, yawn. Oh, you're a Gryffindor. Oh, yeah, Gryffindor is incredible. Boring. Yeah, let me guess. You have a fox. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> you're a courageous <laughs> lad. I gotta say, you guys are just sort of speaking like nonsense to me. I don't understand any of this. All right. So, Harry yeah, I, don't I don't think it was that hard about. to follow. I'm not exactly Harry fucking Cooper. the Potter oh, head. What, why? Why? Why is Gryffindor? Why is that better than or worse than like the it other is one? The... It's the house the good, that the protagonist and Harry Yeah, the good guy. When you said there was two oh, questions, I thought you were going to be like, are you good or evil? Are you intelligent or <laughs> retarded? And then that would sort it out. <laughs> like, they actually, evil, it's like evil, evil it's retarded truly, people go to it's, it's, <laughs> it's like, what do you value most? Bravery, loyalty, intelligence, or power? I yeah. Guess one of the questions. They actually power? Oh, oh, geez, you're just filtering evil kids into Slytherin at that point. <laughs> sorry, okay, sorry. Well, JK. Sorry. Okay, so these are like houses in the Harry Potter world at like the school, and so so Gryffindor is what? That's the the lame protagonist. Brave one. heroes. Yeah. Brave. Ravenclaw is like the so, cunning, smart, so, good people, and then the 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 ones and Slytherin likes that. They make yeah, the Slytherin are cunning. Builds. They're the evil ones. And Pretty much the evil Hufflepuff, ones. Hufflepuff are gay. <laughs> is that like the <laughs> Uber? Like, what is that one? Is that like the the clown one? What is it? Hufflepuff. Yeah. yeah. Which one? Hufflepuff is the clown one. <laughs> 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 They got the short end of the stick from JK. They got the least focus in terms oh, yeah, of the okay. writing, but generally they're supposed to be about loyalty and camaraderie, even though Gryffindor oh, yeah. just exhibit that Hufflepuff, more. Yeah, and, yeah, and, and it really wasn't it Cedric sense. is the only notable Hufflepuffian in the entire saga? Like, and he died? <laughs> I, I think so. I think maybe Luna Lovegood was in that house too, but I mean, it's a very, they don't talk about it much. There's an in-joke yeah. in the Harry Potter community that says, that goes along the lines of, what the fuck is a Hufflepuff? Mm-hmm. It's, it's not, not even just Harry. It's not a good name. Ravenclaw sounds even, way fucking Ravenclaw cooler than a Hufflepuff. Based, yeah, and cool. Like, I'm a raven, and I got claws, and look at that. Yeah, I don't know. But, Hufflepuff, just, Hufflepuff just sounds fat. It just makes me think of, like... <laughs> yeah, it fluffy. It makes me think of a scared little rabbit running away. Their house is actually next to the kitchen, believe it or not. Oh, my God. I don't know. It makes me think of, the, like, Snorlax a little bit. The, like, Snorlax maybe would chill, be... Though. The kitchen yeah. that's Hey, listen, slay. her name is Gorlock, okay? I got that. It's not oh, even just Harry that. and Gryffindor. It's like it, like it's also Ron and Hermione, which makes sense because you know they got to talk to each other in the commons room to like dish out plot details, so they're all on the same page. But it just like, and plus Gryffindor has like the warmest colors out of all of them. It just yeah, it's got like red is, gold, red and gold, and yeah. uh, mm. Professor Dumbledore was a, a Gryffindor too. Of course, the, he the was. Of right. He no, cheats he's in and just hands them the house cup at the end of the day. He's like, "Well, you've been <laughs> it's, shit it's all year, but I'm going to give all of you fifty points for being brave. Now you win. Well done." Right. Guys, we can't talk about Harry Potter and how shit it is. We have to talk about 2023. <laughs> we'll be no, we are. We're doing exactly <laughs> what we intended to do. I love book. how we've almost spent more time. <laughs> We spent more time on a thing that none of us played. <laughs> 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 I'm just bitching about Hufflepuffs. Well, it, I mean, why not? Because I was going to say, I just like why the not? joke of you could enter any house, but if you come out as gay during it, you have to go straight to Hufflepuff. <laughs> 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 it's just how the rules work, I'm afraid. Um, what I was trying to say like 10 minutes ago was someone in chat let you know, Rags, because uh, you, you have a couple of gaps in knowledge. That uh, Abracadabra actually predates Pokemon. They wanted to make sure you understood that. Oh, did they? oh, Does it? okay. Yeah. I oh, all right. Oh, thanks for clearing that up yeah, for me because yeah. I, I was laboring under the impression that but, it was a Pokemon mm -hmm. reference, but actually it was the oh. Because <laughs> when so they maybe the Abracadabra Pokemon and Alakazam, to the words. yeah, they oh, actually yeah, inspired yeah. a lot of people. Oh. Yeah, yeah, you got it. Right. You understand oh. when they called when they called him Squirtle, that was actually the origin of the words. Turtle and squirt. Mm, um, yeah, they like, separated it out. It was so cool. I was there when they did right, that. They did. Uh, yeah, they reversed backwards. They figured it out. Yeah, I was in the room. Game, right. What no Pokemon? I just want to just, just for, before we era. before we move on from that. I just want to give a big shout out shout out to Venonat. Big shout out to Venonat, the the often forgotten Pokemon of the first generation. So. Good job. Yeah, I, it is often forgotten because I don't know what that is. Which I know what that? that is. Yeah, he's he's yeah, like a bull, right? 
Yeah, yeah he's like the little purple, purple ball with the red eyes. <laughs> Harry Pibble. Huge shout out. <laughs> huge shout out to Venonat. He's just he's doing his best, and no one remembers little Venonat. It's, it's a shame because Venomoth, he he, uh, he like morphs into Butterfree. Venomoth. Well, there's only oh, like I don't know. I don't know now. about that. Butterfree's really good, but I don't know if Ven Venomoth is a shit Butterfree. I, I I'm I inclined to remember that I agreed with that. I think B Butterfree kind of kicked Venom Venomoth's ass. That's what I remember. Yeah. I know. I know. Uh, it was easier to get a Butterfree because you know, obviously, you, you were just going to get one first. You know, Caterpie and Metapod, and plus, you know, it was really good to have one against Brock if you, you know. Did, yeah, you know, Leaf fucks up rocks. That. I think everyone knows that. And well, confusion. Uh, then a, a, a Butterfree could learn confusion, and also oh, I that one. Right, yeah. yeah uh, and oh. Butterfree was great at like putting things to sleep and paralyzing. But Butterfree was just the fuck you Pokemon. I'm just gonna fuck around with you. But in the real world, it could choice. be a real I'm crowd killer okay. weapon, Butterfree, because it just flies over the battlefield spraying sarin gas over people. <laughs> and so it oh, that's, Ven that's Venomoth right there. That is Butterfree would never do that, but Venomoth would. You could tell you know, by the eyes. I, I, re I really like Psyduck, all right? Psyduck's I like great. Him a lot. I really like Psyduck. Wasn't there an episode, though, where he was, I, uh... oh, was it Hypnotoad? Someone was like taking over the minds of a bunch of people, and he was like, oh, shit. Go that combo. could have been like many Hypnotoad is uh Hypnotoad is Futurama. You getting your uh, references crossed there? He thought Hypnotoad no. was a Pokemon and so Hip did no I. Just Hip, to be Hip clear. whatever the the I'm picturing him. He's got like um he's yellow and he brown. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, Hypno. Hypno. Yeah, yeah. and um and and there was an evolution. Yeah, it, uh, from Drowsy. Drowsy evolves into Hypno. Yeah, that's right? the one. What's up? Uh, Hip Hypnotoad is also Meowth awesome. Is my favorite. Just for the record. <laughs> Meowth is really more, I think Polytoad uh, is the, the frog one. Mm. Uh, Zigzagoon or who's the, who's the best of those two? Let me, let me remind How myself. are we here? What? <laughs> <laughs> Zigzagoon and... Oh, oh yeah, that's Bidoof. the one I remember. And Bidoof. Yeah, B-I-D. Ooh, that's yeah, a tough Uroof. one. Oh, Ooh, yeah, they're both really that's shit. That's a tough one. To gonna... Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> I, yeah, so like, oh. I, I'm just gonna say Zigzagoon... I would say it's pretty obviously the one I like. I, more I really that. like Zigzagoon. Badoof's a little goober. I love him. He's a goofball. <laughs> but I Zigzagoon's pretty great. So I'm going to go with I uh, like Zigzagoon. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so. Um, so, also, Harry Potter. Back to Harry also, Potter. Also, so, uh, <laughs> right, right. Back to Harry Potter. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was going to mention yeah, that uh, someone said travel. it was from the Aramaic, is why it, it apparently translates from destroy them or something, uh, Avada Kedavra. That's where it's from. Oh, Though I still would have recommended against it because it sounds too much scary. like Abracadabra. So they based so they based Aramaic off of a Pokemon. Yes. It's it's strange I, I, because weird, many of the spells older, but... are based on Latin. Interesting. Cool. Yeah, yeah. It makes sense. You know, it's kind of the go-to for old languages that people kind of, you know, live Well, as I understand, uh, the Romans were supposed to be foundational in setting to magic, uh, and they learned it from the Atlanteans. And they Are got you it fucking from... around with me, or is this really? actually in the books, just to be, just so we're on the same page? I don't know if you're memeing or not. This is Harry Potter. You're going uh, to... I'm, to I'm half and half. As, as I understand, <laughs> I, I believe the connection to Latin was in the books, but I don't know about Atlantis. Oh, okay. You can't you can't do this when we're talking about well, Harry does, Potter because we will. Wait, wait, wait. did the Atlanteans get it from Pokemon or did the Romans? I assume it started with Pokemon because the Pokemon are of nature itself. Yeah, right? so everything we all know that. Uh, well, Pokemon, Pokemon, uh, the civilization in there is actually the pre uh, pre apocalypse civilization. I don't know if many people know that. Mm. No, I didn't. Well, I, I didn't know we had a Poke historian here. Um, but that's it's good. That's good. You that'll, familiar that'll with the streamer well Pokemon? Is a or Pokemon? Is it, you do you know a lot about here? If you're a Poke historian, no. All right. <laughs> I think the <laughs> best she Pokemon cookies, belongs she? to Arcanine. <laughs> yes, she makes cookies. Yeah. That's... <laughs> um, I think because we're up to March, Mando is uh, next on our list. Wait a minute! You forgot nice a, an incredible right. entry to the gaming world. I think. Oh, right, well. Art. Atomic Heart, baby! Oh, yeah, by Monday Critters. Fish. That was a Crispy strange Critters. Fair game. Crispy Critters. What a that what was a weird one. Yeah, what that a was a weird one. Boy, but... As I understand, it was lost in uh, translation to English, wasn't it? Yes, it was. Yeah, just absolutely wacky details, fucking yeah, story. Uh... Yeah, it didn't make no fucking sense. <laughs> um, but what a what an interesting first game for a company. I believe this is Mundfish's first game.
it was they were working on it for years mm -hmm. it was actually a running joke in my e3 streams that we would joke about yeah. the atomic heart announcement that they would inevitably do and then not say when they were going to release the game we uh it was clear from playing it the immense level of time and effort that went into it but for uh focus would be the word you might say is lacking mm -hmm. in the game um well, and the unpolished the problem these days a whole yeah. bunch of different mechanics and instead of just like focusing on on a very specific experience that they want to create yeah. there was definitely an incredible it's... aesthetic i love the aesthetic oh yeah it looked, it looked I, really good it's a very interesting game to look at and to see it doesn't feel like it's anything else um uh but yeah i i'm very curious to see what their next game will be because i think it was very successful i think a lot of people were playing it talking about it I honestly I have so, no yeah. clue, but it, it did get talked about. We talked about it. It was um it did. It was, uh, yeah, I saw a lot saw a lot of the ladies around. A lot of people were loving them. That's yeah, the, the whole Soviet futurism angle is really interesting to explore and see. And I didn't finish the game, but I did quite enjoy what I played and I was laughing a lot. Like a lot of the dialogue and delivery is just batshit crazy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was just like, what is the next crazy, goofy thing that's going to happen? Like, that was it, keeping me hooked. It definitely has a story that's too complex for its own good because there's a right. lot of different characters, and then there's like espionage and weird stuff like that with a government. And then there's, yeah, mm -hmm. it, it's, yeah, it's all, and then like people, goo, people turned into goo and turned into other people, and this, the wristwatch is a guy and stuff like that. And it's all, very strange. It needed a very simple story and simple premise. Doesn't your, um, your, your hand betray yeah. you at the end? Yeah, because he's actually a, a dude. Yeah, of course, he's a guy. Yeah. Evil hand. It's like a, a evil very, dead. very strange. Which is, uh, which I think is the same thing that happens like in Forspoken. I think the hand betrays you there as well. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't there a Boy, big... Why do my body um, parts start betraying me? Quit! Damn it! It was a big old sequence the reference Rapture as well in uh, Atomic Heart, right? Cause oh, you were so disappointed, I remember. I, yeah. I watched oh, you while you were playing Rapture. that part. <laughs> Dude, Rapture so cool, man. It's like a rapture. It's like, fuck off. <laughs> oh, God, yeah. Atomic Heart pissed me off quite a bit in many places. Yeah. There's a lot of things to appreciate as well, though. It's just that I those really like influences probably... are so clear, the Bioshock yeah. and everything else. I wish it had more replay value because there's probably a lot of fun builds you could do and mm. fuck around with, but there's so many times where you just need to walk to the other place and you yeah, kind of this... don't want to fight everything over and over again. Too much tedium. Like a... Yeah, there's it definitely a... definitely a... has that like a grand idea with mm. a first time execution kind of vibe to it. Yeah. Um but like I like I said I wonder what the the good version of this game is an incredible game. But yeah, yeah, my, yeah my, they, fa my they favorite get better. part in the game was towards the end when you just run through like multiple rooms and just start killing lots and lots of things like the crazy metal music kicks in it's like super yeah. cool it's like oh that was awesome then it stops and just goes back to and i was like no go back to that that was awesome i could use all my abilities i could use all my guns and i could throw shit at against walls it was like, oh yeah, yeah some of the powers were super really fun cool. i suppose that's the sad part about it is that all of the best stuff if you put it all together you'd probably be really fondly remembering this game but it's packed yeah. in between loads of long and oftentimes meh stuff it's uh, like yeah, I said, a, a focus thing. Like, like this feels like the game equivalent of when a lot of people say, like, whenever you finish a script, that if you were forced to cut twenty percent of it, it might end up just becoming stronger because you've actually cut the least useful stuff as far as you're concerned. Which, because it's your thing, it's actually kind of useless stuff to most people. Because like you, you value all the stuff you put in, of course. But um, it's it's like an interesting little rule of thumb. And that this game could stand to lose a lot of its content. There's a lot of stuff that doesn't need to be here. Mm. But, um, refinement and stuff. But yeah, like I said, it's very clear that people who worked on it really gave uh, a lot of time and effort to it. Yeah, they gave oh, yeah, shit just and it shows. Seeing it in, in chat, that's like the whole rabbit part when you're dreaming or something while you go crazy or whatever it was. Yeah, that was fucking weird. That was, and don't was forget weird. the rapey fridge. Oh, oh yeah. Nora, yeah. I will say, uh, Nora, probably... Yeah. <laughs> Among the best um, uh, shop music you've ever seen. in a video game. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean for like the UI or the, the fact that she Sorry. wants to rape you? No, no, uh, the uh, the the menu music for the uh, oh the music for the right. shop. Oh, good music, very yeah. good. Yeah, good music. 
I like that you would go into save rooms and see a little snippet of a cartoon on the TV. Is a bit between a wolf and like it's like a Tom and Jerry sort of thing, but it was a wolf and something. And mm. I felt like Walk every little town, piece right? was like a little allegory for something. You know, maybe on if even if it was just on like a surface level, but like it's like, hmm, is this trying to tell me something about the world that everybody inhabits here? Like, I just thought that that was such a charming little thing in the in the save me rooms. Of, and it reminds sorry, me a bit, and I don't know if anybody else has played it. The game Singularity, which yeah. uh, had a similar uh, Soviet futurism aesthetic, bit of time control mm -hmm. in that, right? Yes, you can change the timeline, and then you end up fucking it up where the uh, Soviets uh, are the dominant world power. I just remember cool things like this door is locked, and you can age the lock so hard that it breaks. Stuff like just little interactions like that. Oh well, Atomic Heart. That's probably oh, all that we have there, to say right? about it. Uh, yeah, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, oh wow, <laughs> awful. Mando season three, yeah, oh. the the thing that kind of changed Mando's reputation forever, because a lot of yes, people were very God, positive about Mando. Bad. Really, it was, it was always, always bad, bad. Though I still want the caveat in that season three is clearly the worst out of the three Mando seasons. I would agree. Yes. Way. It's all bad, but season three is particularly memorably bad. Yeah, what was quite striking is the comparisons of cinematography between th three and one. Um, three was so one hastily has shot. Production values. Three yeah. looks like all the other crappy Disney Star Wars shows. Yeah, I would have suspected that the second season would have knocked people more, like people you off think? the wagon. <laughs> it, it certainly you kicked, kicked me off. Oh, you okay? Yeah, well, you, so yeah, with us, right? We watched season one, and we were distinctly disappointed before we hit the halfway mark. And then by the time we hit the finale, everything is hyper retarded. Um, a lot of people like to not <laughs> think about it, but that finale, the two part finale, none of it makes any sense. Like the Empire oh, are yes. hyper stupid, and they establish that like the Empire can't it. shoot straight, which sucks. I like it as a schlocky kind of space western. But I do agree that it doesn't make a whole lot of sense, and then. Uh, they took away kind of the Sherlock element in season two. Season two uh, was clearly the Age of Ultron of Disney's products, where they yeah. were like, we need to yes. use what we have to launch other things. And launch they did. We ended oh, that up went with... so very well. The Book of Boba Fett. Everyone because loved the Book of Boba Fett. Fett. The helmet that That's launched great. a thousand ships. Everyone and loved the Book of Boba Fett is, is right. integral to understanding the beginning of Mando season three, <laughs> since that's when most of the important stuff happens. Not that anyone actually. Watched, but... It's funny because it, really it is. is. I'm well, going to be like, wait, why is Baby Yoda back? We've talked about how uh, this Luke before, but it's still him, the funniest shit. Oh. That um, they were obviously making season three of Mando. Something went wrong, uh, and they stopped. Uh, from rumors that we've gathered, it's something to do with Pedro Pascal and negotiating his role going forward because he didn't want to be in it anymore in the suit. And so then they rushed Book of Boba Fett to have something to release, and then they shoved what they'd had of Mandalorian into Book of Boba Fett to flesh it out a bit, even though, what did that end up with? Was it seven episodes? Seven. That's two yeah, of them. not much. <laughs> and they are not a very thick seven episodes. No. No. Well, like, a t a, just the fact that two episodes of Book of Boba Fett are just Mando episodes that have way higher production value well, and, and it's an Book actual there is a fact that uh across two episodes boba fett doesn't speak a line right no he doesn't say anything in episodes five and six i don't believe so crazy <gasps> primary character and he's even and talked this, about that to Mara morrison that, that was really balls sad. Up of a nose lizard and it's like yep. what what is going on well, and no, he, like, that's how we had to get a, that's how he had to get a stick from the magic tree so that it could get like carved into a beaten stick yeah, and that was so incredibly important to everything. Because you know the, the savage barbarian slave tribe that you know the he's they're really they're really misunderstood and they're actually quite good people. There was a lot of defense um, for them at one point, which was nuts because uh, they're horrifying. Yeah. They do a lot of oh. really fucked up shit. And then was it the bikers killed them or uh, someone else, and they framed the bikers? Oh yeah, that's right. The uh, the, to follow. the syndicate, <laughs> right? The uh, the bad guys. What was that? Were they called the syndicate or something like that? I the, think uh, so. You remember? <laughs> Yeah, it was a syndicate, uh, I think. Or something like that, um, which, lame name for, for you know, Of you know, course. Uh, yeah, Overused. But, yeah, they yeah. did that. 
Uh, so like it means that uh, it means that Boba Fett just slaughtered a bunch of bikers who like had nothing to do with uh, <laughs> mm-hmm. nothing to do with it, and Whoopsies. then he doesn't really he doesn't, he doesn't about care it. about that at all. He doesn't care. He, he cares about as much as I don't know. I, they bikers. had a common. They probably smelled bad or something. And then uh, he wrote a rancor. They remained to the people um, at the bar. Yeah. He wrote a rancor, and then that was uh, that was that, and then it, the next one after that was good old Obi Wan Kenobi, which um. Really does feel like the turning point, doesn't well, it? I feel like it's the worst of them all. Uh, yeah, I hate yeah. it the most. Um, yeah, yeah, I hate, I, it, the I most. hate it the most. Yeah, um, um, but I feel like it was the because t- Andor came afterward and was like kind of lost in its wake, uh, in the wake of uh, Obi Wan Kenobi. Yeah, most you know, like after- ran away and succeeded is baffling. So before I'll say it again, if Andor came out just after Rogue One, everybody would probably have a really positive view of it. Be like, yeah, that mm-hmm. Andor show was yeah. cool. I think everyone would have had a lot more patience for it had it come out after Rogue One. Yeah, I think so. Um, because after Obi Wan Kenobi, and that being a massive disappointment, it's hard to convince the average viewer that it would be worth their while to watch yeah. a show about one of the characters in a film that, let's be real, like a lot of people. I don't know how many people like remember a whole lot about Rogue One. It feels like it's kind of. They remember the last was, twenty minutes and, mainly. Yeah. yeah. K2SO, and that's about and it. K2SO. Mm-hmm. Um, but then they, they made a really great show out of it. Um, but it, it suffered in the in the wake of uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi because that was like... Yeah. Man, I, I find... I can't believe... Imagine getting handed. That is like... That's like a dream that you get to, like, tell essentially the middle chapter of Obi-Wan's life with all of the resources that you could ever want. Um, you got John Williams to compose your theme for you, you know? You've got all the actors, you've got everything that you could need, and that's what they did. Connecting story yep. between the prequels and the OT. That's mm-hmm. uh, some meaningful... Is McGregor in, uh, involved in the, in the production or, I think or he was whatever? The producer. I think he was one of the, he was executive producer or something. He, was, uh, he was involved. Yeah. That's sad. <laughs> it's, I know, but it's just... And, and it's, like, absolutely embarrassing. It's so bad. Uh, and I feel like, and then I think, I guess, Mando season three coming after all of that has somehow managed to retain the perception of, it was kind of like before the shittier Disney Star Wars shows, and then season three, like, just firmly established, ah, uh, oh well, yeah, that's uh, not the case anymore. You don't even get better production values anymore. It's all, it's all just the yeah, same it's, sludge. It's, it's just clear yeah. that all of their uh, scheduling is caught up to them. They they couldn't even make Mando season three. Like the the primary shows and in, in theory movies because all of them have been scuppered away. Uh, it, it's a couple that may make it, but we don't even know about them. Uh, well, I mean, I guess it seems like the one that has the best chance now is that Ray movie that they're trying to move as fast as possible on getting that one started. Yeah, it's just a staggering amount of mismanagement, misallocation of resources, and then having no interest or plan in absolutely anything that's happening with Star Wars other than merchandising it, get it on the shelf, uh, whatever it is, as long as it looks recognizable. Now yeah. your boy Dave Filoni's in charge. Yep. God. <laughs> oh, don't remind yeah, but me. It's just, it's just, you just want to make sure everyone understands. Dave Filoni had a big old finger in the pie of Book of Boba Fett. Don't, don't forget that. He had it, he had it in, all, in all of these shows, uh, except for Andor, the only, the, the good yeah. one. He <laughs> good one, yeah. Yeah, the yeah. only one he didn't touch to be the really good one. Ahsoka was absolutely embarrassing. Piss. That was, it was an boring piss. project again, where he had all the money he could ever want, access to any characters he basically could ask for, and that's what he made. And now he's now he's in charge. Yeah, the promotion. Fantastic. I'm staying that a lot lately. But it's, yep. it's been interesting as well to note some of the, the, the way the excuse making has evolved a little bit because, you know, Mando season one comes out and whatever its its flaws was very popular and that was around the time people were saying, oh, Favreau and Filoni, they'll save yeah. Star Wars. Yeah, the dream team, they'll season do it. Season two they'll just about keeps up that reputation. Season three comes out and it's it's gradually but quite quickly become known as, as a complete incompetent mess. And now you're starting to get people, certainly in my comment section, saying, well, that was because Filoni came in for Mando season three and he ruined it. Um, and also wow. KK because she's she's the evil demon witch <laughs> creature who just you know infests all bad things. She's the That's spirit of, of bad in art. So yeah, but like <laughs> even things where there isn't that much evidence that she is involved, she is now blamed.
in for that for that as well. But you actually look at a lot of the plot lines for Mando season three and you find you know, the whole Mandalorian Jerusalem thing is John Favreau exploring his own Jewish roots, which I think he said publicly. It's, if anything, that's the storyline that's had the least outside interference. It was a passion project or a way wow. of converting well, a passion projects into story. that kind of treatment. But well, I, no, I mean, it's, it's, it's the worst, either, worst Jewish related the disaster floor. since when. Um, but uh, yeah, it's, it's oh, no. a complete mess. Um, and it's, but that's all Favreau. You can't keep saying, well, Favreau and yeah, yeah. will save it except where it goes wrong. It, I think people like to think, they prefer to think in narratives and patterns. People don't like, I think, disparate information that almost paints a picture that's kind of confusing and uh, unpredictable. People don't like those inconsistent abilities that are just part of being Yeah, because I, uh, I think Zack Snyder kind of highlights this perfectly. You have, uh, we, we've only watched his stuff and been disappointed every time. I think a lot of people have been like, well, that one was okay. I kind of like the ideas here. I like what he says here. I don't like how he was treated on this. This one's all right. And then it's just like, have you seen Army of the Dead? And it's like, nope. You're like, oh yeah, because that would that would like fuck the whole thing up. But Rebel Moon, which we'll get to a bit later, probably Rebel Moon. It's uh, it, it like collapsed and and reversed the narrative. It seems like the the painting the the efforts to paint the picture that he is an artist that should be given freedom and control and that he makes awesome stuff. It's all gone backwards, and uh, I'd say that Dave Filoni is the the the, the one that happened to it sort of before and after and at the same time. He's been having this whole arc too. Uh, thoroughly respected and expected to make the the good stuff to now, especially after Ahsoka and whatever he does next. Because let's be honest, we, we, like like us at EFAB don't have any faith in uh, Filoni being able to tell great stories. We just no, don't. no, absolutely. No, I, I think he's incapable. Uh, I think he's actually incapable. It, uh, like Rebel Moon, it's it's a bit of a he's showing his ass because he can't show anything else, and so it's just a matter of time. Everyone has you have to actually put something up eventually, and people are going to see it, and we know what you're capable of. Meanwhile, like if they said new uh, Star Wars show coming from Mike Flanagan, we'd be like, oh shit. Okay, I wonder what that's going to look yeah. like. Cause, yeah, instant you know, watch. You have well, of course, attention. we would still be worried that it is Disney that's uh, you know breathing <coughs> over his shoulder, yeah. right? Um, but the point being... And he's Filoni, not the kind um, of guy you hire if that's... Uh... You know, if that's. What well, I don't think he would do. want the job if that were the case, right? I think he really yeah, likes that's what I'm the saying. control. Yeah, that's part of what the interest is. Like they're willing to actually take a chance on letting a proper storyteller. Um, but it doesn't seem like Wars. that's that's nope. like the modus operandi, especially on like especially on Marvel stuff, but seemingly mm. on Star Wars stuff too. Of get people who don't have, who are not going to really fight back against like whatever sort of mandates we have or uh, yeah. any, or know if, how you know, the system we, works, know when they're not allowed to make their own decisions, yeah, so know like, when to shut up. They're you know? kind of you know, so they're the director, yeah. but really we're the ones in charge. You know, it's it's all our choices and <laughs> all our redirection. I was going to say, I think the, the, probably the peak example of this confusion would be John Favreau. There was a time where I think everyone agreed he was, he was awesome. It's like he's making stuff that yeah. we like, and that Iron Man 2 or anything else you'd reference in that way for whatever flaws it has, they're not his fault. Um, but then he started which, making the remakes. Well, I was going to say, it makes sense. The picture is drawn, we get it, it's, it's, it, and so whatever we see from him next can fit into that picture, and it doesn't. And you're like, fuck, what? No, this doesn't, how does, how would, the, how did you make The Lion King? How are you talking about the Lion King and all the things you did in the Lion King? As the, it's a it's a monstrous. How is this possible? You're the guy who made Iron Man <laughs> one. You're the guy who made a movie about interference and like the destruction of artwork. How is this happening? And then he makes all the shit with the Star Wars shows, and you're like, what the? And so you have to the brain struggles with this sort of thing. You have to paint a new picture. You just have no choice. Um, then there'll be more of that coming because I think both is Skeleton Crew and the Arcolider you out this year, I think. This year, um, yes. And so yeah. there's an interview with Favreau and, and Filoni singing it down together, and Skeleton Crew is mentioned. Um, and the problem probably going to be that you've got simultaneously, yeah, you do have quite a strong studio lead in this matter in terms of you know hiring people who won't ask too many questions. But the people at the top don't really have any vision for what they want to do, so nobody really knows what to ask questions about. So on Skeleton Crew, Favreau was talking about how, yeah, every episode can be completely different. We're bringing in so many different people to take this very different line, and all that really passes for Star Wars is that me, Dave, and Kathy sit down and we say, does it look like Star Wars? Yeah, it does. Then it's good. So we'll, we'll run with it. So Skeleton Wait, Crew could well that? be... Yeah, they said that Star Wars... Wow, as long as it has the Star that? Wars aesthetic, um, then this is, this is going to work. Uh, as long as we all agree wow. that it's got the Star Wars aesthetic, like, that's not like Dude. a good sign, though, that's is it? Because hilarious. what you really want is don't you want a as an inter don't you like an, as an interview? Isn't, isn't like your first question after it's like, oh, but what about like the actual story in the? Oh, because then episode. you don't get to come back. You don't get to come back and do another <sighs> interview. So. You're nuts. Fine. No. There's only <laughs> one Star Wars project that I consistently hear doesn't feel like Star Wars. Zandor. <laughs> Andor. Andor, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 
so interesting that it's like, yeah, maybe maybe we shouldn't fucking care if they nail the Star Wars feel if they're doing that every time with stuff that we all despise. (laughs) That's what I'd say. They're ruining the feel. They're flanderizing what Star Wars is. It's like, well, yeah, as long as we got some stormtroopers... Uh, and we got blasters, and we got yeah. some lightsabers, and some people. Remember, wearing... lightsabers are oh, fucking yeah, worthless no. now. You can get stabbed, and you're fine. Yes. Yeah, They've done an incredible that. job took at making lightsabers away. both in and out of universe super yeah. shit. Like, I never want to yeah. see another lightsaber again in my life. It's just, I mean, crazy. They can be really cool, my fill. though. <laughs> it's just... I don't know if it's possible. Well, it's just, uh, <laughs> if, if, Andor if, has a, if Andor has, like, one scene with a lightsaber, it's gonna be way more impactful and meaningful than any of the stuff that Disney Star Wars has made. Because it's like, you see it in the structure of Andor, like the way that they've broken it down into these sort of four major arcs that culminate in one big, uh, I guess you'd call it action set piece. Um, each time it's like, it's a more impactful set piece because they don't have three per episode. They have one big one after like two and a half episodes of setup. Um, and so imagine what it looks like in two seasons and then you finally get like one scene with a lightsaber. That's going to be crazy. Yeah, meanwhile, Dave Filoni's turning them into fucking helicopters. So yeah. in, that, in that sense, it doesn't sure. look like Star Wars, because Star Wars has become a clown. Imagine more people saw and knew that. Like, uh, the people uh, that, you know, have like hyper-respect for Filoni, like, they, you'd have to just ignore it, be like, ah, nah, nah, nah. It's nothing <laughs> new for Star Wars fans. We are fairly used to there being some elements of just really stupid detail in some ancillary stories, so... I think that's fair. In a lot it's... of ways, they... They see it as a feature. Just not. You don't have it too. You don't have it all the time. <laughs> just that. Because as I just mentioned as well, it's like Andor is more like in line with Star Wars for, just for the fact they made the Empire competent and intimidated. It's like I know it's crazy yep. to imagine that. that. Yeah, remember thing... why we wanted to stop them in the first place, guys? Seriously, I think an easy way that Andor could help fix that perception is just have a, one or two of the characters be aliens. You know. It's it's one of the few things that I really take issue with is that there's not enough aliens in Andor. There should be like well, and, and one or two characters at least. You know, I, an I'm an advocate that we don't like try to run away from references to Star Wars just out of the interest of not jangling keys. You have reason for a few there's people to show up in Andor, game. and that's okay. Uh, I'd be absolutely fine, if not ecstatic to see um, uh, it handled really well. You know, like a. Uh, I, I don't see why we can't have Tarkin show up, maybe just as a voice, uh, you can at least have a reference there, but, you know, it's like, should we have Vader? It's like, well, at this point, probably, in terms of just trying to get the show a bit more help. But, like, I, I have no reason to think that um, Gilroy wouldn't be able to implement Vader incredibly well. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I've got enough confidence in him to have Vader arrive in some capacity, be in calls, have his hologram speaking to our Imperial... Uh, uh, lady character, I forget and it her name. Goes without but... saying, implement them into the story, make them meaningful now. And, and I don't have a worry about that. Andor is so very carefully planned out script wise that I, I wouldn't worry that we'd ever get like a Mandalorian season three. Yeah, with, um... I've got and confidence in him. Yeah, as uh, being delayed again, so they're probably going to use that time to do more rewriting and, and revisions Yay. of the script. Genuinely, people tell me that as like bad news. I'm like, huh, do you take that as good news? <laughs> just, let's just hope it's good news. <laughs> um... the, uh... Yeah, Mando sucked. Remember, remember yeah, he got. Um, oh yeah. Remember the video we covered <laughs> that was using the fact mm-hmm. that Gilroy had to research through Wikipedia to get information on Star Wars as an insult. Oh yeah, the guy who no, says yeah, Andor wasn't real star, isn't really Star Wars. Yeah, that guy. Like the, like the, the, cre- the creator had to the creator had to Google things about what's in Star Wars. I was like, it's so fucking great that he's doing that. We absolutely yeah. want people doing that. Are you cra- it means crazy? Crazy? Like. Shit. Do that. So that to be there's no way I wouldn't visit Wikipedia if I had to write a script for Star Wars. And I'm a pretty big Star Wars fan. That's so much to consider. <laughs> yeah. So many things to look at. Look yeah, at I, I actually did look at Wikipedia when I was doing the Mando Season 3 videos. Because there's bits in that where like, they reference the chain code. And the chain code is that thing that lets those really useful tracking fobs in Season 1 work. That we we don't talk about those! <laughs> but then, like, but then but you, you look at what the chain code is. Like, is that actually like established? So I looked it up. There's like one paragraph on it on, on Wikipedia which says it's Empire Tech. Which means the chain codes were around at the time when the rebels were hun- uh, hiding from the empire. Which means that, of course, they, yeah, they couldn't possibly Favreau, have survived because yeah. Favreau um, decided that those are a thing now, and then fuck the world building implications of adding that to Star Wars. 
Yeah, remember when Tarkin said, where is the hidden rebel base? Oh, let's go and use the tracking just, fobs. Yeah, let's just use these tracking fobs, mm -hmm. these insanely overpowered ways to detect anyone in the galaxy and their location. It makes, it makes Mando way cooler when he uses a waypoint instead of actually... Oh, uh-oh. Oh. Oh, uh, I, I, what? There's I, nothing I, wrong with I, I, had a, I had a weird fluke noise, don't worry. Um, oh, but, yeah. uh, uh, it's, um... Yeah, it's, it's way cooler that he uses a waypoint instead of actually, like, tracking him down like a bouncy hunter by asking questions and investigating and doing all those sorts of things. It's the crappiest fucking thing ever. It goes beep, beep, in a, in a universe. <laughs> like, what are you, how are you, how are you figuring anything out with that? Like, even he hot just, and he's cold. He's just gonna walk up to every random person in the bar and press it to them to see if it beeps a little faster. Like, uh, like, that was definitely yeah. a, like, it's sci-fi, don't think about it. You're like, why? <laughs> like, sci-fi should mean I should, it should encourage me to think about it. You'd think. Oh. I like, by the way, we it's spent like most of the time... just looking at Google Maps constantly on their phone as they're, like, <laughs> bumping into shit. Up. Like, I, I just pay attention, I just follow the beeps, that's all I'm doing. Tracking Fobs is my only real problem with Season 1. Oh. No. <laughs> oh, no, it's the, it's the horrific plot armor, insanely retarded characters, and awful blots as well. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, they're under the umbrella, I guess. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, but I was going to say, it's funny that we spent all of our time talking about Mando Season 3 not talking about Mando Season 3. Uh, yeah, well, all the stuff well, around I mean, it. Cause, uh, well, because I was actually gonna, the, the point I wanted to make was that it was, it was less to talk about in terms of the content of it because everyone agrees it's shit. It's more so what it represents by coming out, which was the fall of like Filoni and Favreau's reputation. This is, that's certainly the beginning of it, at least. Like, uh, not for us, but for everyone else. It's like, wait a minute. Yeah. Mandalorian's uh, supposed to be amazing. This isn't amazing at all. And then you combo it with a soaker. It's like a one two punch of just, wait mm -hmm. a minute. There's nothing good from Disney Star Wars anymore, and it's like, oh, it no. And it's important going forward as well, because, you know, one of the, the planned three films is supposed to be the big wrap-up for Loneyverse film, Ugh. which is supposed to take, you know, the storylines of Ahsoka and of Mando and give them a big cinematic finale. But if Mando 3, which is still, you know, Mando is supposed to be Disney Plus's, uh, pr like, premiered Star Wars offering, uh, if even that's now complete dog shit, and most people understand that that's the case, is there even going to be that film anymore? Like, can you possibly justify spending hundreds of billions of dollars on something no one will watch? Oh, yes, you can, because Ahsoka exists. But will they do it again? Maybe not. I don't know. Oh, that's a maybe. May if this know. was a couple years ago, I'd say, yeah, of course they're making a season two. But now, I got my doubts. We talked about how, like, wonder. go back to the 2000s, and shows would get cancelled even if they were successful, because, like, you have to be really strong. These days, though, because I was talking about it with Mel, STD or Star Trek Discovery. It's uh, it's on its <laughs> fifth or sixth season or something. It's like season nobody. Five is this year and it's the last one. Absolutely right? fucking nuts. They got five seasons. It's like what the, what the hell? I, it's uh, like one of those shows. I hear the name of. It's like wait, that's still going. I thought it was like a one off, one off season because I feel like no one is talking about that one. Like uh, uh, not that I know. Um, of. It's a stupid world we're in, where so many TV shows get made and they get other seasons. When it's just like, there's no way this should be a positive investment. This is the gamble on this hey, is enormous. Halo season two. Yeah, I, I think it's, uh, Velma I season two. Like, Velma I season like two. Yeah. Uh, I feel like Apple TV. There's like a lot of stuff on Apple TV that I hear about, but then I never hear about that get like multiple. Well, they're going to hear about something from Apple TV in this episode. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's right. Mm -hmm. I, uh, yes. Well, don't they get like uh, contracted for multiple seasons of stuff? So, sometimes, uh, a lot of Some, times. Yeah, as well. that's probably yeah. why I feel like yeah. this happens sometimes. Well, like, and Halo then the first season comes seasons, out, and they're like, example, "Fuck, we bought how much of this?" Yeah. Well, and yeah, then you have Rick and Morty they, because they had to make like nine seasons. They yeah, agreed they got to a nine season deal. Of, yeah. Like, nine well, remember we seasons. we talked about like uh, a lot of people would consider it's like, yeah, well, it's a sure thing, right? That's why they put the money in. It's like it seems like it's more risky now than ever. Like a secret invasion type thing. Imagine investing in something like that. I'd be like, this is a huge gamble. Mm -hmm. Like, how could it be a huge gamble? It's just, it is. Look at the landscape. You really want to make a really terrible TV show that everyone hates that's really expensive on a, on, a, on a service that not enough people are engaging with that's bleeding numbers constantly? I'm just like, I don't know. Probably should. Anyway, that's Mando that's Season 3. Made, bad. Like, more sense. Like, Star Trek Discovery is probably the, the good example of that because it, it really is the show from the early stages of, of streaming growth. So I think Season 1 is a Netflix only thing. But when Paramount starts to create its own streaming service, it, you know, it's willing to do battle with Netflix over taking Star Trek Discovery off of Netflix and having it exclusively on Paramount Plus. But there's a the reason they're doing that is not because the show itself is any good. It's because it has Star Trek in the name. 
And so people will look at that and say, oh, look, that new streaming service has all the Star Trek things. I like Star Trek. I'm going to go check it out. And the hope is they'll they'll subscribe and they'll stick around and find something else to watch except Star Trek Discovery. So the value in the property wasn't ever really the quality of the art because it doesn't exist in Star Trek Discovery. It was all in the name recognition. But that's kind of beyond we're beyond that point now. You know, Paramount Plus is not doing particularly well anyway. The show is recognized to be yeah. shit and Star Trek as a brand has kind of failed. Um, and I think something similar is, is probably at play with Star Wars on Disney Plus and Marvel as well. There's a reason they've put all this money in. It's not to get the money back immediately. It's to get the subscribers in who, in theory, will bring the money in long term. But that's evidently not working out too well. Because you need to, you actually need to support the content. You can't just say, hey, look, we've got all of these IPs. Come watch them. If all of the IPs have just been reduced to dirt, what's the point in sticking around for that? Mm-hmm. Meanwhile, because some people mentioned, like, well, what about Arcane and Invincible? It's like, those are normal. Those are shows that people watched, enjoyed thoroughly, probably brought in a bunch of new subscribers and who stimulate hugely culturally. Yeah, and then they get told. Like, oh, it's successful. Okay, you'll get a second season now. And, the... and we're seeing outside of their fandoms as well. Yeah, yeah, I mean, Arcane still has the struggle these days of people being like, that's the League of Legends show. Why would I watch a League of Legends show? It's like, like uh... stop, <laughs> do it. We said I... the same thing. It's really, really Ooh, good. Wow. Oh, it's awesome, and, it's and uh, they released this tease of season two, and it's like, don't do that. We're so far away from season two. Don't tease. I didn't even click <laughs> on it. I'm like, nope. I'm just. -da 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 it's it'll get here when uh, it gets here. I thought I wasn't gonna click on it, but then I did. So <laughs> oh, I won't be able to resist all any and all teasers and trailers. I'll be. Uh... Yeah. I mean, I'm gonna walk into that shit cold. I can't walk uh, into it cold. I know too much about the. Uh... Not only the, the, the lore it's going to be adapting from and the future of certain characters, but they're even, um, you know, uh, Mel's mum in the show, the last, I forget her name, Ambassador Madada, I think is what she'd be called. Yeah. yeah. She's, uh, she's being added into oh, LOL as a yeah. new character. It's like, oh, so she's going to be really? in season two then, big time. Yeah, I expected. Okay. I, that's not a surprise to me. I would, I'd would i be more surprised if she wasn't in season two. No, big time. I, uh, of course, she'll be in season two, but she's going to be a significant character at this point if she's going to be a full-on character in League of Legends. Uh, champion, yeah. Yeah. Um, no speculation on Arcane yet, okay? It's too early, but no. I'd love to, because, oh, it's exciting. Mm hmm I was actually going to say, by the way, uh, in the middle of our Bad Doe coverage, we did uh, a complete breakdown of Jurassic Park. That was fun. That was very fun. I was, it was a delight to watch that movie again and, and uh, see and mm -hmm. appreciate all that they did. That Real movie holds up. We need to do it with more stuff, I think, uh, with just the greats. Explain, because like, we have this problem of a lot of people saying, like, you know, film is just as good as it always was. And it's like, oh, no. <laughs> like we, we can go over how exactly and uh someone again might be like oh so there's no good feels like no, 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 no. blockbuster mainstream plenty of millions of dollars put into it and it was one of the like fucking most amazing films of its kind and still is jurassic park is still the best jurassic film and it's never going to be defeated by the looks of things um nope. so you know no. It's uh, it is fun to do that to look into the past and be like, all right, let's give it the old uh, scrutinization because a lot of people do say like scrutinize any movie and it falls apart, and we're still the people who are like, nope. Mm. So scrutinize some Turns of them, out, they get that's better. That's not actually true. Interesting. Hell yeah. I'm talking about like the animations being so important to making the dinosaurs viable because they obviously will be limited somewhat by their time for fidelity, but that and Lord of the Rings just nailing their respective special effects and stuff. We mentioned a bit of Lord of the Rings the closer we get to the end of going through this year as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Amanda Season 3 was really awful, and uh, I can't help but think about the Lizzo and Jack Black episode as being the one where everyone was <laughs> like, that's that? it. <laughs> it's not, it's not even about... Lloyd was in that episode too, don't forget him. Not even about whether or not I liked her or anything, it's just that the whole world was like, fuck, it's over. <laughs> it's all it's over. over. Yeah. <laughs> Lizzo's in Star Wars. It's all over. The thing is, it's not even the runaway worst episode because, like, the suddenly pterodactyl one probably comes pretty close <laughs> in Ooh, terms of its suddenly like, pterodactyl quality. was really, you know, it was really funny something. though. Oh, yeah. do you remember as well? They keep adding new flashbacks that add absolutely nothing to the story of Order sixty six. They keep going back. They're like, look, Order sixty six. You're like, yeah. They're like, yeah. You like that? Well They've got the well of one emotionally resonant moment that they can draw upon that they we haven't seen the full extent of. So it's so cringe. Keep they keep showing in, yeah. Jedi getting killed and then Jedi that made it, and it's like Baby Yoda got out because Jar Jar Binks saved her. And you're like, I don't know I'm what that means. I'm convinced that well, Order sixty six never actually happened. <laughs> it, it does diminish it. The if you absolutely the number of people who yeah, the more Jedi there are running around, the least impactful it, it is. It's almost like a really local event now that actually most of the Jedi just ran away from, or they weren't there at the time. 
But that's another of Filoni's problems. Is like, well, we, how do yeah. we fix this new problem? There's another Jedi. They also survived Order 66. And if that well, one didn't survive, we can go back into the world between worlds and pull them through time. And so they're oh, back as well. Stop. It, no. it actually predates Disney too because they were doing it with the uh, Force Unleashed games. They kept introducing more and more Jedi who also survived. I think back then it was more con considered like uh, tolerable, <laughs> especially because it's not oh, as but... mainstream. But yeah, the more you add, the more intolerable it gets. That the more you look to the better of like, why are we doing this? When was the last story they told that were actually you know stuck with me? Holy shit! Suggestion sixty six. This is what I say. Psyop sixty six. Do you guys think Mando season two is worth checking out? No. No. I don't no, think any terrible. of them worth checking out. Mm -hmm. Not bad. There are other shows you should spend your time on before them. Yeah, Absolutely. I mean, I I watched the first half of Mando season one and I tuned out just because, well, for one, it felt like there was no long term narrative hook. And oh, then the, I, the, the most days. um the most they imply is that there's gonna be something to do with his like history. You know, where did he come from, and what's his ultimate value within the war that happened, and what's his deal with droids? Uh, all that stuff just petered out. Like it ran out of gas, and then they just yeah. right, yeah. Because I was wondering, like, maybe... as it was, now it's I was just wondering, maybe I'm not being fair to it. You know, I just don't remember there being any kind of hook. Like no, that yeah. Um, and then what 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 once... got people hooked? I think was the fact that it sounded really interesting. I think on on paper, in a, like a, a office, if you said he's a victim of the Clone Wars, he didn't necessarily go for any side. But it was the droids, the CIS, that wiped out his family, and he was found by the Mandalorians. Like that sounds. There's loads we can do with that. Holy shit! And and um. The most we got, as of recent, I think, was um, the mechanic making fun of him for it. First you hate droids, now you love them. Right, oh. yeah. Okay. In season <laughs> one, as soon as I saw this pattern of, like, you know, they're on the run, Baby Yoda's kidnapped, Mando goes and saves him, he gets in trouble, Baby Yoda uses force powers, they escape, and then it started, It got. they got to this planet, and then there's enemies coming, and it's like, oh, we're just doing this again. Like, I, I felt like it was just going to keep doing that over and over. And then I got the sense, like, we're just filling screen time here, I guess. Like, I just, yeah. It's I one of those shows where point. a lot of things happen and nothing happens. Yeah. Right, yeah. I think that's part of what killed it, too, is people were like, wow, three seasons. What did we do in total? I was like, found the baby. That was about it. Gave Went for a swim. And somehow it came back again. Yeah, a lot of it is like uh, the story progresses and then comes back. Story progresses, comes back. So there's really overall progress. Just doesn't feel it's been made at all. And it's funny because you'd be like, "What? They re reclaimed Mandalore," and you're like, "Okay." Yeah. <laughs> I guess that which, means somebody which just somehow, somehow never there. was checked before this time. They only now bother to do again. The, um, the it's the nature in which it occurs that makes it feel completely meaningless. It's so weird. Right. There's so many mechanics that don't work, and then. You know, the Empire led by um, Gus being wiped out three times is just getting boring. But here he comes again with a big old army. This one's even better than before. Uh, and then they're all gone. You're like, yep, there you go. But Remember, Gatling Man died. That was sad. First season, army of stormtroopers hey, with a bunch of special Azvisla. troopers. Season That's two, nice. army of robots like with, what was it, the vibranium armor. <laughs> and then season three was his... <laughs> Mandalorian stormtroopers that all had best. It's just it's so tiring. It's all fucking tiring. Poor guy tiring. can't get a break. Yeah, and he can't ever win. And every time we meet him and Mando, oh, he's like, "I hate you, Mando. Too. Fuck you. You get him in the way of my plans." Yeah, and even like, it doesn't fit with anything else either, because you know Moff Gideon's grand secret plan is that he's been taking the blood from Grogu to create force sensitive clones of himself, which kind of <laughs> says, "Well, okay, so the force is tied to your bloodline, then, is it?" And then Feloni comes along with the Sogra and say, like, "Now you just have to train." Everyone can use it. <laughs> yeah, everybody. No point having bloodlines. Uh, I'm glad we're really uh, learning a lot about the uh, oh, you've world building. Definitely come to understand. It's like, man, I've never wanted to know absolutely fucking nothing about their opinions on how everything works in the Star Wars universe. Just, just, just don't. Just don't. Have your little Mando running around his spaceship shooting things. Fine. Oh, remember the cope about his starship. This is actually the perfect starship. No, it's not. <laughs> what do you? Oh. Oh, yeah, that was, uh, yeah, yeah, that was that card slatter. Yeah, yeah, that card slatter. Yeah. Then he it's gets actually, a fighter. This is perfect for him, yeah. It's he so perfect that when, in season three, when he has to land on the planet and drop the astromech droid, they have to just cut the camera away because there's no way of getting the droid <laughs> out from the ship. And they knew the that. Like, <laughs> yeah, man, but... season one starts with the show showing us that he transports the bounty yep. people. Like, uh, uh, he had a, yeah, he had a... Mini cryo freezing chamber. Cryo freezing, yeah. yeah. 
I mean, stores bounties in the Store, hold. Yeah. There, he has all kinds of sh stuff lying around, and has sometimes He's people a on board. And I was he like, did. now we have this he had a one shoot. Yeah, we have him on too. <laughs> yeah, now we have this little star fight, not even star fight, a little fight it, fighter jet in space. I mean, that would could, legitimately could... be like I'm not I'm not that claustrophobic, but I'd be like, man, it's been days, and I've been sitting in this. I have yeah. so much shit in my pants right now, and I've peed <laughs> exactly. many times. Do you make jokes about how the baby's just pooping, pooping, the whole shitting everywhere. slot just fills up with <laughs> The baby's poop. shitting everywhere. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, uh, sorry, Grogo, I have to eject you. <laughs> and just poop goes into <laughs> he space. Should, though. The show would be better if he did that. <laughs> yeah, but wasn't it funny when he ate all these endangered species eggs? That was really no, funny. No, don't talk that about the weird. abortion. That was so weird. <laughs> Yeah, I thought uh, so that was so funny or something. He kept doing it. Yeah. Are we getting Mando season four? Is that happening soon? Or? I don't know. I actually don't know if that's on the Ooh. cards. Not soon, definitely not. <clears throat> not soon. Um, I don't. Let me. Does it? Is it renewed for a fourth season? Uh, I don't know uh, if it's got a fourth it's season. It's not that. Then like what renewed. would? It's probably not about uh, Mando then anymore. Highly anticipated, the, uh, but not uh, officially then. confirmed. Scripts have been completed with cast and crew. Simply awaiting the green light from Lucasfilm and Disney. Interesting. Um, well, if it's not being green light, then it doesn't exist yet. Yeah. It's where in they're probably trying I don't, to figure I, I don't out what the hell they're going to do next. I don't believe exactly. scripts have been completed before they've even green lit. It's like, you guys don't write scripts. Uh, You're lying to me. I don't, I don't know yeah. about that. Um, huh. Oh, well. Uh-oh. <laughs> well. Mm. Sucks for them, season 3's ending yeah. sets up major New Republic storylines for Season 4. Shut up. That's it? Sets up major New Republic storylines, <laughs> my ass. Oh, we can't wait to see... This is what this article says. Like, looking forward to seeing uh, the Imperial Shadow Council be further fleshed out and did jar in hunting down their members. What are you talking about? Why I, would that even happen? When you, okay. when you say further fleshed out, kind of implies <laughs> they've been fleshed out. Some, of some course. Is it not, then? God damn. Oh, and they said it uh, could it could very well coincide with Grand Admiral Thrawn's resurgence. I don't even. Well, that's going to be the thing. They can they have to wait <sighs> for that, right? They has to fin Ahsoka season two has to come out, and like if if it does, assuming it does, Thrawn is back. Mando comes out of retirement, his latest retirement, and then rejoins the fray or something. Like that's the logical way the plot would progress, but that does then require that you have to wait for Ahsoka. By the way, that uh, we should probably wait for, to talk about it later. But if Thrawn shows up again and he's a clown again, it's going to absolutely <laughs> annihilate his reputation as a character. He's got, of course, he's going to be a clown again. Disney cannot write villains; they can't write anyone competent. Everyone in these Disney shows, it's the big common thread is that everyone's a retard. Mm -hmm. Everyone's incredibly <laughs> stupid. Yeah. These are all clown universes where everyone's Let's a see fool. the Ahsoka season two is that he accidentally hyperspaces back into a whale. <laughs> now that was all part of the plan. All part of the plan. Uh -huh. I want his head to be half blown off. By the way, he's just saying, "Wait, there's a there's a way to spin this." <laughs> Hang on. Um, this actually, is a, this, this is a win. win. Mm. I expect. Finally, my weight loss program kicked in. Uh, no. Nah. Yeah, that's um, that's the half update for Star Wars. We'll get to the other half near the end of the year. Uh, mm, uh, sure. Uh, well, so his next up would be Resident Evil Four, right? That was March. Woo uh well uh, in terms of how we covered stuff uh i know we kind of mentioned it but this is when we actually covered shazam fury of the gods right, right. <laughs> what a yeah, fucking awesome film yeah, that I'm i don't know if anyone gonna... actually remembered the plot of it all or talked about it there was a dragon or something there was a dragon there was a lucy lou <laughs> Wait, as well did we already talk about this or did you hear what i just said or <laughs> no I said it was mentioned, but that we didn't actually talk about it being Shazam Fury of the Gods. Yeah. It's like position and failing in DC and everything, but you know, the actual film itself being um I mean, do you remember the Wonder Woman cameo? It was almost as funny as the one in yeah, the flash. At the end. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Did she resurrect did Shazam? Somebody who resurrected Shazam? Up? I can't remember. Was I it think it was her. That I was her, so. right? Yeah. How did she do that? I I I've genuinely blocked uh, that on my mind. Wonder Woman magic. I don't. I I, I forgot. Wonder I don't Woman know. magic. Um, what? <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, the the film itself was the plot line was uh, the guy from the first one that definitely died is back, and oh, he the yeah. old wizard man and uh, uh, the sister the daughters of Atlas is what they were the bad guys. Yes. Yeah. yeah they were yeah. mad and they were going to destroy the world somehow. Yeah. Shazam had to stop him with his. 
Shazam family. Powers, um, family power. Rachel Zegler was in it That's before we knew. We, before we knew who Rachel Zegler was, she was uh, she was one of the sisters in that. Isn't that crazy? She's pretty cringe, but uh, in, in the film, she had like the powers to move the entire world at will, which caused a couple problems, as you can imagine. Uh, Shazam died, and then they brought him back, and then mm -hmm. he's not going to be in any more DC stuff. <laughs> so it's like, don't worry, he's oh, still he with us. Like the weird things, like this is going to be over instead of giving him this heroic death, and just no, we're going to bring him back. It's like, why? You're not going to do anything anymore. Well, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's dead. Death. It's over. It's all over. So it's 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 awkward. And then yeah, the film was um, almost completely ignored by the very companies that were meant to promote it. <laughs> the, they focused on the Flash instead, so they just they were just like, let Shazam die. It was never going to be successful. To the chagrin of good old Zachary Levi, poor guy. Had to. I think he put didn't he put out a couple of cringe videos. One of them being like, go watch Shazam. Don't watch John Wick. It's dead or something like that. I mean, pick your poison at that point, right? I mean, Would you rather I, watch I, Shazam or John Wick. I think John Wick's <laughs> better than Shazam. Probably, yeah. There's some action in John Wick that's like, oh, uh -huh. <laughs> there you go. He shot his gun and bullets came out. That's pretty... That's, uh, <laughs> that works. So, yeah. You can watch him fall down the stairs for two minutes. That's funny. Um, I mean, believe what happens in John Wick 4. Scene I've ever seen in my life. More Correct. You won't believe it. It is unbelievable. As in, I cannot believe... <laughs> I can't believe that happens, yeah. It is It is uncredible. Anyway. You know, like his Kevlar weave suit. Well, funnily enough as well, what we could fuck? say that John Wick 4 came out soon after we covered that as well. Uh, hyper Did. disappointing, once again, because it's the full-on sequelitis is set in for that franchise. Oh, yeah. To the point where people forget that the first one was even remotely serious. Like, uh, you yeah. know, like, the, the franchise is this way and will always be this way. It's like, I hate it when that happens, when enough entries come in. It's, it's like... It's, I'm waiting for it to happen with Star Wars, where people forget the OT even existed. Hopefully that never happens, though, because the OT is so important, culturally. Speaking of, of forgetting things existed, there was another film that came out, I think, the same day as Shazam, 65. Anyone remember that uh, film? Oh, we... we. I didn't see it, but yeah, I know you're talking We've about. covered 65. We well, we're getting there. Around, we still got to think... talk about a few other things. Wait, were you there? Days. Yeah, Lumpa 2 was on the EFAP. That's, that's, that's one, the only maybe, reason yeah. I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> Yeah, don't worry. We'll get to we'll, we'll do our best to keep chronological. We're, we're nailing it so far because yes, we're up to March and we're three hours in. Nailing it, like I said. Um, John <laughs> John Wick. I was gonna say is uh, John Wick Four. Yeah. There's not much to say. We you know you guys know how we feel about it. John Wick Three well, and Two. The, yeah, it's all the there's same. More unlimited assassins and people get excited to go after John Wick because there's more money now. Even though it's just more a lot of money. And they're like, yeah, now we're going after them. Then they all get killed. He gets run over by 17 cars and then falls down some stairs. <laughs> has like four minutes to go up, but takes seven, then but still makes it. And then, then he gets shot, somewhere. and this time he's dead for realsies, for realsies. Yeah, he I dies promise. like five times in that film, and then doesn't die because they need more films. And then he gets shot. That, that was a little, like, hyper cringe to me, that they didn't want to confirm a John Wick 5 until they made enough money that they were like, yes. And it's like, oh, so is he dead? It's like, uh, no. <laughs> just, we'll just wait a sec, and yeah, he's not dead. Because uh, yeah. people consider it a huge spoiler to announce that he was supposed to be dead at the end of the film, but I was just like, he's not going to die? Why would he yeah, die? They're, 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 they're just going to bring him back. They're they're always come back. Films have been gradually making more and more and more and more and more money, and when that happens, you have a billion fucking sequels. Mm -hmm. They'll keep making them until they stop making money. And they'll keep getting to exist in this fun world where they get regarded as being way better than they are. Not just regarded as like, oh, well, they're, you know, fun action movies, but they're stupid, but regarded as being genuinely quality and that mm -hmm. they have, like, stories worth telling. Fucking annoying. Yeah, yeah like, if, if you do a really good finale to something, obviously it's going to make a shit ton of money, but it's like, it's the end. Right, but the executives yeah. aren't going to see it that way. So, where's the next one? Like, so you need to have like He's creators dead, who are John willing Wick's to put dead, their sir. foot down. They, they're, they're like, Bring no, the, the the story's done now. Okay, yeah, like we're not doing any more. Like, <laughs> there needs to be more of that. Like, creators. Oh, it'd be, no. it'd be awesome if there was, man. There really would be. Because I was actually to say, uh, I worry for extraction. It would have like the same trajectory. Oh, yeah. But two has managed to maintain Luckily, the serious yeah. tone. 
for a little longer Which and John taking things. Failed to, uh, to oh yeah, yeah, because uh, extraction, extraction is better consistent quality than John Wick. But I would so say it has gotten more ridiculous. It's like still in in control, and hopefully Extraction mm. Three, because I don't see why they wouldn't make ten of these fucking movies at this point. Um, I'm hoping that Chris Hemsworth can even be a guiding hand in terms of like, don't let us thaw this. Let us please. Yes. Keep I, this is a now. serious thing. We need to keep this. You know, we can't go ridiculous because I've been to those deep dark places. Yes. Extraction Two felt like sort of like a, a mostly appropriate ramping up of things. Yeah. It's the next step after this that concerns me because I yeah. feel like we've gone about as big as we need to go. Yeah, the, the uh, level. prison scene that was fucking amazing. The, the action in Extraction Two is phenomenal. There's a couple of times, and some people mentioned in chat which ones they are. So we're like, "Ooh, okay, okay, calm down. Just yeah. <laughs> like this is getting a little silly. Just go, come back to reality. We're all right." Go see Extraction Two. It's good. Hell yeah, easy recommendation. Yeah. We didn't it cover that, but the we did mention very very strong. Check it out. Good stuff. Um, which yeah, mm -hmm. I think takes us to RE4 remake. That was awesome. Yay! Yo. We played the fuck out of that game, dude. It was pretty cool. It's pretty <laughs> My cool. Fav favorite game this year, yeah. Very, very ecstatically happy as long-time Resident Evil 4 fan. After you play that game about a thousand times and then you play the remake, you can do a hell of a lot of appreciating about all the references and how they've changed things and updated everything. But uh, as we said, as a stark difference to Dead Space, these two games coexist. This is two very different yeah. experiences. Two different. Yeah. I'll yes. happily play the original one and the, the original. Re remaster. Yeah. Would especially you prefer um, that well, you, you go ahead, Metal. I'll... Oh, I just want to say, uh, especially the the aiming works very differently, mm -hmm. and I think I actually enjoy the one in the first one better because it's more consistent and reliable. Yes. Yeah. Uh, we, we we had a whole rant about weird... that. Yeah, I mean, we did a whole. I mean, you you made the whole challenge thing going on. Doing the two dudes, the chainsaw dudes in the beginning, uh, <laughs> yeah. on super hard difficulty, so you just get all the resources, and the amount of RNG you encounter in that place alone when you do the same thing over and over again. There's like there's this one villager you ca can shoot. Sometimes you kill him in two shots. Sometimes three. Sometimes five. Sometimes he staggers. Sometimes he doesn't. And you can't do the whole shoot him in the leg and kick him away. That doesn't work as consistently anymore. Yeah, because it's so, yeah, there's a bit of RNG. Uh, so yeah, because you're so used from the original ones, like shoot him in the leg, kick him away. Preferably, there's like five zombies around me or villagers, uh, and I kick them all. And it's like yeah, and I can get free damage with my knife. But no, knives are now with uh, they can break, and you have to repair them or find new ones. It's like it's very different experiences, and they're both fun. They're both very fun. Oh, they're both fun. Like, the Resident Evil 4 remake is good, but I feel like it's the things like that. Like, there's no laser sight aiming for... It's only for, like, one or two guns that you can have the laser sight for, mm. which is, I think, already a big misstep. And one of them uh, is, is a pre-order gun, I'm pretty sure. Oh, yeah, there was that, yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, we had, we, had, we had loads of conversations about, like, the red dot sights and the... Oh, yeah. And, yeah, they don't... <sighs> We, we kind of like lucky to get what we got in the original Resident Evil 4 for how consistent they make everything because I think a lot of games think that you don't want it to be too consistent because it's too easy to exploit. It'd be like, oh no, we don't want to make it so that you always know exactly when all the enemies' weaknesses show up and when they're all uh, yeah. easy to do this, that, and the other thing with. And it's like, no, we actually really love that though. <laughs> like it's... Yeah, that means that I'm learning the game systems and I'm improving. Like, this is what you want to have happen. The fact that I'm a god at the first Resident Evil is the result of a lot of experience and time with the game and learning about the mechanics yeah. and giving a shit. And something we only realized later on is uh, it's either the pre-order the deluxe edition gives you more resources and you can't turn it off. You remember that, Mupli? Yeah. You have more dangly bits on uh, <laughs> trees and stuff and yeah, you can yeah. shoot them down, you get more resources and oh, you can't in turn the game, it off. more resources spawn? Yes. Yes. Oh, shit. I must have forgotten about you guys talking about that. Jeez, fuck that. Yeah, it's, it's a bit annoying. I mean, it's nice to have uh, if you have it, but if you don't... I, I didn't know about this. <laughs> this was, yeah, I've where. never known about that happening in a game before where in... Like, normally you just get, like, a little goodie bag at the beginning. There you exactly, go. Yeah. Or it deposits some cash into your account. You it's get not a like very in good, the game more stuff spawns. You get a very good shotgun with the uh, deluxe edition yes, as well. Yes, you do. Yeah, the little very bitty compact, one that takes up... There's a lot of damage. It's very very good 
Um, so yeah, there's a lot of choices. We were like, "Why'd you do that?" Boo! But then there's a hell yeah. of a lot of choices. We were like, "Oh, this is fucking cool." Exactly. Yeah. The um, it's weird that they they did a cool little thing with the um, the the rewards from the shooting gallery, giving your character bonuses. It's like, oh, this is a cool idea, and then you're like, oh, but they're oh, horrifically no, unbalanced, yeah. and they're RNG. RNG. Yeah. So I was like, oh man, you 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 tried. Some that are exceptionally good. good that change your actual like gameplay yeah. almost, and then some that don't matter at all. <laughs> some are useless and some are broken. So, mm -hmm. yeah. The pre-order shotgun's laughably small too in terms of grid space, which is yeah. super like, important. Come on, yeah, guys. changes everything. <laughs> yeah, right. Like relative to the base shotgun that you just get in the game, like near the beginning, it's like way bigger, and it stays reliable for a very long time uh, in the yeah. game as well. So it's it's pretty it's kind of overpowered, but kind of it yeah, is it's, overpowered. It's literally <laughs> one by four, one by five. Like it, the fact that it's just it occupies a single row is ridiculous. Well, it was really neat. Yeah, we Absolutely. we bitch a little bit, but I think it's just because the game is so. It really is an amazing game. It looks great. It feels great to play. It has a lot of respect for the original game, uh, but it, it's just those little things that kind of. Um, they disappoint us because of how good the rest of it is. Definitely recommend it. But I, I'll ask this. I think I um, asked everybody when we uh, did our original EFAP, but do you prefer this or the Dead Space remake? Hmm. I, man, I can't remember what I would have said back I then. I can't remember what I said back then. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what I would say. I, uh, I really, really enjoyed both games. I like them I both, too. Love them both. I think yeah. I prefer the Dead Space remake. I I want to say I, I that like myself. I think, oh, go ahead. That I, I want I want to agree with that sentiment. Um, mainly I think because of the fact of all the things we just highlighted. Meanwhile, the Dead Space remake I can't remember taking issue with much. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'd have to think about things I don't. I think I think our biggest complaints with it were some story and character changes. Yeah, you know, the game's stories and characters I think are in general better. But there are some that just I don't think it quite the same. Um, yeah. I think I, I would think... want to more frequently replay Resident Evil Four, but with Dead yeah. Space, it's like I want to forget about it for maybe a year or two, and then like go back to it and really savor the replay. Um, yeah, I I don't really want to say which one I prefer over the other. Yeah, fair. They're mm -hmm. both. I could totally reasonable choices. Did you, uh, I assume you did a video on it, Patrician? Uh, on Resident Evil? No. Resident Evil I did very few videos this year. Oh my god. How could you not? I assume, I just assume everybody's played and loved Resident Evil 4 and thus played the remake too. <laughs> um, what you have to understand is I checked out of like the AAA space in ah. 2016 and kind of just never checked back in. I don't really play that many, uh, AAA games anymore, especially remakes. Yeah, so I know what you I mean. Heard it was, I heard it was good, but it's a remake, and I don't have a favorable opinion towards remaking games. So We don't generally either, but these two are legitimately really good. Surprised um, by Really them good, both. yeah. I would highly recommend uh, both of these games. Yeah. And it was so wild to get them so close together, too. It's just like, damn. That was strange. They make an excellent pair. Both just awesome action horror from a from a bygone era. Mm-hmm. And I can't wait to see if they actually remake Resident Evil 5. That would be funny. <laughs> As, that is a landmine of a game in every way possible. Mechanics, the, the co-op, the meta. He has to. This he has to say goodbye with saturation. Well, they won't, they won't have the voice actor anymore, right? They'll have to get the other no. guy. Oh, yeah, yeah, but you know what? It'd be funny to see another guy try and do the same. Line. I think we'll be disappointed, <laughs> probably. Um, Especially if they go probably. like serious and he's like Chris, and you're like, oh. no, no, it can't be like that. It's gonna be. Oh, he's yes, gonna be breaking your voice. Chris, 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 I'm a volcano, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think they should preserve how over the top Wesker was in Resident Evil Five? Yeah, yes. Wesker, I feel like yes. maybe this should... yes. Wesker, yes. Okay. Absolutely, they have yes. To. But hey, maybe like, well, it's, it's funny, I, told, I haven't played Resident Evil 5. <laughs> like, I just it's, really like the memes. It's an experience, yeah. <laughs> it's very... so fucking over the top, the end of that game. <laughs> it's hilarious. Love it. Uh, part is, of me yeah. wants to see that remastered and have that like punching be intact, a boulder but... into the... 
and yeah. then blowing them up with multiple rocket launches while he's <laughs> in the volcano. <laughs> they kept That's a couple so of the right. absolutely absurd camp shit in the remake, so I, I hope they would be able to recognize right. the stuff that the fans absolutely want to see, you know? But, I mean, yeah. you probably get that impression with 4, I mean, the right? cart chase Not under the, uh, Resident Evil yeah. 4 well, the, remake, right? The one thing they didn't keep uh, that people were like, oh, was the Salazar statue. Robot Salazar, yeah. yeah. Uh, they had mm. they had one in there, but it was just a reference. It was just yeah. a prop map. Yeah, it wasn't you know. Right. But they kept the <laughs> they they did a really cool version of the cart ride, so that was fun. they did. It was really awesome. Mm. Um, but well, I see. think they're actively remaking something, wh whether it's RE five or Code Veronica or something. They are honestly they the, something cooking. I think. The sad thing is RE five is a bit of a gamble remaking that one there's so many things they're gonna have to account for that's gonna make it i don't know if i would yeah I don't re4 know if it owes itself to a remaster that in the way that four does yeah re4 is so straightforward to remake compared because uh five is you have a serious set of discussions for basically ele every element of whether or not you're keeping anything in that game yeah, and i don't I mean that from whole, a point of view of like, good or bad second half of that game is a minefield and the last and the third act is like it's uh, it sucks so yeah it's gonna be yeah the whole ouroboros stuff yeah, and yeah, yeah. But yeah, Code Veronica I X or whatever, like I, I, I think from uh, a Resident Evil standpoint, like it's probably safer they, to remake uh, that. What if they remade mm. Resident Evil One again, but uh, yeah. over the shoulder, third person? I would really like. They already that remade it, right? Or they remastered it? That's what I'm saying. It? Remake it again because uh, they did the remake. I with the the same POV. I would have thought they wouldn't want to do that. <laughs> Maybe. I don't think they uh, will. No, that, I, I was. Floating it there. <laughs> and I, that was I kind of want him to just maybe at this point, like, I have confidence to for you to make your own. Well, I mean, I would prefer it if they made like new Resident Evil games with the over the shoulder thing than the first person yeah, ones. I'm, I'm here for that. With that. I Because we're going to be getting Resident Evil. Are we on yeah, nine next? Village sucked. Yeah, nine is next. And I want nine to have over the shoulder. And give me give me Chris or Leon. Don't give me some fucking loser. No, he's, or he's, Winters. Dead. Yeah. <laughs> he's dead. So he's dead and gone. Oh, so now that, can, that, that won't stop him. <laughs> he so went to they, the place they, where no, it's they, always they, very dark. Have it have uh, it be like one of the lads, Chris, Leon, Jill, yeah. Claire, one of those guys. Not not fucking Ethan Winters. I want to play Salazar. <laughs> <laughs> He's like Chucky. <laughs> or maybe maybe it should be maybe it should be that Wesker has survived and he has to claw his way out of the volcano and this is his spirit quest or something. Yeah, he's like, like Boba Fett. He had like to get out of, yeah. out of hell. <laughs> oh, he has to find his way out of hell. Like, oh yeah. yeah, it's like a reverse Dante's Inferno. Have the point is, I've got confidence in him. Like, him Resident there. Village sucked. I hate Village. Um, so I'm really hoping that, you know, these guys can try something new. Well. Yeah, that'd be nice. That would then take us to Mario, Tetris, and 65. Mario, I was about to say, yeah. Tetris, one of my favorite movies of the year. It's a really good movie. Really solid, easy like maybe yeah, we recommend we could probably yes, knock out the latter two much faster tetris was awesome it was a really cool unique movie it's uh almost it's in the pantheon i guess of video game re uh, adaptations adaptations uh, vaguely sort of kind of um uh, it's more of a there are people historical kind of there are people who think of um, the Emoji Movie when when you reference Tetris, and you're like, "Oh God, that's not at all the impression." No, no. no. it's not like cool pixels. Movies. No, it's 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 a it's a it's yeah. a movie made by people who care. <laughs> Don't you worry. It is a good movie with a very interesting premise. That's like a historical drama kind of adv not adventure, but it it's an odd a bit of an movie, adventure. But yeah, like it's an odd. adventure historical drama that's it's centered around right the up. history of Tetris. It's a story that on its face you'd be like, huh, okay, because it's just how did they get the rights for Tetris for Game Boy? Like, that's basically the, like how they get the game rights for it. But then it's like, well, no, it's a story about like creativity and um, the, the idea of like that great art uh, will, will invariably sort of break through any and all cultural, political bounds. Like a great experience yeah. will reach everybody universally, and that it's important that the people who create these things get the the attention and credit they deserve. Yeah, the uh, and then it has behind the, the games that you know are iconic. 
yeah, it, it's really cool as a, a way of, and then and then having that frame through just what we, on its face would seem like a pretty boring story, but is made very entertaining and interesting uh, through like its structure and a lot of the gags and jokes that it injects in there. It's a really fun movie. It's really good. Um, that's like an easy recommend. One of my favorite movies of the year. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And to, easy to what you guys are saying, I feel like the term video game adaptation, you can't really map on to that movie. Because no, I feel like, like that. Yeah, I did like, throw up a little when you said that, but carry on. <laughs> what? Why? We've had like, good video game adaptations. I know. That's why I didn't throw <laughs> up all the way. We're cleansing ourselves. Like, Tetris, Tetris, adaptations, Tetris helps the fight, story, okay? And then a movie gets made about that story, but Tetris doesn't really have a story, except for some. Tetris like games on the N64 yeah, where they you played all the versions. Story mode in it. Super Tetris yeah. 763. It's like, oh, there's where... alien pieces that are yeah. coming Tetris to like final chapter part <laughs> clear three. our lines. Yeah, that, that, that was my that's, favorite. That's why Rags referencing pixels is accurate. Like they could have done that. They could have made a really cringe like, oh, the Tetris aliens are coming to get us. Adam Sandler. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, like... but that's what they do. Well, they would Tetris do it. Or like um. It's uh, now I'm just thinking about the joke from Futurama of them building that building with Tetris. Like, no, wait, don't put that there. Drops the light in clears four players. <laughs> yeah, all the uh, the like space invader shit in Futurama, right? The oh yeah, that, that kind was of really thing. funny. You could see them yeah. making a movie like that and be like, uh, no. mm -hmm. well, that would be okay because that was really funny. But then wait. they made pixels. I was about to say, yeah, I'm also going for the pixel side of things, but yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah. The, the reason I bring all of that up is to try and dispel any sense that Tetris is anything like any of that. It's like, no, 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 no. You should check it out. Good movie. No, Don't get put no, off no, by it. Tetris is an actual movie with characters and emotion <laughs> in the story. And to and be honest with you, you I would expect it to not have done that well in terms of engagement, probably, unfortunately. I think it's just a hard sell, you yeah. know? Like, how do you convey what a Tetris movie is? Because I think if you say to somebody, yeah, it's a Tetris movie, they, I don't even know where they would begin, like, where their mind would first yeah. go to it, what that means. Tetris not, movie. Not even and possible? I think it would be pretty far down the line of, it's like the origin story of Tetris. <laughs> That's what right. it is. Yeah. Um, the game in real life. It's like the oregano yeah. story. And I'm like, what? What do you really mean? And 65 was awful. Ooh. 65. I forgot that we watched 65. That's why I said it was, Adam Driver. We'll take long to talk about it. It was like one of the most forgettable and shittiest, awful movies ever. <laughs> Never. You know what I remember uh, about oh, that yeah, movie? It sucked totally. Yeah. What? Yeah. Me seeing the trailer last year when I was over here. Oh. That's that's all I've seen of that movie. <laughs> it was just Adam Driver's gonna fight dinosaurs. He's like, okay. Oh. And then you're watching, you're like, you're not wow. Even dinosaurs. They're like procedurally generated giant dinosaurs. And they stick the head of a T Rex on the body of whatever the fuck, and that's a dinosaur. Like, you can't even be bothered to pick up like some kid's book and have an actual dinosaur in the film at any point. No. It's books, children's books have better stories than 65. Oh, yeah. You know, the, Harry Potter. what's wacky is uh, the girl in that film plays young Ahsoka in that episode of Ahsoka, and she's in the Barbie movie. She's, uh, oh, yeah, she's, she's in a couple of things all really? the I'm pretty so sure that's the same girl. In... Okay, so she's been in nothing good. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I haven't checked her whole uh, IMDb, you know, but... She's, uh, yeah, I was just like, oh shit, she, she popped up in all those things at once. Because, um, yeah, 65, it's, it's really hard to even tell you what happened in the film. I've forgotten the vast majority. Uh, um, Adam Driver is delivering colonists to a faraway land in space, and, and, Earth, and inexplicably, in he hits space. an asteroid field and crashes yeah. <laughs> on the dinosaur-infested ancient But, but then Earth. they they make sure they let you know 65 million years ago. Oh, of his oh, <laughs> Earth. Mordor. And it just kept going. <laughs> they kept adding more text. They, they did. <laughs> the people who like this movie can't read. I don't know why they bothered. They, nobody liked <laughs> it. Come on. There wasn't even one guy. Not a, Yeah, no one liked Adam Driver. Probably easy. Was that even going to talk about this movie? Was it in cinemas or was it a Netflix thing? I... It was in cinemas, I think, briefly. Ooh, I and failed at the box office. Dang on. Yeah, on uh, on Tetris, it's a really fun watch. Uh, if like if you know stuff about like video game history, like nice segue. He goes to, <laughs> yeah, uh, sorry, I know we kind of moved on, but like <laughs> no, like, it feels like we're talking about Tetris in '65 and kind of a lump here. So I was like, maybe it's we're kind of still on Tetris. Is a lump. <laughs> it's a lump on my brain. But there's there's a scene in uh in Tetris where he goes to Nintendo to talk about like putting it on the NES, and it's like 
through the discussion, one of them's like, well, Nintendo doesn't have a handheld yet. And a guy's like, follow me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this, this underground like, lab oh! with the DMG Game Boy, like it's some crazy contraption. I'm just like, this is so fucking cool. Like, I just, I love that that this is being turned into a movie, the development of something like this, like the yeah. the original Game Boy, you know? It's, like, it's I, a I think fun it actually watch made a lot of with... sense for people who are not that familiar with video game history. So it, the thing with Tetris, Tetris is a really Very hard sell yeah. to anyone who doesn't sure. know what it is, because like, as, as discussed, you can't say, well, it's not a game adaptation, so it's not obviously like falling blocks. It's the story of the history of a video game, and that, like, to normies or like normal people who don't play many games, like, that's not the best sell, but actually, yeah, if you watch the film, even if you don't know anything about the history of the thing, the point of the film is in part to inform you of the history, but also you've got yes. a passing familiarity with the Game Boy, and the film does a really good job just in that one quite comical shot, but of showing how big an achievement and a big game-breaking, to use a pun, thing this is. Even if Because you everyone in the thing treats it with immense reverence and, like, wonderment, you yeah. know? So it's one of it goes back to the thing we've mentioned a lot on EFAP. If you have your characters in a story treat things seriously, then I, as an audience member, am like, oh, this is a thing to be taken seriously. Yes, no matter how cool you think you are as a writer, okay? It's fine. Just Chris. <laughs> Chris. <laughs> Chris. <laughs> Which uh would then take us to talking about a big moment in culture for film and gaming, the Mario movie. Mm -hmm. I still haven't seen that. Loser. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's worth it's worth looking. It's worth watching. Well, I, I sorry, was about I, to watch I, it, but then I saw it wasn't out on Netflix, but I was too lazy to turn my VPN on, and then I went to bed. I, I feel <laughs> frequently compelled to keep mentioning that there could have been a better Mario movie than this. I feel compelled Absolutely. to keep mentioning that. You feel compelled to have the take been. everyone has, or? No, 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 but just to, like, emphasize this, <laughs> like, don't just be, like, super... <laughs> Well, no, it's just when, when you say, like, oh, yeah, no, I'd really recommend this. Like, the, the big asterisk there is, like, man, but, you know, if it wasn't, like, Illumination or something, if it was, like, you know, it could have been, it could have been better Oh, yeah, than the opportunity costs on the Mario um, movie are, are horrific, but I still think what we got was uh, decent. It could have been worse. It. Yeah, I uh, was, that's, that's, it that's kind of, like, the other so. thing to add to, um... It's, yeah, uh, that, I, I feel like that's the more uh, radical po point of view is that everyone would have thought this would just be absolute shit, surely, or at least like, ugh. But we, was, we were relatively surprised they managed to get a couple things in there that we, especially Illumination, holy shit. But, you know, the, the, um, yeah. the nature that, that of was, the... Was working against it. The nature of the investment in trying to uh, keep it somewhat in a particular way from Nintendo or whoever else. And, and there were some jokes in there that we were like, oh, that was, that was kind of funny. Yeah, this, this no, is, I mean, was and it's surprising. I, a decent amount I, I guess the movie. thing yeah. is, is that uh, it's an easy film to point to. Of it hits a lot of the standard beats of Mario's going on like his sort of hero's journey, and his brother is in danger, and he's going to go rescue him. And both of them realize that they're better working together; that they both complement each other, and they can lean yeah. on each other for support. And it's the Mario brothers, you know, and they're bros, and they're gonna they're gonna save the Mushroom Kingdom and become the heroes that. Uh, they know that they can be, but the world doesn't expect them to be. It's pretty straightforward, but it's yeah, like, yeah. it's it's serviceable. It's an incredibly safe film. Yes. And mm -hmm. it strove to be safe, and it succeeded in being safe. Um, I agree. And for that reason, it wasn't particularly objectionable. Like, I think I, I first watched it coming away thinking, yeah, like, I would have really liked it to have been a bit more than that, but at least it hit the basics and it, it did a passable job. And like you said, there are some jokes in there that work and some of the references. They're not just shoehorned in. A lot of them are, but no. not all of them are just you. I I um, will I will say I've I've never understood the criticism that the film got for like Easter eggs. That never made any sense to me. Like an R wing sitting on Mario's TV. What does that like? How does that negatively affect the movie at all? That I can see an R wing on there, or I can see yeah. the Duck Hunt logo in the background. Or it's I recognize the musical the... cue, you know? Yeah. Well, what was fine. the criticism that there was too much? Oh, uh, people, the people eggs that were like, there were not related. They were like, oh, or... they're so they're, they're more interested in making a film filled with Easter eggs and making a film. And it's like, that's just I don't even understand like the nature of that argument. If you're like a normie who doesn't recognize any of these references, you're not gonna be like they're not gonna fuck with your experience of the film. No. You're just gonna see yeah. things and you're just gonna gloss over them. Whereas somebody who knows will be like, oh yeah, I know that. Yeah, I recognize that. That's cool. And it's neat because there's a lot of there's, there's like a lot, a lot of and there's and a lot plenty of, of deep lore expect. references too. There yes. are a lot of deep lore references that I really appreciate. Well I had to do funny, some um, research. I would format a crit criticism in the opposite direction that the for not having more confidence in themselves in the content that they're using being Mario, they ended up uh, 
cutting out original soundtrack pieces and in, in favor of like more mainstream pop songs, which sucked. The soundtrack was one of the most disappointing that... things about it. Yeah, like of all the brilliant music that you could have picked from. Yeah. Why did you have to do that? Yeah, the pop that songs was really... were lame, and the, the pop stuff songs... that they made was really good. But they well, they had a lot of cool enough. remixes. And they you know, they, they had uh, they had they had cool remixes spanning across all of Mario's history, all the way from like Super Mario yeah. Brothers to Mario Kart Eight. Stuff. Yeah, it was cool. Like, I want to, when I'm seeing this Mario movie, I don't want to hear fucking pop music. I want to hear Rainbow Road. Well, they did play the Rainbow Road. I want to yeah, hear, they, they did. I want to hear yeah. original tracks, you know? Well, did a not, bunch of tracks, <laughs> but the... I don't want to hear original tracks. I want to hear remakes of the tracks that I like, but not pop not, songs. Not take on me. Yeah. Um... I, I hear that seven times a day anyway. I yeah. really don't need to hear it. You know, it's a great mm -hmm. song. I know. I'm, I, I'm fine. I got it. Got well, it, it's yeah. just Mario has such a diverse array of tracks, again, spanning across many. Because, like, Mario's had lots of genre changes, like, just with each, like, generation. Super Mario Galaxy is hyper orchestral. And then when they moved into like 3D World of Mario Kart 8, you had like big band jazz, jazz fusion. Um, like there's a there's a whole bunch of variety in terms of the music that's been created for Mario games that basically like any tone that you could want for any given scene, there'll be like a there'll be a song that you can pick from Mario yeah. that you can use that will work. Um, like why would you you know, because yeah, take on me when they show up in like Donkey Kong's That was so why inappropriate you pick from Donkey Kong Country. <laughs> yeah. Get well, some and, from Donkey Kong Country. I thought the reality was that yeah. they did have that and then they switched them out. That's why it was I even think that more is clunky. What happened, yeah. yeah, they did. They yeah. had they had orchestra for everything, but then they decided because I remember um yeah, like cause uh you look at the soundtrack and, and it's like, oh yeah, that wasn't in there. What the fuck? <laughs> like you made it and then you got rid of it. Why? No. Because that's what you're meant to do when you make these movies. You got to throw in some pop. We songs, can't expect even Mario just... to sell. Yeah. We have to. We can't make, expect we Mario to carry in there. there. It might actually be like you some know. kind of bean counting statistic of we'll get an extra one percent of the money overall if we put in the pop songs. Maybe, but I mean, it just yeah. seems because this is like this. I believe uh, second highest grossing film of the year, highest grossing video game adaptation ever by a considerable margin. Like it made more than twice as much money as Sonic Two. Um, one of the most successful animated films of all time, biggest opening for an animated film of and all it's, time. It's, and it's Mario. Very well animated. It's I really a film. The uh, itself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and it, and it's a film that we'll be able to look back after many years and be like, this is what changed a lot uh, of things moving forward. A lot of projects are going to come from this now. Yeah, that's uh, sort of well, my concern about it, though. I guess, which is, uh, I mean, I say yeah, I yeah, wish yeah they that's were all this it's such good. a, such a safe Brothers. film made so much money. Are they going to make every subsequent NCU film as safe as they possibly can? Like probably be as unimaginative when it comes to Zelda, for example. Oh uh, well, I gotta say to that's gonna be that much worse. Not, I think I'm, I'm really, I'm really, really, really. I'm basically. Mm -hmm. It's kind of funny because I had the same thing happen with this film where I was expecting that I wasn't gonna like it, and then I came out of it kind of liking it. Um, I think the Zelda movie. I'm way less optimistic. Like, oh yeah, the fucking, I'm terrified. The, the fact that the guy who's writing it has written so much shit. Like I just, it's it's over. How it's does over that happen? How does this I, guy get to write the I think Zelda what, um, movie? What's really disappointing to me is that I don't see any reason at all why Zelda couldn't be a three D animated film or a two D animated film. Like, why it's, wouldn't it she do it? Be. I mean, look at yeah. look at this art style that's been present at this point in Zelda for the last like fifteen years. The style in like Skyward Sword and Breath of the Wild. We can we have like, a little really mini cool. short like Pixar yeah, beforehand that has the Wind Waker style. Mm hmm. You know, I just, I just, I would, if you, if I could make a Zelda movie, which I probably wouldn't want to take on that ch task, because like I'm not as big a Zelda fan at all compared to like Mario. I'd have but, to, uh, to take it out of that fucker's I would, hands. Uh, well, yeah, that, that'd be that'd be that. I'd like, have to if, jump you, on the if you told me, everyone. do you want to, do you want to make it live action or animated? I'd say, uh, come on, animated. Fuck well, yeah. obviously animated. Obviously, I wanna, animated. I wanna obviously animated, yeah, pretty much. But, uh, but I, I imagine that wasn't even entertained. They'd be like, well, no, we're making a fucking Zelda movie. They're, they're people. Essentially, they got like the big elf ears, but they're they're human characters that aren't. I don't know. Super... Elves being people is not an opinion that is shared by the, everyone. Any the point like, being, <laughs> they probably were like, oh, there was probably never any world where it wasn't going to be live action. In much the same way that there probably was never a world where Mario didn't have celebrity voices. Yeah, it's certainly a strange one because you know, if you look at the amount of praise that's heaped on something like that across the Spider Verse and the, and the Spider Verse films more broadly, which for all of their narrative folds. The art style is, is almost uniformly like recognized as, as quite well, it's distinctive for one thing, but it's generally well liked and well loved, and it doesn't seem to have harmed the thing that it's an animated I mean, rather than the right. We talked about Puss in Boots, you know. Yeah, no, so, I mean, at this point, because yeah. uh, I mean, you know, Across the Spider Verse was more successful than the vast majority of superhero films that came out this year, yeah, financially, anyway. And I just, 
I think that Zelda is another thing that at this point, like Breath of the Wild sold like 30 million copies. This is just another, you're guaranteed to make money. So it's what a are you Zelda afraid movie. Of? It's going to clean up. What are you afraid of? You know, just like, why would you be scared at all of its prospects of not making money? You'll make money. If you can, if you made it and you had like a trailer, I could just imagine a trailer. If you opened up and it was, it, it was like 2D or 3D animated with like these gorgeous backgrounds that look like a, like a watercolor painting, like that that would instantly, it's like, oh, dude, you've already won. You know, like you've already won. Everybody's got to want to see that. But oh, well, um, yeah, on the Mario movie anyway, it's uh, this this feels like very much the yeah, from this point onward, every video game adaptation is going to be like absolutely trying to be emulating the visuals and the art direction of the games that they're adapting. It does, I can, yeah, it leans in super like, hard, fully and completely perfect. committing to being a Mario movie. Which was always wise, because there's a preset audience ready for that exact kind of content. Well, yeah, like I want to see Mario idea. who looks like Mario, and I want to see Donkey Kong who looks like Donkey Kong. I want to see the Mushroom Kingdom, and I want to see, you know, Peach's Castle, and it looks like the castle. Nice and colorful and, uh, and vibrant, and um, yeah, I mean, it's probably the best-looking Illumination film. I think it's a lot more expensive than the average Illumination film. Um, I mean, it, it looked it. It was it was a delight. It wasn't garish, but it was highly stylized and colorful. Um, yeah, I it really was, like it was really the way nice it looks. to see. Yeah, yeah and um, there's you know a lot of criticisms came out of it, but a lot of people seem to be praising the. Everyone really liked the Mario and Luigi stuff. Um, yes, that's the best part of the the film. It's it's really good. And even Seth Rogen's well, Donkey really Kong wasn't as cringe. It was as I fine. Thought it would be. No, I mean, yeah. he was fine. Uh, He's no Jack yeah, Black. Yeah, Seth Rogen but... Donkey Kong is, uh, you know, yeah, it's, yeah, it's yeah. Like... Peach mm. was kind of lame though. She was a little Peach bit boring. Was... Yeah, uh, the the sad fact of her Peach is they did give her more character. Oh, and Jack Black as Bowser really... was uh, very entertaining. He was very yeah. fun. Yeah. He's what they a, need to do gamer. next time in the next game <laughs> is it's got to be Mario and Bowser have to go on a venture together to like Yoshi's Island or oh, something. Oh please, yes, <laughs> yes. Up so we can be yes. You gotta have. <laughs> Mario, Yoshi, and Bowser going on an adventure together, a dynamic trio. Oh, and bring Luigi as well. Let Absolutely. them have an adventure together this time. And Peach is mysteriously missing. Yay. No, well, hey, <laughs> look, right? You just, just give her more just fix her material. Up. Give fix her, her up. more of a character. Um, but yeah, I imagine they're going to keep making Mario. There's going to be a sequel. There's surely going to yeah. be a fucking sequel at this point. Absolutely. Oh, I can't imagine the absolutely insane level of plans they have for everything Nintendo after this. Well, I got to imagine that at this point, every studio in Hollywood's like, hey, so can we get, can we get like Star Fox or can we get Kirby? Can we get, uh, can we make, you know, uh, come on. you know, for a fact that Disney is like ad at this point, it's like, I don't want to play with you with superheroes. They want video games at this point. <laughs> <laughs> this is yeah, too I mean, bad. I don't know. Are they going to get any? Are they gonna That's the thing. Get... They, they are poised in the worst position they've ever been in almost for potential. Disney. Well, yeah, the Disney. thing about what Nintendo video games? is, uh. Nintendo was an incredibly successful. I'm pretty sure it is just like one of the most valuable companies in Japan. Um, Nintendo at this point is, uh, I think they're like more financially successful at this point than they've ever been. The Switch is, I would like imagine, one of the best selling video game yeah, consoles right now. They got and many, many bangers on it. The big thing Nintendo's games. got that they have that uh, Sony and Microsoft struggle with is that Nintendo has like an insane attach rate for their games. Like Mario Kart 8 Deluxe has sold like 60 million copies. So like everybody lot. of everybody who owns a Switch, one in two people own it compared to if you looked at like PlayStation, probably more like one in 10 or people like own any given uh, Sony first person, first party game. And that applies broadly, like, and every single game on the Switch, every franchise has had its best selling entry on there. Zelda's best selling entry is on Switch. Kirby's best selling entry is on Switch. Um, best selling, yeah, best selling iterations of Mario Kart, Pikmin. Uh, Animal Crossing, I imagine that all of those are on the cards at this point. And Nintendo, the big thing that they have is that they have the power to be very selective about where they give them. Unfortunately, with Zelda, I guess they convinced them that it would be a good idea to get the guy who wrote Tross to write it somehow. How does that um, happen? No, no. Uh, mm. He must have dirt on someone. <laughs> <laughs> But the, he the, must. The he's got a series he's got, of bets were lost. He mailed someone, or I don't know. It's Occam's razor. <laughs> you know, it's like he must. Look, as long as Link but, uh, doesn't pick up the Master Sword and then unfurl a little ruler from underneath the bottom of it, which points in where to go, and we're on. Like, that's, that's an improvement on some of the past <laughs> nonsense. Oh, I, uh, what a landscape! I wonder, eh? um, what do you? Because what do you think's next? What do you think the next one they uh, announce will be after Zelda? Oh, for Nintendo. What's the next? 
Yeah, what do you think is next? Like, I mean, we talked about it like, before, but like, you know, Star Fox seems Star like Fox it would be suitable. Seems like a safe bet. Yeah. Uh, um, well, it's funny you say that because, like, on the video game front, Nintendo doesn't seem to want yeah. to do much with Star Which Fox. Which is weird. <laughs> yeah. You think people would be chomping at the bit for it, and mm. they are. I'd say like that. That's probably that makes it much less likely to happen, though, right? Certainly, if if they've gone for Mario because it is the most safe property you can possibly make money on, and Zelda is probably the second most safe one you can probably make money. If Nintendo hasn't been putting Star Fox front and center for years at this point, it's not quite got any. But I'd say not quite. It's not got anything like the same level of cultural familiarity as the preceding. So whether they would jump for that as their second or third installment in the NCU, I, I doubt. Uh, I'm not. Sh yeah, I because. I feel like Kirby would be a safer bet, like, financially, as a prospect. This is the thing. There's a couple answers to the question when you think of different priorities. It's like, what will, will be next based on the most, like, engaged with a money-making franchise in Nintendo? It's like, that'll have a definitive answer. Uh, well, Animal opinions. Crossing might be the next one in that case. Yeah. Ooh, um, like an Animal Crossing movie. Then it's like, what one would it be based on most suitable to be adapted to a film? Like, oh, well, uh, it'd be more like Star Fox. The thing is, Metroid is oddly, even though the games themselves is like direct adaptations, doesn't make as much sense to me because of their very yeah. their structure. But as an IP, like Metroid seems pretty viable. Um, but again, I would want that to be animated, probably, and they're not going to do yes, that. Please. So that's they what won't. they need to no. do is they need to have they these won't. be animated and stylized because that's they what won't. people have fallen then, in love with. Don't change. Perhaps it. the most interesting question of us: What one do we want to see the most adapted into a film? Uh, is the asterisk that it will be good? Yeah. <laughs> if, if it will be good, then it would be Metroid. Yeah. Am I too greedy that's, to say uh, Super Smash Bros? <laughs> I know, that was not, gonna be you're not are we going to get the Smash yeah, Brothers Avengers style that. crossover movie? Is I that have to assume, to yes. I mean, um, but what does that look like when it's split across? Because Universal is doing Mario, Sony's doing, um, Sony is doing Zelda. I don't no. know what kind of cross studio collaboration you'd be able to, unless they had deals where Nintendo like gets to make that call of like, oh, one studio will make it, and then they get all the money. So you couldn't have live action anyway. Link next to CG Mario either, could you? Really? Like, uh, cool. Yeah, I don't know about that. I'm not sure. Well, to be fair, you know, even in, even in the world of the games, you have many links from different styles that coexist yeah, so in the world of Smash Brothers. Timeline. Yeah, like, the, <laughs> honestly, they could oh maybe God. pull off some stuff. Uh, but yeah, uh, whether or not, you know, the, what, what I would want to see is just all the characters taken care of well in a story that's really interesting, obviously. But, you know, to an mm -hmm. extent, I'd rather, I'd like to see every one of them get that treatment. But which one do you want the most? Like, I don't know. Tough to say. I mean, Metroid is a really strong pick. Um, I, I think if really you were adapting like Metroid, you might want to make... Um, I feel like Metroid and Star Fox could have a really cool crossover as well. I think well, so. What, yes, what I'd want to see with, like, Star Fox is I'd like to have... Like, wouldn't it be cool if you had, like... And it was animated, but it was still trying to emulate... Like, So you have, like, the cockpit camera, and you have, like, these really tight sort of shots of just, like, them whizzing by as explosions and glance, you know, like, glancing off the, uh, like, the R-wings as they were getting into all of these crazy dogfights. It's like, that sounds cool as shit. I would How... really like to see that, you know? Like, with, like, the Top Gun kind of, like, cinematography, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. Like, Top Gun, awesome. right? It's, like, it's the most immediately yeah. filmic one that comes to mind. Yeah. That and Metroid, I would say. You could, like, easily make movies out of those. And we could do our light high, uh, lighthearted fun, like, Pikmin stuff... Um, hmm, what of is, course, Animal what, Crossing Pikmin, would be see, really cheery. See, here's the problem, though, Rags. A Pikmin movie would be really cool if, like, you didn't have any characters talking. It was just Olimar interacting with Pikmin, which but there's no, do. like, that's, which they won't do. They got it. Chris talk. Pratt will be the voice of Olimar. It's going to be Olimar, yeah. Chris, Chris Pratt, Pratt yeah. is Olimar and all the Pikmin. <laughs> 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 uh, he's in, got in regard. In regard yeah. to Super Smash Brothers, that feels like Nintendo's Infinity War, and the Mario movie to me feels like their Iron Man, where like this feels kind of, like the start mean, yeah. of a huge thing. And so before they do a Smash Brothers thing, it would make sense for them financially to sort of pace it out with a few individual Let me introduce you to a little first, company like called DC, about, like, okay? Star Fox, yeah. <laughs> well, they blow yeah. they blew their load the too. Movie, they, the tried to, is, they tried to get to Mario that Mario versus Link well, what, Dawn of Justice. What's funny <laughs> is if they did a sequel to Mario and it was a Smash Brothers type situation, it probably would make a shit ton of money though. Mm -hmm. They could right. skip You'd... like if they wanted to because they've got so much goodwill from, you know, this kids 
millions of people throughout the world who absolutely adore this shit. You know, the Mario movie could have been, like, significantly worse and probably would have made a shit ton of money no matter what. Mm -hmm. Right. Oh, yeah, I think so. But the fact that it was well-received, it's like, you know, it's it's cashing that check for the future. Yeah. But, but you're right, uh, the, all the prep they take to build up the universe nice and slowly, and make you'll make them more money in the long run. Uh, yeah, probably so, yeah. more profitable if they pace it out with a number of individual um, focus movies first. Yeah, before I think they do that's, Smash Brothers, I think. I think that's inevitably going to happen because the Zelda movie is probably not coming out until 2026. They haven't announced like that they're doing the sequel to this one yet, and so that's going to take a few years to materialize. Like, mm. I think it's just going to take longer, especially given that it does seem like Nintendo is very protective of their. Uh, of their uh, IPs. I mean, whatever deal it was that they cut with Illumination meant that they were, like, the co-producers of the film. They were credited before Illumination, even though Illumination was, like, the studio that animated the film. Um, Miyamoto was executive producer. Um, I imagine that that probably is going to hold true for other ones as well, right? Where, like, major creative voices on the games will have significant input on it and that just means it moves slower i imagine but hopefully it yields better results hopefully as long as you have a good creative voice there telling them what they can and can't do that that'll preserve them protect them a little bit you know that'd be nice it wasn't kirby but extraction too <laughs> <laughs> you gotta, oh you gotta have maybe maybe you do the meta knight film first and it's like a really intense action movie or something. i mean you can do that with star fox i mean there's there a lot is of room no... in star fox to make it pretty well, you like do it with uh you know? maybe f i mean f zero if you made like a standard racing movie right you could when you'd you love if they sort of take some risks or at least riskier but like a, a luigi's yeah. mansion film they actually did that uh, that would be that would be really. Could you imagine yeah, if they made a really around great Halloween? horror movie? A really really cool horror movie. Yeah, <laughs> like it comes out. You know, kind of the end of one of the bigger Mario films is him getting captured. You know, and, and, and mm -hmm. it's like, oh shit! And it's the Luigi's Mansion film that you need to see to see how he gets back out of that situation. Which I'm fine with that idea if they're good MCU. I'm kind of uh, I'm a little bit surprised that they haven't actually just made like a Pokemon movie, not like Detective Pikachu, but just Pokemon with the standard beats of yeah. you got a kid who wants to become like the greatest yeah, Pokemon trainer, trainer in the world, lesson about and then, yeah, and then goes yeah. on adventures, and you just have it be that nice you know, and or, safe. Yeah, like you just all have Ash or something with Pikachu, and you get Squirtle and 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 uh, Charmander and all that. I'm surprised I haven't done that yet, considering that Pokemon is one of the biggest things in the world. Yeah, I guess but, that that one is that tricky because Pokemon is already there's already a series of films that are much more closely tied to the anime. So I'm assuming there's going to be some sort of rights well, question shows. that comes. Up. Um, Maybe. I, as I understand it, all of the Pokemon stuff is organized under the Pokemon Company, which is like co-owned by Nintendo, but also other companies that might like Game be Freak like, or whatever. Is um, it? I yeah, because I'm pretty sure Game Freak is like they're not a subsidiary of Nintendo. I don't think. Um, like the Pokemon Company is partially under Nintendo, partially. But I would just imagine it would just be as simple as the pitch of just do like a standard Pokemon story, but. I guess I probably want to again make it live action instead of like 3D animated. And I guess like I like there there have been many Pokemon movies already. Um not like mm -hmm. I don't want to say they're not real movies, but like you know what I mean. Uh know? that Hollywood wouldn't consider them to be real movies yeah, because it's... they're animes. So they'd be like, yeah, that doesn't count. Face <laughs> Hollywood, but um that's, that's how it works. Right, okay. <laughs> uh but yeah, who knows? Who knows what will happen? I hope Can they we learn their lesson with out the over musical terrible score. video game movies already. Oh, we, yeah, we should, we should, we know better than to get our movie. hopes up. Oh yeah, but it's always nice to speculate about a better world. <laughs> That's true. That's fun. <laughs> Some people call that hope. Uh, you know, hope is like the sun. Hope is a dangerous thing. That's what Benedict Cumberbatch said in 1917, oh, yes. and maybe he was right. Maybe well, he Aylmer, was right. Do not trust to hope; it's forsaken these lands. <laughs> And yep. they're just truth bombing us. But, so anyway. but the point, yeah, I guess that's a big old. Oh no! About, uh, that doesn't take us to Guardians Three, does it? Uh it. I well, I it depends on. Is that uh, a peculiar film. Uh, uh, no, well, we could talk about Zelda for a bit. I think that came out before uh, Guardians Three. Years <laughs> of the, the Kingdom. Oh yeah, you guys uh, have to talk about uh, that one. I've. Uh, uh, 
Well, you, Meadow, you finished it. I, I, I haven't yeah, finished I did. it yet. Well, I finished in the sense of the main story. I, I, I think I'm very far away from 100% because that game is chonky. It's mm -hmm. a very chonky game. I mean, mechanically, it's like super fun. It's a lot of things yeah. to do. You can uh, fuck around with all kinds of things. Lots of uh, shrines to do, which I think they improved over uh, Breath of the Wild. They're much more interesting uh, than... It's kind of uh, interesting. Yeah. Like, Tears of the Kingdom feels like it kind of completely supplants Breath of the Wild. It does, yeah. I, I don't know that I would. I think. I think if you saw, if you said to me, "I play Tears of the Kingdom," should I play Breath of the Wild? I'd be like, "Oh fuck, I don't know." <laughs> Actually, yeah. if I would tell you to. Whereas if if you haven't played any, it's like, yeah, play Breath of the Wild first, and then you can play Tears of the Kingdom. You know, and that way it'll it'll sort of uh. Yeah, I mean the, uh, the story is yeah. fucking stupid. Doesn't make any sense. If you want to know more about it, I did a fortune it, uh, and I. Mm -hmm. Uh, try to make sense of it, and it doesn't. Uh, <laughs> but no, it's just a really fun game to play. It's just a really solid game overall. Uh, lots to do. A lot of little, lots of little Easter eggs you can find, like armor pieces that uh, point towards Wind Waker and Majora's Mask and all the other games you can find. Uh, stuff. To, yeah, just just fun fun game. Uh, I don't know I'll if I'm gonna that. return to it ever, though. I don't know if it's a game I would like to replay necessarily. I don't know. Maybe boot it up and just fuck around a bit with the mechanics and torture some Koroks or whatever and shoot them in the atmosphere or whatever. That was fun memes people did. They just fucking crucified Koroks. And... <laughs> that's, that's what happens when you give players the ability to do whatever they want. I've seen so things. many great things uh meme wise what they did to those poor poor creatures <laughs> can you oh, yeah. help me get to my friend no <laughs> you going to space <laughs> like uh, i guess breath of the wild and tears of the kingdom is i feel like a really clear example of what happens when you have a really robust core framework and just like yeah. how much you can greatly expand that if you give the player a like general set of tools that have a lot of like all purpose uses and you put them in a world that's uh, a really big and dynamic sandbox mm. where you can actually just think of creative solutions that seem intuitive and they actually work um yeah, to yeah. Any problem, whether that be like like whether that be especially in this case of just like building these really crazy vehicles that are kind of like scuffed and silly but they somehow managed to get the job yeah done. yeah Oh, more than once, I just built like a way too long bridge. It's like I'm just gonna start yeah. extending this until I get over there, even though there's other parts they want me to use. But fuck that, I'm gonna do it like this, and it worked. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Because I give you all of the tools that you can. I mean, it's it, it like and the, I I remember because I've said it a lot. It was like in Breath of the Wild, the idea of essentially oh, I need to get to a cold area, and that there's a few options to get there, and then you just sort of I just decide like. I uh, fuck. I feel like it was like I decided that I just wanted to keep lighting torches over and over and over again just yeah. to get where I wanted to because I didn't have like the suitable clothes to do it and that that worked. That it was yeah. just like wow, that's like really cool. Um, as like yeah, a, you have to... Sort of to you know think creatively and yeah. that might actually be viable. Like the crazy idea. Exactly, yeah. That one's not very crazy, but the the idea of there's a core set of tools kind of think about like how these are going to be applicable in other situations give it a shot and see if it actually works and a lot of the time you can find a way to sort of get around a situation that uh feels like it's not a way that the developers intended but that they almost <laughs> certainly knew that people yeah. were going to do yeah but with that said but i'm kind of over the open world zelda now i want them to do something more old school more again focused focused um, better I dungeons understand. because the because yeah, I always like the dungeons. Uh, the dungeons are pretty weak still, overall. Yeah, like, They're kind of lame. Uh, I've been playing it off stream, um, so now I've like done all the dungeons. I, I think uh, yeah. like, with it. And those dungeons are real fucking basic. <laughs> They're, They're really straight they, yeah. yeah, it only takes you like 30, 40 minutes to, to get them done. And I mean, if they were going like to... the perfect, um, like, perfect sort of setting and game type to make a proper dungeon crawling experience with an mm. overworld that sort of connects the real experiences, which are the dungeons. Uh, and well, really I imagine put your effort into that. That might, if they did open world, it's got to be a totally new place. Um, oh yeah, because they they've done a really good job of actually expanding 
uh, the same area uh, with mm -hmm. all of like the Sky Islands and the depths and the caves and everything like that. There's a lot of new stuff to explore, but if they did another open world one, which I don't know if I want that either, I think I'd be okay with like, yeah, you did it, it's cool. I want to see what you do now with another more linear experience. Um, yeah. But it would need to be a different open world map, I think. It would need to be a totally different location, maybe somewhere we've never seen before. Yeah, absolutely. I'd love a uh, a throwback style game with pixel art that's a top down kind of game, really oh, yeah. expansive, lots of dungeons. That That'd would be probably cool. be really nice to see because yeah. I'm I, I'm not really a I'm not a Zelda guy, but I played Link to the Past a lot as a kid, and I've even yeah, played so because I'm one of the four people on the planet Earth. Uh, I've got a friend who has four swords for um, GameCube. And he has four Game Boys oh, and four nice. Game Boy connectors that connect the Game Boys to the Game Cubes so that you could play Four Swords, which alternates between the GameCube on the TV and the uh, Game Boy screen. So that's I, I'm I'm really I'm really happy that he has all that shit because <laughs> it's a very uncommon thing to have all of that stuff just mm. to play essentially the full four uh, Four Swords experience. But that kind of thing is, is really fun. So a, a, a very in-depth, fun, throwback-style um, Zelda game. I, I mean, that, that'd be, I think that'd be a really cool thing to do. Uh, yeah, they used I'd to love make that. those for, like, the DS and the 3DS. Um, but then I get, Oh, well, they did, uh, they did on Switch. It was the remake of uh, Link's Adventure. Uh, wait. Yeah. Wait, was which it? one was it? The, it was the Game Boy one that they remade on... Uh, and they made it, like, make it look like kind of a toy set, which was uh, cool. Awakening, Link's Awakening. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, that's the one, yeah. Because yeah. nowadays, like with Octopath Traveler and stuff of that nature, you can have the pixel style, but have the modern effects and 3D kinds mm -hmm. of uh, details that give it such a cool look. So, something they could yeah. do. And it so would maybe. be Nito, Nito Toledo. Also, while I was uh, taking a shit, um, nice. I was thinking one of the things that would be really cool, a really cool movie for Dis, uh, for not Disney, sorry, for Nintendo to do, <laughs> they need to make an Elite Beat Agents movie. I'd watch the shit out of that. And I know it's a reference that a lot of people will get, but that was a fun ass DS game. It was like um like Elite a rhythm uh, a rhythm dance game where there would be songs and the elite beat agents would come in and dance to the music to like mm -hmm. save people from generally fairly mundane issues. But you you drag and tap and uh, do backs and forth with the stylus that was um, uh, that was on the screen in tempo and mm -hmm. tandem with the music. And it was really fun. And they all had suits and uh, they need to make an elite beat agents movie. I would I would watch it. Do it, Nintendo. You cowards. You Bring cowards. It back. <laughs> Fuck you fuckers, make it an Elite Beat Agents movie. Well. Um, but yeah, Zelda's cool. Uh, but now we're going to talk about Guardians 3, I guess. Um, uh, what is there to Guardians say? Guardians 3. The uh, you didn't like it as oh, much as everybody else. Yeah, That's I, probably I, a nice I enjoyed way to put it. First, I enjoyed my first watch through, but it was still kind of like, uh, I don't know. And then I rewatched it, and I was like, no, it's pretty bad. <laughs> I <laughs> dramatically disappointed. I'm <laughs> Uh, I think uh, that it, I think very disappointing is an excellent way to describe mm -hmm. it. Um, because pretty much everything in that movie that isn't the rocket flashbacks is um, varying well, I, degrees I, of uh, upsetting uh, to me. Uh, bad, honestly. I'm just like pretty bad. Um, there's some really bad, bad to catastrophic, honestly. If yeah. we're going to be real about some of the character stuff. Rocket's kind of the, kinda say, the um... only person who comes out of an unscathed. Oh, Craglin! Craglin is my second favorite character. <laughs> if that, yeah. if that kind of uh, explains the state of that. Uh, uh, and I like the dog. Cosmo. Yeah, Cosmo. The dog. Yeah, she's um, great. There's also the 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 fake out death. So many fake out deaths. Which that's bizarre. It's not that's the right, time yeah. for fake out deaths because um, we knew this was the last entry. And we knew several actors are never coming back to these characters. It's like this is the time to commit, to take it seriously, to send them off, to respect them. But instead you do the thing, which I fucking hate, which is like, isn't it sad that this character's gonna die? And you're like, yeah, that is. And then they're like, they're not, though. They're not. Well, like, the okay. one that was particularly bizarre well, I mean, was okay. the one of uh, Peter in space turning to Floomp. Like, oh, and I then you were gonna a, say a different one. That whole thing was... Oh. A, well, I was gonna, I was thinking about um, But that one Drax. is bizarre. Yeah, Drax oh, getting yeah, shot the in the back. That one was yeah. really oh. weird. 
It's quite well, early in the I, film as well, isn't it? The Drax one. Yeah, I, I, and I, I, I thought it would on. be bold. It would be really bold because it's a goofy caper that's that's having all these jokes and different things happening. And then it's like, yeah, but this is serious. You're robbing from like a facility. They're going to use force against you. And then if he just got outright killed and they'd be like, damn. And that we, we talked mm-hmm. about this, that how much of a, a different kind of film it would be if you put all of this effort into saving one of your crew member and like three of them die in the process. There's, some, there's a lot yeah. to be said there. There's a lot to be learned. The amount of weight that would put on Rocket, especially with the history that he has. And we didn't get that. We got um, and for, yeah, yeah, it's it's kind of it ended up being sort of his his saving grace. But the fact Rocket really wasn't in this movie much at all. Um, it kind no, of protected him from the story. Yes, he got protected and... from all of the crazy stuff that happened and all of the terrible decisions that the characters made. And a lot of the yeah. stupid drama because he got to yeah. exist in this nice comfy world where he had good drama. And then Man. when he came back, he made good choices and everything. Remember yeah. the um. The huge effort we put into saving the animals in the final act, but we never really addressed all the people who died on the planet. On uh, the planet, yeah, Ooh, that was really uh, yeah, that, that really upset me. That actually upset me. Showing all the people and that are like families Leading and houses with photographs, and they're being nice and they let you borrow the car, and then they all just die and no one talks about it. It's like, oh, those mm-hmm. were people, by the way. They, they mm. all died. They and helped the you. Insane amount of prop problems in that film. Like the writing at every connective piece was balls. Yeah, um, um, yeah, it is. I, I, I dramatically it, worse than uh than Guardians one and two. Yeah. Yes. Um, it had yeah. Suicide basically, Club. the rocket stuff was good. Some of the comedy works. A lot of it doesn't. It's kind of pretty hit and miss. And yeah. uh, great f bomb. But other than yeah. that, I don't really. Yeah, know that what, one was uh, really funny. What that <laughs> one actually, it was hilarious. But just because uh, my memory ain't what it used to be. Little platoon. What did you think of Guardians three? Uh, much the same. Uh, they, you still get people who will say, oh, no, but it's like one of the better superhero films of the year. And yeah, that's largely because its decline mm. is just slower than all the other superhero films. It's still not good. It's a marked like depreciation of just the Guardians franchise. And the way I think, because uh, I'm struggling to recall bits of the film, but the, it isn't the end that the whole shtick is about finding sort of family coming together. And then at the end, it's like, yeah, well, we've done that now. So we're not going to all just fuck off in our own separate directions. Peter Cole's going to go back and find it like a grandfather who's never even really been mentioned in any of the preceding films. So the family that you've been trying to build throughout this entire thing is just broken up right at the close. Mm-hmm. And yeah, and, I don't um, really get what the point of that was. I would argue as well part of the frustration is that Peter did go to Earth. Uh, we need yeah, to acknowledge that. I was about that. to mention that. Like, but mm-hmm. but and James Gunn's got such a fucking hate boner for Infinity War and Endgame, which fair on Endgame. Hate boner for the better film. But the problem is, War. we've talked about this before. Like, ugh, hate hate the bad fucking art when it comes out. Sure, but like, always try to use everything they give you. You could still use right, it. You, you can't just pretend it didn't happen. Like, yeah, like we try to do. Back. You can't be like, oh well, I destroyed it in <laughs> two, so it was never meant to. That was so weird. Saying, like, well, I destroyed his mask in two, so that was, like, lame when they brought it back in Infinity War. Why wouldn't he get another one? It's really useful. Why would he not have, a like, several? You figure that he'd have more than one? Honestly, it was something I thought about with, um... In case something happens. Even with Guardians 1 and 2 and stuff, I was always like, you should probably have a couple of them. They're incredible. They take up, like, no space, and they allow you to breathe and exist in space. Like... Exactly. But we needed him to not have it so that we could have the fake-out death and then reference the, uh... Yeah. The, the Sistine Chapel. It's like, oh, okay. That was just, right. dude. The to, that you know, I sometimes I'll accept like the I'm out of sync with a film, and that's totally fine. But I feel like that's one of the most conflicted moments ever with a film. Is saying like Star Lord Peter Quill, he's about to die, and it's so tragic. He's the last off, and it was like struggling to pick up the music that he just can't let go of would actually like bring him down. And you're like, oh shit, we're doing this, and then it's like <laughs> we're just having some fun. No, no, not only are we, he'll be back, he will definitely be back, they even said it in big yeah. bold letters, he no. will return, because Chris Pratt, of course he is. Uh, did he we wants, discuss this at the time, like, the obvious pay payoff of, in order, like, he has to actually just give up the music? Sacrifice the music to, to be with his family, Yeah, the except they break them. apart in the end. They have it. Because uh, Mantis was like, oh, you know, I've always done what you guys do, but now I've got to go off on my own to rob other people of their memories. Um, Basically, well. that's what she's gonna do. Man, that I, I can't believe how quickly they assassinated Mantis. That was that was, that was horrendous. I, I, how could you ever trust being around her if she will take your memories away if ever they're too painful? If, yeah, if ever she says <sighs> something a little bit too harsh, it's like, oh, better, better convince you that. I'm yeah, not especially a bad if it's my memories. <sighs> 
God damn. Was, yeah, and what's his name? How... Um, Adam Warlock was awful too. Yeah, I was about to say. Was, that, I mean, that why? Just, like, why? Why? Why was why he, is he in, in the movie? movie? They didn't do anything with him. They, so they were useless. going to. They were setting him up for an obvious thing, and they just didn't do it. <laughs> Get it? Why? I don't, I don't. I don't understand. He was just sort of around when they were planning. I. I don't know. With his mom dying like that, I just figured yeah. that they were going to do the obvious thing, which would have been fine by me. And then they just didn't. So no, it who seemed knows? like a really massive, significant event, and he just fades into the background. So by the end of the film, you're thinking, oh, oh yeah, no, she did die, didn't she? Shame we didn't do anything with that. On, on the plus side for the film, the um, I was going to call him the Grand Inquisitor. That's not the one. The High Evolutionary the is that the one? High Evolutionary. Yeah. He was mm. okay. I they, love the actors. Yeah. Yeah, the actor was quite good. It's the idea on the line. Concept, was, that's for sure. Yeah, conceptually, it was interesting. I, I don't think I feel it was like particularly. He started diverse. strongish, and then he just really got just. Like, he had the standard retardation stuff. It was just like, why are you doing this? Why are you doing that? And then, isn't there a part in the final act where he just disappears for a significant amount of time? Because uh, he'd only get in the way. Because he's, he's hyper powerful, and so it's like, yeah, we need you right. to go for a bit. We'll bring you back when we got your payoff to come, which is not not too great. Um... Yeah, I really like the actor. Problems, but yeah, uh, could have been a could have been uh, definitely the potential for among the best MCU villains. Yes, but I think the real star was uh, yeah the rocket flashbacks, which were mm. uh, really oh, do you great, remember, um, and I I fucking love them, and they made me cry. There's a quote from James Gunn that was like, "Because you see the Guardians films, Rocket has really been the protagonist." It's like, no, he hasn't. No, it was obviously <laughs> Peter. obviously it was Peter. Obviously Peter. I don't Which is, mind. Yeah, it's I, totally fine. I fight. really like Rocket. I really like Rocket. He's one of yeah, my Rocket's favorite great. Marvel characters. I love raccoons, and he's a raccoon, and he's also an interesting lad. That's right. It's one of the starter Pokemon here in Arkansas. Mm. Uh, what? Well, I guess because Zigzagoon kind of uh, he's got like kind of a raccoon. No, just raccoons. Back on Zigzagoon. God damn it! Uh, no, I'm just saying. <laughs> I like the starter <laughs> Pokemon change per state as well. <laughs> uh, yeah. Stuff, right, so the starter Pokemon in Alaska would be like a Kodiak bear or something. Yeah, here you can choose between a raccoon, a possum, and an armadillo. So it's uh, you know, you, 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 got, you got your Arkansas. options. Cool. Do you have them in Arkansas? Armadillos, yeah. They're, they're, they're an interesting critter, aren't they? Little, they are. Uh, they're little um, rolling <laughs> up in a bowl to protect themselves from the world. Uh, but yeah, Rocket. I I I kind of hope that they don't. Uh, I don't want to. Isn't it so? I remember a couple of years ago, I was like excited by the prospect of Daredevil actually getting to like participate in a uh, <laughs> full, full sense. Now I dread it. Fucking isn't Echo coming out like like soon a week or something? Yep, there he is. Hey, I, don't forget he, Madam Web. Oh, uh, yeah, but that's yeah. <laughs> you Good can't Lord. forget oh, Madam Web. Talk about the trailer, the trailer that has that. destroyed a movie before it's even came. Out. Yeah, it's like for smoke. She, what was the line? She, she was researching spiders in the spiders Amazon. In the Amazon when she died. Her mother was. Yeah, she was researching. My mother was in the Amazon researching spiders when she died. <laughs> Echo leads us out of that exactly one. When I'm back home, what a treat! What a fucking treat! Fucking lightning in a too. bottle. Memes from that one. Oh yeah. man, that brought me so much. That, those memes will bring me more joy than the film. And I that it's, there's no way the film can. Keep up with the memes. So now you need a meme of that mola, but with Madam Web. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I was actually going to say the though, word right too. You know, like right before she died, like she's doing that research, <laughs> and then immediately the bad guys show up and kill her. Like, okay, it's cool. just such a funny configuration of words. Yes. Yeah. I was going to say though, uh, as a change of pace, we we went from like a lot of you know shitty things talking about how how these these couldn't be, but then we got the boogie and wings fight. That was Yo! a huge highlight. Uh, I wasn't around for that, unfortunately. But no, because you would have see. loved watching the video I set up for us. That, that, was, that was surprisingly like... Yeah. <laughs> people absolutely loved that coverage. I mean, it's, the uh, boogie and what, sorry? What was the second thing? The boogie, boogie and Wings and of Redemption, Redemption boxing match. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. It was, uh, oh, it was quite epic. They the do fight a itself. together now. What a crazy yeah, arc. <laughs> yeah, we had a whole episode about that, <laughs> kind of. Is absolutely insufferable on it. Yes, uh, um, and, and he's lucky as hell to have it. Yep. Is Wings of Redemption a YouTuber? He's a streamer. Yeah, he's a, he's a oh, YouTuber okay. slash streamer. <laughs> oh, wait, he doesn't make YouTube, but he used to make... He made Call of Duty commentaries back in the day, like during the Machinima days, 
Uh, and then he played uh, against Syndicate 1v1 on Bog. <laughs> and he, bro- <laughs> he, he broke his controller and, and the rest is history. That will be such a huge <laughs> highlight for the podcast if they could get Syndicate to play him again on Bog. Oh my god. That would be pretty funny, yeah. Do it. I don't think I saw that boxing match. I should check that out. Oh, you, you should really you should funny. instead watch our coverage. It's glorious. It I've got a whole long. like history of it. And, uh, <laughs> okay. The fight itself is like a, a minute and a half. <laughs> but... It's, it was it was kind of lame, but just one round is that it? Is, I wouldn't want to spoil it. I wouldn't want to spoil it. You, you, it, you know. it ended okay. up being it, it ended up being a fight. It was a fight. Yes, it was sort of a fight. It was an experience. It, they had eight hundred pounds between them, didn't they? Yes, one yeah, ring, yeah, eight hundred pounds. Yeah. Poor ring. Uh, I mean, but. Yeah, you know the. Oh, you so much mentioned the national anthem was the best part. Do you guys oh, remember God, that? Oh God, yeah. <laughs> did Gideon? Gideon? That's the name of the guy, right? I don't know who his name was, but that was what the. F- it was so you awful. Know what? Props to the man for going out there and he doing did it. That. He did it. <laughs> He, he, did he pushed it. through it even while everybody was booing him for butchering the <laughs> United States. Never, but bo- don't never boo someone doing their best to sing the anthem. That is an, I think that is in very poor taste. How do you know when they're doing their best versus when they just don't give a shit though? Because like mean, he, oh, you gotta, you gotta channel your inner patriot. Inner patriot detector. Yeah, it's an American thing. You kind of pick up when somebody. You, you know, uh, if you, you would know. Okay, I'll have to. You guys will have to pull you out whenever I need to know. I'll be like, can you tell? Let me know. I'll let you know. We know. We need to know whether or not to throw throw rotten fruit or not. But yeah, you can't throw like Cartman and because that's a delicious and healthy snack. So. Rotten. I'm, I'm imagining yeah, that's Cartman that's why and Kyle have to, fighting yeah. each other. That's why you got that rotten? In. <laughs> like in cartoon wars, where they get tired really fast. And it just becomes sad to watch really quickly. You're just, they did oh, not, just, honestly, that, that wasn't guys. it. Yeah, that wasn't the problem. You'll have to, like I said, you'll have to check it out. But you should check out our video okay, on it because okay. I put in all the history. And you get the wonderful reactions. I have a feeling that will be in the running for like favorite thing of the year on our next anniversary. Uh, cool. it'll, have, it'll have competition, like the Boogie documentary. Wouldn't that have been for the last anniversary, though? Wouldn't that have already been? Oh, yeah, you're right. Uh, it must now. have Sorry. it must have scored well then. I can't remember now. I think it did. Yeah, because you guys love Boogie. You also love Boogie. Is um, we had because I I mean I I'm not trying to mention every single thing we did, but I was going to say the uh, the Cinema Wars, the first episode. We still need to do more of them. Uh, mm-hmm. Wins versus sins on Doctor Strange: Multiverse of Madness. That was a particularly interesting episode. The yes, comparison of the power of both of those <laughs> channels. Yes, a very good template that uh, I certainly hope that we do in the future. Oh, it will. We've already. It's gonna be Last Wish because mm. I think did it was it Wins that Ooh. came out with the Last Wish mm. video about a month ago. Someone was like, like, "Oh, like, here we like, go." Oh. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. Cinema Wars is back on the bed, you boys. A win should have the easy task of praising a very good film. Yes, because yes, yeah, Sins won the Multiverse of Madness battle, but it was concluded that it was it was sort of weighted in his favor. Because so the film that's is why so we're terrible. waiting it in the other person's yes. favor this time. Because good luck finding a lot wrong with the last wish. Exactly. But uh, how can I? I mean, it's next. I just want to. Even if even if there's some other release we should talk about first, I just got to do it. I burst to talk about it. This is when the wonderful, the incredible highlight of the year for video gaming history, Lord of Ring Golem, was released. Yes, Lord that's of right. Ring Golem. <sighs> what a game. What a highlight. It, you don't get many of them in, in a lifetime, even. A game that can That's provide you such... Because there are, there are plenty of bad games that aren't at all interesting, fun, or engaging to play. But like that one had just enough stupid shit happening that it made it incredibly entertaining. And then all the meta things about the release, the dev team, the, the, the apology. It's, um, and then, of course, the memes. How bad, like... The, perform- the, the animations, the, the mechanics... Everything about the game, the fact that it was connected to Lord of the Rings, is like get out. <laughs> like you don't deserve to be It's been a really yeah. It's been rough to be a Lord of the Rings fan. Getting that after Rings of Power, oi. Yeah, I mean there was a time because uh, I'd spoken to Wolf about Lord of the Ring Gollum ages ago, right back when it was like a flickering idea of something that might be developed. And it was like that's a strange choice. Could have stayed that way. <laughs> Like, why would you make that instead of anything else you can do with the IP? And then it was like, well, what do you know? What about 
you know, the things you could do with it. There's plenty you could do with well, it. Well, maybe that shows incredible artistic vision that this is really the game that they want to make. They knew it would work. <laughs> they I knew. Personally enjoy, I personally enjoy the return of the uh, terrible licenseware game. <laughs> oh, it feels like one of those, doesn't it? Those Did they ever get this bad before, though? Did they ever get this bad? Oh, yeah, no. Um, licenseware games of like the 2000s were that bad. To commonly. be fair, there was a lot of great ones from that same era. Ones that are remembered incredibly belovedly, if that's even a word. Now listen, we can't all be Return of the King for the Game Boy Advance, okay? Mm. Mm. But, uh... Yeah, I don't know, because I, I played plenty of licensed games. It was fun to be like, oh, I like that movie, I'm going to play this video game. And then being like, oh, well, could be better, could be worse, you know, that sort of thing. I almost miss that era, but this one, this game was, calling it unfinished doesn't really capture. Um. I can kind of <laughs> understand the premise of it, because, like, his ability to sort of navigate terrain in the movies, you could sort of apply that yeah. in a video game context to something like Assassin's Creed, where he just, like... You know, you hold a yes, button and you navigate all this, across all this crazy <laughs> terrain. And like like the gameplay we're seeing right now, that's like straight out of Prince of Persia, basically, like jumping across the pipes. Like, uh, kind of thing. like, like you, have, you can do uh, some like acrobat parkour stuff with it. But of course, they totally fail. Well, John, right? have you got the screen up right now? This is kind of a highlight of. Uh... I can see it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, now, now I want to see. Assassin, <laughs> I want to see Gollum oh, in a little Assassin's Creed hood. Running around, you know, running with the around. hidden blade. <laughs> yeah, like running around in uh, Minas Tirith or something and doing stealth missions and assassinating targets. Man, oh, considering how unfinished this game is, how a was a fishing it? game? Okay. Uh, considering how unfinished <laughs> this uh, this you. game is, it was very long. It was like twenty hours of yes. game gameplay. Oh, <laughs> this was not a short campaign. It was it fucking kept... bizarre. Fucking going and it's so boring. Except the meme parts; those are funny. This this is kind of what I was don't getting. Think though. I've laughed harder, ev maybe ever. I think it's <laughs> the funniest EFAP ever. Was watching the <laughs> gameplay stuff. I I my face hurt. I hurt all over. Yeah. Obviously, but... my soul had as was, it was dead ages ago. But my body just kept going and laughing. It was insane. And towards oh, the end, they just. It's like, oh, open this door. You need to need to glowy things. It's like, okay, and then you search for it. And you search for it. it's like, where the fuck is it? I mean, at, when As is doing that part, it's hilarious. Like he's going in circles the... forever, and I don't blame him because it's fucking stupid. Because nowhere in the game you have to throw a stone at a thing <laughs> for it to drop down. Yeah, that's not even something that comes to your mind. So at some point you randomly look up. There's like, isn't that a glowing thing up there? I have a stone. Maybe that wouldn't that works. It's like, oh, you just introduced a new mechanic like an hour yeah, before the like, game um, ends. It's like yeah. if you're playing an RPG that has magic and you need to melt like an ice block to get through or something like that. And you've mm -hmm. been using the and, and there's no indication that you can use your fire spells to do something or so, you know, literally something like Skyrim. That. Well, we don't well <laughs> maybe. But well, um... Skyrim ain't ready to do that. <laughs> The cart <laughs> section in particular, just how many fucking hilarious deaths there were for everybody who played it. That was it. That made me. That <laughs> almost my soul left my body. It was when so funny. Makes it makes it through it clearly, and then again, it's like, no, you're it not supposed to do it that way. Randomly. It just dies. <laughs> The, that the shit was unreal, yeah. Face. The amount of times he <laughs> completed it without taking a hit, but it just died. He's like, I, I did everything you want me to I do. Did damn what it. You want me to do. <laughs> And then, uh, they yeah, to climb. Uh, no, the the fact they didn't really properly implement sort of death animations. Instead, it was just he turns to ragdoll. So that made it especially funny. Like uh, combined <laughs> with, of course, the <laughs> meh, meh, meh. <laughs> <laughs> it was a uh, it was a very special game. It was a very special experience. Yes, one that uh, we will likely never, ever, ever touch ever again in our entire lives. Any of the people who no. have played it, it's uh, I can't believe it's still. That's one that you would saying, expect. When are you going to do a drunk Gollum? I'm never, never. This it's is a, not, it's it's 20 hours, guys. Like, it's... it's so long. Because there wouldn't even be a one off stream, even if you would do that. It's just like, uh, I don't want to touch that. It's stinky. It's big, stinky. one of the highlights where I, I jump into a, across a chasm and then I slam my head into a wall. He goes, Bleh! and a blood splatters <laughs> on the screen and then it activates a cutscene. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> Only the best. There's so much to learn from it. 
Yes. Yeah, how not to make video games or ex I don't even know what to say. That's and I this believe... is fucking AI apology. Well, yeah, where, where, where they referred apology. to the franchise as the Lord of Rig. Or... The Lord of Rig. Lord of Ring. <laughs> fucking hell. I thought it was just Lord of Ring. Oh, we call Wait. it Lord of Rings, it's funnier. <laughs> oh, okay. Sometimes I can't remember which is which. Someone in chat just mentioned that was established last night that the only way this is getting played again is if I, if I get cancer. For, ch for charity. <laughs> yeah, we said to raise money for him, chat would be like, we'll, we'll pay if you play Lord of Rings Golf. <laughs> <laughs> we'll it pay for your cancer the... treatment if you play Lord of Rings Golf. Ring Golem, Golem. And Metal's oh. like, I'll just die. <laughs> 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 It they seems in the development phase they didn't put they didn't put any thought into the mechanics of it beyond a sort of loose like assassin platforming Creed sort of, of clone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But not not even I mean I I don't think Assassin's Creed is a particularly deep game but it doesn't even have the depth of that like by all indication just looking at the footage of it. So like they started making it and it's just like oh shit now what do we do? I don't know. Let's just have these you know Ridiculous platforming mini games like this, like this cart jumping thing that you're showing right now, <laughs> and it's nothing works you know. properly. It's uh... <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, like it's like in normal processes for game developments. You have to play through in like QA testing. There have been times for months and months, if not years, where they've played builds of this game in the lead up to its release. At one point, did they know they were fucked? Because they just carried on going. <laughs> oh, a long time immediately. Ago. Mm -hmm. Oh, it just they... tends to be the nature of licenseware studios that they don't really care. A lot of them are just collecting the check. Yeah, because Go Gollum doesn't do anything other than jumping and climbing over shit. Like, I don't see any he wins you know, arguments. menu navigation or Reading. leveling up things or like a skill tree or I don't know. Some yeah, there's kind none of, of that. Ability map or like there's no. Uh, there's <laughs> There's like zero depth to this game. <laughs> like, beyond just, like, it being badly programmed. The fact that I'm in chat for Mel's clip right now saying, it doesn't work, you have to flume bit. <laughs> <laughs> That's yep. good advice for the game, yeah. Pretty much. A lot of the stuff you do complete, you're like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that worked. But, uh, yeah. Not gonna forget Lord of Ring Golem. What an experience. Thanks that was so much a... For... Those were streams for the ages. Yes. And then what was released soon after? Uh, well, uh... Or before. The Flash was in June, right? There, that's what I was gonna be around for, was The Flash. Another great landmark oh. in the world of digitalism. Cinema, yeah. It's, uh... This is cinema. Yeah. Truly, this the is one cinema. That, the one that assured that, uh, that the DCE was absolutely finished and completely <laughs> done, and there'd be no chance of it ever continuing. That was guessed to be low, but it was kind of like the Marvels, where people were like, oh, I did think that low. It's like, yeah. No. Nobody uh, and it was shit. anticipated by Warner Brothers to make a lot of money, and it ended up being one of the biggest bombs of all time. It lost over $200 million. Um, I yep. I th I threw it on for my friends. I was like, "Come on, it'll be funny. It'll be it'll be like Justice League. We'll we'll have a laugh." And it was just such a drag the whole way through. And I apologize. I'm like, "I'm sorry." <laughs> I didn't like it when they ruined. I'm Michael sorry Keaton, you put you through that. <laughs> it is. I think it's laughable in the first like twenty minutes for that kind of format. But then you have about a stretch of an hour that's kind of eh. Uh, yeah. And then the rest is okay again. You have to have somebody there to explain Ezra Miller. That that would be part of the fun. Oh, you mean like the crimes or? <laughs> yeah, just just list them off while you're watching the movie. Yeah. What, uh, what do you mean list them off? You forget about those crimes when you watch the film. That's... Who said that? <laughs> who was the one who said that? It wasn't the, the director, like, right? Designer or something? Oh yeah, okay. <laughs> he said you'll forget about his crimes when you watch the movie. What? Well, they oh, just yeah, it's just a, such gotta, a great performance. <laughs> Did uh, Snyder say that? No, Snyder, um, no. no, 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 no <laughs> oh, okay. Like, um, I think it was just some like costume designer. Oh no, because it wasn't Snyder. Sure. Sorry. Yeah. Some costume designer. <laughs> I, I don't know who said it. <laughs> but I remember. You'll the forget quote. about his crimes when you watch the movie. <laughs> 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 Fucking brilliant! That's brilliant wait, PR. Wait, no, no, wait. Was it Grace White Randolph? Did you? No, who said it? Who? I... Oh God, yeah, was it like Grace? I was gonna say I could buy the Grace said it. That Grace would say. <laughs> That no, sounds like a racism. Who said it? Sounds that like a racism. 
Oh well, yeah, that's the point yeah. that, that was. Uh, <laughs> that, it's such a terrible movie. It's such a sludge, like shitty movie. It is. Yeah, the crimes of Ezra Miller are a much more entertaining story than the Flash. Well, Absolutely. You can actually make a really enjoyable <laughs> film out of that. Well, and the story of the Flash, as it sits in a in a meta sense, is much more interesting than the Flash as well. It's um the especially True. this the CG reviving of dead actors coming to a head with that one being uh, like fuck you. So gross. Yeah. It's so gross that you just like drag them out and put them in your crap movie to try and mm -hmm. prop it up. I hate it. It's so crap. Ugh. Did you love how the whole point of the movie kind of was? Oh, if you fuck around in the past, it's gonna fuck everything up and in the end he just changes something else and that's yep fine yeah, he, that good. The, the big emotional moment where he realizes he has to let his mum go because he's learned yeah. his lesson and then immediately he's like oh no i fuck it i haven't learned the lesson at all i'm going to do the same thing again because we need to somehow get george clooney on the screen yeah Ooh, yes, and i guess in this in this scenario you got lucky that the whole world didn't collapse in itself or something yes. That means that Arnold Schwarzenegger, Mr. Freeze, is a possibility in the DCEU. Not anymore, I guess, because... No, not anymore. Done. Done. Unless James Gunn is a genius. <laughs> it's, it's, he's not, yeah. So, you know, Come it's on, on Arnold. Him, but, uh, it's over. Also, I, I, worth noting before we move out of June, you got to remember, uh, Final Fantasy sixteen was coming out, I had to buy it. Diablo Four was coming out, I had to buy it. <laughs> those, those <laughs> came out and, uh, it came out well, that's June from the well. documentary. Yes, yeah. that's right. But those games did come out, and I think yeah, it was only the... Metal, and I played Final Fantasy yeah. 16, and none of us... I quite enjoyed anybody... it. I, I did yeah, like, I I like it. it. I did stop, though, um, <laughs> at I some point, stop. because I think... Oh, well, did I did. You... I, I, games I are like that, where you enjoy them for, you know, a while, and then when you feel like you're not getting your enjoyment, you're just like, you know what? I've got my, uh, I got my fun out of it. Time to move on. And that's fine. Um, that's fine. But did anybody play Diablo 4, though? No. I haven't even looked at it. <laughs> no, I've heard I got a really bad copy thing. and I never I've heard many it. bad things, but uh, no, have not played it. It's gonna, yeah, getting me to buy a Blizzard game is uh, it's gonna mm. be a big ask. The only Blizzard game I play is StarCraft Two, <laughs> so <laughs> they got yeah, my money boy, over a decade boy, ago, boy, so they oh can my fuck God. off. Got him. Um, but yeah, that's uh, also I uh, I think oh wait no that's uh, that's later. We didn't talk about uh, Across the Spider Verse. No, oh. that came out this year too. Interesting. Well, that, it Cross looked Spider really good yeah. and was uh, uh, was kind of weird. The whole well, no, the, the window was society. coming on. That came out. Of, that, that was we're in June and it's it's over. We're well, you highlighted it, Fringy. What did you no think possible, about it? There's no possible I, way to yeah. You guys have something it, to say, right? I just realized it. it has really good animation and art. It really is super impressive. Oh, true. Mm. I I do yeah, really hope. True. I, I do hope, though, that they actually do address that crunch problem that got talked about a bunch, because that was uh -huh. really weird. Seeing people come out when that article came out, the same people who were saying that crunch was bad when it was visual effects guys going, oh, you know, it's just the price you got to pay for art. That was <laughs> really weird. Well, really all of weird. a sudden, we got a lot of Whiplash fans in here. Yeah, was, <laughs> I'm like, was, okay, all right. It was yeah. really <laughs> weird seeing people flip their entire <laughs> position on that thing because it was a movie that they liked. But um, mm -hmm. but yeah, that's uh, uh, you know, Pikmin Four. Uh, did anybody play Pikmin Four? I haven't played no. the Pikmin game in my life. I haven't played any Pikmin games, but I played Pikmin Four, and like that was th that game's really good. That's like a really good chill out game. It's it's a very chill. Well, at times it can get incredibly tense and fucking like, oh no, I'm losing all my Pikmin. But otherwise, it's like this really chill game that has a cool aesthetic. I don't know what uh. What's it called, the effect that, that you can do where it's like, it's kind of like, it's, um, it, it's, it's like the effect that they use to make miniatures seem like a lot bigger than they are, but they still look kind Worst of small. Like it, yeah, where they do that kind of like with the environments because you're maneuvering around all of these like really, you're a really small guy in a really big place. And it's, um, it's really cool. It's like a really cool aesthetic. It's a really fun, chill game. I had a blast with it. I nearly 100 percent of it, like 95% completed it. Really good. All right. I remember playing, uh, I never played the first Pikmin, but I played Pikmin 2 a long time ago, and I really like it. I thought it was super charming and fun and strategical. It was one of the first um, games I played where it was like, wow, this is like difficult. I got to really, you know, like try to win. So that was fun. Oh, I played the uh, hell out of one. Noting, um, I, my window's open and there's a bunch of birds outside doing a bunch of chirping, but it looks like they've, uh, Hello, birds. Down. Family reunion. 
I'm not sitting with them up in the tree or anything. I'm not sitting outside with a little, <laughs> little laptop up there. Tree. Dude, they'd be way fucking louder if that were true. <laughs> holding a microphone while <laughs> my fellow brethren, living brethren, not because I'm a dinosaur or anything, just chilling out. Birds are dinosaurs. They're li- and they're, you're living you with dinosaurs, the that's right. Class. Yeah, that's you're right. Walking, yeah. Um, but, uh, oh, uh, it's worth noting Secret Invasion came out in June as well, oh, wow. I want to say. Yeah, if, that was June, oh, I think. We got, a, we, got, we got a bit before that for the old e I oh, mean, the crazy uh, huge well, highlight right now is, of course, possibly the worst film of the year. Be up to everybody for what they want to pick for that. <laughs> uh, Indiana, Indiana Jones. Jones. Of oh, boy. Da-da-da-da. Uh, what can God, be said about this? Movie. Yeah, Jesus. absolutely horrendous. Uh, Fucking yeah. awful. Uh. One of the worst movies ever. Yes, yes. I'm getting tired of saying it, but it's true. It is. It's, one of the <laughs> it's worst Hollywood's fault. Seen. It's not mine. It's not my fault that they keep producing movies in this spot on my standards. Uh, it isn't my fault. I'm blameless. So was yeah, it really not Quantumania? Um, I feel like there's more redeeming elements of Quantumania. Modoc. Yeah, Quantumania had Modoc, <laughs> whereas Indiana Jones is like, yeah, Indiana, he's a he's a miserable loser. Nobody cares about his adventures or anything that he has to say. He's worse than his goddaughter at everything, and he wants to die. That's that's this <laughs> film. I mean, that's 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 it. That's the movie. Yeah. Well, she's a depressed Indiana alcoholic. Ju- Indiana Jones yeah. is a depressed, divorced loser who wants to just die. I'm so tired. Ta- why is Damn. why are they all like divorced losers? Why I don't is know, that man. Like, they're always like divorced. Well, they're old. They're old. Where, where else do you take that character? Where else? That's it. That's the what place. What else did that happen in? Where the guy was divorced, of course. Ah, oh, what was it? Uh, and uh, so it's funny you say that because I was editing it yesterday. Um, Morbi, not Morbius. <laughs> Morbius. Mor- Morbius. Wait, they Morbius. Is, they assassinated uh, Morbius. 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 Yes, Morbius, Morbius is divorced too. His regular too. wife is divorced, and his kids don't like him. Yeah, but- yeah. <laughs> even Morbius. <laughs> I want to oh save. my god, that oh, uh... even in that shitty show, you can't get away from it. You can't just be happily married to a woman you love. You know, boring, and you know, after so many years after that, what they did to Luke and TLJ oh, to do that to Indiana is just like, oh, for fuck's sake, they've done this to two different Harrison Ford yeah. characters, Han Solo yeah. and and Indiana Jones. Yeah, he's a, he's so a shitty father in both of them. That's crazy. It's so lame that that's the only idea that you have. You can't no, have it's an subversive. old man who it's clever for has me. something to mm. say and offer to the world. You can't do a story of he may be an old. You know, an old dog, but he can still learn some new tricks, and his old tricks are really cool and interesting as well. Instead, yeah. it's like he's an old dog who his legs broken, and he's sad, <laughs> he doesn't bark anymore. Just he doesn't waiting want to go for out the bullet. Yeah, he's, he's just easy yeah. <laughs> to the wind hit. so you he can gets shoot hit me. By the bullet, and then he carries on living for what feels like hours and hours and hours. Yeah. As he's just sitting <laughs> yep. on the floor of an airplane. As they go up into the sky to find a sky portal that's somehow affected by continental drift, which sends them back 3,000 years instead of. <laughs> Like, what the fuck was going on with that film? Again, though, it's I think mad. that confused Jeez. everybody. I assumed that that was just a troll by Indiana, and that the truth is it was always going to send them to the place it did because it was, was going to make itself happen or whatever, right? But then why would he even? Tell I don't want to answer any because... questions related to that film. <laughs> just... <laughs> no, it, there not is, even um... Oppenheimer was divorced. <laughs> <laughs> there is an interview from the, the pre-publicity material when it's it's uh, Indiana uh, Indiana Jones, Harrison Ford, Phoebe Waterbridge, and the direct who was the director for this film? Some um, uh, James Mangold. Some asshole. James Mangold. The sitting there, some and, asshole. Yeah, and the, the, the interviewer says, "What's they asking each of them? What's your worst fear?" Phoebe Waterbridge says, "Bees." James Mangold says, "I can't remember what he says," and Harrison Ford says, "Making a bad movie." Um, oh. And no one heard huh. him. So James Mangold asks, "What did you say?" And he said, "Making a bad movie." And then <laughs> Indiana Jones comes out. Ooh, yeah. Yeah. The, uh, the well, idea um, of like immersing, or, like submerging your character in failure as like a way to make him interesting, as if that's the only way to do it, is such a fallacy because it just like depends on broader story that hmm. you're telling. You literally just don't have to do that. He wanted to. We, we talked about this. They're, they're in a happy relationship, right? 
Mangold clearly wanted to deconstruct uh, Indiana Jones in The Dial of Destiny to, to have the film address his legacy and who he is as a person, what he means to the world. I get that. Uh, people would argue that's exactly what he does in Logan. And people would say it's absolutely to a level of success that's a hell of a lot fucking higher than what he did with Indiana Jones. And so there was like a precedent somewhat. But we talked about it earlier. Last Wish is a deconstruction. It does address like Puss's fucking history, which is as crazy as that sounds. Um, but so much more respect is given to not... I can't even... It's so weird to talk about it this way, but, I mean, it it is the same approach. You try... What is Puss in Boots? What does he mean? What does all the stuff he's done achieved for him? What personality traits does he have? What can he offer the world? All this sort of stuff. That's what happens in... Uh, how, do you, how do you do that to a hero? Everyone knows they're great, and it's like, well, that's the thing. Is there a couple of questions left to, to ask? Is there a couple of things more they could learn? And, you know... I think we talked about it, but I was fine with the the space age or interest in everything cosmic could could overthrow archaeology or in some way, shape, or form. Or at least in 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 the life of yeah, Indiana it's like Jones. Toy Story. It's interesting. Exactly, it's cool. Right. Yeah. Uh, but they didn't really use that at all, and it's, and and the direction they took him was so fucking gross. Like, that it's, it's it's genuinely annoying to watch, especially if you did what we did, which I assume is what Little Platoon did. You watch all the ones preceding it. Even yes. fucking Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, as many people say, ends happy for him. Mm -hmm. At least it get, at least that at least he gets that. <sighs> I know I made a point of doing loads of comparisons with Crystal Skull because Crystal Skull is not a good film by any means, but even Crystal Skull gets certain basic fundamental aspects of character journey right in a way that Dart of Destiny just does not. It makes it quite a useful comparison. Dart of Destiny is so much worse than the previous worst film in the franchise. Um, but on the deconstruction point, like one of the important things is you, if you are going to deconstruct the hero, if you are going to knock them back, it can sometimes be essential to do that if the character seemingly has gone on every journey they could ever go on. Uh, at least give them some agency in repairing themselves. At least have them learn the lesson that, say, life is worth living, there is some yeah. new realization, and they can enact that, and so they've come back to the, the full glory as a result of their own agency. Indiana Jones wants to die at the beginning of the film. At the end of the film, Indiana Jones still wants to die, and he has to get twatted in the face by Phoebe Waller-Bridge and dragged <laughs> reluctantly back to life. And Long only time. then, when Marion walks in and says, oh yeah, by the way, someone told me you were feeling a bit pissed off these days, so I've, I'm, I'm back now. Like, what? Like, well, that, that's not I'll a character journey. Now. And did no one think to tell her this at any point in the proceeding? No? Uh, uh madness. Yeah. What a uh, disgusting shame. Would have been nice if you just didn't bother at all, but we couldn't have that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but then we I can't think I sell remember... it as a movie in theaters. I, I think, I may be wrong, but I remember hearing her, the actress who played, um, what's her name at the end? She wanted a bigger part in it, but she was told, like, no, 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 it's just this, like, end scene. No, we gotta and... make room for this new bitch. <laughs> yeah, but I was just like, what, well, if she wants to do it? Yeah, like... Bring her. Oh, hello. Yep. Oh, his his uh, his Discord. A lot more fleamed. satisfying potentially yep. if it was written correctly. I agree. That's baffling uh, Hollywood decision. Well, and a lot of the discussion about this film was everyone talking about how you could have done a good film because <laughs> <laughs> nobody yeah. nobody thought like you can't absolutely no one's about cannot how you can make it worse. The, one of the first thoughts I think a lot of people had is surely he's too old. But then the second thought everyone has is like, oh wait, but you can still do something with him even when he's that old. You can Indiana, bring in short of course. Round. You do, well, it's just countless <laughs> fucking things and um, the obvious move that everyone wants and they didn't do it. And what they gave us was so horrifically shit. That... And, yeah, and unfortunately, well, I, I've, you could try and recast even if you wanted to keep the franchise going, recast him and keep him young. Like, do a James Bond with Indiana Jones would be, I, I would say, a better approach than trying to work around the fact that Harrison Ford is impossibly old. But they didn't do that. And then uh, even the, the interviews again are just. Dick Van Dyke recently? <laughs> yeah, fair enough. And Patrick Stewart's still kicking around as well. But <laughs> men would you know, die from a sour skittle. You get, you get the, these points again in interviews where the, two of the younger female members of the cast are asked, what's it like acting alongside, you know, in fight scenes with Harrison Ford? And one of them says, well, you know, he can still get up unassisted. Oh, wow. Yeah, can, that's yeah, like a brilliant. real action hero. Yeah. He can stand up without <laughs> assistance. That is Indiana Jones. Well done. Da, 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 da. <laughs> Exciting, very exciting. Oh, and don't remember they uh, they fucking killed Mutt too. So. Yeah, <laughs> off screen. Out he goes. 
in the one scene where Harrison Ford was kind of allowed to act, we learned that Mutt's fucking dead. He went to go die in Vietnam to spite Indiana Jones. Which doesn't accord oh, with wow. Mutt's character anyway, but yeah. Mm -hmm. No. Um, hey, we, uh, did, we did Dead Space 1991 at that point, by the way. Oh, uh -huh. so finally, we can go to the other spectrum of movie oh, quality. He knows. <laughs> Oh, finally. Thumbs up, Skeleman in space. Great stuff. <laughs> Everyone should have checked what? out that EFAP movies because it is just brilliant. It really is. Everyone check out our EFAP movies on Dead Space, starring Brian Cranston. And Tin Pan. Mm. Our favorite yeah. character. Who got a rough end, but you know what? It was a heroic end. He came yeah. back. He got rebuilt. I don't know if that's Tin Pan 2 at this point, you know? I just don't know. Uh -oh. oh, yeah, that's getting pretty existential. Yeah. Those are questions I feel, I feel like the film is suited to discuss. <laughs> <laughs> Someone said it was boring as fuck. How dare you? <laughs> what? Hey. No, it wasn't. That was... We had a when, gay I mean, it was time. boring for us, but it wasn't boring for you. When the, <laughs> the people turned into Muppets and got thrown across rooms and their lifeless bodies oh, would separate from their heads, that was just joy. genius. Yes. I, I, I like Wonderful. how the, the main character hero threw Brian Cranston into the monster <laughs> so he could rip his off. <laughs> Why did they do that? Why did they do that indeed? Uh, I think next up is Mission Impossible. Dead Reckoning. Dun, 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 Whoa, dun, that was dun, really dun, shitty film. That keeps coming up. Really I have to keep being like, God, it, it was so awful. Anus. Everyone keeps trying to like speculate on why it failed, and nobody's willing to do the whole like it was bad. Yeah. <laughs> well, they do could this with the MCU it. stuff. No one wants to just say because they're shit. Because mm -hmm. it was bad. bad. It was poorly written. Lots of plot issues. Characters kind of suck. Everyone's they an idiot. They disrespected moron, the franchise with this one. As far as I'm concerned, they didn't remember their history, which is really weird. Especially because some of a lot of it was built by Macquarie. I don't understand why you wouldn't want to use it, right? Um, and just the complete misunderstanding and waste of an AI villain. Like, you, even though you yeah. can make that perfectly relevant, I just mm. it's very hard to do you, when you're doing it. It's the all-powerful AI. It's infected absolutely everything. It can do everything. It can predict everything except when the plot Everything. needs it not to do that, in which case it doesn't do it yet. And some, and what, what the hell was the deal with the guy communing with it in the coffin on the train? <laughs> we'll find out next time, okay? <laughs> oh, that was the, what did we call it? We called it the, oh, the cyber, um, what did cyber we call coffin? it? We called it something funny. God I don't damn. know, but it's it's broken now anyway. It just, just exploded. Yeah, when well, it was an explodey train. If someone in chat remembers what we called the funny cyberpunk coffin, please tell me. <laughs> I, I feel like we had a funny name for it. It's the only thing that brought us joy, and we forgot it. <laughs> it's funny as well, because those are like AI villain terrible ideas. Like, you can make it work, but it is really hard. And when the film opened with like, this thing has infected basically every system known to man, it's like, it's over. It's you. You should have told me that. It's over. <laughs> it's done. We, we're we gotta unplug fucking everything and destroy everything and start over. Gotta be careful something. with something like that. I hope you save those books on farming because we can testing. truck again, boys. It's testing my powers of recall, but isn't it broken right from the beginning? Because they have to. So it's on the submarine. There's a key. The Russian. It's a Russian submarine. The Russians made the key. Oh. The Russians know where the sub sinks, and the Russians made the key anyway. So they can just build another one and go to the submarine and it's done. It but... was the only, I think, legitimately kind of cool part was the Russians figuring out what the fuck is going on with this thing on the screen. I was like, oh, this is tense and interesting. And then the rest of the film happens. So that yeah. kind of stinks. There was, there was a little clever bit there as well, because the point they were trying to make is that we're so over-reliant on the technology and the AI. Yeah. The only way they yeah, can see... Yeah, you can't just look out a window. Either. So when, when they lose it, then they are completely blind and directionless. That was quite clever. But yes, then, it is. Yeah, yeah. Five minutes of film, and everything else happens after it. But if you watch it and you watch that first five minutes, and then you just turn it off and go home, I mean, yeah, you'd have thinking something, maybe something there was a good film there that, that I didn't get you know? to see. Yeah, something to be um, said. It was weird that like the only character work that I was able to appreciate was Haley Atwell's, rather than all the main characters having several moments that were fucking weird. I'm starting to remember like. The airport sequence where yeah, they were convinced that like a bomb was going to go off that would literally kill everybody. It was like, it didn't feel, oh, yeah. you didn't feel that at Don't all. Don't let Ethan worry about it. I'm going to yeah. go disarm it. Oh no, I didn't bring my tools to disarm it. Oh gosh. Rookie, Rookie, Rookie Blunder. Yes. 
by not bringing my tools and opening it, I armed it. Now I got questions. And the, and the, oh my god. The, the final about me. The final spin oh, on the, the riddle machine, which could be done possible. with um process of elimination, and Banji couldn't think about that. Like he couldn't come up with that himself. Remember, and it solves yep, itself because he just waits. Twist the dial. Yeah, you, all you have to do is twist the dial because this process you, you can brute force that. Yeah. There's only the one dial left. Of, <laughs> the the idea of an AI that is learning wants to learn about the humans it's trying to defeat is is a really interesting idea that they in no way do anything with. No. It's like it's like you you basically kind of Nailed it when he said it's like the the shitty version of like an AI villain story. They do nothing with that as a premise to the point where you might even forget who the villain is in this movie. And then uh, as a as a weird aspect, but I kind of think it's at least somewhat true is that they they marketed the hell out of their big stunt, and it wasn't a particularly yeah. invigorating and shocking like stunt. It was neat. It was really neat, but it wasn't as cool as the plane you know? in uh in in Rogue Nation or the helicopter chase and uh or climbing the Burj Khalifa. Yeah, yeah, those were all better. Yeah. Um, and they have I, to dude, add I even, the, I, this massive element of luck that comes into it as well, because yeah. it's not just that the stunt's called, it's that he has to crash through the exact right window at the exact right <laughs> second oh, oh, to yeah. crash into the villain the second before he kills the person. So, oh, no, so it, it could have been crash yourself that. through the side of a train, ooh, I don't know, man. Like, maybe go, go on a different death. plan. I He's thought he was going to land on the top and do some fun action, like, oh, fight on a train. It's a callback, everyone. It's a throwback, everybody. To the um, first Mission Impossible. What a fun little quaint movie. Yep. Uh, so you got, quaint, I guess. got that. The fact that it's part one, which is apparently you got to be careful doing that. Because... Uh, well, now it's it's just part one of nothing. Whatever. Part, <laughs> part one two. of one. <laughs> have a different name. Part one of one. Which and then, is not a lie. Uh, and then on top of all of that, uh, Ilsa's fate, which I think most uh, people are willing yeah. to agree, even if they like the film, was not well done at all. That was crap. It was very crap. <laughs> Yeah, she gets killed by some guy be because of being. She's being. I don't know. She wants to fight him when she doesn't have to. And there she was so much wrong with just it. Shoot him and be done with it. She didn't have know, her guns, and, then, and she didn't pick up any guns. And then there's all the con convoluted, crazy shit. Remember the remember when Mantis yeah. and her goons fight uh, Tom Cruise in like an alleyway that's really thin. That was strange. Yeah, that was yeah. an odd one. Yeah. And then she, like, categorically, in a deterministic way, is, is seen by the AI to be traitorous because of that event being that she was spared. But then you're like, well, why couldn't you trace that back even earlier and know that that would happen? I don't know. Yeah, I mean, if you're a super duper smart computer. <sighs> it's all, it's such uh, a fucking disappointment, that film. Mm-hmm. Yep. And Fallout is just this weird, anomalous, amazing film. Yes. Everyone needs to see Mission Impossible Fallout. It's incredibly one, yeah. good. One of the best action one, movies. One and Fallout. One yeah. of the best do action a, movies, yeah. I'm do a rewatch I haven't seen in a long time. Really good. Stellar. Um, really next stellar. up, I believe, is uh, Oppenheimer, which is my second favorite movie of the year. Oppenheimer is good. Very, very shit. good. We didn't do coverage uh, of that. We, sequel. we didn't, no, we didn't um, coverage, but... but we had uh, mentioned we saw it and we really loved it. I well, it's we really liked it. Best I guess film in a long time. It does uh, seem to be. It's like, a three-hour uh, biopic, a uh, movie. Very strong more, uh, character study. Yeah, yeah. great it's, soundtrack it's, and filmmaking work and a good. It, it presents the series of events really well in a comprehensive way, even if it has flashbacks and it's not super linear. It's easy to keep track of what's going on. They do a good job with, you know, presenting the stakes of what they need to do. You know, Oppenheimer's state of mind, his family situation, you know, who he is. It's, uh, well, I think it's what I point to really is it's um, an instance of when Nolan decided he wanted to do some, like, kind of, some kind of, you know, crazy little idea of, like, narrative framing and, uh, and uh, like, when he's done it before. I feel like... Dude, Dunkirk, man. I don't understand what the thinking was with that structure. I don't get it. Can somebody help me with that? Why did he do the one week, one day, one hour thing? And then try mm -hmm. to trick you into, you know, like thinking that it was like, oh, see, you think that all of the events are running together, but they're actually, they're in a different order. Isn't that kind of interesting? What was that? That's, that's the kind of thing that makes you go, oh. I don't even know if it makes me go, oh, I think it makes me go, why the fuck do you do that? Like, I feel like it makes your movie <laughs> worse. <laughs> it makes your movie worse. For... Whereas in this case, the whole framing of you've got the scenes that are in color and the scenes that are in black and white. And then by the time you get to the end of the film, you understand that it's essentially the difference of the perspectives of Oppenheimer and Strauss 
um, of Strauss's worldview is incredibly rigid. It's all framed through his situation and his aspirations at this particular moment, whereas Oppenheimer's is more um, broad. It's also more confused and a little bit contradictory in terms of he keeps, it's kind of like hard to ascertain exactly how he feels about his life and the decisions that he's made and um, what his uh, achievement, his scientific achievement means for the world. Um, to essentially have a story set up where, like, it tries to push you in the direction of focusing very heavily on um, the whole fight between Oppenheimer and Strauss, only to sort of reveal that that was, like, that wasn't what he was thinking about at all. There wasn't some game there that Oppenheimer was playing that it was actually, that he was, like, obsessed with and, and stuck in these thoughts that he had about um, the nature of his accomplishment. It's like, that's cool, that's cool. And then you've just got, like, a lot of standard beats, a lot of really great filmmaking like great cinematography practical effect sound design yep. and a yeah and a great soundtrack an excellent performance by killian murphy an excellent like really strong performances from the cast all around it's just like a really great film it's a really cool film super yeah. impressive in the way that it was constructed and put together i like it a lot it's my favorite nolan film in a long time is it even better than interstellar Oh yeah, it's better than Interstellar. Yeah, oh, okay. it is. All right, all right. Amazing. Yeah. That's good. Ah. That's good. And uh, yeah, it, it surprised everybody at the box office. Didn't expect it to make uh, yeah that kind it of money. Is let's. Oh, see. I guess it's, that means we should talk about Bobby the... then too, right? Uh, I guess yeah, Bobby gotta, came out yeah. the same day. Uh, yep. Yeah. Like Barbie happened. <laughs> I don't like it very much. No. <laughs> I gotta say, I kind of really don't at all like Barbie. What it says and how it goes about saying it. Um, I think it, it unintentionally said a lot of things that it definitely did not mean to. It's a pretty incompetently written film that uh, unfortunately wastes what could have been pretty cool. as just like a little idea and a bit of fun. It's, it's two films jammed into one. You, you know, the first half of it, which is sort of Lady Bird Redux, Greta Gerwig's just working on familiar themes, motherhood. Um, the difficulties with you know young daughters and coming to terms with that, that sort of humanistic overcoming of differences, realizing that you are different people, but you are at the same time, you owe each other a lot. That's a theme that she's touched on in a number of other things. It's quite a nice theme. I don't mind that at all. Um, and the film's semi-coherent -co when it's sticking on that. But then the, the around the halfway point is, is when it decides, yeah, that's not enough. We also have to ironically create the best argument for the patriarchy ever put on film. And we have to compare women's happiness to small parks, and then we have to deprogram them because being happy is not allowed. Um, and then in the end, what's being a woman? It's having a vagina. And that's, that's yeah, nice. it's thematically confused film, Barbie. There's some nice things to be said yeah. about it, but overall it's <clears throat> a mess. Oh, I'd say so. Yeah, well, it feel, yeah, it feels like the writers didn't even know what they were trying to say with it. Like, I, I, I actually like the first act of it, even if I felt that it was missing a sort of prologue element of like, you know, maybe you could have the opening scene, the little girl who's like, you know, upset by some, you know, family dynamic gone wrong. And that's why she feels, that's why like Barbie is feeling these weird things in Barbie land where she feels like I got to go to the real world world and find out what's going on. Um, even if it was missing that, like I've, I thought it was a fairly strong first act and then it goes into the real world stuff and then I thought it just turned into this mess. And then there's this distinct I distinctly remember this one part where like the this girl character in the human world is introduced and she's uh -oh. She's what? Oh no. Is I that think... Barbie? Like the actual Barbie that I used to play with? And it's like, what? What <laughs> Why would you, you see suck, this you ruin, human you character ruined running my around? Life. Like, yeah. <laughs> oh, there's so much that, that didn't work. So much. Oh, that and then at that point, no, but like it, it carries. No, it, it tries to do a load of world building mechanical stuff, and then it, it tries for about five seconds and drops it. So you have the, the whole idea that all the Barbies and Barbie world are being played with by real girls. That's dropped immediately. Um, and there's a bunch more along those lines, but you get to that, that middle act when it is the daughter who's introduced and she gives that thing about Barbie's a fascist, Barbie's a, an icon of, of the patriarchal suppression of women kind everywhere, which then got that discourse thing going as, oh no, Barbie's actually a satire, don't you know? Barbie is satirizing this line of thinking. It's, it's actually oh. a clever 
and satire then, um, point. And then you go and look I at what Greta you. Gerwig actually says about it. And she says, of the same scene, no, no, I thought it was really important to articulate the obviously correct arguments by a very intelligent character. It's not a satire. I like that people want to think it is, but it's not that clever. I... You know what scenes really annoyed me a lot in that film? The one that really annoyed me was um, how part of their ruse of, of destroying the society that the Kens had built was pretending to like their artistic expression. Yeah. They made a lot of jokes about how much their artistic expression was embarrassing and lame, and that one really pissed me off. Like, oh, well, they're all playing the same guitar song, so, like, what a bunch of losers, am I right? And it's, it's like, we're going to pretend that we're actually interested in their artistic expression, but really it's embarrassing and shit, right? That was really fucking Yeah, lame. there's there was a couple yeah, of versions of that. On... The, uh, the, the, the other examples of the same sort of thing would be like, we'll rely on their interest in helping us with tech issues to trick them. And yeah. they want to frame it as though it's an ego thing, right? Like, you're so good at tech that you want to help anybody out because you're the guy to come to. And it's like, yeah, but there's the obvious other aspect of wanting to help people. Like, yeah, what do you mean? Yeah, we're interested in you. We want to share our hobbies and interests with you because we like you and we want to, you know, be closer to you. No, and... but it's that's not the case. They're just I just don't understand how it's like, why would you construct a situation where the Kens have no autonomy whatsoever... And then they go get it, and then it seemingly goes, like, overboard. But then your reset is, well, we're still not going to give you, like, fucking anything, really. Um, you can have, like, a little, a few, like, symbolic positions. They'll be like, ah, see, that's the real world. It's like, what are you, what are you making? What are you doing? What, like, what is this story that you've crafted? What the fuck yeah. is this? I'm the one that's like, like, um... what the real world is, which is, is the problem. So you have that scene at the end that I think you're describing is, is when the Kens say, well, can we have maybe, you know, just one Supreme Court seat? And the Barbie said, no, you can't. You have to work your way up. Which is, the, the message you'd be forgiven for taking from that is that you have to earn equality, which I really don't think is something Greta Gerwig would agree with. Um, but it's it's one of the fact that the film doesn't really it never creates a real world for that parallel. You know they have to invent that all of the Mattel board are men. They have to present San, uh, San yeah. Francisco in two thousand and twenty three as though it's as sexist as San Francisco in nineteen seventy three. Like they have no real world analogy, so everything just seems a rampantly dishonest uh, and be self defeating. Because if you want to construct this parallel, if you want to try and give any kind of moral lesson about the importance of working hard and of overcoming. Uh, systems of oppression, which is is what Greta Gerwig's main sort of humanistic line is all about. All systems of oppression keep keep everyone down. Patriarchy is as bad for men as it is for women. Okay, fine, but then you do kind of have to show us what that is really before you can try and deconstruct it. But the film has to parody a parody of the real thing it wants to deconstruct, and that just makes it confused even more. Remember the one of uh, yeah, trick him into say, say you haven't seen The Godfather, so he can try and explain it to you. That'll get him. Why is like, what a loser getting... expressing his interest in art? But that's yeah. self how to play Greta... They try to frame you, it as narcissistic. Uh, it's like he yeah. sees himself as better off because he gets to explain something intellectual to the woman, and it's like that. Why are you so fucking why, why does have why cynical? Why, like, why does it have to be so cynical? Why can't it just be earnest expressions of passion for art? Why yeah, is you think be men bullshit? can't have this? Only women can? That's kind of I mean, it's, fucked it's, up. It's written by a person who calls herself a filmmaker, and back before it became inconvenient to do so, would wax lyrical about the influence Woody Allen had on her career, for example. So, like, she's talking about, like, film theory dismissively because, the, oh, the Ken's interested in The Godfather, but Greta Gerwig herself must surely be interested in that kind of thing. That's why yeah, she's interested in it for the right is, uh, reasons. Yeah, exactly. That's Hers why she makes a multi-gajillion dollar movie Hers and sells all these tickets and makes at all. the money. Not condescending at all. Yeah. That speech, that big speech, the like speech was the horrible. second act low point was embarrassing. Yeah. Um, um, and someone just said, are you overthinking God, this? Damn. Like, all we've done is tell you what happens. Uh, well, <laughs> if the film gets nominated for an Academy Award, which it probably is going to, then you know what? I think it's fair to actually analyze the film for being apparently like a very earnest and sincere and really intelligent satire. I get, I get so tired of that when like it's these films, like it, it, you do, people fall back on the, yeah, well, it's just a silly thing. It's like, I don't know, man. It seems like everybody's talking about it. Like it's one of the best films of the year. Seems like everybody's talking about it as if it's like an actually excellently crafted, brilliant satire. Mm -hmm. So in that case, then maybe it should be engaged with as though the points that it's trying to make in the observations and the satire is like earnest. Yeah, the, the film, the film likes to give the impression that it itself is thinking. There's a joke about yeah. Citizens United within the first ten minutes, for example. It's not a casual throwaway thing. It's supposed to be a form of critique on modern society. All the interviews that all of the cast and the director have done. 
tell tell you about all of the you know the systems of thought that underpin the film or the philosophy that it's supposed to be trying to convey. It's not a thoughtless film. It's just that it fails to think. But also, but it's trying to think, so you can critique it as though it does. This feels like a neighboring argument to the whole like, why are you analyzing Star Wars? It's got space wizards. It's like, why are you trying to see what you can find in Barbie? It is Barbie. You're like, I don't don't think, I don't think the filmmakers and the writers means. Yeah, but it's it's what I want to get at. It's like we haven't even done any kind of deep dive. We're mainly just telling you what scenes happen and what the points of views of the characters are, and then they're affirmed by the movie. And it's like, mm-hmm. what? Question mark? What the fuck is going on? It's not like we're, we're describing them and going, that was a really funny joke, or that was an interesting bit of drama. It was, a point is made, and reaffirmed, and then we're sitting here like, wow, that, that point makes no sense at all. And that, that, you know what I mean? Like, it's not particularly deep in terms of a dive. It's, it's, it's yeah, just... I mean, if you want to actually delve into the nature of, like, the mechanics of this world, that basically the film makes the statement that the Barbies in the Barbie world like, they're just susceptible to having their minds completely, like, subsumed by outside influences, like, to the point that they're basically automatons. Like, I don't even know what I'm supposed to do with that. That, like, they need to be inoculated to, what was it, like, inoculated to patriarchy? What do I need to do with that? Yeah. It's, uh, it's like they're Interesting, getting what are you trying to say about women, weirdly, Greta? Yeah. Weird. <laughs> That's just, like, weird on so many levels well, as everyone, to compare. Well, as everyone points out, that women are exceptionally happy under patriarchy. Mm. I just, I don't understand what I'm supposed to make of any of that, that they are incapable of thinking. Getting introduced to, like, some idea is akin to an <laughs> illness that killed a bunch of people in, in real life. Uh, oh and that God. they were happier under that, but then they uh, they construct some like a scheme that involves manipulating the Kens by manipulating what seems to be earnest expressions of their interest in art, uh, because it's actually stupid and lame to then like liberate. I, I like, I don't even know. I, I, it's, I don't like talking about this movie. I don't, I, uh, <laughs> I, don't, I don't like it. I don't understand it. I yeah. Don't it get seems it. very bitter like against it. people like me, quite yeah. frankly. <laughs> well, we did don't like almost it. skip over a uh, secret invasion, right? We we're going to, we we're going to, yeah, Secret Invasion is easy to talk about. I yeah. hate that. Oh, yeah. Uh, as much as I hate absolute... Secret Invasion, and boy, I hate its guts, it doesn't feel like that hates me personally. It, it so does. That's sort of an improvement. There, there, is a, uh, there is a TV theory. show in the Marvel Universe that a lot of people had no idea even existed that <laughs> killed Maria Hill and Talos. Like, it's, they're both gone. Uh, yeah. Yeah, they're dead. And, and in the process, it decided to metaphorically, spiritually kill Nick Fury. Pretty much, um, yeah. That is, that was like, that, that, that assassination felt systematic. It was oh, very, very thorough and so, yeah. Yes. Telling us how shit he is and how he <laughs> never did anything. Oh, all these things you, you made, that's actually, that was us, like uh, the aliens, we did yeah, that we, we did all that. the time. We, you didn't we, do we, anything. We you. You're a loser, you're a sad, and yet another instance of like, you're a sad loser, Fury. <laughs> like, that's the only way that they could perceive I, uh, your power because you have to knock them down to absolute, like, zero rock when, bottom. Uh, when trying to prove the point about a lot of patterns we can spot in modern writing, like tropes almost, uh, that one is possibly one of the greatest examples ever of reaching into the past of a character that everyone up to this point has quite enjoyed. I mean, obviously, is the first destruction of him was in Captain Marvel, but in this, to actually go back and erase his achievements, it's like, wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah, retroactively well, like, destroying him. Trans- yeah. To not only do that, but to transfer them onto a group that is now actively working to kill all humans yeah uh, and move the planet which Boy. all of that like that i uh, the scrolls man is like an insane bit of world building that you've now made it to where the majority of scrolls are cool with if not actively aiding yeah. the annihilation of all of humanity they also told us apparently that yeah. that over because the years there's, there's been the there's oh, now sorry. a million scrolls apparently on earth that just took over <laughs> other people's lives it's yeah. like and it's oh, not like wh- what not like you need to ask us people on Earth, the citizens of the world, for our permission on whether or not we're cool with a bunch of shape-shifting aliens coming and subverting democracies. Yeah. And then nope, we now, for now, this is our planet, now all of you need to die. Yeah. And horribly, and now, too. It would be a terrible death guy, to die from, like, nuclear, you know, radiation and stuff. One guy in Captain Marvel, uh, you know, they cut a deal that they didn't follow through on somehow, somehow in 30 years couldn't find one planet. Yep. And on as, uh, scroll on. as people well, have mentioned. The novels and they did. Not only have oh, we yeah. not seen yeah. his reaction to the information, but Rhodey doesn't know that Tony's yeah. dead. I was about to mention no, that. Yep, that's that, right. He's that been a scroll since the war. Oof. 
that's horrible. They just stole that. No, yeah, because they announced very publicly that it goes back as far as Civil War, but they have the chance to explicitly not have that be the case when they get back to him in in the actual shows, which I have to imagine the next fucking creative will be like, no. Throw on the other element as well of Amelia Clark is now the most powerful uh, entity in the MCU. Oh she yeah, has she has just powers. all the genetics now, and it seems to be done so casually oh, and... too that this is just her existing. Yeah, as uh, abomination powers. This one was just mentioned as well in the Marvels. We are showed that Captain Marvel absolutely had a planet for scrolls, but oh well. Yeah. yeah. But that's that's the thing. Secret, really invasion, Earth, Secret Invasion. Secret Invasion just really it can't really exist as a show in the MCU. It doesn't accord with anything before or after it. Nope. It's like mm-hmm. it's just there, and everyone, including the people in the studio themselves, have said, "Yeah, that was probably a mistake. Let's just pretend it didn't happen." Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah I mean, normally it's not a good idea to ignore things, but I don't know how you make an MCU movie that's set on Earth that isn't completely. And I mean, thoroughly <laughs> colored by the events of this movie. One of the things would be like, can we give better deaths to these characters that people actually care about? Can we do yeah. that? Like... Power, she's not been in it a whole lot, but like Maria's death felt really. Well, let's lame. be honest. This character's been in it for a while. It's Ben know? Mendelsohn. He's a great actor. Why the hell did we do that to him? Yeah. Why don't you even get rid of him? Keep him around. Find a way. Absolutely. To keep him, yeah. You know? He's <sighs> an entertaining, charismatic guy. I mean, I guess the Maria one's kind of interesting. Plus, he's one like, of the few not evil What's scrolls. That? Uh, yeah, but now he's gone, so now... Now he's gone, so... Eh. Just the evil ones. It, it, it's, it's like... Isn't it really offensive, the idea that it's like, oh, Gaia just gets all the powers? It's you who were nuts. actively participating in the scheme to end all humans on this planet because you're yep. a little bitter? I mean, yeah. she personally, you know, did the whole bomb thing and the, yep. uh... And, and her rewarding all those the thousands powers. of people. Yep, no that's her reward. This she'll never, never answer for it. She will no. never answer nope. for it. She's kind of like Valkyrie, no, instead, in a sense. Instead, she, not only will she not answer for it, she'll walk around condescending to other better people than her about how much they suck. She'll walk around judging everybody else for how much they're losers. It's fucking uh, yeah, arm, dude. Loop arm. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's pretty funny. <laughs> oh, the whole thing. Like how, how they just completely ignored uh, how the powers work that she gets because she just uses the magic that Strange uses and does the hand <laughs> gestures. <laughs> Which has no way of knowing how that yeah. even works. Part of the power of the his training. Brain. They get his Ebony Moore's knowledge. rings. Yeah. They get his do rings. The, uh, yeah. Do you remember the joke in Family Guy where um, Quagmire discovers wanking and then like he <laughs> walks out one day and he's like, he just lifts up his other arm and it's muscly. It's like, <laughs> bulging with veins and shit. Oh yeah, no, I'm just going to go get my mail there. <laughs> with a yeah. Also, song. considering we had a fight in here where two people have like all the powers of all the Avengers, it's like a really lame and shit fight, and it's really yeah, short. It's, it's it's slop, it's pure slop, it's the shit that it's we... It's so awful. This, it's almost like peak slop, I would say. Which is ironic, yeah, yeah. because Secret Invasion was being marketed as though it's like a return to a Winter Soldier type situation. It's gonna be dark, it's gonna be gritty, it's gonna be on the ground, it's gonna star a lot of human characters, it's gonna be espionage. Ended oh, like this! <laughs> what is yeah. this? And thank god everyone hated it. Oh yeah. I'm, I'm glad that the, the AI intro automatically just set everybody <laughs> in this movie yeah, against it. it. That yes. was a disaster. They should Made our job that. easier, that's for sure. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, because by the end of uh, this, everybody was done with it. Um, I remember at the beginning, people were kind of coping a little bit, but yeah, by episode mm-hmm. six, especially with the big CG fight at the end, everybody was ready to hate this. Ew, oh, what a uh, fucking disaster, and the amount of money they would have lost on this must be insane. Uh, 200, yeah. well, I mean, well, I guess the thing is, is that lost money on a streaming thing is a bit harder to quantify, but I guess it would be viewership. Yeah, right. there's, there's a bean counter somewhere that can tell them what the return of this, this project was, and it was terrible, I guarantee it. It's gotta be terrible, oh, yeah. yeah. With the way that everyone was talking about it, you know, when it, get, when it bleeds through to that level and the public discourse is horrifically negative... Well, I think mm. uh, Secret Invasion was a big part of why the Marvels, it was probably a big contributor to the even further diminishing of box office. Um, especially since Scrolls, right, that was something that was introduced in Captain Marvel, so those were kind of attached. People yeah. might have been thinking that the Marvels would actually connect to our Secret Invasion, Lord. which they probably what, what, didn't Captain wasn't There's even no way it. you could possibly <laughs> no. follow the Marvels up, or the uh, Secret Invasion up, again, with... It, it, like, oh, it's the, the most that... devastating world-building thing that they've done in the MCU, is the Skrull invasion and all uh, that it implies. Yeah. Earth has changed it... forever now in a way that you can never go back from. 
I don't know that anything ever topples Loki uh, in terms of ruining everything, like <laughs> from a world. I, I, think it, of, I, I don't even know. I, what I in that the sense that you have to look for it in your story. Yeah, you in, in a, a story set on Earth. Earth. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. If you're just having a story on Earth, like a typical superhero movie, you don't have to account for the ridiculous sure. Loki stuff. Um, but you have to account for the scrolls all the I time, forever and always. Yeah. It doesn't seem to invasion you. end with, the, so they pass this anti-alien act, which basically says, you know, all aliens are hostile entities on Earth, so they're not allowed to be there anymore. Which, which one of the questions I, yeah, kind of is based. But one of the things I'm really interested in is it, what overlap, if any overlap, was the, the script for this show and the script for the Marvels? Because the Marvels was delayed, wasn't it? And so I'm assuming these things must have been written not very far from each other. They may even have been partially written at the same time. Um, but evidently they haven't spoken to each other. No because, communication, you, know, you have no. the, the anti-alien act in this show, and then the Marvels comes along and says, where can the scrolls be safe? Oh, no, let's send them back to Earth to live with the new um, Asgardians, who are themselves presumably subject to the anti-alien act. And we're never, I don't think, ever going to see them again, because that's kind of just speeding them out of the show as quickly as possible. But it doesn't add up that they cannot exist in the same universe. No, it's it, which is pretty funny, considering that um, these projects get billed as apparently connecting to one another. I'm pretty sure yeah. that the pitch for Secret Invasion during that like big investor thing where they announced all these projects, the pitch was that it would lead into Captain Marvel uh, 2 at the time, then the Marvels. But I mean, mm. obviously that's not true. But they say that all the time, it will lead into it. And it's like, the only way it leads in is detrimentally, as in it raises new questions that will go unanswered or that yeah. contradict, you know, whatever. There's just whatever no way you can account for it. Nope. I would, uh, I, if I was in charge, I would, uh, there'd be a lot of things I would decanonize, but this would probably be the first one that goes. Oh, easily. Without, mm -hmm. yeah, absolutely. There's like, there's no way we can have this scroll invasion shit happening mm -hmm. on Earth. It's just, no, we, we can't do it. You've Not, got a no multiverse way. now, so you can hand wave it away. This one took place in universe 17B. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, I was just, just thinking that, the like, this. snap seem manageable. Like what uh, Platoon was saying, like, this, the universe multiverse idea has cheapened everything where like we got our kicks out of it you know there's been a few benefits and fun stories but now if by it's that just like, i mean like everything know, but, everywhere all at once was good that was the kicks i got out of it but that's right that's over but now. like it in a pre-multiverse marvel phase they would have been much more selective over the projects that got greenlit but now it's just like yeah yeah they'll green light anything and if it's shit and it's just like well that takes place in a universe where everything is shit <laughs> you know? There was there was like, there was a time. It's all of them, sir. Well, that's the thing. They actually they did get to a point where they could greenlight everything and it wouldn't matter. And they enjoyed those what like three years of that actually happening as like a grace period. But you had to then to generate another set of years for a grace period. You needed to have stuff that people actually liked, but you didn't. You didn't make anything mm -hmm. anyone liked. Even for you know Shang Chi. No, like there are people out there who said that was great. It's like nobody cares about Shang Chi. Nobody. Yeah. Tell me. Tell me one thing about that film. <laughs> <Ring>. <laughs> No, just relay a scene. There is no That's more Iron Mans that are, that are happening. There's no film that everyone's like, oh shit, you should get, like, for the MCU. They, they didn't make what? one. We have, Even... uh, we have the Iron Lady, what's her name? Oh, Iron Hard. Riri. Iron Hard, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I was just gonna say, she's great. <laughs> no Way Home would be, like, the only exception, but again, that didn't help the MCU or Marvel in I terms of, like, money. Kind of like and it's, um... Specifically. And it's almost like a bookend. Like, it wasn't like a promise of future content. It was more so just like an end, and then it might go over to Sony's universe. It's, it's almost confusing in how it could possibly help them, and it's like the best thing they had. I think, I almost feel like people consider there's Spider-Man, and then there's like Marvel, even though obviously Spider-Man, it kind of in the same yeah. way that there's Batman, there's like DC broadly. Spider-Man is Spider-Man, and when Spider-Man succeeds, that doesn't say anything about Marvel or Spider-Man. Especially with the whole rights thing that seems like a lot of people are vaguely... Then again, I mean, isn't the whole idea with the Sony stuff that they want to trick people into thinking that Venom is, like, in the MCU? But now it's probably more advantageous to say, no, it's in the it's in our little universe with more bits. <laughs> like, when you... <laughs> I, don't, I don't even know, like, oh, shit. We lied to you, but we take it back. We regret it. It's like telling a terrible lie that gets you in more trouble. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Man, all look right. At those effects there up on the screen. It's amazing. Oh, Amelia Clark. I had never seen that clip before, so that that was quite amazing to see. That. <laughs> <laughs> it looks pretty pretty stupid. 
The uh, only reason I was inclined to see Secret Invasion was I think Olivia Coleman's in it. And it's just she like was, maybe she's the type of actress who like would only go on board if the material was any good. She's one of the best things in there. Um Yep. Mm. She actually plays it as though she's having some fun and uh she's That's she gets to was. do something competent, which is rare in the whole show. Yeah, she does a competent thing. We were like, Whoa, okay. calm down. Um and then they did. Something something that we shouldn't forget about is that the new season of Futurama uh, was starting to come out did we not? We time. didn't finish that, did we? We got near to the end. Uh, we still got, I think, two episodes left to watch? Yes, and it was not... Um, like, how do I put this? It, it didn't put us in a position of, oh, I can't wait to see more. But it also didn't piss us off. No, uh, there were a couple episodes that were actually, like, fairly impressive. There were a few there that were uh, like, oh... <laughs> And yeah, it had something like, to say, hey. jokes that worked, and a decent story to tell, felt like, and one of the things that struck me about the new season is how much it references all of, uh, very much deep cut references to stuff that you know you have to be a fan of your trauma to put that stuff in there. I was like, damn, mm -hmm. nice. So, um, you know, for, you, for anyone out there who's itching for Futurama content, it doesn't fill that hole, but it also gives you something. And, yeah, um, and it's nice. Uh, snack, not as, a meal. Yeah, as much as all the voices have aged very obviously. <laughs> um, what's funny is like his Fodsworth is now probably better than ever. <laughs> like, <it's> just... <laughs> but uh, yeah, you know, it it was it was fun. There's some episodes I think we were like that was kind of bad, but like yeah. yeah. And then there's some that were like, oh, uh, that was yeah. Also, someone said I prefer right. older Futurama. The theme of I this mean, conversation obviously... is that it is obviously worse than older yeah. Futurama. <laughs> But you were being pretty subtle there, there, but yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, that's um, notable. Uh, I think next up is actually Ahsoka. I think that's uh, well, so Ahsoka. It's, oh, it's worth a mention. We had the React Wars uh, oh, saga. Yeah. The next chapter with all the XQC <laughs> stuff happened. Oh, jeez, you're right. Oh. <laughs> it's not like there's a lot to say on the subject, other than just wow, that was crazy. Another sort of ignition of of uh, controversy because. This is the thing. The way for them to get away with the doing all this shit is to just stay under the radar. But people like XQC have no interest in doing that. So it can ruin it for a lot more of the people around him if if he was to do high profile sort of uh, react bullshit. But the conversation he had with Ethan Klein was particularly funny. Mm -hmm. no, yeah, but he's too the selfish. There's only the... XQC when only cares about the... XQC. When he got on the ground and did the worm. Did the worm, worm yeah. The worm. <laughs> that, that is one of the funniest things I've ever seen in my entire life. That Can't was so hilarious. <laughs> I'm not mad. I'm not mad as he crawls around and wriggles around <laughs> on the floor in silence. <laughs> yeah. Well, I thought the, the conversation that you had with a Mahler was particularly funny because like, yeah. like you you had both reached some kind of consensus on something and then he said like so you admit defeat then and you're just like uh well, he had just <laughs> accepted <laughs> openly that he was a piece of shit he yeah he made it difficult for me to do anything himself. with it <laughs> he has such he's fucking just like, yes, gamer I brain villain, right I am he has evil. to he has to frame everything in terms of victory and loss, like because he's been playing fucking well, Overwatch he is, or he, he is a man whatever of the fuck. All right, he, he is yeah. a, a jam a man. Jam. jam a man of fortune. <laughs> yeah, that was... I'm glad he learned about condensation. That was fun. <laughs> that was really that, that arc funny. was Age of XQC because it was uh, it was a new player almost into this game, and my god, there was so much to learn and discover. All the clips that I was sent in terms of just highlights from his streams. As was mentioned, could you believe that he was of uh, of a double digit age when he discovered the concept of of uh, condensation? That's that's <laughs> that stream clip is so fucking funny. He doesn't he thinks chat is like lying to him, and then he comes to the conclusion of okay, so water just appears out of nowhere. Okay, okay. <laughs> so annoying. It just appears. I don't know. It it's it's it kind of black pills you when you look at XQC and know that he's like, richer than anyone has any business being, and he's this stupid, and, Isn't like, a like legitimately the... bad person, but, like, hundreds, what, is, like, how many people watch him? 20, 30,000 people are watching him at any time. Lord, and it's yeah. just, like, it, it really is kind of like a human civilization black pill, but... If he can fuck <laughs> upwards, so can you. <laughs> fuck upwards. Um, <laughs> yeah, and, and, you know... 
just trying to understand everything about it. And I feel like that's just, you know, the next chapter, there'll be another one eventually. Someone over on Twitch will fuck up again, stealing something. <laughs> yeah. And it'll get a bunch of traction again. Um, who knows who it'll be or what it'll be about. I mean, uh, Jax Films has been doing his thing and, you know, Godspeed to him. So. Yeah. But Fringy was correct. Next up, in terms of notable coverage, was indeed Ahsoka. Ahsoka! Oh, he's so cool. cool! He's got a lightsaber! He's so cool. the force! He's so cool! You know, that was yeah, something that was making me think, because some people were saying, like, yeah, the, you know, Andor would feel more like Star Wars if it did have more lightsabers. That is true, though. And I'm just sitting here like, you saw what I happened. Guess technically, but... You saw what, what happened, I, though. When it's pushed to the extreme, you see Vader with his lightsaber, and then you get people going... Blah, 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 and whoa, it's like, whoa. Vader! Okay. red! Almost makes you want to answer the question of how far can we get without lightsabers? Can we can we do it? Is it we possible? We can't get through the blast doors without them. Mm, that's true. Um, I have to get the codes. But yes, he did indeed Vader. Uh, this is a part of the arc, but we were we were willing to give it a huge old shot, and then we were distinctly disappointed quite quickly. Um, Boy, yep. I am wasn't it like, so glad we can monetize that because jeez, fuck this show. Well, yeah, of all of our, like, uh, episodes, coverage of a TV show, they, they, they our, our fans love Star Wars. They just they just love it. You guys are big fans of Disney Star Wars, aren't you? So, it's, there's yeah. no denying it. Because mm -mm. it was that first-ish scene of the um, uh, Balin ship landing in that uh, Republic. Yeah, and the New Republic ship, whatever it's called, and, and everyone was dumb, and everyone was an idiot, and there was a chance to be clever and subversive, and we did the most brain-dead... Uh. 12 year old thing imaginable it's, it's just, just like, a boom, stupid boom, boom, guy uh, just, you know let him the on the ship for the, like, oh, the rest God. of the show yeah and, like, and then like uh, it was a clever ruse but we, we were failed. immediately asking shit tons of questions about how any of it works it's like that's a good sign you've just begun <laughs> and then mm -hmm. all the shit with the map and then the amount of time that's clearly being spent doing nothing because they didn't have any story to tell which is incredible because of the yeah, like every episode is like, oh, you could have started here, or you could have left that out. Why? Why is there so many pauses in between your words and sentences? It's so awkward. Yeah, lots of walk-in, lots of landscape shots that go on for way longer than needed, and then episode lengths. Even they're like, how did they get this this long with how little that happened? And um, yeah, we could have began the the whole season at any real, really like in even in the last episode that could have been where it fucking started. To be honest with you. Right. A lot of that information that we got for the rest of the season could have been covered in a conversation. I like guess distinctly disappointing. And yeah, even fans of um, you know the Clone Wars were not happy with this. And uh, you know, like I said, it, it damaged Dave Filoni's reputation a lot because he was given so much control over this, and this is what you can expect going forward. And I think one of the bigger ones is like you know people are willing to concede that Ahsoka is out of character. That. Uh, what's, it, what's, what's her name? Hera? She didn't even have a character, really, other than being pompous. And then insanely uh, irresponsible. You know, yeah. bringing the son on terrible. the combat mission to get the Sith. I was like, oh, okay. Terrible That's terrible what I mean. There's just yeah. negative aspects. That's it. Like using her rank to try and supersede any situation she's in, like a fucking bullheaded idiot. And then, of course, God, and they tarnished Leia and Mon Mothma yep. too. Well, just taking advantage With of the bastard. political system to benefit herself, which is exactly what we don't like seeing of of our characters. That's not good. It's not good. They haven't. I don't even know if Dave realizes that that's like the whole issue that Palpatine takes advantage of is 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 <laughs> using the system to his benefit to gain more power. It's like it's not what you're doing with these heroes. But okay. I'm becoming a more and more of a separatist every day. Well, and, and and what's cool about it is, like, in a good story, that would be awesome. Like, a good character doing that, and then another good character being like, isn't that, isn't that a bit... And it's like, no, well, it's fine, because we're, we're, we're the good guys. Yeah, we're doing it for the good and, reasons. And, and you know that if it was an ad door, there would be, like, a subtle... Maybe you know musical track or the there's expressions that give away like ooh this 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 will be addressed again sometime this is not going to be forgotten. But in you uh, know in Andor the the scene of Mon Mothma in the car with her husband, like that was a legitimately subtle scene that I didn't quite even get until we like stopped it and like considered what it was about because it was really clever and subtle. So. Would it just just not like that? <laughs> it take advantage you know? of that where you can in Star Wars. It's yeah, funny because I think gotta. the lesson that's been taken from the prequels is the the, the most shallow. Oh, the politics stuff is the thing that doomed the prequels. So mainline yeah. Star Wars can't be doing the politics stuff anymore because we don't want that. There's even that scene in Mando season three when Doc Brown's character 
is uh, is about to go on a political speech about the virtues of uh, separatism and, and independence, and then uh, Bo-Katan just shoots him with the stun gun and says oh, politics. But, like the best of the Disney Star Wars shows has been Andor, which is by far the most political in universe political. Of yeah, all it of takes them. politics seriously in Andor, and yeah, yeah. and it's because the Serious politics thing. did not doom the prequels. Lots of other things doomed. The it prequels, was the terrible but... story and the awful characters and everyone being stupid and the odd pacing. And, and all sorts of all the other things. Yeah, mm -hmm. but like, Awkward lo and behold, if, if you're doing serious world building in the Star Wars universe, particularly in this time period, you actually do have to pay some attention to the political arrangements of that system. Like, what is happening with the New Republic? What is the New Republic even? How powerful is it? How far does it reach? Who's in charge? All of these things are really vital to set up, and you can do that in a really compelling way. Again, Andor is the classic example of how you can do that in a compelling way with a strong character-driven story. But Ahsoka comes along, and you, you compare Mon Mothma and Ahsoka to Mon Mothma in, in Andor. They are not the same person. Mm -hmm. uh, Leia is not the same person. Like, none of these people, they can't even fit together in the sort of the vague timeline sense, you know, when you get the beginning, when the guy's giving the speech and he says, it's been several years since the fall of the empire. Oh, well, that's really helpful. I love being grounded in this universe. I love knowing whether we're before Mando season three or after it, like incredibly important piece of information. Yeah. And they can't even give you that until the penultimate episode of the series. And you know what's funny? I feel like if Gilroy was if told, know like, until they decide. Uh, well, that's, that's probably the case. Yeah. You know, like they didn't even know. They like or like they weren't sure. Well, we found that out with um, Captain America whether or not he was alive. I was just about to say that. Yeah, Falcon went to yeah, Soldier. We, they didn't know. <laughs> this is not unprecedented. Shocking as it is, Disney probably yeah, is not like knowing basic information or. Being that's got to be tell. a a bit of a power play too, because as a writer, you'd be like, I need to know that information, and they're like, You're not gonna get it. Move on, and you'd be like. And I'll just have the character say, I have no idea what year it is. But, and, and we've heard about the many creatives that have left contact with Disney or working with them, and it's like, it's gotta be stuff like that, isn't it? Like, how fucking annoying would that be? You're like, how would I write my story? I need to know if he's dead. And they're like, <laughs> yeah. you're telling me that you might establish later that he was dead the whole time, and I have to write it as though I don't know whether or not fucking... Bucky, don't you think they're gonna have an opinion to share if he's dead? <laughs> like, it's gonna come up. Yeah. Like, no reference oh, well. Yeah, you just just don't yeah, don't don't bring it up. Yeah, just yeah. Like look yeah, at it you lines, the whole plan in because it, the, I think it's the penultimate episode of Ahsoka is when they reveal that it's all set after Mando season three. Which which already causes problems because it means that uh, Morgan Elspeth's character has been on a prison ship for about three years at that point, just doing nothing. <laughs> um but then that's it gets insane. even worse because Longer you have the Shadow Gideon Council stuff. Ship. Well, that's true. But you have the whole Shadow Council stuff in Mando season three when it now, thanks to Ahsoka, we know that the Imperials' plan is to divert all their resources to wait for a guy they haven't contacted and don't even know is alive because the witch magic hasn't been Old used yet. Cotton. So they don't, and they're not helping Morgan Elspeth in any way because they don't give her any resources. Like none of that fits together. It can't actually it, work in that way. And if the gap is truly three years, I mean, that's how long has the gap been between Ahsoka discovering the information about the location of the map device and going to the map device? Uh, yes. That doesn't make that any means. fucking sense. I know, mm -hmm. none of it makes any sense. Yeah, And, and the, it's funny because if you ask them, fucked. they might actually they might actually go like, oh, fuck. It's like, <laughs> oh, you didn't think about that? <laughs> no, fuck, we didn't think about that. Oh, well, they were, pretty, fine, they were cool. probably like, well, what, to be fair, we didn't know. And it's like, why don't you know? <laughs> why why don't you, you know? know? This yeah. is your life. This you make Star Wars all the time. You, I are, wait, you have the opportunity Dude. to create a television show. Do you know how many few people on the planet Earth have that incredible opportunity? And you're squandering it. And that's that's kind of what makes me a little bit mad. It kind of pisses me off that you're wasting this insane opportunity that people would kill for. Zombie stormtroopers. What the f- <laughs> What the fuck indeed. Fuck no me. one's ever truly gone. And th they've got a whole army that they- I- Dude, that's one of those things where it's like, I can't- I can't, I just can't do it. I can't look at Empire Strikes Back, <clears throat> watch that story and those characters in that world and imagine, yeah, and some years later there are going to be a bunch of zombie stormtroopers. I just can't, I can't do it. Like, well, it doesn't, I can't it, it watch doesn't... the prequels and be like, oh yeah, Anakin had this orange apprentice lady. And I'm like, that, no, he didn't. He did not have that shit. You made that up. I will not yeah, accept there's, the there's big like, lie. There's, there's only so much that you can... I, I think I'm pretty willing to accept it. I can accept terrible things as being canon, unfortunately. My brain can just square well, those I've things away. I've accepted the prequels, so we're, we're there. Oh. <laughs> I, but, 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 um, but, but the point but, being, I've said it, I've said it so many times oh. because 
I think it was the first instance in Star Wars, especially, of like, dude, no, no, that didn't happen. Which is uh, Han Solo dropping Cthulhu into a uh, black hole. That yeah, did not happen. Yeah, reference that, yeah. The Han You're Solo like, that we meet in A New Hope did not. I, I can't accept it. My brain can't accept it as having happened. It's just, that's made up bullshit that didn't happen. That's wild. And the zombie, zombie stormtroopers is going to be another thing of made up bullshit that uh, I totally will remove from my brain as being canon. Yeah. Can't, can't All do of it. this is made up, but it. some of it is way made up. <laughs> you exactly. know, like... I think there's, there's, if there's one up, thing that sort of sums up all of Ahsoka, though. I think it's got to be Marok. Marok is probably one of my favorite <laughs> bits in the entire show. It's like all the episodes leading up, and you've got all the rooms. Oh, who is he? Is, is he actually Ezra? Is he going to be Starkiller from fucking uh, Force Unleashed, whatever it was? Is he going to be this person, that person, that nope. person? Oh, no, no, he's just a fart. No, you he's not, it. you asshole. He's a fart. He's actually full of, he's blowing out, like, smoke up your ass. <laughs> and, <laughs> he's like, like smoke. That's all he is. He's not yeah. a person. <laughs> You're the, talking the, about like actor, what, so what? the people involved not knowing what they're doing. The, the guy, the guy who wrote and directed that episode, was actually asked specifically about that character, oh, okay. and he doesn't know what, what it was the, uh, because Dave Filoni didn't tell him. So, okay, he, how what? How do you? You're writing this character. You're writing the death scene. How do you not know who he is? So or many. What he can is? you make more of these fart people? They seem to be pretty good with yeah. like flying and fighting and no, everything. Don't get just make more Jedi. fart people. Don't don't. We've done the cloning Jedi thing. We don't want to go there. Why did he? Why is he a fart? Because <laughs> <laughs> that's what people fart? do when they die. They fart. Well, make how annoying. Established fact. How annoying. Hey, da <laughs> hey, Dave. <laughs> What is this character saying? Like, I don't know. Wouldn't you uh -oh. like to know? Just kill him off. Oh, how, d d who is he? Oh, just a fart. Uh, oh, okay. I, I still, she's, he's still a better written character than Sabine, though. <laughs> That's Dude, true. She's yes. the worst. She's the worst. She's Sabine like sucks. really, she sucks, really, man. really lame. God, she's annoying. I mean, Ahsoka's bad, Sabine is bad, Hera's bad. They're all bad. Suck ass, dude. Yeah, I like the robot. I like him. Yeah, the robot's neat. Okay. David yeah, Tennant yeah. robot is pretty cool. Yeah, I like him. He's, but Sabine's he's kind of sign. doomed from the beginning because is it the first? Yeah, he's episode in Ahsoka. Even where um, where <laughs> yeah, well, obviously, yeah. But like when um, when Sabine's got watching that hollow log of of Ezra, which is really just filling in for the audience who hasn't seen Rebels or the Clone Wars, like what the hell these people are. And that audio log is when Ezra says like, "Oh yes, Sabine, I'm your good friend, Ezra Bridger. You were like a sister to me." And, <laughs> and in that moment, it's kind of screwed because like. Uh, what's their attachment to each other? It's just a vague friendship. They don't even want to bone. So she's going to go and potentially sacrifice an entire galaxy in order to get to a person that she doesn't really give that much of a shit about. And then they meet, yeah. and it's just, oh, hi. Oh, hi. How did yeah. you get no, here? Really I'm not going to tell you. Oh, about this where's, guy. where's Ahsoka? How did you get here? He's like, ah, oh, don't worry about oh, it. How are you doing? We'll talk about that later. I mean, it was only two days ago that I saw her, as far as I'm aware, to bleed die. <laughs> And it was my fault too. <laughs> also, the I, guy you sacrificed yourself is trying to make his way back. But uh, don't worry about it. Let's uh, have some fun crazy. adventures with those little turtle people. Adventures she are fun. She did. She she reversed Ezra's sacrifice. Yeah. <laughs> she played Uno reverse cards like his whole <laughs> his whole arc. Well, that, yeah, that explains right. how terrified and uh, you know grim he looks when she shows up, and uh, not happy and thrilled like to see his old yeah, friend, basically. my old friend Sabine yeah. Wren. Because it's funny, he's I like, oh, it's been kind of tough. It's like, dude, it looks like it's been a breeze. You look yeah, it looks like, like you're, you're having a good time here with your little friendos. You look like you've been living very comfortably. Yeah. It's not like you've got a whole bunch of new scars because you've been at all of these really close calls and fights and, you know, malnourished or anything. You just, you chill. And of course, there's no repercussions for that. They don't talk about this. It's just, they just leave. And nope. then it's like, but... Seems like a pretty natural way to implement some drama. It's like, wait, what the fuck are you doing? I just sacrificed myself, and now you're back, and he's going back to where we I was. We don't do real drama. We do he fake drama. Yeah. He, just, he can't do it. He can't tell stories. He doesn't even seem to understand like what you're supposed to do in stories. He doesn't understand that conflict and resolution, you know, like that sort of dance is, is mm -hmm. like a part of storytelling. He just can't do it, and now he's in charge. That's yeah. amazing how he gets put in charge. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Poor Tony over there, just like writing and redrafting. Well, I guess and the thing art. is that Yeah, but the problem is like I mean, I guess I guess in a sense it makes a lot of sense because oh, yeah, it makes he's sense. consistently it's, yeah. labeled as the guy who gets it and knows how to tell Star Wars stories. Um and he's made stuff that is ostensibly successful, so 
Yeah, but you know, was but now now who are you going to blame? You know, like if I mean, it, it was all it, like he 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 deserved blame for a lot of the stuff that's already happened. But now he's the chief creative officer, mm. so now there's no one to blame. Chief creative officer uh. of Star Wars. Yeah, Can't believe it. You only fail upwards. I guess so. Um, More black pill depressing I, I think, nonsense uh, about the industry. Season well, two is hey, definitely I think, uh, happening, isn't oh, it? For Ahsoka, we uh, are getting a I don't, season. I don't think we know. I don't think we know. I think it's up in the hmm. air. Maybe it's a mini. I think it's like maybe. a lot of things at Disney. They're they're trying to figure out maybe what their plan is. Because uh, you probably. can't ignore the holes in the dike right now. You got to figure out how you're going to plug them. Oh well, Wikipedia says Ahsoka is a mini series, so it's done according to Wikipedia. But hey, interesting. Who knows? It could, you know, it could stay a mini series, or it could get a second one. See, but if it doesn't get a second one, then that means it's canon in Star Wars that Ahsoka and Sabine are just cast away in a different galaxy, <laughs> never to no, be seen. It Actually, well, it's kind of what they deserve, so I'm happy with that. Yeah, I'm okay with that. I'll take that. Yeah, they deserve to be stuck on a planet with each other for eternity. Yeah. <laughs> Um, um, I think uh, next? One Piece came out uh, next. One oh, Piece. That's, that's also still on my list. See it. But I heard very good things. I, well, I watched only the first episode and I, I didn't mind it, but I didn't really continue. But you guys all told me it's very uh, nice. I like it. It's a really easy thing to point to as good. It's good. It's straightforward. It's good. It has characters who are all different uh, and have their own journeys that they're going on that are gradually sort of resolved and, and developed on over the course of the season as they go to different places and meet wacky characters and uh, get into cool action scenes in a kind of fun world that, um, for as absurd as it is, accepts what it is, like, with earnestness. It's this would be, like, an example to point to of it accepts, yeah, we live in a crazy world with wacky characters and crazy powers and there's a bunch of pirates in all of these islands scattered around with zany, wacky entities. And it mm -hmm. just kind of accepts that as being what it is and embraces it with a smile on its face. Uh, it's like a really fun show. That's an, that's like a really easy one to recommend. I don't really know much about the anime, though, so like, or the manga. So I can't really speak to like anything to do with like how faithful it is or whether the... Uh, it's I mean, I... I uh, the anime. I recognize a lot of things on, on the, that first episode I, I watched okay. back in the day when it came out in, in good old Germany. Uh, so I think it's pretty pretty accurate from what I know, or what I remember. But that's me, for me from years and years ago. But I, Isn't I think the, it's pretty. Um, the guy who made the manga involved in it, so that he. Uh, had I think so. Yeah. To say. Yeah, that always helps. Something that uh, I really liked about the show was the production design. It had these really cool sets. Um, lots of cool like makeup applied to. Uh, certain people like the 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 like the fish guys that were more involved towards the end. And just like that everybody kind of played it off as as essentially being like real in that world. Like the production design was super impressive. Uh, it had a big budget though, I'm pretty sure. And they used it pretty well, I'd say. I really like the set for the uh for the um the the big um restaurant in the middle of the sea that they went to, like in the middle of the season. Oh yeah. I really liked that set, and that was cool. Yeah, it was good fun. There's only a couple of fair, like, the only episodes I think I would say were duds would be, is it episode three and four with the cat people villains? Um, um, and there's the, the slightly irritating section that I have in mind anyway is that like, he actually does, he wants to kill them, he catches them, he's actually got one of them in his clutches and proceeds to not kill them in order that he can live, which is just kind of, it's a bugbear. It was still, like, fun, it was just irritating. As opposed to the rest of the show, which I thought was generally fairly tight for what it was. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, because you've definitely got, like, some conveniences and stretches and, and stuff like that, but um, it hits a lot of the standard character yeah. beats. I really there are like literally Luffy. some stretches in the show, yeah. Stretches is I like the... him. I like Luffy a lot. He's a, he's a cool protagonist. Um, it's cool to have this sort of, like, relentlessly upbeat, optimistic guy who uh, extends that optimism to everybody that he meets in his life, but at the same time, when uh, he means business, he means business. He will, like, steadfastly protect his friends and do what he believes is right. It's just, I like him a lot. He's a cool protagonist. Mm. It's refreshing to have something that isn't at all cynical, I think. Yeah. Yes. And he, he sort of embodies that, which is you know, all, all of the people around him are individualists. They will have their own motives, and they are prepared at various points to double-cross anyone they're with 
uh, if the the team threatens to get in the way of the individual motive. But it's the guy who is the most like blissfully naive and optimistic all the time. Who, even though he is naive, is the one who makes his naivety come true. Like he is the one who gives them the grander family. He gives them the collective. And it, it sounds like a really twee and simple message, but yeah, friends will do things for their friends. And so there mm -hmm. is no necessary conflict between your individual want and, and the want of the team. Um, it's just it? nice. But Interesting true as that may be, oh. have you considered that I'm a loser, friends suck, and also divorced? Isn't that ah, Maybe they'll try that fun. for season two. Well, I mean, yeah, isn't that season pretty two. clever and fun? The show was so like positive that um something that was super interesting was that Zoro was like one of the first people to really come around to liking Luffy because he had no reason to dislike him. He he looked at him as a guy that had like no ulterior motives or schemes that he was playing at. He was just a, a guy chasing his dream and that he found that immensely respectable. Like I found it cool that the guy who's like the, the you figure the one that would be the hardest to get on board was actually one of mm. the first. I like you a lot, actually. I'm I'm going to stick with you to the end. Um, He's a bit of a powerhouse of a character, and he wants to give that power to someone who's uh, who he thinks is good with Wild. And it's like, yeah, I mean, Luffy proves himself a whole bunch of times in front of him, so it's just it's easy for him. Yeah. Just, um... Whereas it was like Nami who was <clears throat> the hardest one to bring around because she had all of uh, her basically plans that she needed to. Uh, accomplished. She had yeah, a lot of reason to be very world weary and cynical. And structurally, they do a good job of uh, spreading out everybody's sort of stories and development throughout the season. It's um, remarkably, structurally, fundamentally normal. It uh, yep. comes across That's to me really as completely like, recognizable uh... as, as a structure, even though it's a wacky show. But once again, this kind of stuff we were talking about earlier. If that's the theme of what we've learned about media this year, it's that take your shit serious. It's it's a stupid, yep. wacky, crazy world, but all the characters are very much uh, aware of just how bad things can go and and what things mean. They don't fucking wink at the camera every five seconds. Mm -hmm. I uh, I quite like the uh, the I can't remember the the captain the uh, the 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 guy who was chasing him. Luffy's uh, it was grandfather, right? Yeah. I liked him a lot. He was uh, pretty entertaining. His scenes were often pretty interesting. Good he actor, like yeah. I like the dynamic. Yeah, the back and forth, everybody that. there. Gop, yeah, I like Gop. Yeah, I like yeah. Him. We'll be paying attention be to season two. The next season, yeah. Uh, and I wonder if this will be an instance of it seems like the, the general takeaway is that this is one of the best uh, anime, like live action Western anime adaptations. Mm -hmm. From what That's I understand, what I've yes. Seen. So I wonder if that's going to influence again, but whether or not that'll be positive or if they learn the, the thing wrong lessons, we... which is, oh, give them, give them like colorful hair that looks like in the <laughs> anime and that's good enough. <laughs> in and among disaster, we have these little hints of like, oh, what's that? You know, in oh, joy. little adaptations that aren't as cringe as you might think. And you're like, oh my God. What does it mean going oh, yeah. forward? Who knows? We'll find out. It goes back to the video game point, which is, you know, this is successful because it does not run away from its premise. There's, yep. a, there's a reason all of these original properties are so successful, and denuding them of those original aspects yeah. is not going to make them better, necessarily. So, yeah, if, even if it's a live-action anime adaptation, play up to what the anime did and that makes it popular. Don't pretend that because it's live-action it has to be more serious and somber and adult. Well, it's mm -hmm. a, there's probably a very balked conventional wisdom of like, well, a film isn't a game, so we can't just... Or film is an anime, we got, we got, and it's just like, why well, no? And if you think about like Resident Evil, that franchise was pretty money makey. The Paul W S Anderson ones, and they're just they're just hilarious in terms of adaptations. I could see people, I could see Paul W S Anderson telling you like, you can't just take the games and make them into films. That would never work. You have to do what I did. You have to like Paul. Like we we would have plenty of imagine like a direct adaptation to Resident Evil Four. You could do it. It would be great. Absolutely, yeah, that'd be. E even Resident Evil 1, like, I'm convinced you can make a fucking sweet Resident Evil movie, but yeah. I quite, I haven't quite seen it done yeah. yet. Um, I think, did you talk about Blue Beetle? No. No one did. I saw Ooh. it, I talked about it on FNT, if anyone wants to see my take of it, it was, <laughs> it was pretty bad, um, I'm trying to remember it now. The main thing I'm taking away is Susan Saranda's acting was so bad, it was hilarious, she couldn't Ooh, give yeah. less of a fuck about being in that movie, it was actually funny and almost worth seeing just for that um the main actor did a really good job i bought his enthusiasm and you could tell he really took this role seriously and wanted to make it work but uh 
all your standard like horrific plot just everything's coincidental or holes there's plenty of like jokes that didn't work um but like i i guess it's it was better than like the flash yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i mean like that's something i guess the, yeah the three out of ten territory basically <clears throat> yeah um i think there was some things i kind of liked and there's a lot of things i did not like at all um it's okay. but seriously that one is has been flushed it's almost like you saying that maybe things like i did see that yeah speaking of by the way flushed films expend four balls also released around <laughs> oh, oh boy four balls. That was so shit. That was miserable. It was. Yeah. Boy, that was the most, like. I assume it's like money grubbing. Just like, just make another one, grubby. whatever. Yeah, but this one didn't make any money, so. Exactly. Expendables <laughs> is dead <laughs> as an IP now. No, uh, like, thinking of the that movie, all I can imagine. The, the thing that comes to my mind when I think about Expendables is how Sylvester Stallone's in it for five minutes, and 80% of that is him sitting down in a chair somewhere. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> which makes me wonder, like, hmm. Hmm. Oh, there's, there's okay, information right. about uh, something going on with him and, and the IP or the companies, whatever, behind the scenes. Yeah. But, Obviously, from our perspective, like we just it's just a sad film that needs to be put down. Yep. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's not. It's it's, it's uh, stupid. It's dumb. You can see us talk about it for twenty minutes on uh on Meadows Forge while yeah, talking about um, a bunch of other things. On a three yeah. hour stream, we talked twenty minutes. <laughs> oh, and I've just remembered because I was playing a particular game. When we talked about it, and we should probably mention at least somewhat would be Lies of P. Yay! Oh, that's, hey, that's, uh, that was yeah, good. It was really good. It was really cool to play uh, an entry into the Souls-like genre that wasn't just... A, it, funnily enough, it did fall victim to a lot of carbon copy issues, but it also yeah. did a bunch of new things and cool things. Created a world and then it also didn't copy some things that they definitely should have copied, but for some reason didn't. Yeah, it had like the, the, uh, the full selection. Stagger bar. It's like, why, oh why god, I wish they copied that, dude. Why do you have this whole stagger mechanic, but you don't give me a bar that shows surely me that, how far this goes up? Surely that's been modded in now, right? Like, someone's got a mod for it. It's got Probably, be. yeah. I, I wonder I if that makes so. the game, like, super good, you know? <laughs> I, I was surprised to learn that it wasn't from software. I was convinced it was for the longest time. Hmm. And I'm like, oh, it's hmm. a different company? Really? It looks so similar to the Souls games. Well, Souls like is a genre for a reason. There's so many okay. uh, derivatives of Dark Souls now that yeah, sure. Do you remember uh, the era well, of sure. um, all video essays related to games would reference Dark Souls? There was a time on YouTube. <laughs> where oh, that was... Absolutely, absolutely. The dark I made fun the of that all the time. Yeah, mm -hmm. every single fucking it would be cringe as hell, and you'd almost collect them like Pokemon, like all the people saying it, and then <laughs> Mark Brown at the top of the list. Just every episode would be like, it's very similar to Dark Souls. No. Speaking of Dark Souls, <laughs> uh, Armored Core 6 came out this year as well. Yeah, that was good too. I, I finished that last week. Oh, nice. Neat. What'd you think? I liked it for the most part. It's been ages since I'd played an Armored Core game, though. I think 3 was the last one I touched. Um, yeah. So, bit of a bit of a learning curve to get back into it. Yeah. I probably accidentally completed it more than strategically completed it. But I did complete <laughs> it. Still complete it, that still counts. <laughs> Uh, well, I know that <laughs> not, there were a lot of games that came out in September because uh, yeah. Starfield came out in September. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, well, like I played that for like for me. two streams, and I it's it amazed you made I, it that far. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I, I didn't even have the intention to really play it. I was like, oh, it's on Game Pass, I don't need to pay extra. Well, I might as well give it a go and stream it. And man, it was a drag, it's just it is difficult to boring. stream. Boring. So what's the general takeaway then? Uh, boring. With, uh, good old boring. It's yeah. boring. Yeah, it's, 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 all those it's, planets are empty as fuck for it's the most boring part. boring and it's poorly put together. And yeah. uh, the more you dive into its development, just the more kind of brain damaged you become. Ooh. Okay. Tell us more. Because um, <laughs> normally with those games, I like to do like a lot of optional stuff. And I was like, you know what? I'm just going to go to this place. I'm going to build a big, big ass base. So I can get all these minerals and whatnot in one place and put them there. But then you learn, it's like, oh, wait, I need to unlock the skill tree all the way to level four on this particular one, which I need to do specific things before I get to the next level and also level up, which means I have to do this. and this. So before you can even get all the resources, you have to grind your way through the, through the specific skill tree so you can 
put bases on a uh, hazardous planet. Oh, you go through all that and then you realize that the outposts also are pointless because the number of resources you need for research is extremely low oh, compared well, to the amount go. of time you invest into uh, into leveling it up. I didn't even get that far. Oh, I would have been very disappointed if I actually went through that then. <laughs> actually, that was the common trend of reviews was they were praising the outpost system, but none of them had actually played with it. <laughs> <laughs> You you mentioned that there was a story with the development. What was uh what's the deal there? Um, so basically, they didn't use a centralized design document when they were creating the game. Uh, the design director has specified that they had a bunch of smaller little documents, but that's still not supplemental. So what you have is a bunch of these elements and mechanics that are all independent and working separate of each other and working against each other in a lot of ways. <laughs> And awesome. it results in this overall experience where there is no cohesion between any of the game's mechanics. That sounds really stupid. <laughs> well, and been, so the guy that's responsible for that is uh, Emil Pagliarulo, and he was also the lead on Fallout 3 and Fallout 4, um, which should explain the kind of decline in quality between those uh. games. Some people get it confused and think that he was the lead on Skyrim. He actually wasn't. Um, that was a pair of gentlemen... Uh, Bruce Nesmith and Kurt Coleman and uh, Nesmith came out recently and basically said yeah uh, we made Skyrim and we thought that we were infallible so we just said uh, fuck it and did whatever we thought was good and it kind of bit us in the ass with Fallout 76 um, something I would yep. say that I've noticed about Starfield is that it is now inviting people to consider just how dated Bethesda RPGs seem yeah. compared to a lot of their contemporaries and also how limited they are compared to a lot of their predecessors by way of player choice and interactivity. I they think were one always... of the things that for a long time Bethesda games kind of had going for them was that they were kind of the only ones doing that kind of game. Yes. There are ones that are kind of like them a little like i could see why someone might compare the witcher 3 to skyrim or something like that but they're clearly different experiences um but there's not like it, it's almost its own genre a bethesda game like the you a fallout 4 and new vegas and skyrim they're they are their own kind of game it kind of like in in a way sort of like the souls likes Yes, um, but not as uh, emulated as often. Yeah, yeah. The only person emulating Bethesda games is themselves, and often very poorly. Um, but it just, what? yeah, if you want that thing, you have to go there. They're not really competing with anyone else, and no one's really competing with them. But what has happened is they've started having to compete with um, CD Projekt Red, and yeah, Cyberpunk uh, they are, they're theory. badly losing on that because they were resting on their laurels and that allowed them to be typically like three to four years behind the rest of the industry. And, you know, you can't be stuck in a 2020 mindset when you have uh, Baldur's Gate 3 coming out a month before you mm -hmm. and Phantom Liberty coming out uh, two weeks after you. I, uh, I feel like Baldur's Gate 3 doom starfield in that it yeah. came out and seemed to blow i haven't played it yet um but like i've heard Me nothing neither. but positive things about it, it yeah like, nothing I've been praise. Positive well, feedback. i've been playing it offline with a friendo as i've said many times before and I, i've been quite enjoying it mm -hmm. it thing seems I'm... like it has raised the bar for a lot of um people's expectations for fantasy games of its uh general kind Oh, also, absolutely. I mean, the point about putting it next to Starfield is a really apt one because everything that Baldur's Gate 3 does well really just exposes how shallow Starfield is. So and fun, the, funnily it's... enough, not not only in just a game itself, but also in just fixing the game. Mm. Because like a, a couple of like a week later, like for like weeks, like every day they put out patches of things they got told by the community. And I think just a couple of weeks ago they put out like another four gigabyte patch with even more changes and fixes so they've been just keeping on the game to just keep it keeping yeah, it i up. got people who tell me that like cyberpunk right now is like really good and they they're loving it and they're really getting oh, yeah. into it super hardcore and that it's like finally realizing its potential and a lot of work got put into it um so i, I don't say, presented with the choice between cyberpunk and Baldur's gate 3 i gave cyberpunk a chance maybe i'll do it again but <laughs> It's probably going to be yeah. Baldur's Gate 3 whenever I get around to it because 
It just seems like out of the gate, like Baldur's Gate 3 success is, is really important in terms of highlighting that a genre that has for a long time essentially been declared by certain entities in the industry as being unviable is one of the most successful games of the year. I'm pretty sure it's still got like hundreds of thousands of concurrent players on Steam months after its release mm. as a more old school turn-based CRPG managing to outperform the newest Bethesda big budget like RPG. I can um, check that. Uh, Two hundred and fifty thousand um, concurrent players at the moment. Like, that's a lot yeah, of people. That, the, that yeah. makes one of the, the ten on for, Steam. Yeah, the peak today was two hundred eighty-seven and a half thousand players. Uh, yeah, for so much for to Starfield. do. They get old. Baldur's Gate owns its massive size. In, in a way, so, so Starfield's great problem is not like mechanical bugs, at least when I played it, and I didn't get very far into it because it, it did become incredibly dull. But Starfield's, like, it's immense. It's got a massive scope, and there's nothing in it to justify the amount of space that you have. So they, the first planet I tried to explore fully went, oh, there's a cave over there. That looks really deep and complicated, and there must be something important at the end. Oh, no, it's another procedurally generated crap yeah. that doesn't need to be there. And then the main story... Oh well, you you've woken up and you've touched a magic artifact that's given you visions of a of a dystopian future, and then you have to go and figure out what that is. I've seen that so many times before. And your earliest mission: go here, pretend to get a job for someone else by going here to fill out a form to go back. This is <laughs> tedious. Whereas Baldur's Gate Three, it's massive, but there's something to do wherever you are. The player choice actually yeah. matters. There's a huge range of it. The characters are really well drawn. Um, you're probably not going to play it the same way twice, no matter how many times you play it. But there's always a reason to be somewhere. The world feels alive. And it, it justifies the amount of space that the world is taking up. And we we do seem to be in this phase of... The, the, there are certain game developers who seem to think the bigger the open world you have, the better. But that's not true. Mm -hmm. Because you do actually have to have content to fill your open world. If there's no reason to go anywhere, there's no point having the place there to begin with. Something, yes. an impression that I've... Now, all right, I'm, I'm going to clarify. I'm kind of talking out my ass here. I've never quite understood the appeal of, uh, like, the Bethesda RPGs. A at least, not in terms of... I can't understand why anybody would be interested in them, but I always got the impression that, like, the amount of praise that they got seemed to outstrip how good they actually appeared to be. Um, mm. like Bethesda said, games, I look at I've them... I've really not played much of them. I played, like, I think, like, 10 hours of Fallout 4. I barely played any fucking Skyrim at all. <laughs> Maybe, like, an hour... Um, I've only ever looked at it from the outside in and always wondered, like, it looks to me that there are other games with better open worlds, that there are other games, like, with better combat, that there are other games with better RPG elements, that, like, there is no single aspect of what these games do that, that you can't point to another game that does that component better. Bethesda um, games are a um, collection of things that, when taken together, give you a particular experience, but no single thing in them is really okay. noteworthy um, um they're often described a, as a jack of all trades style of okay. game where yeah you can it's a game where you can have a stealth system but you can also be running around and doing action combat or running around and casting magic you know it's trying to give you as broad a spectrum as possible um one thing i want to impress about starfield though is that i realized this a couple weeks into uh working on my video on it that there were no memes about the game or if there were memes, they were about the release of the game, not actually derived from the game itself. And it's the same with the state of the uh, fan art and the porn that's been generated of it. It just doesn't exist compared to something like Baldur's Gate 3 or Cyberpunk. Field porn? What? No. <laughs> I was about to say. Like, at least um, I get the Skyrim stuff, but like, jeez. Uh, on, the, on the Bethesda thing, what I tend to hear is that it was the older games that they made, like Morrowind and stuff that were cool. Yes. And then it was sort of like later that it was starting to get. But the thing that I consistently hear about Fallout is that New Vegas is like the best one of that era. Um, well, what you have to understand is New Vegas was not developed by Obsidian. Bethesda. Yeah, That's Obsidian. Obsidian. Yeah. Um, and that the the old Fallout games like Fallout One and Two, the uh, that those ones are better than the three and four. That's what I also hear. Um, and I'm I guess to compare uh, them. I imagine they're very different from one another. Yeah, they're very, uh, uh, not just genre different, but in terms of, like, priority as well with the people who had created them back in the 90s. Okay. Bethesda Fallout likes to lean more into the uh, humor, like, comedic aspect to it, whereas Fallout 1 and 2 were more kind of serious. I mean, it was still, you know, retro-future 1950s Americana, but um, they did take those concepts more seriously. Okay. 
Um, well, so do you think that uh, Starfield's going to like develop a really um, big modding community that's going to like improve the game and, fix um, it and make it? Where well, I heard the probably, multiplayer probably... people stopped because they said the game was too boring. I don't know if that's true, but I well, <laughs> I, I had a tweet. I had a three-hour conversation with a with a gentleman named Elminster who created the modding tool XEdit, which is significantly important for uh, modding Bethesda games. And it is his opinion that it is going to be extremely difficult for any modding scene to prop up around Starfield uh, in part because of various changes that they've made to the file structure of the game itself, making mm. it very difficult for, let's say you have two mods that change New Atlantis. The game can't reconcile the difference between those mods anymore. And so like that's going to be... stack them in terms of which one ultimately gets resolved yeah, first? Which one, or yeah, which, can... one, which one actually gets to make the change? Oh, or let's so, say that you let's say that you want know. to uh, let's say you want to make your house on destroyed earth, right? Uh, in order to do that, you have to you can't just make your house and then put it into the game. You actually have to replace something that's in the game already, and then your house from then on can be pulled by that randomized system uh, of the PCM. So you, your house could show up on other planets. Okay. That's weird. I don't understand. Bethesda should clearly know when you know launching Starfield and getting it ready that the mod scene is something that they need to encourage mm. to blossom as much as possible for their games. They're leaning um, more into the paid mod direction, where basically they can put a they can put their uh, syrup tap on it and just get uh, dividends forevermore or in perpetuity uh, for other people's work. How much um if someone makes a mod that they put into the creation club, what percentage of the money goes to the person who made the mod? I'm not Do aware you know? of the of the new creation system, but I have been told uh by somebody who talked to one of the creation club modders, uh they're under NDA, of course, so this is all anonymous, but um they were paid per contract, which means they did not get any kind of um royalties for if they were bought years after the fact um so they were just paid you know a flat a flat fee to make it you know it was um i oh, heard 800 okay. to, to make one of those creations 800 dollars. Uh, okay which is not enough uh when you consider the amount of work that would be involved in creating a piece of dlc for them based and off no. of the ones that you showed in your skyrim video they got way overpaid <laughs> <laughs> I know. Yeah, so uh, Creation Club was certainly not a uh, it was only a good thing for modders insofar as some of them were hired into Bethesda, some of them as full time employees and some of them as just temporary contractors. Mm -hmm. um, here's a question. Do you think do you think that Microsoft is going to be implementing major changes at Bethesda in response to Starfield, which was definitely hedged by them as like one of their big releases this yeah, yeah they have they... already uh, put in one of their executives to kind of be Bethesda's Tard Wrangler from here on. Um, <laughs> and there was a big exodus of employees um, on September 21st. Whichever day Pete Hines left, there was also multiple uh, developers who left. Oh, okay. Oh, well, I so, yeah, so I like guess that's uh, kind of the lead so kind of... So, for instance, Will Shin, who is the lead quest designer on Starfield, uh, left the company uh, pretty much as immediately after launch. So he's not going to be working on their uh, DLC or anything. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Well, um, I was just thinking, like sending a, a Microsoft thing. executive in is like the blind leading the blind, basically. That's oh no, absolutely! I... They're gonna they're gonna just gonna run it like it was three four three, and they're gonna run their new property into the ground. Aha, so, three four right. three! What a success story that yeah. was. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, I guess three, Microsoft three, is just so ungodly rich. It's it's like um it, it's like a spot. What was the? Um, have you guys seen? <laughs> Uh, forget it. I, it's it, never, but it, it just seems like it's like a spoiled rich kid playing with extremely expensive toys who doesn't understand their potential value. Mm. Um, because like Halo's basically on life support in terms of its cultural significance at the moment Absolutely. when it used to be. I mean, like the phenomenon of Halo used Three, like, living through that was nuts. Yeah, it was mm -hmm. that shit sold consoles and a bajillion of them. 
Um, but it's now what, it's what like it, kind of this, you know, it's like, it's like oh, the yeah, 360 yeah. game. I mean, you think mm-hmm. you, yeah. you, you hear the words Xbox 360 in your mind instantly is like Halo 3. Mm-hmm. Um, I'd like to clarify for the uh, for the chat that while Will Shin left, he was just the lead quest designer. Um, there's still Emil Pagliarulo above him and Todd Howard above him. And they're making your Elder Scrolls 6. So <laughs> now, well, Emil, now I know who that is. Because I've watched a lot of your videos at this point, but Emil Pagliarulo is catch everyone else on kind of who he so, is. Emil was a uh, this is funny. He was a game reviewer at a <laughs> website called Adrenaline Vault back in the in the late nineties, uh, alongside Pete Hines. So what happened was Todd had hired uh, Pete Hines for Morrowind's development as a uh, as a producer and as like a marketer, and then. Um, Emil had joined, I forget their name, but they were the company that made Thief. And then they went under and he needed working a job. Lost. So Pete Hines got Emil a job working on Morrowind. And he went from rinky dink quest designer on a DLC to like a lead quest designer on a major faction to like the lead designer on Fallout 3. Like that, those three steps, boom, boom, boom. And as soon as he hit that lead design position... Everybody in the industry was talking about how he's this uh, amazing writer on Fallout 3. Um, so he kind of let that go to his head to a, to a bit and said, well, my shit must not stink. And uh, mm-hmm. that's how we ended up with uh, Fallout 4. And that's how we've ended up with Starfield, as it's just the kind of degenerate way that he likes to make games has only gotten worse with time. <laughs> the degenerate way he makes games. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's funny well, how that works, right? You just sort of fail upwards in game design. Yeah, you want to talk about fucking it. upwards. Yeah. I know a few industries where that happens. I think <laughs> one of the big sort of like proof of the pudding sorts of thing is I played Skyrim. When it came out, I played it like everyone else, except Fringy. Um, um, <laughs> but I didn't play I played it. I didn't play it. Um, I think I. N- I stopped playing it before the DLCs came out and I yes. sunk a shit ton of time into it, but I was finished with it as an experience before the DLCs and everything. And when I look back, I, it, it's almost like a black hole in my mind. I remember it, it's like when you, it's like trying to remember a dream you just had, you sort of remember bits and pieces, but you don't really remember anything that happened. Whereas I remember a lot of the Witcher three I remember the Baron and a lot of the mm-hmm. weapons and the armor and the quests and the experience. I remember Skellige and all sorts of stuff, but I don't remember like anything from Skyrim. Nothing I, stuck with me. I've been told often that when people watch my videos, I remind them of a lot of things that they've done that they had no recollection of. Yes, that's the feeling I was getting, seeing the Draugr crypts and everything like that. I was just like, oh yeah, I, I like in a previous life, it feels like I played a game that took place here. Or I did this quest, and I and I had to dig deep down for how I might have felt when it first I happened think to me. Skyrim is a game that can that has figured out how to turn people's brains off, and they've never been able to like repu- replicate that part of the formula of that. It's supposed to be just this uh, comfort food of games. You know, you play it when you're on a depressive phase. The reason there's so many Skyrim videos is just that. Those guys probably played Skyrim for two weeks and wanted to justify wasting two weeks of their life on something. And so they it just shit out of Skyrim this, video. It like lulls you into the sense of complacency for an experience. Um, because you just sort of you just sort of play it and it happens. It's like you're mesmerized by it, mm-hmm. I think. And then once you sort of snap, you stop playing because you're just finished. Um, and, and then you just can't. Re- it's like you snapped out of a trance and then you go about with your life as if nothing sort of happened. Yeah, so what's funny with Starfield is that that's basically the broader industry kind of realizing things that I've I and a number of Bethesda fans have been talking about for a long time that Skyrim wasn't as good as you remembered and oh. they're bringing mm-hmm. like to assume that they're just keeping that level of quality is just because you know, you don't play it at, that often or something. But um, and they're kind of seeing it and also um, me shining a light on the development practices. Uh, Mr. Pagliarulo has actually been getting a lot of tweets about uh, the whole no design document thing. And he's been um, he po- he's posted multiple responses at this point, kind of sniping sideways at the issue. It seems and, like such uh, a disastrous thing that you yeah. obviously don't do. 
<clears throat> everyone needs to be on essentially you, everyone, not even like the same page, the same pamphlet. If everyone <laughs> has a general sort of thing that they're working toward and is yeah. directed towards, like obviously that's what you do when you're making a new IP, not just a video game, but a new IP. Well, the example I gave was zero G combat. Um, none of the quest designers basically use that mechanic because if they didn't know it was going to exist, why would they write a sequence for it? <laughs> While yeah. Base Dead Space Remake is like, yeah, we're doing zero G combat. It's gonna be fucking baller. I mean, it's been uh, it, the the year for games has been pretty good to where it seems oh, yeah. like they couldn't just coast by. You know, like that to actually yeah. be really good, uh, and that and to not be really good was to fall flat on their face. Um, I still want like to see the version of Starfield pre delay. Um, oh, I can't oh, imagine. Oh my Because I don't know oh, if, if you haven't seen my video, there is a Todd Howard quote where he says that they didn't figure out how to make the game fun in their in their words until 2022. Like late 2022. Oh, <laughs> I thought he said I thought he said that the game didn't feel fun until th it was about I think a that's year. what he said. Um, it, essentially, it was, either it was, way, pretty fucking worrying, but I guess mm -hmm. it's just yeah, I mean, splitting hairs at that point. Generally in game development, you figure out how to make the game fun first, your, your and then you build experience. the content on yeah. top of that. Uh, Well-known uh, yeah. anecdote, but I mean, with uh, Super Mario 64, they spent like a year just trying to work on making Mario fun to move, move around and mm. have him jump around and control. You have to have a good, yeah, exactly, you have to have yeah. that good core gameplay thing that around which everything else is built. Whether it's the gunplay of your shooting, the movement oh, yeah. of your platforming. Of fun in Halo, you know? It's what they say, 30 seconds of fun, and you just repeat that over and over and over, and you got a video game. But if that's not totally, fun, then yeah. you're like, Fring Fringy was saying, that Nintendo method of, like, establishing a character and a moveset, and then perfecting that, just have, like developers just endlessly running around a playtest area just testing every single move going is this fun is this fun okay and then you move on to the next phase of building a world around that where it's like we can take advantage of the the single dump jump the double jump like that'll let them take advantage of this move to get to this part of the world right are you trying like, to tell us the so... secret of mario's jump <laughs> <laughs> there is there is something it's... of a secret to Mario's jump in the sense that Mario games are consistently fun platformers. They managed right. to be well, consistently fun for like yeah. thirty years. Every no the development gets frowns. locked down in it gets locked down in phases, right? Where it's just like we're not going to move on until we fucking nail this part of it. It's like mm -hmm. okay, are we done mm -hmm. with this? Okay, now we'll move on to the world design. Like Rather that kind of discipline, I think, is key. No, I, yeah, I'm sorry, sorry. Rather than I will say ideas i this was like the first bethesda game since i don't even know when but i never had something about starfield always put me off like i i never had any interest in it i thought some of the aesthetics were really neat but that's kind of as as far as it ever went with me i never felt mean, any desire to play starfield you mean during like marketing Kind of they through in t until present day. There's never been anything right. about it that like called to me to play it. Like even Fallout Four, which you know I for all of its issues I did enjoy. Um, that I I modded the fuck out of that into an experience that I legitimately did enjoy. But even Starfield, there was never that thing that grabbed me that encouraged me to, you know, to to play. I I, I agree with Rags. I, I was I was. Like, I wasn't that sore on Starfield. I was just like, it looks okay. It doesn't look terrible to me. In fact, it kind of looks a bit interesting. And I'm looking for a reason to play it. And then a friend of mine, he, like, streamed this thing. It's like <laughs> some YouTubers he follows where they just play through the game from the very start. And I watched, like, two hours of it. And I was pretty underwhelmed, particularly at the part where you finally get into space. And, like, I was <laughs> expecting that there was going to be this system like No Man's Sky or even fucking Starlink on the Nintendo Switch where you can fly out of a planet's atmosphere and seamlessly go into space without any kind of loading screen. Or even oh. if it's a fake loading screen, it, like, it won't look like it and it'll feel like it's not a loading screen. It'll actually just feel like you're transversing from, you know, a planet's atmosphere to space. But no... 
in Starfield, it's literally like press E to activate ship. Yeah. And then you yep. it fades to black, go to a fucking loading screen, fade to black uh, again, fade in, so... boom, you're in space, and then you just fly around and it's like well, that's it? You don't really? Have to do it that just trying because like, uh, my limited experience playing Starfield, you're kind of disincentivized to actually use the, the space flying stuff at all, because you can just mm -hmm. fast travel to pretty much anywhere yeah. you need to go. And most no, no, places no. you need to fast travel to. So you're what's just trying to, You're just trying to There's figure a... out how you have less loading screens a lot of times. It's like, oh, I yeah. want to go to this planet over there, but my ship is only allowed to hop the two Bethesda min at maxing one. is about yeah, loading screens. <laughs> I'm only allowed right. to, to hop two systems at once because my ship has only that much fuel. So you hop there, hop to the next one. So if you want to go to somewhere that's like top right of the map, you better prepare yourself for some loading screens. Well, that's the amusing yeah. thing too, is uh, Pete Hines was talking about how um, the grav drive was essentially designed to work in such a way that um, anything to do with space is supposed to be entirely optional. The game is like weirdly designed in a way where absolutely everything in it is optional and so it just makes you wonder why you would play any part of it if you're not yeah if you're not getting me to engage with your systems then i'm gonna go play a game that wants me to um yes there's so many games that are i mean let's take a, a game that i figured a patrician was big into is seven days to die i got a lot of time mm -hmm. in that i really enjoy that game the game is definitely um it is the best worst game um, and I kind of <laughs> love it. Uh, there's a lot of weird, strange things about it, and they all coalesce into an experience that isn't really like any other. And it's full of systems that you just feel like you want to engage with, whether it's the it's... Leveling, leveling or the base building or the, I mean, it, or the actually my favorite thing about it, which is the dungeon design of Seven Days to yeah. Die. <laughs> um, or wh whether it's everything from, I mean, the Daisy to The Witcher. There's just, they're full of these little systems, and you would figure out how does it work? How do I get better? How do I, you know, streamline this experience? How do I do this, that, and the other thing? But if everything's optional, then it, it feels like they're trying to, um, it's too casual, you know? Yes. If that makes sense. Like, they don't want me to well, take the example it seriously. I gave, the example I gave was Black Flag. Black Flag, as a video game, expects you to engage with its combat system and expects you to engage with its shipbuilding system. Neither of those things are optional when you play that game. Which is why I actually, I wasn't interested in those, and so I stopped playing because yes. of it, but I can respect it. Um, you don't want to be I in don't... a position where Ubisoft is expecting you to actually play the game, and you're not, you know? Yeah, there is some element of, like, I, I, I am not into ships fighting ships in this game. This game just isn't for me. And you know, not every game has to be for me. But the mega watered down, nothing matters, lol, do whatever... Like this mm -hmm. insistence that I have fun by saying that nothing matters is a interesting strategy. Um, <laughs> but Which, I don't um, know. These games just don't grab me. Give me the. Know, it feels give like me... focus was the winner this year in terms of games of providing a very focused, specific yes. experience. A vision and experience. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, um, but if it's not what you wanted, then okay, I guess it's not for you then. Yeah. yeah. There is a specific tailored experience rather than just. It's like the, you know, the kind of, it's funny you bring up Black Flag because Ubisoft has that problem, right? The Ubisoft open world, generic yes. open world game that wants to be everything and ends up being basically nothing, makes no impression. Yeah, Seems and like that's such a, it's a risky world. move to make because like, I really liked Origins. I loved exploring and looking at the world and the combat was fine. And I, I really enjoyed just going around and doing stuff. And I never beat it. I put like 80 whatever hours into it. And I'm like, you know what? I, I'm, I'm done. I, I, I'm just done. I've, I've gotten my fun out of it. I've enjoyed my experience. Time for me to move on. I have a, no desire to beat the game or really do anything else, but I'm glad I played it. And it's not even like, a, you know, Starfield doesn't seem like a game where I could say that I've gotten my thing out of it and now I'm done. Um, like, I can't... Like, if it's a buffet, normally you go to that and you eat, you eat your fill until you're satisfied, but Starfield looks like a buffet I just don't even want to do. Yeah, it's extre yep. it's extremely underwhelming for being a two hundred million dollar game and supposed to be this <sighs> flagship product for mm -hmm. uh, Xboxes. Yeah, well, I, I didn't yeah. sure Microsoft is not thrilled. I didn't even understand nope. the purpose of the space stuff, because like you you know you you you're on the a space planet, is cool. right? You go in, 
you go onto the ship, you go to the pilot seat, hit E, and then it's loading screen, boom, you're in space. And then at that point, you can just fast travel to wherever, like, planet or section of a planet that you want to go to. So it's just like, what? what is the actual purpose of the space part? Like, what's... Well, that's- that's What's the most stopping you from just thing. like fast traveling from just like one section of a planet to another section of a planet and just skip the space part entirely? And so it seems like the only incentive is just like getting into occasional dogfights and then you might get some unique loot in the blowing up of ships that you fight with. Uh, that, like, I, I don't, I don't see don't, other you utility only resources. In it. You only get like yeah. uh, material resources. Um, you don't actually, you can't upgrade your ship through doing ship combat. You know, you can't find like a new weapon or new armor or anything like that. Like you'd be used to in a traditional Bethesda combat formula. Right. Yeah. And I, and I was thinking like, okay, if this is how it works, then I guess this space area is just basically a skybox where you're not actually traveling in any direction. You know what I mean? Like where, like you're not, if you if you see something in the distance, it's basically just a skybox where if you were just mm-hmm. to hit W, you're not actually getting in any closer to anything over time. But you actually are, which is but it leads to geometry that you can't actually interact with. It was really weird. There was this weird there's a streamer on Twitch, I think, that did this. They basically held down the W key in space and they went to mm-hmm. sleep. And then they <laughs> woke up like eight hours later to see where they would get. And it's like, yeah, in fact, you can actually travel to the geometry that you can see in the distance, but mm-hmm. it doesn't do anything. Yeah, Once you nothing. actually pass yeah. through it, you clip through it. Yeah. And you because basically can just look around at the untextured interior of it, and it's just like, okay, this is nothing. Like, this is actually more jank than if it was just a skybox, you know? To emphasize like, I would actually chat. prefer if that was the case. Sorry, go ahead. Yep. To emphasize for the chat, you cannot fly in between planets manually. You have to no. select that planet and then hold a button down to watch a, a cutscene of you flying to that planet. If you want to fly to a uh, planet in a in a video game, play Ratchet and Clank: A Crack in Time, <laughs> released on the PlayStation Three back in good old two thousand nine. Because Ratchet and Clank always had fun loading screens to contextualize going from one place to the other. Uh, but in that one, you can actually fly between uh, between those uh, planets, and there's things to do in the uh, in the system that you find yourself in. You can go to a or- bunch of like asteroid fields and uh, and little. That's moons crazy. That sounds like a real game pringy. I think we might made that up. I feel like there's something to be said about setting people's expectations where your game actually is, and just owning it confidently. Um, just to say, yeah, we're going to have a bunch of little maps and they're procedurally generated um, and you don't like fly around in space completely freely. You know, you, you go from place to place and just own it and say, yeah, that, that's what it is. You, you know, we have a you have a loading screen when you travel to a planet and then you land on it and there's all this stuff to do and everything like that. You know, it's just it'd be better for them to say that than to set everyone up thinking that this is a, a game where you could go anywhere and do anything. When yeah, it's just to spend the uh, 45 minutes of their Starfield Direct saying very little accurate about the game, uh, but setting everybody's expectations high. One thing I wanted to mention was um, in the the game awards, in the part that people could vote for, they had accidentally leaked uh, what the results of the poll were. And Starfield was number 18, but number 20 was No Man's Sky. Hmm. Hmm. For for game of the year? Uh, Yeah, for the players of players voice game of the year. Uh, Yeah. Hmm. All right. Player's voice. Um, I mean, what I, I what I liked about that was like traversing from planets to space seamlessly. Mm-hmm. I thought that was really cool. The other stuff I'm kind of meh on. Like, you know, there's like a meme about like the creatures generated in that game where it's all like procedural and it's just like you have arms put on <laughs> these creatures yeah. with like these heads and tails that don't quite make sense. They look kind of derpy. Kind of sounds fun to me. I don't know. It's just cute. <laughs> it has it's no. Cute. It has a. It has an endearing charm now. It's a. It's a much more functional game. It was unfortunately quite broken when I went to uh, review it a couple years ago. But um, no, the No Man's Sky fans they swear by the game as the experience that Starfield had advertised. Yeah, I've heard that a lot of work mm. got put into making that game something. You know, like an like an actual game. Yeah, yeah. 
Um, you know, uh, another science fiction thing that came out in September that I think I might be the only person who ever watched was The Creator. Did anybody watch that? No, you, you're the reason I didn't watch that. Watched it. Did anybody? Did people in chat watch? I it? heard I of it before the film came out. There was a lot of conversation about. Oh, look, it's like an original science yeah. fiction film that has like a cool aesthetic. Um, I've, I've unfortunately, it does have a cool aesthetic. It just doesn't really have anything yeah. else. <laughs> no, it's uh, it's it's honestly pretty terrible. Um, I actually oh, I did no. a stream with uh Cap talking about uh. Talking about the um that film, it's really bad. Uh, like if you actually delve into the plot and and how everything connects together, it's a mess. It's uh kind of unfortunate. I would not recommend that film basically to anybody. Um, cool aesthetic, but I think it wastes its premise and it's just filled with like shitty writing. It wastes shitty the premise plot, like really um, early on as well. You, you think like, one of the most interesting uh, things about sort of having this away. AI villain is that you know you have ai which does sort of mean something you can do really interesting things if your villains are ai and it's conceptually fascinating and there are so many new innovative things you can do with that premise the worst thing to do besides maybe the mission impossible approach of never even bothering to define it is to say yeah these ai things the first thing we're going to set them up as being is just human they are that's all they are um because like, what what they what is even the point of them being robots at yeah, that I was point say, what they is are the point? just yeah. metal human beings that's it but I mm. guess it's nothing more than a little bit of world flavor at that point. Um, it's like, um, fine, I, fine, I guess, but that but seems I mean, the, weird. The whole, film, you know? the whole film is about that. That's what the oh, whole film oh. is, is about. Oh, well. well. Who, who directed that movie? Uh, Gareth Edwards. Gareth Edwards. Really? Okay. Yeah, which is why I was like partially interested, because I do like the work he did on Rogue One. Between him and Tony Gilroy, obviously, like the Rogue One wasn't useless. Um, and then, yeah. but yeah, it's it's funny you said <laughs> it, like it came and went. I was like, it's the anthem of films. Remember, remember that game? Anybody? Remember that? I do. I've never played it. I feel but... like it's that that one's almost been scrubbed from history. Anthem, like the. Uh... It just didn't have very much <laughs> cultural stain. Power. No, it just died straight away. I know. I know a few people who have tried to make videos on Anthem because it's a live service game, and so there's a limited amount of time with which uh, you have to even make a video about it. Right. Wasn't the deal with Anthem that they were going to do like a a retooling to fix it up, and then they quit? Yeah, they, they had like a they had a roadmap and a, like a five year plan for. A and then they gave up. That's sad. <laughs> They just said, oh, no, we're not doing it. Uh, we can't justify it. So, yeah, it's over. It's done. So the opposite of No Man's Sky, in a way, then. Yes, where mm, they actually persevered good. through it. Where th for no, But the problem is that EA, you know, Bioware well, that, that, is EA, so... That's actually funny, because their game before that was Mass Effect Andromeda, which, at its inception, ah. actually had a very similar premise to Starfield. They were going to do a big galaxy full of uh, procedurally generated planets. Hmm... Mm. I, don't know, I think maybe this like is a. I don't know. I don't want to. Part of me is hoping <laughs> that it's a phase, uh, the procedural generation stuff. But mm -hmm. who knows? Maybe that just depends on how good it well, gets. Well, it, but... it, it works. It works for No Man's Sky. It works for Daggerfall. But you have to have a very specific mindset when you're developing it. And uh, yeah, a lot of game developers don't have that mindset. They have a handcrafted world mindset. So. Well, I think when I first saw Anthem come out, the big wow moment was like its introduction of 360 degree traversal. Like you could, yeah, like rotate yeah, the like camera Man's wherever and go in that direction. But then they spent so long getting the game out that other games just ended up doing the same thing. And it's like, well, and that was like even Dead Space did that of uh, of. Bioware Magic, where they were working their employees 80 plus hours a week for uh, 18 months on end. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, because the story with Anthem is that they basically actually started developing the game properly, like maybe a month before they revealed it to the world. But they'd spent mm -hmm. five years in pre production fucking around. And then EA showed up and was like, where's the video game? And they didn't have anything well, to give them. It's it's even better. The guy that they were supposed to uh, bring stuff to would keep changing his mind of what he wanted. And at one point, he just mm -hmm. said he wanted an Iron Man game. And so that's why the flying is in that game, because... Oh, right. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Yep. So, absolute disaster yes. is what that one wow. was. Um, nobody played shame. Mortal Kombat. Did anybody play Mortal Kombat 1? This also came out about around nope, that time. No. No. Nah. Alright, well. 
Uh, Saw X, though. That was coming out. Saw X, Saw of X course. We, we did the Saw arc. Yay. And Saw X it was capped off with that, which was a surprising highlight of the 10 movies. Uh, <laughs> really was. Yeah. They yeah, finally, it, it took them 10 films, they finally figured out what <laughs> they should be focusing on. It's crazy. Uh, not, like, amazing or anything, but it kind of is for a Saw fan. <laughs> like, wow, they did the things. Um... It's a Goofsta movie. It's it's uh I don't really take it too seriously as a scary film. I don't think anyone takes Saw as a series that seriously as scary rather than uh I'm trying to think of like the many different ways you can enjoy it. Mostly just holy shit, what are they gonna do next? And what would I do if I was in this trap? More so like a would I be able to would I you know, engage in the exchange as when we concluded that six was the clear winner for the best yeah. Saw film. And that it cracked the formula, and it would have been neat if more of them had followed something like that. And we know that there will be a sequel, that's been confirmed. So 11 will be on the way. So not this only. Year? Yeah, which is going to be crazy because like, we, we've got to try and get that done while also doing the new arc. And I was just thinking, like, imagine they released like, another Final Destination this year, and so we just have to keep adding to all of our different arcs while Critter do it. <laughs> That'd be Slow funny. down. Um, yeah, a little bit. But, you know, I don't blame anybody for being completely disgusted by Saw in general. I understand. It's all right. I, uh... Well, maybe they'd rather watch uh, Five Nights at Freddy. Yeah. <laughs> or Willy's Wonderland. Oh, that came out around that time. Oof. Well, I don't think that's a twenty. Willy's Wonderland, was that also 2023? I think no, that no. that was a couple of years ago. No. Okay. It's just that we well, watched it could stay at the there. same time. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. We did. Uh, Willy's Wonderland sucked. It was fucking horrible. I hated <laughs> Willy's Wonderland. <laughs> no, and it was I'm obviously balls. just a Five Nights at Freddy's ripoff. A yeah, bad so one. When the the real yeah. one came yeah, along, it was, it was just like, okay, well, maybe this will be interesting. I don't know. Yeah, I don't care about Five Nights at Freddy's as a franchise or anything. I haven't played the games. They look like the opposite thing that I would ever want to do. <laughs> but the movie was fine. Yeah, well, uh, ultimately, those are not out yet. But we have recorded, we've recorded so many EFA movies. It's like 50 <laughs> at this point, and you will see a lot of them uh, in good time, everybody, in good time. Uh, I got uh, bored of Five Nights at Freddy's as soon as, like, they started fully showing the animatronics, and they're, like, working together with them, and I'm just like, I don't really know what to be afraid of anymore. You know what I mean? Like, it's it just felt like it blew its load. I Is feel it like it should have... Sorry, go ahead. Is it even really a game adaptation? I almost think it's like an internet meme adaptation at this point. Um, I mean, it's. I a, guess it's... you could say either or. With yeah. the limited knowledge I, I have know. of Five Nights of Fridays, I would say they did what I would have expected them to do when turning that game into a movie. They even did some things that I think are quite wise in terms of being able to make a story out of it. We weren't too happy with a lot of the choices they ended up making just for normal story reasons, but the film itself does mm. kind of take the story seriously. It does, it's not like it just memes. Like, um,. There's, they're probably going to try and build a franchise out of it for you know, like a movie oh, wing, oh. and uh, there are like dramatic payoffs. Successful, wasn't it? Like it's not just laugh my ass off, robot kills you in goofy ways or whatever. <laughs> it made a lot of money, further emphasizing that we're probably going to be seeing a lot more video game adaptations yep. in yeah. the coming years. Yeah. Um, though speaking of video games, <laughs> Super Mario Brothers Wonder came out. Am I the only person who played it? I still I haven't played, played it. it. I fucking I thought it was great. Yeah, it's one of my favorite games of the year. Uh, mm. I fucking love that game. It's like one of the best 2D platformers in a long time. Really, really, really cool. Easy recommendation. Mm. Uh, it came, came out the same day as uh, Spider Man 2, actually. Well, yeah, let, me, let me gush over Mario <laughs> for a little bit longer. Um, Super Mario Brothers Wonder is essentially like what I think everybody kind of wanted them to start doing. Like the new Super Mario Brothers games are cool, they're fun. Um, but they're very safe. They're basically just trying to essentially like translate the standard template for what a 2D Mario game is. You know, Super Mario, the old Super Mario Brothers games uh, to like newer visuals. But it, it's like a really straightforward 2D platformer. They're good. They're really good. Uh, but the fact that they sort of kept doing that without making any major changes... Uh, I feel like by the time we got to uh, New Super Mario Brothers U, everybody was kind of done. Everybody was a little bit bored of it. Um, and then we had a 10-year gap, and then this one comes along with the same, like, core framework for a 2D Mario game, but with a whole bunch of, like, new power-ups and the new, like, the Wonder Seed mechanic that, like, fundamentally changes the level in an unpredictable way. 
uh, like presenting with new platforming challenges and obstacles that you need to contend with. Um, really like vibrant um, art style, good music as per usual, cool new animations and everything like that. It's just like a really easy, great game recommendation. Yeah, oh, I agree, I man. That was dope. And yeah, it reminded it... me a lot of Super Mario World. Yes. Um, it felt like a sequel to that game. Uh, in terms yeah. Of continuing with that kind of like spirit. Yeah. And there were parts like lifted, I felt straight out of Super Mario World. Like when you defeat a castle in Super Mario World, you have that little like cinematic cutscene where it's like Mario and maybe a couple other characters, I can't remember who, who are looking in the castle in the background and getting blown up. And it's just like, well, your adventure's not over yet, basically. Whatever the text was, I can't remember. But it was just like, mm -hmm. in Super Mario World, they basically did the exact same thing. And then, uh, but like the saving grace, I think, of Super Mario Wonder is the Wonder Flower. Just like this yeah. game-changing element that you pick up and it just drastically changes the gameplay fundamentally of whatever level you're playing like you could be playing 2d at one moment and then you you pick up top down the yeah exactly you'll pick up the wonder flower and you could be playing top down all of a sudden we're all where all of a sudden the background is now the floor and now you're wandering around in like a top down space well, and uh, you into it was a guru guy that has to cling to the walls to like navigate you can't really jump but you can cling to like the walls and sort of maneuver through the area or like where it turns everything like everything turns into a silhouette and you have to try and navigate the landscape only using the silhouette without uh, any other additional visual information or you got to run away from like a like a stampede that's chasing after you or it's it's just like there's a there's an immense variety i i think they only repeated like maybe once or twice um there's a lot of variety to to the um to the variations on the level yes very few repetitions there are a couple but startlingly few like it's pretty unique mm -hmm. like going stage to stage what the wonder flower actually does which i found really impressive and it's like totally optional right you can go through the level and not ever find you don't have to do the it. wonder flower because yeah. sometimes they're very occasionally i mean most of the time you can sort of, like if you're a skilled enough player you'll find the wonder flower like 90 percent of the time at least but like there's some levels where it's just like oh i didn't get it that time like i wonder where it was and then, so, like, it's not strictly, it's it's optional. You can get it, and then when you do get it, it's just like, whoa, what is this? Like, this is crazy what it's doing. I was uh, um, surprised by the gameplay. badges. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah I, I figured badges. I'd just mention that, well, not badges, badges. Um, like, because right. when I first saw it, when they talked about it in the trailer, I'm like, hmm, okay, this just seems like kind of, um... Just things that you can get that, like, raise the skill f uh, floor, essentially. No, like, lower the skill floor. Just make it easier. But there's, like, some good meaningful, like, differences between the badges that you can get that, like, functionally change the platforming in ways that um can either actually make it more challenging for you or, uh, or easier for you, which is cool. I thought it was just going to make it easier, but you can, like, set them that will make it harder for you, which is cool. <laughs> Yeah, based on your play style, like you can have a badge that gives you a like a level up mush, not like a level up, you know, like the mushroom that increases your size. You basically, start, yeah. it gives you an extra. Or hit. you can have yeah. ones that like have it to be where you bounce higher, um, in like specific terrain, or uh, like it gives you an additional like wall jump. Um, yeah, uh, you, can you can glide. Like, one time. Yeah, glide. There's one that shoots a vine vertically across yeah, to like the nearest Spider -Man. wall, and you grab. <laughs> yeah, it's really fun, and it's just like holy shit! I can't believe this is just yeah. one badge out of the complete array because it's such. It feels like such a game changing thing, but a yeah. bunch of the badges have that quality to it, you know, it's... which is really cool. It's uh, yeah. it's, it's a really cool, fun video game. Really. That's that's like an easy recommend to basically anybody. I can't imagine anybody playing it going, I didn't enjoy that. I just can't fathom it. No, it was a it's a joyous experience. Like I mean, Absolutely. there's other games where it's like there's a bleak aspect to it that I'm playing currently, like Resident Evil 4 and Cyberpunk where it's just like there's sort of a misery attached to these games <laughs> in in some aspect, but like Super Mario Brothers Wonder is just 
you're just smiling yeah, well, from when they add full frontal nudity it, to know? mario then we can talk <laughs> about atmosphere all right so. um i suppose we're going to talk about the other game that also came out uh, on the same day as uh mario <laughs> which was spider-man 2 uh, who played that I never Wonder played Man. it. I never touched it, but I'm aware of so much uh, of the discussion the about it. Am I played it? Does mm -hmm. that mean I have to talk about it all on my own? <laughs> Fringy, this oh, was sorry, the game Fringy. you were meant to discuss. No, no, it wasn't. Uh, I don't have oh, that much okay. to say about it. It's like a really, it's just like, eh, eh, you know, that's like that game. Eh, it's okay. Yeah, it's all right. Um, I, uh, I, think, uh, I think the big thing that works against that game is I, I keep thinking back to Arkham Asylum is a cool game. Arkham City is a better game that like blows the doors open on um on on the mechanics that they established there, presents you with a big new open world that you can explore, a bunch of like new challenges and sort of gameplay opportunities. Whereas Spider-Man 2 takes an open world, makes it bigger, but somehow makes the game shorter. It's shorter. You can beat it in like a, a weekend if you play it a lot that weekend. It's only like 20 mm. hours long to 100 percent that game. I I 100 percented it like the weekend that it came out and was done with it. Um, it really, wow. like, is not a very big expansion of what was present in the first game. And if we're all being honest with ourselves, like, the mechanics are pretty straightforward and okay, all right? Like, it's a, it's a fun, it's got fun combat, but it's not, like, mind-blowing or anything. Um, and so, like, to only kind of add a few new things in after, like, five years, it's probably not good it's enough. like a missing uh, opportunity, uh, kind of like, a, like they could have done more. Well, they added, you can play as Miles as well, but um, really the main difference that that makes is uh, in terms of like certain special abilities that you can use, but it's not, it, like otherwise they have a fundamentally the same mechanics um, that they mess around with. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it feels so... like with the PS5, the flexing is the bandwidth of the SSD hard drive that they yeah. have in the PS5, where you can switch seamlessly between Peter and Miles wherever they are on the map. But fundamentally, in terms of gameplay, in terms of what you're actually doing, like fighting and swinging around, there's not really that much of a change. It's, it's That's a shame because having a having the ability to switch between protagonists, you could have well, like Dishonored Two did it with um, Emily and Corvo. Her name was Emily, right? Yes. yes. Um, okay. But they like their whole power set, and it seems like the whole kind of way they wanted you to play was totally different. Where Corvo seemed really like the like stealth and subversion oriented and emily was a bit more like aggressive and gonna get you but they had totally um, different like powers and feelings of playing the two something i mm -hmm. want to mention about the combat in spider-man is um in a lot of action games uh like you know the sort of third person action games you'd be thinking about like devil may cry and stuff uh keeping yourself in the air for a long time is uh, kind of like a challenge and a, a testament of, of skill if you can like stay in the air like basically indefinitely uh, because usually it's kind of hard to keep air com like air combos will usually be harder in these types of games than combos on the ground in Spider Man yeah. like a reliable <coughs> pardon me a reliable strategy to win every time is get up in the air um, hold triangle to pull the enemy up into the air web them up and then hold triangle to slam them in the ground hold triangle pull the next enemy up web them up, uh, fling them into the ground, hold triangle, pull the next enemy up, web them into the ground. One of the great benefits of playing it this way is that um, it means that you're invulnerable to the majority of enemies. The only enemies you've got to worry about is um, anybody that can shoot projectiles, but you just get the spider sense that goes ping, and then you just press circle to dodge, pull out their weapon, pull them up into the air, web them mm. up, throw them into the ground. That is like a reliable strategy to basically win every single fight in that game, um, unless you're dealing with a boss battle. Um, I'm pretty sure they removed, uh, there were less gadgets. I think in the first game you had, like, a weapon wheel that you could select gadgets from, whereas, uh, in this one they're, like, they're bound, you got four that you can use, like, bound to, to, um, bound to the controller and, and, and that, like, that's it, which, yeah, don't know how I feel about that. Um, but it's, it's, you know, it's, it's fun. Um, web slinging is fun, gliding around New York is fun. Um... You know, like it's, it's you know, just, yeah, it's yeah, it's all right. Um, it's all right, but it's not, it's not, it's it just didn't make that much of an impression on me. Uh, and then as for the story, I mean, it's just got it's got problems, all right. Like there's, there's, uh, <laughs> yeah. there's uh, the plot is uh, it's got problems. The character writing's uh, got problems. Um, well, perhaps I kind of like Craven. Before you go into more depth, I could say that as someone who hasn't played it at all, 
the uh, the impression that it made on you seems to be representative of what it made on the world. Is it was like given a lot of press and sort of bumped up in terms of hype and everything, but ultimately disappeared, and people didn't really talk yes. about the story at all uh, compared uh, certainly to for negatively. Well, so I was going to say, uh, Spider-Man 1, I've seen around the block here and there. I know particular scenes, not necessarily the scenes as a whole, but imagery, right? Like uh, him and Doc Ock, I've seen loads of images of him and Aunt May. There's, there's things I've mm -hmm. seen from Spider-Man 1 again and again and again, people sharing big moments from the game that really had an impact on him. Spider-Man 2, barely anything, uh, except, of course, the cinematic moment where Sandman throws Miles Morales. I, I, yes, I saw that. That's been, uh... <laughs> I've seen that a billion <laughs> times because right we will talk about why that got shared everywhere in a moment. But well, yeah, what I was going to get at was just that the game's sort of just, it just disappeared. It didn't have any longevity, and it's it, all I kept hearing was that it's, it's incredibly short. I saw a couple of people I'm aware of saying, check out my, you know, Platinum Trophy 100% after like two days. And I was like, wait, what? Yeah, like, I, again, I 100%ed it. I Because the game came out on Friday, I think 100%ed it by Monday. As in, there was literally nothing more that the game had to offer me. It was done. Damn. I completed everything it had to offer. Um, it's really short. Uh, it, and the thing, one of the things as well is that a lot of the side missions... I think one of the things that makes for side missions, like in an open world, being more interesting is when you present people with like fundamentally different experiences. Like An easy one to point to was in Red Dead Redemption, you can go play cards. You can just go to like a place and play cards. Or go fishing or um like it, like that the, there's a bunch of different side activities that you do that offer a different experience than or running around and shooting guys completing a side mission so it literally just isn't the same for everybody yeah and then random encounters in the world that are kind of interesting and not just hey there are some bad guys there doing some stuff go fight them but like oh you encounter an uh, an entity in the world and then you can interact with them and then that will maybe send you on like a side mission with narrative and stuff um whereas in Spider-Man it's like more or less, every single side activity is you're going to be fighting people. Um, more or less. Or, uh, if not that, it's going to be, like, some traversal thing, or, like, you pilot a drone through some areas, like, you just fly around a thing, and then it's like, they're really, they're really straightforward and basic, and you can play them really quickly. Uh, and they're just, like, repeated across the open world. So, it's not really surprising that you can get through them so quickly, because it feels like a checklist. You just, you, it's just like, oh, yep, there's one there, I'll go there. The ones that I liked was the, uh, Mysterio ones, like, you go to these Mysterio places around the city, and then they give you a bunch of, like, combat missions that are kind of, like, unique and have specific challenges, and you can get, like, a higher rank depending on how quickly you, you get through, and it's like, yeah, that's cool. Um, but, you know, uh, and I mean, as for the story, I, uh, I, aside from just general, like, writing problems, uh, I think that the first, the first, like, when you compare them, the first game has more, like, big, impactful moments, big impact scenes whereas this one has less of those um yeah. mm -hmm. and the ones that are there aren't as they're not as good um i really like craven uh i think he's kind of cool as like a villain um i feel like venom is pretty severely underutilized though uh he's not in it for long and i feel like we don't get that much for him uh and lizard doesn't really get that much either those are like the three main villains um, it feels like Craven got the most, and then he's gone, and and then you know it's just like yeah, then then you got Venom, uh, and it also feels like they're really struggling to figure out what kind of story they wanted to give Miles. Um, a lot of like the main plot things that are happening in that game related to like the symbiote and all of the shenanigans with Craven. Like most of that is about Peter, uh, and Miles. It feels like basically the only angle that they could really work with for it is. He wants to get revenge against, uh, the, like, Mr. Negative, uh, because he killed his dad, and he works through those problems, uh, and then he basically goes on to, like, I guess, like, take over the role of, of being Spider-Man, um, while Peter's off doing something else, uh, and that's kind of where it's at, and it looks like now Insomniac's gonna be making fucking Marvel games for the next decade, which, um, I gotta say... I don't Not know, a great seems a little bit to lame. Hop on the, yeah, uh, it seems a little <laughs> bit late to hop on that train. They they struck oh, while the iron was light. cooling yeah. significantly. Mm -hmm. Well, I it's, think it's, the Marvel fans are moving away from the MCU into other uh, into other formats. Mediums. Yeah. Well, yes. they never seem to embrace the element of video games. There doesn't seem to be that many like Marvel games that came out, considering their dominance and yeah, yeah but you now, know the theater. Now they're catching mm -hmm. up because yeah, uh, because I mean you know they're making the Wolverine game. Uh, and then mm. I believe they're making an they're making Spider-Man three. Obviously, they tease that. Apparently, they're making like a Venom game as well, and they're also going to be making like an X-Men game. 
and that's and they're making one Ratchet and Clank game, and that's that's their next decade essentially. Yeah, Which yeah, um yeah. I don't know, and especially after Spider Man Two, I think now like people will be looking at Wolverine a little bit more like hmm, let's uh let's like sort of wait and see on that one because I get the impression we've talked about a bit. God of War Ragnarok is like the best of the Snoy cinematic walkie talkie, <laughs> you know, like it's the best of that of the of, king of, of that Snoy type. Yeah, yeah basically, um, because uh, especially with Valhalla, I feel like it vindicates that uh, Ragnarok has systems and mechanics that yeah. are reasonably in depth, um, and that there is something to master there with the combat system. And then, of course, it's got an, an amazing story. Um, it's got exploration. Um, it's 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 the better version of that. Whereas it feels like uh, Spider Man Two is a little bit more like the you get into a bit of the lamer version of uh, the Snowy cinematic game. <laughs> um, and I imagine that it's going to be the same. Wolverine's probably going to be the same. It'll have, like, your standard third-person Arkham kind of, like, action. You'll run around in sort of open worlds, and there'll be, like, a, some amount of traversal, and there'll be, like, a story, and we'll see how good that is. Um, and I wonder if that's going to be something that they can keep doing without people starting to get bored of uh, that type of experience. I'm not sure. Don't know. But it looks like Spider-Man 2 is kind of, it, it sort of came and went. Um, yeah, well, and the mm. most notable thing that it did was have a huge war with Baldur's Gate 3 for some reason. <laughs> well, yeah, because yeah. uh, Spider-Man 2 uh, was in the same position as Horizon Forbidden West was that other year, where it got nominated for a bunch of awards at the Game Awards, but won nothing, because of course it didn't. It was a really competitive year, where you had, like, Baldur's Gate 3, uh, Tears of the Kingdom, um... Resident Evil, Dead Space, even though Dead Space didn't get nominated for anything, unfortunately. Uh, Street Fighter, Final Fantasy XVI, Pikmin 4. Like, there was a whole bunch of really great games that came out this year. Um, you know? So, was that the, the source of the rivalry between Spider-Man yes. and Baldur's Gate? Yes. Was yes. a Game Awards nomination? They got they nominated the for Awards. everything and lost everything. They didn't win a thing. <laughs> and, uh, Gate 3. Yeah. I, I just happened to be witness to basically all of the individual viral tweets by absolute chance, right? Like, the first one being... Holy shit, look at this, Spider-Man 2, incredible. And it was the Sandman throw and the blah, blah, blah. blah. Mm -hmm. And then eventually someone would quote to that and be like, you can tell the gaming industry is in like one of the fucking worst holes ever when everybody's blind blown by a fucking cutscene. That went viral. Mm. And then the next one goes viral of being like, so I guess we're just at the point now where we won't appreciate the absolute like incredible artistry of seamlessly tying this into gameplay, you know, into a cutscene and then the spectacle of it, the graphics, like that that's just something we can't appreciate about games anymore. That went viral. And someone else quote tweeted that being like, oh yeah, that's the discussion. It's not at all about the fact that games have moved into basically movies with barely any interaction and no mechanics at this point. That went viral. Then another tweet <laughs> saying like, that's ridiculous and absurd. Spider-Man 2 has amazing mechanics. Then someone else quote tweeted that with, I, I don't know if that's when Baldur's Gate 3 get, comes in, but they start back and forthing as to the mechanical depth of Spider-Man 2 versus Baldur's Gate, Gate 3, and you've got everything. You've got the people showing like a, a selection of Baldur's Gate, Baldur's Gate 3 that's like 10 minutes long with very little happening, or what seems to be little, versus like, look at this sequence in Spider-Man 2, and you, go, pew, 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 and you kill like 10 million enemies all in a row. It's amazing. <laughs> and then you get someone else doing the reverse, where Baldur's Gate has all this in-depth, amazing options for dealing with one situation. There's a girl who labels like... 50 fucking options that sound really awesome. And then the comparison is like Spider-Man 2 or someone just uses the same move again and 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 again to win. And so I was just seeing all of this like developed. I was like, how did, why is this happening? Why is this two games fucking fighting It is because of the, it's because of the game awards. I think that's when I started to notice that, because it was people were like, it was robbed. Spider-Man, to be clear, Spider-Man 2 was not robbed of anything, all right? It didn't, it it, all the other games were better yeah. at all of the individual things that, like, Spider-Man 2 was trying to be. Um, you know? Like, it, it And the way was. that I approach this sort of thing is, like, it's, I want to see good games and good developers get recognition in some way from the industry. So it's like when, like, I, I don't care about, like, the Oscars, really, but I want to see someone who did a lot of work and who performed really well get an Oscar for their role because it feels like them getting the recognition they deserve. It's not that something is good because it has an Oscar, but if someone earns an Oscar, that can be particularly meaningful and important for them. Uh, yep. And I want to get, I want people, I want the good rewarded. Uh, Starfield yeah. only got one nomination at the Game Awards. Ooh, yeah. oh, wait, 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 let me guess. It's one too many. Ooh, 
What would it be nominated for? Was it for? Best Worst Game? Uh, <laughs> well, I, I'm going to go ahead and throw it out there. I presume it was for Best RPG only. That was the only one. Yes. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, that makes and, sense. That makes sense. Guess, 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 what, guess what happened? Baldur's <laughs> Gate 3 wins. Spider-Man 2. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was yeah, thinking it was wasn't going to beat Baldur's Gate 3 on that one. And I think it uh, showed the picture of Todd Howard, like, in the yes. crowd. Yeah. <laughs> that must have been because... rough, having to go personally to the Game Awards, like, in your heart of hearts, probably knowing we ain't going to win shit. Yeah, going to win shit. No. Oh, and everyone's you know, gonna ask me the questions, and I'm gonna have to tell them. I got to smile and say, "Yeah, we're really confident about our game and how it did, and all this stuff and things." <laughs> yeah. And yeah, we're gonna. You see that stage? Good you things you, you can go there, but I I can't. Um, because I remember because I remember <laughs> talking to you about Spider Man Two while playing another game that released around that time, <laughs> Lords of the Fallen. Oh, which, uh, I was thinking of something else. Yeah, well, <laughs> there's so many. Tell me about it. Uh, not much to say. Uh, graphically, right. pretty impressive. Mechanical <laughs> addition to the Souls-like genre of having two worlds running at the same time, and if you die, you enter the, the dead world, and that there are places you can mm. get to in the dead world that are easier than the living world, and that the dead world gives you more souls when you kill things. Stop There's... talking about the dead world. We already discussed Starfield. We're going to have to move on to new dead games now. World. Okay. Uh, we got to keep uh, this moving. Kind of cool. Um, kept me and Mel interested for maybe about a stream's worth of time, and then it sort of doesn't do anything else and dies out, and you clearly see how much they were rushed, and it needs a hell of a yeah. lot of polish. There are ma you need a bit of a hulking beast machine to run it properly, and um, uh -huh. just the further along in the game you go, the more stretched out, thin and crap it gets until it basically just sits on the floor struggling to yeah. live. Yeah, that's uh, a shame. You yeah, were it's ahead of already me released. And, I feel and... like I've heard of this game before. <clears throat> Lords of the Fallen is an IP that did come out before. It was one of the first copycat Souls games, and it was terrible. I fucking hated mm. it. Then they gave it another shot, and this one was actually kind of neat for a moment, and then it completely died out. And it's like, you know, well, how is it compared to Liza P? It's like, it's not even fucking close. The Lords of the Fallen, like, um, I wouldn't even recommend it's like a tutorial it. tutorial that gets you interested, but then it just stops doing yeah, like, anything. Like, it just like, ends, you know? It's my assumption, because we all know that this, well, you may not know, but the story came out that they were, like, rushed like crazy to get it out, to make sure they got it out before Elden Ring's DLC, I think was one of the aspects. But Yeah, and they also apparently had to change engines from, yes. I think, uh, Unreal Engine 4 to 5, which just seems like such oh a higher up uh, decision. It's like, just update the to 5, let's just number, just right? Engines, just switch small. it out. Just switch yeah. out, no problem. And it's like, which, uh... as far as we're aware, and yeah, they, there was, like, not necessarily leaks, but posts on 4chan, I think, from people who claim to be one of the developers yeah. or inside knowledge, and it seemed pretty believable with the references and just nightmare scenario. Everybody was just destroyed by the whole project. And the game itself was damaged significantly, and it sucks because you oh, can yeah. see there's a game in there that might be pretty awesome, but uh, we didn't get to see that. Um, yeah, like maybe yeah, the first third were... of the game is the most refined it gets. Yeah, you were ahead of me, and you kept telling me, it's like, yeah, those bosses are not getting better, and there's just poopy bosses ahead, basically. It's like, oh. Yeah, which I didn't even... The Fallen is a really appropriate name for it, then. Yeah. Pretty much. Both times, they I failed miserably. Big thing. So, oh, um, yeah, that's about that for that. <laughs> no one will remember uh, it, and that's what happens released. when you rush oh, the hell out of a game and destroy it. That's yeah. its legacy, then. It'll just fade into nothingness. Um, you guys have to talk about Alan Wake 2 now. That also came no. out in October. Oh, <laughs> oh, you know what? I was thinking of another game uh, that uh, you were going to oh, reference. Wait. But I don't know oh, the timeline. Yeah. I, I don't know. I can't remember when it fucking came out. I was going to say Kong Skull Island. <laughs> uh, that also came out around about that time. It's on the list. That was last month, yeah. wasn't it? It was in October. So, oh, okay. yeah, I mean, to be quick about that one, it was, it was just an embarrassing. It's even worse than Gollum, probably. <laughs> yes. Oh my god, really? <laughs> Uh, wow. absolutely yes. embarrassing. I can't believe it got released. It's a stupid meme game. You should go watch my stream on it. It's It was funny for about an hour, and then it became incredibly boring. Me and Az had the same experience. We could not, um, we could not deal with it. It was, uh, again, just, I don't know how stuff like that happens. Just, just, uh, and this is what I mean. Some people were like, God, what a bad year for gaming. It's like, no, it's, it's, it's been crazy. We've had, like, everything. <laughs> everything yeah. has happened this year. So much good. Lots of shit. Yeah, too. if you only tally up the worst games, then no year is a good year for gaming. You yeah. gotta take the highs with the lows. I still think we've had a, a shockingly ones, amount of good games games in the mainstream high budget. Uh, it's been a really it's been a good year. I'd say it's been a good year. Um one of the really yeah. important things about it this year is that um games that are representing underrepresented genres or better business models have been successful this year. 
Meanwhile, I feel like almost the height of a... Uh, uh, it might get more depressing if you find out how much money it actually made, but the height of, like, live service fucking annual release bullshit this year was Modern Warfare 3, um, yeah, which everybody like, seems uh, to hate. Yeah, everybody that kind of stuff is... Games. Speaking oh, of... Uh, just don't play them. Don't engage with them. If you don't act dude, like they're there, they literally do basically go away. Just play uh, all the good stuff. Reward the good. A game apparently cobbled together with pre-existing assets to the point where it will actually ask you to insert the Modern Warfare 2 disc. Uh, to, yeah, to Modern, Warfare 3, Modern Warfare 3 began as DLC to Modern Warfare 2 that was entered into development about 16 months before, around, around about a year and a half before launch, and that somewhere along the line, Activision said, nope, this is a full-price game. Um, <laughs> but But the problem is... So as I understand it, the campaign is comprised of partially of like war zone maps and elements. Um, all of the multiplayer maps are remakes of uh, ones from older games, which entails work, but it means that there's, you've just got less of the whole fundamentally figuring out the core design of a brand new map compared to remaking all of the maps in Modern Warfare 2. Um, so yeah, yeah, like it's not, it was DLC that got turned into a full game, plain and simple. It wasn't uh, campaigns like three can, hours long. Like that shit wasn't making enough money for Activision. They needed more. Well, I remember it was uh it got reported on by that Try guy that they didn't have a release for 2023. Uh and then Activision's like, no, we have a full price premium Call of Duty release in 2023. <laughs> they hmm. said. Um, but yeah, I mean next year there'll be like a new full Call of Duty game, whatever that like I guess Treyarch's next one. Um, it's, but I don't, I don't know how successful Modern Warfare 3 has actually been. Um, it's been reviewed and received horribly, but, uh, I presume Warzone's still making a good chunk of money. It's funny, um... It's, it's... frustrating how short-sighted their profit-seeking is, you know? It really Versus, is, No, yeah. we, we need something this year. Now, now, now. Get mm -hmm. it out now. Where, but don't like, we want to establish gave a legacy their team that will pay the off time. for generations to come? Fuck you! Money right. now. Yeah. But yeah, they could like, also make a shit ton of money pouring a few years into actually making something that was respectable. No, but the, pro oh, but the problem is, here's the problem, though. They made Crash 4, which is a really good game, a really good platformer, and it didn't make as much money as Toys for Bob was uh, perceived to be making if they got gutted and turned into a Call of Duty support studio, mm. which is what they are now. Mm. They got gutted at, after Crash 4 and got turned into Call of Duty support. Activision don't make fucking anything except Call of Duty anymore. Every single like other studio has been sacrificed on the altar of Call of Duty. High Moon, um, <laughs> yeah, Raven, Raven. Uh, uh, Radical Entertainment. I don't know if they're making like um, Call of Duty support, but they got gutted. Uh, Toys for Bob got gutted. Uh, all to, yeah, make Call of Duty like support. Yeah, I, I just don't. If I was a video, if I went into video game development and I worked in a big studio, my first mistake, um, uh, I feel like if I got, <laughs> if I got, if my, all my stuff got like taken from me and they said, yeah, you're working on Call of Duty now. And I was like, nah, I'm out. Life. I'm just out. Yeah. I'm out of it. I'm just done. I'm going to go be, I'm going to go be a farmer. Yeah, it's, yeah, <laughs> I'm going to return uh, to the land that sustains us. Uh, no, probably uh, wouldn't though. It's a very risky industry. And yeah. um, I think there was like 12,000 layoffs last yes. year. Yes. So a lot I mean, of layoffs. In terms of uh, having income, I mean, working on Call of Duty, at least you're going to have a job every year. I couldn't. I just I couldn't do it. I couldn't bring myself <laughs> uh, to be a part of the, machine, the, the Call of Duty is, machine like that. It is kind of the uh, the big asterisk for 2023 was a great year for gaming, uh, but a lot of a lot of people lost their jobs. There was like massive uh, mm. contraction, record, record yeah, profits, the, massive layoffs. The, mm. the industry is actually always in, nice in a dire state. Um, yeah. despite the quality that has come out this year. I, I mean, it feels like we've got to be heading somewhere when it comes to the whole crunch conversation, you know? Like, that that's, mm. that's going to boil over at some yeah. point. Um, what happens when... The whole idea is that the new talent that comes in, you know, the, the people who start at the ground, eventually work their way up to being leaders of studios, you know, project directors, the people in charge. But if, if those people are getting destroyed... Um, to the point that they're no longer even capable of, like, making video games anymore because they've been utterly destroyed by that process. 
to just be replenished by new people who themselves don't get to stick with a company for years and work their way up and accumulate that experience. At some point, you're going to be sort of like leadership, you know, the people who are making like the big creative decisions on these projects. Yeah, it's, it's, it's like not that Marvel yeah. effect, that, the Disney thing. It's really a Disney thing. Of it seems like they've completely lost touch of how they got to this point in the first place. Like at the mm. top, it's it's just mm -hmm. completely lost them. And this is, of course, putting to one side that destroying people in this way just to get these games out faster is bad. Like, not just from a financial standpoint of you're not going to... It's going to make it harder for you to make money in the future. It's just, like, a bad way to do things. It's a bad gonna way to... are going to go work for like your competitors, and they're going to go make... Ball well, Gate no, I mean, it's, 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 it's more so... It's, it's more so just, like, you, you're just going to run out of people to make video games. Um, yeah, yeah, you'll get, like, the, uh, the visual artist stuff. I mean, credit to uh, Bethesda. They actually uh, are mostly immune to that side of the industry. They actually treat their employees quite well. Oh, that's nice. That's, yeah, that's good. That is, that's I mean, good. I, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna doubt Emil's, well, I mean, you know, <laughs> passion. The, the interesting thing is when you look at a place like Nintendo, you look at a lot of the guys, you know, who are in charge. It's like they've been with Nintendo for like 30, 40 years. Mm -hmm. People who work with Nintendo tend to stay with Nintendo, and then the younger people become the new talent who then start making new things. Like Splatoon was made by younger uh, people within Nintendo. That was like a new thing that they managed to create. Um, but yeah, I guess we'll have to see. You gotta talk about Alan Wake 2 now. You have to. Nope, not yet. Uh, he so stalled the... as long as he could. <laughs> no, I can still leave it longer. I saw a comment say uh, what you oh. said about <laughs> gaming as an industry could easily be said about the movies, as in my quote of, uh, the, you know, it, well, Rag said, uh, if you only consider the bad, then it looks bad. And I said, yeah, we have plenty of really great entries or whatever. And it's like, oh yeah, well, wouldn't that apply to film? And I was thinking to myself, like, there's such, there's such a result of the binary thinking of how you don't have anything that's okay it's always great and terrible so you know like talking about mario it's like so that's one of the greats it's like no no <laughs> and then you'd be like well okay so mario one does not one of the greats so it's like no no that is that is one of the that greats, one of the greats. Oh, and it's yeah. like oh and it's like yeah you have to understand gaming it just it, it's it, as much as there's plenty of complaints to be made it's just not in as bad a position as movies that's absolutely not like the the coverage this year has been um, a, a really great look into how Hollywood's just fucking bleeding all over the place. While, uh, you know, gaming's got blood in different areas, but that it's uh, it's nowhere near as bad to the point where they're, like, you know, considering a complete refurbishment of absolutely everything that they do. Uh, I wasn't even going to say, like, if you try and collect up a bunch of examples, um, you know, uh, if we had, like, the killer, um, Tetris, Oppenheimer... Um, I'm already like sort of mainstream high budget things that we consider to be a, a topest of tier. I feel like the listing is so much easier for games. You can list them off way faster. And the fact that we got this crazy comparison remakes of Dead Space and Re Resident Evil 4. It's like, wow, they were, they were two of the top games oh, of the year. Yeah. And then how are the remakes or, you know, franchise entries doing to the movie side of things? It's like, oh, we try not to talk about it. <laughs> 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 um,. Is there anything as bad on the gaming side in the same frequency as what we get on movies? Because it'd be like, okay, we got Lord of Ring Gollum. You're like, all right, The Flash. You're like, fine. We got Skull, Cog Island, blah, blah, blah. You're like, Indiana Jones. Like, fuck. We got, um... Uh, uh, well, we didn't talk about Redfall. Redfall. Oh, we'll go yeah, with Redfall. that. That's and right. you come back Redfall. with Secret Invasion. You're like, shit. Uh, <laughs> Full Spoken. You're like, Full Spoken, you didn't even play it. You don't even know how bad it is, but fine, <laughs> we'll accept that. Ahsoka. You're like, ah, shit. <laughs> um, I, th I think it would be, um, is there any company that you could, could you point to uh, like one publisher and just talk about how like every single game that they made that year, uh, except for one, was successful, uh, that, that most of them failed and that all of them were bad? Well, yeah. and and the point I'm making is just like uh, obviously I was well, trying to, yeah. <laughs> yeah. what I was trying to do there was just the like the gaming one you, you have to remember them and then say them and you're like oh fuck my list keeps running um, out while the movies and TV show side of things is so easy it's just like I got another one and another one and another but one I will say that as well like the, the fact that there are so many video game adaptations that have a done well already and b are coming down the pipeline would suggest that even the movie industry recognizes that gaming's in a more healthy state than the movie industry is. I didn't even I mention. Quantum Mania or Marvels yet, but go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> what, I will, what I will say to that is that the gaming industry has very much invested into a smaller number of projects per studio because you have to remember that games are made now somewhere between three to five years per, and I think films come out significantly faster than that. 
So uh, it, it might also just be a quantity uh, versus quality debate. This... Um, it, it also it's also a matter of like which space you're looking at as well because of course there's like a huge indie scene as well middle market yes, games in like on pc yeah and and well, well it doesn't yeah, even there's... need to be a competition there is uh, declines in all different aspects within their own industries as well as you were just kind of implying like with mm -hmm. film we we need to separate out into genres sometimes or mediums or companies or uh level of money involvement or eras or particular years or ips there's all different uh, observations to make. Because, you know, the guys behind, like, John Wick as a franchise are feeling pretty fine right now. Meanwhile, you know, the people in one of the biggest movie franchises of all time, being the MCU, are uh, probably, you know, not, not, not feeling as well. Not feeling as great. Quadruple A. Have we gotten to that point yet? Uh, mm. I, think that's <laughs> what, um, I think that's what the studio that Microsoft made to make Perfect Dark, they called it Quadruple A, but that right. game, <laughs> the development on that game has been a disaster. Uh, that's I'm what Quadruple sure A studio. means. They have unwittingly coined the phrase in a very well, negative light. I mean, isn't it funny that the first Quadruple A developer had to recruit another, like, entire development studio to help them make that game? Crystal Dynamics. More A's, they, they, yes. That's right. So now it's a seven A game. Uh -huh. that is <laughs> um, but uh, hey, so metal. What do you think of Alan Wake Two? Oh God, Alan Wake Two. God, where do I begin? So I I did not have any anything on Alan Wake. So I went back and played through almost all of the other ones. I didn't play American uh, Nightmare. I think that's the DLC. I did. Uh, you did, yeah. That was a good choice. That's not a DLC. That of... It's a standalone. It's like zombie DLC. Oh, it's a standalone, kind of like right, the right, Red right. Dead thing, right? I always yeah, think I'm it's a DLC, like but no, it's a it's a standalone. And uh, yeah, Alan Wake, pretty pretty cool. Nice nice little story. Has like the like the feel of a of a uh, like of a, a season of television almost because they basically play like uh, uh, an episode each. They have like a little uh, comp. Uh, Thinking at the end as well with the, I think it was, is this a song for everyone? It doesn't matter. Uh, and then you go to American Nightmare. That's like an extra thing. Uh, I don't know. Do you want to, what is that about, Mewchly? You want to do that? It's mainly about Mr. Uh, Scratch. Actually, it's the alter ego that Alan Wake's dealing with. Okay. And you kind of defeat him in it, but it's unclear as to exactly what of all of the things that happened were real what it means mm -hmm. for you, what it means for the people around you. I think it's a fun, it's, it's it's one of those, like, it'll tide you over between the next iteration of whatever mm -hmm. story that comes, and obviously it took them a long time, but they got there eventually with Alan yeah. Wake 2. Yeah, of course, in between there was uh, Control, which uh, I played as well, which was very cool. I really enjoyed that. It's basically a little, it's basically like an SCP kind of dealio, where there's a lot of uh, objects of power, is what they call it. They do different things, and you have to... Uh, cleanse them basically and collect them back, uh, which is kind of nice. And those uh, even get mentioned in Ellen Wake too. And yeah, I played those. So I was like, I was pretty happy. I was like, oh, that was fun. That's neat. And so I was rooting for Ellen Wake too. And then it came out. And I did my first stream. I was still pretty positive. I was like, oh, you know what? Uh. <laughs> but it's slow, I think. But you know what? I'm, I'm interested to see what, what what's happening. And then I I I I I saw you play the next day, and I saw Az's tweet. I was like, uh oh. Maybe I have to have to look what's going on, and yeah, uh, it's fucking <laughs> piss. Um, <laughs> uh, I was very optimistic at the beginning because I don't know, I wasn't a high. I was rooting for the game, and uh, yeah, on my next stream, I was uh, I, it was like, yeah, I watched back the beginning, and it's actually pretty piss. So <sighs> we got Saga. Which you start the game with, so you don't even start as Alan Wake 2. No, uh, no, you don't start as Saga, you start as naked, Wait, bald, fat as man. A, you start as a fat oh, man on Indiana the, on the beach. <laughs> <laughs> right, I forgot about that guy. Uh, yeah, you start with him. Uh, that's the, the victim you, you that Saga goes to investigate, because she's FBI. Uh, what does so FBI we, stand for, Metal? Metal uh, Booby Inspector. Yeah, flowers by Irene. Ooh, nice. <laughs> exactly. And yeah, we, we just do the thing. Look at at the 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 woods we're in. It's like, oh, look, he, this guy has been horribly gutted, but we don't really care. Also, there's some supernatural stuff happening later, and our characters that we've been playing well, as. 
You uh, it is a North American forest, so you completed no, it, right? So if 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 you I do the it, the yeah. broad after I do like a sort of the, the experience, because I don't know a lot about Alan Wake Two. I watched your pretty much full playthrough, and I played the yeah, first yeah. six hours. But the experience is very much bizarre. Like the, the way you start it, like I, I complain. If you want to look at the stream where I go over all of it in detail, it's what a lot mm -hmm. of people have posted on the subreddit, being like, "Why does Mola not like Alan Wake Two? I love it." And I was like, "Fucking hell." <laughs> Just watch my stream <laughs> if you really, really need the answers. But I went yeah. in pretty good faith. I was ready to go. And I encountered cringe dialogue immediately, being that yeah. uh, our little team, you know, you're playing a saga and you get told immediately how awesome you are as a detective. And you're sort of like, yep. okay, that's fine. And then, like, take the lead. You're better than me. I, I was already just like, why did, why, why, why? It, it's a really weird experience. We've gone over this before, but it just gives me a sense of what the writer wants and can do when instead mm -hmm. of showing me what I'm capable of or letting me do things, they tell me what I'm capable of and make sure I know how awesome I am. I'm just like, why would you have chosen to do that? And I wonder how that's going to influence things going forward in terms of your approach, but tiny thing. Yeah. Little pieces of dialogue, it's fine. But there's loads of them cropping up all over the place instead of listing them all and just mm. say that that's what was happening. Yeah, you move it forward. doesn't help that we constantly get told how amazing she is and then she does things. We're like, She's that's retarded. Not, that was retarded. <laughs> Why you did your, she do that? Your, your crime scenes all over the place, she has yeah. to take pictures, make inferences, which is the kind of thing that's like, oh, that sounds kind of cool. Especially if you get your little board and you, you pin up you know, conflicting oh, information that makes you think about things. It's like, that sounds like it could work, yeah, especially if you map it out, you know, mechanically and make it very um, inquisitive-based inquisitive and you can collect things to add to the story and stuff. But she'll just, like, randomly conclude shit. And yeah. then the game's going to be like, you need to push this over here and push this over here, and then you'll get your conclusion. And you're like, that's, uh, that doesn't even see how this connects. And it's like, you do it, and then it's like, oh, of course it was a clown. And you're like, how did you how did you know that? And it's like, there was a clown footprint. It's like, you, you can't possibly know that was a clown footprint. Um, the we all one... know a clown footprint. It's like a human footprint. It's much <laughs> long. <bigger. Yeah. laughs> the, um, the thing about it is a that... 15 size shoe. Sorry. Where I was, I was thrown off. Was uh, I always reference this? There was among the crime scene. There was there was a uh, what do you call it? Like a like a cooler with a bunch of beer mm. cans. And she says, like, from this, I can conclude that they were here for a long time. And I was so annoyed immediately. I was like, you have no idea how long they were here. You have no idea how yeah. quickly they drink beers. You have no idea how many they were. They could have been here for five minutes and drank all them. Why would you ever conclude something so definitive based on something that's so loose? And then it's like that's what we call a possibility. Yeah, you yeah. put it in the further. It's like, oh, it's, there's a lot of it. Maybe they've been here a while. Maybe if anything, watching. I would say the only thing that you can really conclude is like it's curious that they did like a full sacrifice here, but there's just beers. Like, do they treat it that seriously? Are they willing to, or was this something that they didn't even plan for? I'm not sure because you could go both ways on that. They had the beers because it was planned, or they went. They were just hanging out, and then they took the opportunity to do the sacrifice. I'm not sure. And then like meters away. There's this little, um, I think it's a caravan type thing. And I was like, well, do, do, the, do the bad guys live in there? You go over there and there's a lockbox you have to unlock by getting a code for it. And inside there's all markings and stuff that relate to the bad guys. And I was like, how is this not coming up in my case? This looks like their house. It looks like where they lived. The killer. <laughs> the fucking murder weapon could be in here. We have no idea. And then she's like, well, that wraps up the case. Nothing else to do here now. And I was like, oh, okay. I, I feel like this is important, but fine. And then, you know... The, the one we'll always reference is when you get to the diner and the lady's talking about how your daughter drowned and you're just like, huh. anyway. Okay, <laughs> like, that's weird. You know my oh, name. You showed me that. That was a part that you showed me and I was like, this is fucking bizarre. No human no. reacts to this this way. The people who made this are not humans. She, <laughs> I can't capture just how insanely stupid that, that opening five, six hours was that just threw me out of the game. It grabbed me and just tossed me out. Mm -hmm. Mechanically speaking, one of the things that we... um. We've talked about before. I, I, I spoke about it because it's so fucking annoying with video games. But you you spawn in the in Bright Falls, and like there's a whole section of the town that's just completely locked off. And I was like, why is that locked off? That's weird. And you walk up to it, and Saga will like you know pull on the the chain on a fence or whatever. And she's like, I'm gonna need um, a, a a bolt cutter for this. And I was like, D do I? <laughs> Is that what I need? Do I need to go over there? Do, why, why would I want to cut a, 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 what security on some fence? I have no re I have no goal other than going to like the sheriff right now. Why would, why mm -hmm. would Saga... And you'd be like, you're nitpicking. I'd be like, no, it's annoying when video games just do this shit, where they just don't care. I love it when they put the care in so that if you get to things before you have reason to get there, that the character can account for that. But she was just like, yeah, I want to break in here. I was like, okay, but, but why? Yeah, I just right. didn't know I had a reason to go here, and if I do, 
And then, of course, you have all the standard shit of, like, I don't I don't need bolt cutters. I can clearly just jump over this thing or move around it. Yeah. Or can I at least ask why I would go there? All that kind of stuff. And the, it's... Outside. The whole game has that. Every single thing you inspect. And I, I think I searched about a third of Bright Falls before I was like, it's one of those games. Everything is soulless and hollow. Nothing here matters. Oh, yeah. The, you, you get to Bright Falls and it's like, oh, obviously, I'm going to explore. You let me go this way and over there. And there's just nothing. There's nothing there's like to inter see. Intermittently, there's that, that object with the white dot on it that you click examine, and it's like, this is what the object is. Yeah, if, if even. Then, you know? So they, that's, that's, they, don't, they don't give you I'm any... Sure, it seems to be made of wood. This is designed for sitting. It's like, oh, interesting. They... Oh, I love that. This, is, this not... is a door. It is used for the transversal through walls. It's like, oh, yeah. it's oh, wow. saga. It's a, it's, that's good. True, true. Do they not give you any reason for exploring the environments? Like they don't give There's you like some kind of item or staggeringly you know, little to collect and talk to people about. Sometimes you'll yeah. see like batteries and stuff, but it was it was it was scarce. Everything around, uh, much less than even if one. it's just like ammo or something. Yeah, that's okay. well, that's that's the other part. So when you're in the woods, you can go around and collect all these things. Uh, right. And when you go, that's, in, that's, that's when the you, real woods. Yeah, it's just full of things that you can collect. Yeah, that's that's like just true. Like and, and yeah. as a Boy Scout, stuff. I can confirm the woods is just a bunch of stuff you can collect. It is, and it's, and it's just <laughs> so it's so annoying because um, me and Mahler as well, we we like to like go everywhere and find all the things. Like, oh, I want all these resources so I can yeah. use them later. You want to engage with yeah. all the stuff the developers made for you, like a crazy. The thing person. is, with the saga sections. In the beginning, this like pretty empty, and that's where I was like, okay, it's like the first area. They probably don't even intend for me to immediately go everywhere, but I do that every time. And no enemies have been introduced yet. So, okay, fine. So I think, okay, now I got all these extra resources. When I go next, when I go here next time, and enemies have been introduced, I'm going to be fighting a whole bunch because I have all these resources. Right? Wrong. So you go around collect <laughs> all these resources. And there's nothing to do with them. The, the, mm, right, I've, okay. I've went stretches with Saga for hours, and I killed two enemies. And I was just That's, walking around yeah, yeah, finding uh, things. It's like, what think am I going about how exciting those two encounters were? Because there were so they few weren't. Of them. <laughs> because the mechanics. Yeah, we, I think I showed uh, Rags you and uh, possibly Fringy like the the getting killed by a wolf. It was like oh, ridiculous. you showed me the wolf part. The wolf part yeah. was oh yeah ridiculous. Sorry, because like I know I've brought it up before, but I mean it's a year in review, so I'm allowed to repeat things. It's, it's the, uh, the the yeah. she kills the wolf when it comes after that. She's like the wolf is turned against me because of the darkness. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> <laughs> the only reason. <laughs> that a wolf would attack me, Disney princess that I am, is because obviously there's some kind of an evil force. Yeah, and she, she deals with everything way too well. Like, the, nobody feels real in that world. And a lot of people are like, oh, it's not supposed to feel real because everybody's, like, written in a book or whatever. And it's like, yeah, well, it felt fucking real in the first game. And that was the same situation, yeah. so I don't buy it. And again, plenty of people are kind of almost normal, and then plenty of people absolutely aren't. I think, correct me if I'm wrong, but the five, six hours I played, I killed, like, four things. And I was like, I'm done. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I can't fucking right. handle this. Like the pacing is absolutely excruciating. Then there's the uh, the sheriff's department office. I feel like we'd be remiss to not mention all the absolute insane shit that happens in there. Several <laughs> officers and a corpse go down, and then things happen, noises happen, gunshots and screaming. And if you came down, what you would find is all the officers are dead except the FBI from out of town, and the corpse is missing. Mm -hmm. You're under arrest. You're very under arrest. Yeah. <laughs> you are You're all under of the under so arrest. much rests right now. You will never sleep again because of all the rests you are under. And you, you th that's why these two <laughs> are the two characters we have been introduced by, uh, to. That's the first time they see anything supernatural happening. Like, that's their first encounter with this. They take it pretty well. They take it pretty well. They're like, okay, yeah, I guess that's happening right now. Remember the, the, um, the so, sheriff the, just disappears. <laughs> like when he's, he just fucking vanishes. He's yeah. now in, in the darkness world where you could talk to him as Alan Wake. And uh, when they open the door, there's the corpse of the woman that's their friend that they've worked with forever. They're just like, oh, geez, what's going on? Yeah. Fucking hell. You two, yeah. take care of the corpses. We have to go back to the woods. Take care of our friend, Jenny, who's dead. Like, they're not devastated when they nope, should be. No, 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 nobody gives no, a no, shit. Or, nobody acts human, and, and it was it was too much at that point. I was just like, I can't fucking. I don't want to waste my time on a video game like this. And then you know, over the next few days and weeks, I just find out how everyone's loving it. It's great, and it deserves awards. Wow, and all shit. It's like, mm. wow, everybody loves it, but I don't. 
I don't know, like, it doesn't seem like people are talking about it much. No, in not really. Way. Not really, no. What I see a shared... really weird thing going on with it. Because, like, I'm a huge survival horror fan. And, like, I was never a huge Alan Wake 1 fan. Like, because, I mean, I played a little bit of it. It was okay. But the horror of it is a little too um, flashy. With, like, the, you know, shining light on enemies and sparks flying. Oh, nice like, I prefer flashy. the horror. I prefer horror a little more subtle. For it to actually like have an mm -hmm. effect on me, but I didn't think it was a bad game. But like I was particularly intrigued by Alan Wake Two, and I saw that it was getting all these accolades by mainstream outlets. But then I heard people like um, Metal and and Mahler and other individuals saying like this isn't that great. It's yeah. actually borderline Are unplayable. Are you recounting the events and I'm like, of what seconds the ago? Just to be clear. <laughs> No, what? well, no, 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 not only seconds ago, but like before, because I, I had been aware of their opinions. <laughs> I had been aware of their opinions beforehand, and I was just like, "What the fuck is going on with this game? Like, what? Why do you think it's getting all these tens out of tens from the, these mainstream high-level sources? production? Very artistic. It, mean, it's doing a lot. It's yeah, taking a lot of boxes for a lot of people wacky. that I don't think actually have much substance. And the thing I get see shared a lot is the song they made for it. I forget the name of it, but. That's uh, Arrows of Darkness, I think, as well. That that song I see shared, I don't see anyone sharing any of the major story points from the game at all. Well, the thing is, is that yeah. the okay. game has seemingly not sold very well. Really? Um, which isn't really surprising to me because Alan Wake you know, is niche. Maybe it is niche. Yeah, that's fair. Um, maybe I need to explain as well. So someone's like, what would you expect to see in a game that is good? And it's like, so when Ragnarok came out, I had to avoid spoilers and work through the game. So it takes fucking ages to complete in a good way, by the way. I love the pacing of right. the game. But that when I was able to just go around seeing everything, um, the scene, I mean, I could, yeah, I can say it. <laughs> the, the, we're fine, I suppose. The scene where uh, uh, Tia is revealed to be Odin, that scene was getting shared mm. everywhere. When they first go to um, Asgard, to begin Ragnarok, right? Like that was shit everywhere. Uh, I remember seeing the scene where, where he speaks to Atreus about like his nature to him as a as his father. Obviously, the one with the Norns that was shared because it was huge mm -hmm. for like trying to understand the game's point of view on fate. And then um, there's there's several scenes at the end that were getting shared, and I was just like, yeah, that's kind of what I expect when a story that hits hard is hitting lots of people is, is to see it celebrated and shared. But like Alan Wake. I haven't even seen the. I, I, I've seen a lot from Mel's playthrough. I didn't even see the um. You know the sequence with the like the metal band and, and killing the horde mode that you nearly drove you insane. Mel. Oh, I saw that part. Uh, I saw you playing that uh, part. Metal. I've not that seen anyone like share pain. that as like a video. It, like it, pain, it, and, pain, and for the record, nightmare. it would have been shared, but I've never seen it like in a viral tweet or someone saying like this was the fucking best part Alan of the game. Wake 2, German oh, nightmare. The thing that I have predominantly seen is people say, "Oh, I love the game," but not with any specifics or yeah. any specific references. I can't yeah, be understood how shit the story is and how the progress <laughs> is. They tell me they, they keep telling you Saga is so amazing. No, but she has like magic powers. She can profile people oh, just God. randomly. She, and she speaks does, to like, their the ghosts. Weird... She speaks to fucking oh, well, ghosts. That's pro that that's cheating. It is. Yeah. And if she does like, really ghosts, retarded moments because as... that's cheating. She does it retarded moments as well. Like in this diner in the beginning, the the that one guy is like, "Oh, I also found the and then his partner or whatever gives him a little nudge, like, oh, no, never mind. And then she's like, oh, what's going on here? And then the game forces you to go into your mind place to do your the profiling. Place. That's what they call it. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's your, that's where you like do, you have your little case board. It's basically your imagination, but it's also magic, kind of. I don't know. Who cares? <laughs> all, all imaginations are magic, but. That's true. Like, that's true. If, is it a, like a real place, like a place you walk around in? I well, mean, it sounds like Sherlock, in, the fucking metaphysical mind palace that they have, right? <laughs> Pretty much. Is it like so, yeah. Jimmy Neutron's bla brain blast? Sure. <laughs> it's all of them put together, Rags. It's an incredible oh, experience. Oh my god, that yeah. sounds incredible. That does sound amazing. And I gotta you, buy this game now. But she basically does. So, so you talk to everybody, and it's like, oh, what am I gonna do now? So you go into mind palace, go to the little table, and then you have like a little... Uh, I don't know, like a yellow marker on it. It's like, no, you need to profile. And then you just talks to the ghosts of the people <laughs> or just the people's brains. I actually, I, they didn't never explain it. It's just their magic shenanigans that they do. Yeah, which we and kind of like gave a pass for a long time, but then you just, they just never really give you strong reasoning and, and acceptance no, of no. that. The fact that her whole career, she's just had magical powers, I guess. <laughs> like, Yeah, and the way she gets those informations is based on nothing in the real world. 
But apparently the FBI has just been going for it for years because his the partner is like, oh, you've always been really good with these cases. Like, yeah, that why? No shit. Interesting <laughs> premise of a story, though. If you had a detective who had magic powers, but because the law is the law, she couldn't just use the magic powers to say, yeah, we have to go to this one house and check the basement and in this drawer there's a thing. They have to come up with the reason to get the warrants to do the things yeah, and all this stuff. Exactly. Keep the powers hidden. And then you also have the element of, Hmm, would someone get really insecure that they are a renowned detective, but they owe it all to their powers and not their, I guess, natural intuition? Yeah, yeah like, like Nick Fury, how he stole all of his achievements from someone else, yeah. So yeah. what's double, what's also annoying on top of this is, so, Control. This is like the whole thing placed in the Alan Wake universe, where they deal with all kinds of magical bullshit and objects of powers that do all kinds of weird shit. Why don't we play as a control agent guy? I just forgot their their names. Controllers. Uh, no, <laughs> they oh. have the they have like the their own uh, agency name. I just it's just, uh, it's just the FBC, you know. Because we already, if you play control, Federal you know Bureau of Controllers. Controlling. Yeah, yeah. Federal. It's it's actually fe Federal Bureau of Control. So you weren't far off. Oh, um, right. well, yeah. <laughs> a joke so, for themselves. Because you have the through line already there. If you play Control, the DLC that is uh, set to be a uh, contact to Alan Wake, he sends you a message. It's like one of his attempts to get out of the dark place from the first game. And this is somewhere there in one of these uh, little file cases that you can find and read for a little bit of world building, you see that there's like an agent, Estevez, I think was her name, that has been sent there to check this shit out and has been i assume in charge there for a while because she's actually in the game later on uh going like you can't do that that's bad because they actually look at this fucking whole place this whole time they have like stations everywhere that go off with alarms like if shit goes down down bad so i don't know why we don't play one of these guys instead of an fbi lady that has never had any contact with supernatural well, and, stuff and didn't they in continuity, race swap saga because she showed up in a like I heard IRL about that. I'm, I'm still not entirely sure why. I, what I, happened I heard there, about that too. But yeah, I didn't hear she about used that, to be yeah. a white chick. That's <clears throat> the name Saga, you know. But mm. they changed it to a black chick because I got current. Year, well, people believe it's to do with the baby, baby, sweet baby ink. I think it's the company um, who make a lot of weird additions and systems. Um, to things. I, I, I don't know more about it, but I know that... I remember being shown it, uh, that the character was previously white, which is like, damn, I don't know. How many times have they, like, re race swap something in, in, like, um the same content? You know, you know what I mean? Like, not an yeah, adaptation. Yeah. It's like, shit, is that, like, one of the first times we've seen that? Yeah. It's like, the, the FBC, when they actually are in the story introduced, they suck ass, they just get wiped out, even though all they need is a fucking flashlight and a gun to beat these guys, which they should yeah, know. Sound like, there's like some, sounds like some pretty exotic equipment there. Not, not just crazy. the stuff that, you know, you'd have access to if you were a government yeah, organization. Yeah, because they basically all get killed in the police station, which definitely will never have any flashlights in there. Um, or guns, that would be insanity. No guns or flashlights in a police station. No, true. never. Budget cuts, you know. This <laughs> is British. So, yeah, <laughs> you might be wondering. Wait, Saga is fine and dandy. What about Alan Wake? Oh, we get to play as him. I was gonna like, say, isn't that nuts? All hours. this discussion we've had about it, we haven't even mentioned Alan Wake. It's like, what game yeah. were you talking about? I was like, oh, Alan Wake too. <laughs> they, they, apparently, they also said, oh, it's uh, fifty fifty. It's not Alan it's Wake. It's not is way fifty less. fifty. <laughs> it's way less. Uh, Lies. And the Alan Wake part is actually more entertaining to play because you actually get to shoot enemies for once. Uh. The dark place is kind of neat. Uh, it's more interesting than just the woods or wherever you go. Uh, but it's like s small puzzles here and there. They have like something going on where you uh, you have like a, a nightstand lamp or what was it? And then you can uh, charge it up and switch the lights on and off in different places to change the area a bit a little bit. Uh, could have done more with it, but it's there's more gameplay going on with him for the most part. You actually go around through areas and uh, shoot some enemies, and instead of the, you also have kind of a mind place, but you're in this little in, in the hut that you uh, end up in in Alan Wake One, and that's like your writer's room, and you have like a chalkboard, I think it is, where you can 
uh, change the plot of the story you're currently in, and then the area changes a bit. So it's all right. It's nothing crazy, but it's more interesting. And yeah, there's like some some highlights here and there, but I would argue a lot of the highlights are just things functioning as you would have expected. Nothing like exactly. shocking. Yeah. Um, you actually get things to do and can use the ammo you collect in these areas. <laughs> yeah. So incredibly disappointing experience. I yeah. don't want to go anywhere near it. I got a full blast and then I watched Mel finish the game and I was like, fuck me. That's just, just pain. Has couldn't finish it either. Um, and yet it won best narrative. Good, good, good for you. Game. Yeah. Well done. Uh, if you, figured, if wow, you wow. want to see me lose my mind, uh, you can find my stream. It's uh, so you wouldn't re so you wouldn't recommend it to anybody, even no. if they were no. like really love that genre. No, it's no? piss. Okay, it's just a fucking nightmare of a narrative and game because I don't think the game okay. functions very well in general because they changed up the shooting mechanics. Like the things you knew looked like they were super clumsy and clunky. Yes. Yeah, the things and that were super like useful work. in in Elden Wake One were kind of useless in this one, which made the uh, this this horde mode specifically a nightmare to actually get get through, especially on the hard difficulty. I right. get the impression that what happened with that game in terms of its like controls and combat is that they were really really concerned with making it animate well, and they didn't care as much whether it played as well as mm -hmm. it could compared to. It feels worth pointing out, but like Resident Evil 4 Remake is a really well presented game in terms of having like really yeah. good graphics and animation. The but animation you feel doesn't like you have feel total like control it. Over yeah. Leon. Yeah. You know, it never feels like he's getting in the way because he needs mm -hmm. to complete an animation cycle that they would happily, you know, and, and we're a little, little bit in the movement. I was going to say, maybe a little bit, but. A little, a little in bit. the movement, yeah, but it's not like you can sort of, like, you get used to it. And there's well, a level of watching Metal do that horde sequence yeah. was just painful. Like it just looked it painful. Looked oh, something else on top of that. Um, what I figured out or, or realized only the horde mode drops are randomized as well. So every time I died at different things in those boxes, and I'm pretty sure I cucked myself by opening the boxes beforehand because there was nothing in them. <laughs> <laughs> oh god all right so i think if i would have let them mm. be closed and done it every time there would have been stuff in there but yeah it's uh i mean yeah i mean if like there's probably not going to be an alan wake 3 i imagine um because the accol accolades don't pay the bills you gotta the game's gotta sell well you know to justify getting a sequel and it seems like the game's not selling very well um, yeah, even so... though, which is also funny because in the end, Alan Wake is still in the dark place and nothing changed for him. Whatever. So maybe, maybe it'll be like DLC or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, fucking probably. Play it. Nickel and Diamond, but, why not? And then I guess he lost me hard. I was, I was super happy with the other games. They were very fun, especially Control. Control is really fun to play, uh, just Epic mechanically as well. Cost? Sure, but I mean, will Epic front the cost for a third one? That didn't I don't really know. Do much for that. Like, how well did it do for the Epic Game Store? Because, yeah, this is this game's I mean, on the, the Epic Game Store. Yeah, it's not I played on it on the play. We played on PlayStation. Mm -hmm. uh, mm. yeah, it was Epic exclusive on top of that, which is also a bit of a crime That's because so many well, people were looking forward to the game. Epic oh, yeah, that dis it just disqualifies it immediately from me playing it. Pretty much. I was like, I'm not installing Chinese malware onto my computer willingly. If I do it, it's going to be by fucking accident. <laughs> it's going to be by accident. Downloading uh, a game I want to play. To move on from Alwick 2, because I'm yeah, totally that's, fucking that's done with it, uh, we cannot possibly not mention the Marvels. That's that's uh, around yeah. this era. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> just, just, that was a weird one. Yeah, that one was a pitiable film. It's um, yeah. a disastrous mess that was it's chopped to hell and back. The it's a sad film. <laughs> struggled to crawl out of the box office with yeah, anything so looking like a brain The cell. Marvels is supposed to be after Secret Invasion, right? Yes. Yes. Which is yeah, weird, because this Fury was not in Secret Invasion. <laughs> well, it's, uh, wasn't what, in Avengers. what Little Platoon said <laughs> earlier, Secret Invasion uh, doesn't yeah. sit in continuity with pretty much anything. It's just, it's just like its own little island of insane nonsense. Uh, Wait, Nick, Nick Fury is not in Secret Invasion? I thought he was. No, 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 no. no we, it's, it's, a little, it's a little joke. <laughs> a little, yeah. little joke. We like it's a... Uh, the Nick Fury oh, okay. in, in the Marvels is back to being sort of like a jokester who doesn't really care about much and doesn't really mention anything to do with the Skrulls or the entire adventure he's been on. Or mentioning the hyper power that's been released onto the world in the form of, um, <laughs> what's her name? Kira? Something? Sure. Gaia? Gaia. Gaia, yeah. All right, whatever. Uh, so, yeah, <laughs> like, none of that gets brought up, even though it's, an, it's like the first act's 
final big plot point is to do with the scrolls, right? Like the the whatever right. the planet Tonax, I think it is. Um, Tonax. So uh, yeah, like the, the, all of that was fucked. But then the film itself is just completely fucked. It's it's a sad entry into like a, 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 a something they would have decided to do a long time ago and just had to commit to. Like this, I, is, uh, it's like a, it's a I writing would, problem, right? Not that he's like phoning it in in terms of performance. It's, it's funny. Right? Or, it would be both that and the lack of communication between projects. I don't even know that the two projects know each other that. exist. Okay, I will say the Marvels felt especially hollow. Multiverse of Madness is like truly awful and worse. Um, <laughs> but uh, but it felt like it was trying to do something. Well, so one of the things is that at the very least, someone could someone could point to if they wanted to defend it and be like, "Look at that scene where Elizabeth Olsen's acting. Look at that scene where Doctor Strange is saying, ah, oh, Christine, I like you a lot." And it's at least got those scenes that are very poorly written, not earned at all. Um, but it has them. It has like the standard emotional beats that you you're An trying to trying get as well. The yeah, Marvels is that. particularly thin uh, by way of characterization. Like ca the character writing is like basically non-existent. The, the, almost <laughs> everything about the film is non-existent. So like, you can say up until this point, I, I think I would even I would include Multiverse of Madness, Thor: Love and Thunder, and Ant Man as being awful films, but still technically important in that you do need to see them to understand where you are and where the story has gone and where it's yeah. likely to go next. The Marvels, you don't. You, there's nothing in you it. There's nothing it, yeah. on the level of character, plot, world building, theme, whatever. It's completely redundant. Well, I guess so Monica... The, the close of the film actually sets up that practically nothing about the world state has changed from the beginning of the film. You've got potentially four destroyed planets and there's a line of dialogue toward the end of the film. It's like, now nah, they're all fine. Oh, okay, <laughs> fine. Um, Great. So, so all of that I stuff did. we just watched? Yeah, what, what was the point of all of that? Like, the, the only um, thing you need to know is that fucking Monica is with the x -Men. That's it. Yeah, beast and everything. I was going to say the post credit the Marvel... scene, isn't it? So yes. You have to get so all the, way to the post credit really scene before the first bit. The of most progress that's made for the story of the in whole a, MCU is in a post credit scene. Yes. In the prison arc in Andor, uh, they explain to Andor that like there's a little hose that he can get food from, but it has no flavor. Uh, you get flavor from like working and and winning at the the game that they have to play. The point being that the Marvels is like that. It's just calories that. <laughs> It's no nothing. Flavor. It's like, it and no matter no how flavor. hard we work, we don't get any flavor. <laughs> no, no, there is no flavor. It is just empty calories in the true sense of the word. It's terrible, but it's like the kind of film that's hard to muster anything I, I from the, you by way of an emotional response. I guess the post credit scene is like the the, the, the jangling. It's like, oh, there might be flavor in the next one, huh? At that Maybe? point, what what's happening there is they're jangling <laughs> their keys very hard. They are like. Oh. They're like standing on a fault Dude, line, the throwing way... the keys around. Like, look, X Men, the X Men are here. Come on, please watch our movie, please. The way they did, the way that they did it is so stupid as well. Because like, oh, I need to close the rift now, and then she flies through the thing and closes from the other side. It's like, why did you do that? Just stay she on your side. To. She has to do it. That's that a huge side. missed opportunity in that scene as well, because there was the chance for it to actually give you a, a scene that makes you feel something. If you know, if Carol knows in advance that she has to choose between sacrificing effectively her friend or the universe, which would be like a moral parallel to the problems that she had at the beginning of the film, where she wasn't make, prepared to make these these tough decisions. Um, then, you know, she would actually be able to make a positive decision mm -hmm. to get rid of one at the and save the other and get some sort of like, conclusion to her arc in that scene. But she doesn't, because I don't even think the writers knew until they got to that scene that that was what was going to happen. And Monica Rambeau's character doesn't know until she does it, that seemingly anyway, that that's what's going to happen. So she flies to the other side of the portal, and she doesn't tell anyone that she has to stay right until the moment, like the two seconds before she closes it, and then she's like, no, nah, I'm going to stay actually, sorry, and then bye. There's no chance to feel anything. Carol doesn't really feel anything. There's no, yeah, there aren't any characters in this film, so there's no resolution yeah. to any character arcs. Iman Vellani is a decent actress, and uh, yeah, it'd be nice if they fine. gave her something to work with, because she's very enthusiastic. Um, Brie Larson's capable of a lot better. She clearly doesn't give a shit. And that's about it. <laughs> like, everyone yeah. else is sort of around. Uh, do you think we're actually going to see, like, her show up in another Marvel movie uh, in any, like, meaningful capacity, or she'll just show up for the Captain Marvel? Avengers? Yes. I feel like they'll have her turn up in, in Avengers, yes, but in terms of mm. cameos, she seems to have been willing. I don't know if she will be after this. I don't know what's going to happen now. Uh, I mean, because I, I, I don't know. That, I imagine they're not going to be offering more money. 
No. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. That's nah, probably your biggest so. incentive to participate. And if they're not going to so. offer you more money, then why you could do? You could like work on real projects. Yeah. This, so, oh, man, just imagine being the studio behind that, though, because you can tell that the, the ideal was at the close of the Infinity Saga that you know it's Captain Marvel is being set up to helm the post Infinity Saga MCU. I'm sure that's what they wanted her to be. Oh, yes. She's so unpopular; it didn't happen. But at the the launch event for Phase Five, and this is one of the reasons the Marvels just doesn't. Another of the many reasons the Marvels makes no sense is that it feels like there's a film missing. The launch event for Phase Five. Kevin Feige says that the, um, I can't remember which film he's referencing, but he says it will pick up from the story in Captain Marvel 2. So like, this is well after he would have known that Captain Marvel 2 wasn't a thing, but apparently oh. in the backs of their minds, there was, a, there was a film before the Marvels, and that should have happened. And so we are picking up, I'm sure, with bits and pieces of an older script for an older film in the Marvels, and none of the connective tissue, because that film was just discarded at some way along the line. I, uh, we talked about it a bit, but Phase 5 was not something we were meant to be in. Phase 5 was arbitrarily drawn forward uh, because I'm sure that they saw that the sentiment for Phase 4 was pretty bad and to try and label it as Phase 5 was kind of like a cheap attempt to convince people that something can change when all of the films had been made under the same conditions with the same general production, same uh, approach to script writing. Uh, these were all meant to be part of like Phase 4 including the Marvels. It explains so I, why there's no Avengers film in Phase 4, I guess, doesn't it? Because like, normally that would be the clues for any yeah. phase. The definitive yeah. end is the Avengers team-up movie, and there wasn't one then. And it, it, I think no, it draws no. to a close with Wakanda Forever, which, you know, if you know yes. where you're going from that, then well done. Wakanda Forever is just like... <laughs> dude, it's so crazy how that film just came and went and nobody gave a shit. That was <laughs> wild. Nobody yeah. cared. Nobody remembers anything about that film. Which, um... I, it was just, marginally less racist than the first one, I think. Like, there weren't any people making gorilla noises wearing animal costumes. Hey, take your so, wins where you can get them. Thank goodness. I, uh, if it was like with the Marvels, that felt like... Uh, man, it, I feel like it was kind of uniting because so many people were rooting for it to fail. <laughs> because, <laughs> yeah. because of what it represented. <laughs> because of what it represented if like a Marvel movie together, failed in a very spectacular... It just feels like everybody's tired and it's kind of like it doesn't... Just broadly, all from all across the place, like in terms of looking at the film landscape, everybody's about ready. It's like, can we just like fucking this Marvel shit's getting really fucking annoying? Can we, can we cut it out? Can we stop? Cut Nobody was interested. Mm, maybe it didn't muster any excitement. There was no, there was no like counter narrative of how it was going to be a really exciting and interesting film because everybody understood and knew, you, you know, like how what like a dozen consecutive awful projects. <laughs> Puts a bad taste in people's mouth, you know? Mm -hmm. There weren't even that many preemptive defenses of it, because normally no. you'd expect, if it was still a hot button issue, you'd expect a load of people before it even came out saying the only people who hate this are going to be evil, like bigoted sexist types. Yeah, but yeah, there weren't yeah. even the that many stuff. of those around. Uh, the film got written off, it felt like. It felt like um, everybody sort of saw, like, there's, there's like blood in the water when it comes to yeah. Marvel. I mean, the fact that you had that, like, variety article coming out, just like very publicly and thoroughly essentially saying that like marvel's in trouble the way that they're making things isn't working they're course correcting and more of those articles coming out and then the vfx stuff happening that all of that had primed it to where nobody was on that film side regardless of whatever narrative marvel wanted to run with um it almost seems like the in the way the actor strike was beneficial because it allowed them to move past it really quickly yeah, well, Wakanda well, Forever that. felt really aimless, almost definitively. Like, it did as feel if that was the point of the yeah. movie. Because it's, like it, it's all about, like, the aftermath of the death of T'Challa. And it's like, well, now do we, what do we do? And if it, there's no main character that comes later on. You're just meant to be like, oh, I guess all of Wakanda is the main character of this movie. And the bad guy is whatever... Oxford, it's meant Aquaman Shuri. or whatever it's it meant is. To be, whatever it's it is. meant to be like Shuri is meant to be the new protagonist, but uh, didn't really pan out. Like that just no. didn't, didn't Funny, work. It was the tremendously brilliant introduction of Riri Williams as well as Ironheart uh, in, a, yeah, in a starring which, uh, performance that I remember absolutely nothing about. It's uh, kind of funny how like Ironheart keeps getting pushed back to where by the time she shows up, it'll look being like two years. Two, <laughs> You'll be like, "Who the years. fuck is this?" Like, yeah, exactly. Kind of like how Mythmarvel got too, so nobody cares. 
It's kind of like how Miss Marvel got introduced, what, nearly two years before the Marvels? <laughs> obviously, everything started going wrong with their production. Everything got thrown out of whack to where the project stopped lining up. And they just pushed well, ahead it... anyway because they thought that they could get away with it. Yeah. They thought that they could get away with pumping out shitty films. Right. Oh, yeah. Remember how they teased the kids' Avengers as well? Oh, the young no, Avengers. That's, the I, don't, I don't think that's going to happen. <laughs> I don't how remember you... that. How can you judge? Oh, at the end of the Marvels when um, Miss Marvel recruits. Oh, uh, that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I gotcha. Kid of and I'm pretty yeah, sure she says Cassidy. the same thing that Fury said in after Iron yeah. Man one, yeah, which upset does. me quite oh, a bit. She was in the room. She was there. She knows exactly what he said to so where she can reference it verbatim. Mm-hmm. Was it late? But Nick Fury is still about adult in this Avengers. universe, right? Nick Fury yep. still exists. It's time for him to move doing? aside. Well, yeah, he's well, there's there's some divorced. version. There's a person named Nick Fury, but the the amorphous concept of what he's supposed mm -hmm. to be as a character is ever shifting. But if you yeah, actually yeah. being like, if Ms. Marvel is taking your job, then there is no point in you existing. You might as well just retire. But she's not taking like, the job because they're not going to make that. I, I would be so shocked if they made that Young Avengers film. How could you justify it at this point? Well, I'd say we've seen Preston for this. The after the Star Wars falling the fuck apart, they're committing to a Ray movie. That's one of the worst decisions you could do. So God, <laughs> who put who made that decision? That <laughs> boggles the mind of all the things <laughs> that didn't stick from the sequels. The the protagonist. Hey, man. Hey, hey. I feel like the question, like, how, how, how can you justify it, is, is not the right question to ask, because they will always find a way of justifying the worst decision imaginable. And you could say the same of the Marvels. How do you justify putting a musical number in this film? You yeah. can't, technically, but they did. They put it there anyway. <laughs> it was a terrible decision, and it's still there, and it still wasn't so me. much fun. I guess, um, and... It's more so just appealing to, you can't indefinitely lose money. At some point, you have to start making money again yeah. as a business. Money is actually a finite resource. <laughs> you have to theory. try and make it. They can't just keep burning money on these projects that keep failing. Which, uh, in terms of major releases... Uh, hold on. Uh, Aquaman? Uh, well, we um, haven't even. Well, we so haven't there are two movies that films. we won't be talking yeah. about that we could talk about, which would be Aquaman 2 and uh, Godzilla Aquaman? Minus 1, because oh, we, both uh, of them will be getting episodes soon enough. Gentle, gentle yeah. EFAB chat. And so, in a way, it's we will talk about them in the next year's catch up of overall, because that's what <laughs> they'll be. It's going to be weird, but it'll be nice to mention uh, how like our years started with Godzilla Minus 1. Not to uh, say that we really like the movie or anything, but <laughs> um, there's at least one more movie for us to talk about, yes? Uh, oh, Ooh. well, the thing is, is that really there's actually a few that could just get glossed over. Here's a list of films that have come out in the last couple of months that are noteworthy. Napoleon, the new Hunger Games movie, Wish, mm -hmm. uh, The Boy and the Heron, mm -hmm. Chicken Run 2. Oh, which we still need to check that out, yeah. Oh, yeah, uh, that's right. Good old uh, Rebel Moon. Uh, and, Rebel Moon, uh, the yeah. Killer. The Killer came out in the last Ooh, two the months. the Killer. That's right. Oh, that's what a, what a way to finish. The Killer and Rebel Moon. Um, uh, okay, do you want to talk about the... <laughs> well, I mean, we could be go. relatively quick on The Killer. We adored it, I'd say. Yes, Me, very good. Rags, really good. Yeah, yeah. Metal, awesome. It's speak for anybody else. Uh, my favorite movie of the year. Also that mine. One, it's one of my favorite Fincher films, actually. Yeah, it's it's pretty fucking high scored for uh, for myself. I thoroughly enjoy everything that film has to say about the topics it covers. It is well beyond a hitman procedural. Like, I, uh, as much as I think it can be appreciated for that, got a hell of a lot more going on under the surface to the point where if you dig in hard enough, you'll find that it being about a hitman isn't that relevant to the point it's trying to make about human nature. Um, I love the performances in it. I love how it takes its Elvis time. Clinton was uh, super impressive in the like five minutes that she had. Yeah, oh, well, and Michael Fassbender. The, uh, every last yeah. micro expression is so important. And then yeah, the cinematography and the soundtrack are just bitching. And as one of the best fight scenes I've seen all year. Mm -hmm. uh, that fight scene was uh yeah. Was talk awesome. about it. It's so it's it's so finely constructed down to like every minute detail, not just from a production standpoint, but from a writing standpoint. It's like so deliberately paced and structured yeah. leveraging the narration of the killer and the worldview and uh philosophy that he presents and systematically 
breaking it down and analyzing it and uh, exploring, like, what exactly is it that he's looking to achieve here? Mm -hmm. What exactly is it that he believes and and what is his actual status and position in the world? What does his life really look like? It's a really fascinating idea for a film of this, like, hyper-focused character study. Um, it's, it's so impressive, especially yeah. when you rewatch it and you see that structure for, like, for how important and intentional it is for yeah. gradually bringing that character to where he ends up at the end of the film. And I, I know that, um, a lot of people felt like it was too boring or it wasn't, um, like, and, and by the way, I, I don't, I don't, I've never had a problem with someone finding something boring or exciting when I find it the opposite. It's totally chill. Uh, but like, it would be a mistake, I think, to assume you're going into a Taken slash John Wick slash uh, Equalizer type film. And uh, Drink has made videos on this. He he kind of feels the same way that it, it got shafted a, a slight bit by people expecting something that they didn't get. And I think a lot of people blame it for being called the killer, but it's super relevant to the point the film is making, um, both in character and themes. Uh, like the, I wouldn't change the name for the world. I guess maybe in marketing, uh, I don't know how it's. I don't think I ever mm. saw much of the marketing, so I don't know if they tried to sell a film that it absolutely wasn't. Maybe that was part of the problem. But that, um, you know, I, I, we read a lot of reviews, and we were like, "Holy fuck!" <laughs> that's, that's, <laughs> I don't know what film I saw. Uh. God, that was um, really depressing. It's uh, it's, really, it's really weird really to me as well because I didn't even pick up on the whole character study thing because I'm stupid. Uh, but I just <laughs> but no, I'm just, I just really liked it as just a just as a, as a, 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 I don't know thriller. Uh, I don't know what the genre would be that I'm thinking of, but just as a it's just as great details and how he does his things and how he waits like he shows like all the boring things that happen when you are an assassin it's like oh i gotta have to wait here for days and see if i have an opportunity to actually do a thing and i'm gonna i'm gonna be this german tourist because nobody wants to talk to germans because that's actually kind of true from what i know uh <laughs> true as a german like, tourist yourself right now uh, <laughs> yeah i barely talk to yeah him. like I, there's nobody a lot that you can him. just grab on the surface I, exactly. I don't like calling it surface level but just the literal events that are taking place is that it's very yeah. good at building it's just super tight it's just the, yeah. easy to pretty easy to follow and just yeah the fight uh, choreography is awesome just i just love a fight where both parties get like beat up to shit and just have to grasp for everything to actually win the fight in the end uh yeah it's just really good so i was very confused when when i heard that's like well, oh no it's like boring and stuff I was like what why this is like cool i think uh, one of the most baffling things right so like when i watched it with uh with Fringy and another friend and we, we were sort of going through it and we were just noticing stuff and we didn't know what it was playing into exactly but at first of course we were like man it's amazing how effective efficient and planned out everything is for this man but then we'd be mm -hmm. like yeah, that's curious. Remember when he was first on the plane, he would have his his cap on, his his shades on, and uh, he'd be looking around everywhere. But right now, he hasn't even got the the shades on. Like he's he's letting his face be seen a bit more. And then and further through the, the film, the third time, he's got an uh, injury sleeping. that's very evident um, on no his face. No shades, no cap, and he's asleep. Yeah. And we were yep. like, "What the?" And it's just like, "Oh, oh, oh!" And you he's uh, gradually, it's just one aspect. Yes, the the the. This statement that um, it's almost impossible not to be caught on some cameras these days. Just try to look, you know, non-suspicious, non-interesting. By the end of the film, he's staring into a camera and he's just like, eh. And then and it's just, as you're watching the film and he keeps repeating his mantra. And then his mantra, something happens and it's like, huh, that contradicts what you just said. Huh, mm -hmm. that contradicts what you just said. No. <laughs> and, uh, that contradicts and Fringy ended up you just said. talking for like an hour about everything we think it means and what they did. And uh, I actually rewatched it with uh, Theo Me? and Rags, because um, oh. I adored this film, film of the year. Love talking about what everyone's taking away from it, right? Like that I'm watching it with, and then I was like, I'll check out Chris Stuckman's review of it. <laughs> oh no! No, hey, oh, um, God. he praised oh. it. He thought it was great. There's just one quote I want to talk about in his Please, video that I, I, it's not even a quote. I'm not reading it. I'm going to paraphrase. I just, but he basically highlighted that the killer himself, the character, is presented as hyper competent, and he has a list of like sort of rules that he repeats, and that you're seeing him be very competent. However, there are several parts in the film where you see 
that he is incompetent. You see him fail at doing particular things. You see him not take the precautions he says he should take. You see him getting involved in making decisions that he says he shouldn't. I'm not sure if the filmmakers have noticed these kinds of contradictions, but I did enjoy the film. Oh, no. Oh, stop uh, you fool. Oh, this is your job. It's, it's you almost got there. Well, it's so, paid. again, I want to be fair. Uh, uh, several reviews I spotted of people saying it's, it's absolutely retarded. They want to convince us this guy's good at his job considering all the mistakes he makes. And I was like, oh. <laughs> Shit. Damn. The so, points. It's gliding. Yeah, <laughs> like uh, I don't know it's what to, what are you supposed light. to do in a situation like that? Because you're like, okay, wait, but like that's not uh, that's not what the what's, what you're supposed to be taking away. You're not supposed to think that's a contradiction. They Which failed is, to characterize him correctly. It's well, that's there's a reason. He said it was it's really deliberate. good, yeah. but he thinks that those things are contradictions and problems with the film, which makes me think, Chris, what is this movie trying to say? What, what, what's the idea of this movie, then? What is it that you really liked about it? Why, do, why would you say that it's good if you hey, think he, that he those said that he likes it and it's good because it's a david fincher film when he yeah, has to. he's not going to say a david that's fincher film that. he's also not he allowed to be negative why. remember he can't be negative that's true and especially if it's david fincher which I, I mean again i think david fincher is a fucking excellent filmmaker um but it i, I get I, the impression that he would look at other fincher films that he likes that he actually likes and he could talk about them but with the killer it's probably a film that he'll never think about or, or watch again that's the impression i get and uh, like I said, you, I, after seeing it, if I had seen no one's reactions to it, I still would never recommend this broadly. I'd be like, this is going to be a film that's enjoyed by everyone, a select yeah, amount of people. No. And that's totally fine. I love, you know, there's niche films that I hate, so like I get it. But uh, mm. it's, it was disappointing to see how much people just do not like The Killer. I was like, oh, fuck, damn. Like, I no, thought it was fucking like, amazing. Uh, our particularly favorable opinion of it is uncommon yeah. to where, unfortunately, it's probably not going to get as much credit or recognition as it mm -hmm. deserves. It's going to be remembered as one of those Fincher films. It's like, yeah, I mean, it's good in the way that Fincher films are typically good, uh, but not in the same way as, you know, the best of his films. But I, I really, it is, it is one of my favorite films that he's made. It is really, really, really high up there. Probably worth mentioning Alongside that... stuff like Fight Club, Gone Girl, Social Network. Yeah, I was about to say, it's, a lot, it's probably worth mentioning. Your set of his favorite films of yours is probably a club that's like five in. <laughs> like, it's not a small uh, club. It's, it's, a, it's a big club because seven is basically in there as well. Um, it might as well be. He is an incredibly, uh, he is an incredibly consistent filmmaker. But this, this film is really good. It's a really well-crafted film. It really lends itself well to his style, which is everything is incredibly deliberate and meticulous. Um, that there's an immense amount of clarity in terms of the visual language, but also in terms of the general structure and the, and the, and the intention and purpose behind all of the major creative decisions and story beats that they happen. Yeah. Like I, I can't, I can't imagine parts of the film where I'd be like, you could get rid of that. I can't see that because they're so essential or ways that they could be changed around <laughs> because the structure is so, it's so tight. You know, another film that couldn't possibly have things taken from it and instead would have to have a whole other oh, film added on top. Are you talking about Rebel Moon? Oh, oh, da, oh da, my goodness, da, Rebel da, Moon. Da, da. So, what a piss movie. I suppose to close out the look back on the wonderful year, other than other than we we peaked at the end because we did Lord of the Rings, all right? That's just true. <laughs> of which more stuff is on the way for that. Uh, not new stuff, but I'll explain that in a bit. Uh, Rebel Moon, Rebel Moon. It's it's it was a complete and utter disaster, but kind of expected. We've we've got a very sort of strong handle on what uh, Zack Snyder is capable of as a storyteller. Rebel Moon matches it quite well. We did a three-hour breakdown of it. You can check it out if you want. You guys seem to very much thoroughly enjoy it, as well as the whole world rejoicing in just realizing that he sucks. He's a very mm -hmm. shitty storyteller. And that for some reason, well, I say for some reason, we talked about it, and I think uh, Fringy was right when he said that uh, Army of the Dead wasn't enough of a reveal to the world because the Snyder Cut kind of overshadowed it in terms of what yes. people were talking about and thinking about. Rebel Moon is standalone. Here I am, everyone. The stage is yep. yours, Zach. Good luck. This is me with complete creative freedom making a brand new science fiction world with yeah. all of the money that I could ever ask for to realize my vision. Uh, long since removed from, you know, all the stuff going on with like the DC films. And it's just, it's, it's 
fucking terrible yeah, yeah, um, exactly. in a way that's terrible. very apparent. It's not like one where it can sort of fly over yet. I don't even know what people would be pointing to as the really exciting and cool things about <laughs> Rebel Moon. Rebel Moon. Maybe all the slow motion and... Yeah. Uh, well, the, I really uh, love the, the slow motion shot of her scraping her hand across the dirt. It was really ooh, artistic. Yeah, that was cool. Really good use of slow mo. <laughs> that was pretty brilliant. Yeah, we wouldn't want to miss that. <laughs> can yeah. some can people please stop giving him creative freedom? <laughs> yeah. Like, well, I've seen I, all I the reverse memes that. that are really funny. Like, do shackled. do not release this night of cut. I beg you, don't. Well, because that's become a conversation as well as him saying, you know, really, it's the R-rated cut, the director's oh, cut. That's so like the shit. Ah, <laughs> all come together. Like, you can't. Oh you can't go on record before your movie releases. Oh, by the way, there's like an 18-hour cut that's R-rated with a completely different vision and it feels like a completely <laughs> different movie. It's like, what What are we doing at this point? <laughs> All it's like, going yeah. to do is add more shit, just like the Snyder cut. Right. Yeah. That's not yeah. true. Apparently there could be titties, so you get that in your oh, extended wait, vision. Whoa. There you go. Whoa, all right. <laughs> I will say, go. though, that you have to tolerate happen. an extra two hours of Zack Snyder's work. Oh, it ain't <laughs> worth it. Porn's free on the <laughs> internet. <laughs> of, man, it's probably worth thinking about waiting until you get a movie that comes out that people respond to well that they really like before you decide and ordain from up on high that this mm -hmm. is going to be a franchise of multiple movies like uh an like fucking comic books and animated yeah, well. video game like yeah mm -hmm. it's the most forced you know ip shit i've ever seen it's and the same thing got done with army of the dead but that's just dead like i mean <laughs> It's good that it has that yeah. in the title, I guess. But, like, yeah, why would you even try to connect it up? And I guess Zach, for a moment there, was like, I'm going to be making so many things all the time. Everyone's going to love this. is going to be great. And I don't see a future for, like, these huge projects that he keeps getting. You know, someone's got to give. The, the, the debts will come in eventually of, like, man, we put a lot of investment into your stuff. You know, this would be Netflix. And they'd be like, what's, uh, what's going on? The engagement's pretty low. And I think... Uh, you could be fooled into thinking like Rebel Moon has got relatively good engagement, but like, has it not disappeared already? It's absolutely, yeah, like it has. The face of the earth, and it's just come out. And the really relevant part is what happens in four or five months when part two, The Scar Giver, comes out oh and God. has way, way, way lower viewership in all likelihood than part one. But all it's going to be so retarded. Reception. It'll be a cult classic. It's, it's gonna be all of them try to convince me they could defend their little like settlement against the mother world or whatever it's called mother something yeah it's no way I'm, I'm actually waiting for part two before i review it just because it's such an empty film the, yeah the, the fact that the, the middle third is about going around picking up really important characters who then don't speak until the end of the world. Like, there's not a line of dialogue from some of them they, they don't want to share their opinions on people, anything just there and it does, it's also completely unnecessary, because the guy who's leading them to all of these people already knows where they are and wants to capture them and betray them. None of it makes sense, but the, the staggering thing, I think, is just yeah, how empty it is. Nothing about that film is, is characterful, or, or plot even is, is barely there. You can cut the middle third entirely. If it wasn't for part two needing these characters they're picking up, the middle third doesn't need to exist. You can just skip straight from, she meets Bounty Hunter guy, Bounty Hunter guy betrays her, final fight, end. Spoilers. Which would probably have been a better film because it would be yes. like forty-five minutes long. Um, uh, we because like I said, we were watching Firefly recently, and like uh, the format for those episodes, even though there's only fourteen in season one, and that that's all they ever got. You know, they still mm -hmm. did your your normal like they're on the ship, and then uh, alert, there's a thing happening, and they're all in a room, and it's like, what does the doctor think? What does the engineer think? What does the priest think? What does the Fucking crazy girl that we have on the board thing. What does the leader think? What does the first mate think? What does the, the muscle think? And you, you get around all the thing, witty dialogue, bouncing off each other, all great. Rebel Bird is like, what does... Uh, does, does anyone, anyone think? think please, God, what does anyone did, think? Did anyone please? share a fucking opinion about any of the events that even happened? It's like, hello? Let us go here. Remember when um, we were almost blown away? They had like a scene for uh, the Sons of Anarchy guy and her... 
She goes into the room and he's just like, you inspire me to be honorable. And we were just like, what? <laughs> Where did this come from? What is he even talking about? And the fact that he turned out to be evil is just funny. Like, <laughs> he, was, he, he was just like, no motivation to do anything that he was doing in the whole thing, but suspiciously helpful. And then it's just like, I'm just mm -hmm. bad. You're like, oh, the, right. There's the scene, isn't there, when like, all the heroes are sort of trussed up and captured and he goes around like, effectively narrating their one thing. He says, you are you. You are the woman who <laughs> lost her children. You are the person who lost his soldiers. It's like, yeah, that's the entirety of their character work you've just summed up there in that one line of dialogue. That's, that's it. all it takes. It's, but luckily, it's, it's a good thing he reminded us because I, I <laughs> there's, yeah, we needed that. Oh yeah. Um, it, it uh, what an awful attempt at launching your big old Star Wars knockoff. Which, by the way, I say Star Wars knockoff. Every person who watches this sees something he's stolen from in here. Funnily enough, a lot of Firefly clearly was stolen from as well. Mm. It's a it's a Firefly Star Wars Warhammer ripoff that is terrible in every way. Even Harry Potter, these steals from Harry Potter, from <laughs> How to Train Your Buckbeak. The Scar Giver, that's true, that's what Voldemort is. Also that. It's mm -hmm. a film made by a Hufflepuff, basically. Oh, no. yeah. oh, got him. Zack Snyder's absolutely a Hufflepuff, but he thinks he's a griffin. He thinks he's a Ravenclaw, but he's not. Dude, he's totally captured by his, his own ego. Like, I've... I've mentioned this a few times about Zack Snyder already, but, like, I just cannot get over the fucking lens thing. Like, he did <laughs> Army of the Dead. He set it in Los Angeles, and he decided to use these, like, sort of vintage Japanese lenses with such a narrow depth of field that it blurs out the entirety of the background, yep. and you can only see the subject of the frame. And it's like, why? Why are you even doing this? Like, because why can't you, vision. why don't you want to capture the visual splendor of the setting that you're setting this story in? Surely well, you would yeah, want to take advantage of that. Yeah, but have you considered that what if instead everything was blurry except for this woman? <laughs> and the, I didn't the think old, of that. Yeah, the point. Yeah, the yeah, person that they're talking to that's standing next to them. One and a half out of the two characters in a scene are in focus. Which is better than it, the half characters that are in focus in Army of the Dead. So he is improving. It's so crazy that he got away with Army of the Dead. He made that piece of shit and nobody <laughs> had just so like... Bad. Generally like half of that, Dave Batista is clear. That piece of shit was walked on so much by people without having even recognized it that it's just melded into the floor and nobody's noticed it exists at all. It's, there it is. Just... Mm. I'm sure. Uh, I'm sure that they're gonna keep making more of the Army of the Dead universe with that anime and the sequel. That's definitely gonna happen. Yep, I'm sure that'll happen. I mean, it's these things only exist when they exist. It's something you've been saying a lot, Rags, and it's really true. It only exists when it's out. I, I, it's gonna be remarkable when the sequel comes out. People will be like, "Oh shit, Rebel Moon!" <laughs> that was, oh, yeah, oh, part two. God. The first one did have a story. Yeah, that's right. Wow. I guess we can finally see how all of this turns out, or something. Yeah. If I they have a showdown, the conclusion with her and bad guy again, and she beats him again, it's so boring. Well, what else would they do? They specifically, the guy should be dead, but they used magic bullshit to bring him back to life. Obviously, it's so that they can fight again. Yeah. Yep. And then she's gonna, she's gonna seem to win at first, but then she's gonna do a thing and kill him. It'll, it'll, because what else would he do? He wouldn't bring. That's the thing. That's 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 the thing. That's my mistake. That's my big fucking mistake. Is I'm trying to predict the actions of a madman, a lunatic. You never know what he's gonna do. Maybe the guy will die in the first five minutes, and it'll be a big subversion, and he'll think that's super cool. And then I'll be like, but you, you fool, why did you bring him back at all? He's like, ah, it's what you wanted to think. Yes, Metal did indeed call it Snyder's blurry vision. I did. <laughs> <laughs> Shockingly oh, true, yes. Oh, yeah. You can only hope that the Snyder cut means many things will be cut from the movie. No, it's going to be long. It's going to be the opposite, unfortunately. It will be a much Too longer long. movie. That will be the Snyder cut in every way. means holding each shot for as long as is possible, like right until the end of the take, and then doing the next shot and holding it right until the end of the take and then cutting it. That's like that. It was crazy how long he drew out just a scene of somebody like grabbing something or you know the walking up the yeah. stairs. You think he'd be just make Dave it. Filoni or something? They should team up and make uh, a movie six hours long. 
It's well, it's just all attempts to make it as long as possible to convince people that they are dramatically different films when they are only partially different films with a it lot of very similar scenes. It would be so scenes. easy to make Where? it a dramatically different film because there's so much stuff that you do need to add with an extra two hours of runtime. The problem is he yeah. won't add any of the stuff the film needs to see. Well, because there are so many awkward cuts away from what you know is going to be like a really long, slow-mo, gory death of someone's head being smashed in. That in this version, there's a really janky cut away from. Mm. That's the stuff that will pad out the extra runtime. We probably might get two extra lines of dialogue if we're lucky, but the Ooh. rest of it's just going to be gratuitous, yeah, R-rated stuff. That's what the film really needs. More tits, more blood, slower deaths. <laughs> a mess. And... One thing made me laugh recently about Snyder, it was pertaining to him. It was actually a quote from Christopher Nolan. Christopher was saying... I you were like, going to say Christopher Stockman, I... but carry on. No, no, no. He said, uh, I really... I, I sense... Through Zack Snyder's filmmaking, I sense his love for the potential of cinema. And that was just like, to me, that was just like Christopher Nolan basically saying that he missed the mark. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. like, he's not really making cinema here. He's just like, yeah, he's, trying, uh, he's trying his best. You know? That's how you compliment someone when you have nothing nice to say. You compliment, oh, this, well, you know, he has such, such potential and he really loves yeah. film and filmmaking and no one makes movies quite like him. And it's yeah, well, well, yeah, what, like you could have uh, someone would be like, "What do you think of my thing?" It's like you tried really hard. Exactly. Like, That's exactly yeah. what it was. I think. Yeah. <laughs> um, which you know kind of gives us that was that was the highlight at the end of the year. Of course, mm. not not at all the actual <laughs> highlight, which was the eight hour Lord of the Rings coverage. That was the cool thing, and then yes. um, followed Lord up with Rings. a wonderful chat with Cinematic Venom for any type episode that. If anyone isn't aware of, you should totally check out. It's a great little bookend to Lord of the Rings being covered on this channel. Um, not to say that that would be it. I'm sure there'll be more in future. Especially when Rings of Power Season 2 rolls around. Ooh, uh, that's right. Oh, be boy. Wonderful. But, um, oh yeah, I guess we should... Passing mention, of course, to Valhalla. We did mention it earlier, I think, a little bit. But just oh, yeah. uh, really banging DLC. A banger. Uh, all of me, Fringy and Metal, have streams of it. You should go watch to see our thoughts in depth on everything that they do for, or it does for uh, Kratos. And uh, essentially giving... Here. Yeah, well, I was going to say, it's like, um, it's just a big old endpoint uh, that adds on to Ragnarok really well. Um, yeah. yeah. It's one That's of the, free! It's one of the best it's kind of free. DLCs you could ask for. Free it's, DLC, it's man. That's hyper yep. mechanics focused and has incredibly meaningful story beats to add to it. It was really nice it's to tough. jump back in to God of War Ragnarok briefly and be like, oh, well, and there it goes. Um, can't wait for them to bring out whatever they bring out next. Even if it's not God of War, to be honest with you. I'd love to see what they do. Which, uh, yeah, I guess we'll have to see. It's probably going to be a while before the next one. Oh, and so I didn't mention patient. RoboCop. Ugh. Excellent. Oh, well, I mean, we also didn't mention Loki Season 2. That's okay. That's fine. Or the Fall of the House of Usher. Oh, shit. Oh, Fall of the House of Usher, actually, yeah. yeah. That's actually a, that's list, a good yeah. one. That's an easy recommendation, as well yeah. as Robocop yeah. Rogue City for being uh, faithful and fun as a FPS. Uh, Fall of the House of Usher is... I mean, it, it, it's just, it's just if you liked the other uh, Flanagan shows, you're gonna like Full House of Usher, I would imagine. It did piss some people off in terms of an adapt adaptation of uh, Poe's work. I, I don't know myself whether I I've, I know people who are very familiar with uh, Edgar Allan Poe's work that don't uh, mind it at all as an adaptation. In fact, they quite like it. So it's it's kind of hard to you know have an opinion on that definitively that is representative, mm. especially because. He's not adapting the stories per se as much as he's adapting the spirit within them, and it's up to you whether or not he nails it, I guess, um, with different ones. He all of that. Kuksha. Kuksha. Just put in the word cuck and it becomes funny. Pretty much. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, one of the things that's most, I think, shocking about that show is the main character is all reshoots. Uh, the, yeah, they, they lost yeah, Frank Langella for reasons I, I guess I won't say anything about because I don't know the validity of any of it but it seems to be some kind of controversy and then um, Bruce Greenwood came in to redo everything and it's fucking amazing um, it's kind of nuts yeah because yeah. he's kind of my favorite it. <laughs> like I think if it was one element that I'd like the most about all of it, it it was him he does a fantastic job in that season and it's it's a, unreal to know that uh, most of the time he's not even acting across from people necessarily I, I mean he probably still is in a lot of the instances but he's filling in for um 
Cut, scenes that got cut and everything. And yes, uh, it has an ending that we liked. So there you go. Yeah. <laughs> they, Stuck to the landing. It's that's pretty, a, pretty good. A hard recommendation just from that alone. We don't have coverage of any of the shows except Hill House. Maybe that'll change someday. There's just so much for us to do. We're still catching up mm. on all kinds of different things. Um, mm -hmm. Well, maybe just to rattle off a list. Oh, no, we, we, we covered a lot of things. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think we're fine. <laughs> there, there's still more on the list of things that uh, were notable. Oh yeah, and there's plenty of things that we didn't get to see, uh, but there's plenty of things we did see and didn't talk about. People were asking, is the killer going to yeah. get some kind of coverage? It's like, probably not. Um, certainly not like a, a full-on breakdown or whatever, because we, we just, I don't know how much time we have to do any and everything right now, but we've got, Godzilla Minus One is done, and Aquaman is in theory going to happen as well. <laughs> so, uh, uh, yeah, no promises. Did, oh yeah, because yeah, we Aquaman did Aquaman 2! Aquaman 2. The end of the uh, DCEU. Uh, oh my god. Yes, so there's plenty to talk about with that. And um, why even Arcane Season 2 teaser? Just don't talk about it yet. It's still so far away. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. like a whole year. Um, but, you know, we'll try and we'll try and wrap up there in, in the sense. So uh, before we even get close to saying goodbye, say thank you all for hanging out. That was a, that was a big, long stream. And look at that. You everyone's, bet. That was everyone's still out. here. It's nuts. Whoa. Um, Big thank you, of course, to Patrician TV. Because, you know, John and Lil Platoon, they know what's up. They know how this goes. They do long streams of their own, I'm sure. But this guy, he's, he's his first time here. And so I really appreciate uh, hanging out with us and bantering about different things. Um, thank you. And, uh, uh, yeah, we've come to understand you're very much a long man in your own right. And so why don't you tell chat about where they can find you and what you get up to? Uh, there's a link down in the description to my channel. I primarily do, I jokingly call them video novels because I <laughs> have a distaste for the term video essay. Um, can't imagine why. Nice. Let's see, what am I, what am I at? Am I at four, 52 hours of Bethesda coverage uh, across <laughs> five videos? Nice. Good. Um, peaking at the uh, 20 hour Skyrim video that I did, but... I'm actually closing the door on uh, on Bethesda stuff for now. Well, uh, so you, you're saying you've got very long videos covering a lot of Bethesda's mm -hmm. historical library, and that from what I've gathered, they are incredibly detailed, and they go into a lot of subjects that a lot of people find very fascinating. I need to check them out myself. I know Rags has. Very good. So probably sell yes. it a little bit better than I can. Well, you haven't seen them. So, oh, I thought I meant to you. Jesus oh, Christ. Well, yeah, that was straight. <laughs> they they are very good. I would highly recommend them if you like the EFAP style of looking into things. Uh I I think you'd particularly gel with these videos. Um you do have to watch them in one single sitting. Uh, oh, no. those are the yeah. rules. You must That's how they do were it. designed. That's right. Absolutely. So just pick a free day, uh clear out a block and um just watch the videos. They're very good. Uh, would highly recommend. They're very insightful. Uh, a lot of passion there. I love the research, and uh, I've been enjoying watching your research streams that you've been doing. That they definitely have an EFAP kind of vibe to them that I appreciate. Uh, I, I like it. It's good stuff. Yeah, on the stream side, I tend to um, look into any articles or interviews on the subjects that I cover. And for Skyrim, I watched almost all of the kind of Skyrim videos that were made that were above uh, 10,000 views. Um, took about a month to do. I mean, that's uh, it's quite impressive, I will say. Thank you. I do recommend my uh, Starfield video, though. I've been told it's the best I've done so far. It's yeah. only eight hours, though, so we're definitely slipping. Uh, I was going to say, uh... wanted to do a shorter <laughs> short man for that one. That's okay. No judgment here. Well, I think I think if you wanted to, you could do like a 24 hour video on Starfield. I have a list that's like a thousand words long of just ideas that didn't make it into my cut because I really didn't want to work on the video about that game anymore. It, it was uh, soul sucking. <laughs> I from what I have heard from other people as well, I don't blame you. It does seem like the kind of game that just uh like, I, I think you and I had somewhat life. different... Um, you and I, I think, had slightly different experiences with uh, Fallout 76. I played it when it came mm. out, and the game was so busted and broken and bizarre that that kind of, like, entranced me and fascinated me to keep playing because every over the next hill, there were bugs and glitches and nonsense that I'd never seen in a video game before. 
So um, we're in, and then, we're and then uh, myself in private sessions, our perspective was on a more complete product that they have finished and supported over the years, because there's quite a number of people who will say that Fallout 76 is good now, but it's actually just a different kind of uh, bizarre. It looks like because um, I, I, I just played it for launch and I haven't touched it since because, of course, fucking not. Um, so watching you play it as a more, I guess, complete and comprehensive sort of experience, it was interesting to compare what I saw to what was there at launch and that launch experience. And it looks like they've just added more crap to the pile. They haven't made the pile better. <laughs> they fixed a lot of the bugs, if... and that's about it. Oh, geez, I hope so. <laughs> Yes, the channel is Patrician TV. Link in the description covers uh, plenty of things. So definitely something you're going to cover is going to interest at least everyone in chat somewhat. So you should really check it out. Look at Star Wars Theory. we like seven hours. You need to look at our backlog, okay? We used to stream 12 hours every single we, time. We streamed nine and a half last night. We, we did. It was great. <laughs> we be Spoil. doing the long. Um, John, CJG, what are you up to? What's going on in the world of... Uh, you uh not much i'm boring john graham <laughs> on youtube i did our being the chief i'm working on a new show i've getting taking me a while getting something new rolling out but i'm working on shit i got nothing right now sorry but yeah that's that's, that's okay. my channel on youtube i mean john graham. you're very well known in the house of efab at this point so anyone who hasn't subscribed is just a big meanie bobini but there is a link they can grab you no problem thank you Little Platoon, what about you, sir? Much the same. Not much going on. Uh, sort of holding pattern until... Is it Echo? I, yeah, Echo's coming out soon, isn't it? Uh, so I'll yeah. be... Yeah, I've been on other writing projects, but I will probably be covering that at some point. Lavalet. That's dropping all on the same day, isn't it? I fear it is, yes. Good oh George. my... No. That's going to be... You can tell they really believe in that one, huh? <laughs> oh, yeah, it's a vote of confidence. So get it all out of the way as quickly as possible. Hopefully no one will notice. Oh, if, sake, if, if Disney were like a person, they'd be like, here it is, Echo. And then they walk out of the room, or walk off the stage, and someone goes, what's Echo? And go, hmm? What, what's what? No. I don't... What's that? I don't even... It's... Deadpool is coming out! <laughs> Deadpool! In a few months! Deadpool! <laughs> The echo's just bleeding on the stage, and they're just like, "Oh, that's cute." Put the put put the curtains back down. <laughs> it's fine. Um, open those curtains. But yes, uh, link also in description. Always a pleasure, Mister Petune, of course. And Likewise. Metal. Where have you uh, been for the past like week and a half? You lose. Oh God, I've been. I'm I'm right below you. I'm in your <sighs> living room. Oh, it's like true this time. <laughs> pooping everywhere. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Thank God I'm <laughs> No, I mean, we've just been doing stuff, getting drunk. I mean, you've seen us online getting drunk. It's very fun. <gasps> yeah. I mean, I'm I'm leaving in two days ish Aww. from now. Uh, uh and as I just figured out, uh as a gift I'll get echo when I'm get back home, so that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> Woohoo. Uh yeah, I don't know. I I don't have anything new lined up. Uh get the machine back up as soon as I'm back home, but uh, the next stream I'm going to do at home is going to be Robocop. I'm going to be playing that. So, people want me to play that, and That's I want to play it. Fun. And, yeah, it should be fun. Uh, I don't I don't have any topic for next watch or anything, but, uh, yeah, as I said, I need to get the machine right, back up um, running. Yes? I'm real sorry to interrupt. Apparently, are the Emmys happening right now? Mm. Yeah, uh, I'm getting yeah, a few I headlines. <laughs> I think I saw some in my please. email. I just pull up Twitter. It's like, oh yeah, the fucking Emmys are just. Wait, right. is it something well, notable? Before or? we wrapped up, you. Uh, well, I suppose what's interesting is, uh, well, I don't know. I'm just scrolling through. It's uh, okay. Collect the notable things that you could mention it before we end. Well, it's, be it's great. not. It's not done. That's the thing. I don't think it's over yet. I think it's started, so it's part way through. Um, which means that maybe we'll find out if shows that we like got stuff. Mm. Well, hey, we can find out if Succession Season 4 wins a whole uh, bunch of Emmys, huh? Wait, I mean, just to end, I yes, think, Ma uh, Metal, is, he, was, he, he did a stream yeah, recently, metal, sorry, doing drug, yeah, Simpsons hit run, drug Bloodborne, you can find yeah. them on my playlists on live, that's but uh, on, he yeah. will indeed be back doing all kinds of metal-related things, and the Rogue will. City will be rather fun to see what you think of it. Uh, link, also in description. Then... Wow. 
Bring in rags. What do you guys? Which 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 average bitch? Um. Nothing. Nothing really. Sort of things are sort of lined up, but uh, but we'll we'll see what happens. I don't want to announce anything yet at the moment. Um, you know the deal. I'm just working, but I guess the only thing that would be noteworthy is that uh, Loki is getting close to being like totally done, finished, Whoa. uh, so that they can all sort of come out mm. really quickly. Uh, obviously, Lord of the Rings in the mix kind of delayed things. Yes. Um, but yeah, it's catching up now, so uh, soon. Uh, should be pretty soon, honestly. Um, I'm probably just, just gonna get back to work on it after we're done here. And otherwise, I'm just working on stuff. You know the deal. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, and then the quick update, just on my end, is that, uh, Lord of the Rings, the new plan with it is to tear it up in a good way. I'll make sure it looks as smooth as possible into particular topics and conversations. I've gotten all the timestamps done now, so I know where and how and when to chop. And I've, um, what I'm going to do is try and account for copyright again, upload a version, and keep it just, you know, offline, I guess, for a, another, it'll probably be two weeks. I will prep all of the individual smaller pieces, and then they'll go out once per week. And so it's technically stuff you've seen if you've watched the whole thing, but you might be interested in hearing it again, or maybe you'll be interested in checking these out rather than the big ones because they'll be smaller. For example... A video that's all about maybe Gollum, and it's just us talking about how well Andy Serkis did, the characterization, his start, middle, and finish, what he means to the whole thing, how he was used in The Hobbit, or not. It, it'll depend on whether or not The Hobbit things get their own video. So, you know, it will be have that. And then maybe next week it would be our thoughts on all of the world building. That sort of stuff, uh, split into what will probably end up being 10 videos, th maybe 10 to 20. That's a pretty broad amount, so I can't possibly be wrong. I will be. And then... When they're all out, I will try one last time to release the eight hour of us watching the trilogy, but this time chat will be edited in from the Ooh. first time around. The first version will be unlisted and linked in the description if you want to go back to that comment section. I'd rather keep that alive and well. This will be the final attempt to uh, keep it somewhat monetized because YouTube is a prick, but I think... At this point, it's so... I can't tell what's going to get hit with copyright anymore, no matter how hard I try, so... Um, it's something weird that happens, I guess, when you get eight-hour videos that's filled with uh, visuals from films. It's, it's mm. It just gets tough. Um, so yeah, that'll be happening. And then, uh, obviously, we're going to be trying to record the other bits of coverage that we're going to make episodes for. We've got to do meme faps. we got to do super chat catch-ups. And we've got new episodes planned along the way. I think the next coming year is going to be a lot of fun. The next thing, of course, is 300 EFAP movies, the beginning of the war arc. That'll be out, I believe, Monday? I think that's the plan. Or oh, Wednesday. Oh, wow. well, I'll say nice. Wednesday. That's that's oh. the, it's like <laughs> the... We'll go with Wednesday just in case there's something that hiccups it. But yes, that should be next. Um, one of those... Uh, the promise is one to two of those per month, and it'll end on the on the end of the month. And then you'll get a new trailer for whatever the next year's arc will be. Like I said, you got that. You got Loki. Hopefully Gotham Knights, if we can get that going uh, at some point, because they're, they're, all, they're all getting processed, so to speak. Um... So yeah, I mean, there's just there's just so much on the way. We can't wait to show you guys. It's gonna be great. Boy, um, oh boy. Other than that, is there anything anyone wants to say or talk about in any way, shape, or form? No. No, I think we've about you know, I no, think we've I, uh, I think we've covered I, enough today. I would like to add one thing in regard to Patrician TV because I just realized that it's his streams that me and my roommate watched when we were first watching Starfield. And we both really appreciated his input on that. And oh, uh, my my roommate's a huge like Bethesda Morrowind guy, and he loves your videos, dude. So, hey, um, well, I was right. so there. There you go. That, uh, I just thought yeah. I'd mention that. Oh my god, I was, I was uh, like ninety nine percent sure, and I'm like, I gotta verify this. And now I think <laughs> I'm, I'm like just about ninety nine, a hundred percent sure it was you that we were watching. So like, you That's you funny. make good shit, dude. Thank you. Um, I was going to say that I was, uh, I watched Arby and the Chief back when it uh, came out. I was much younger. Hey, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <no. laughs> I was about to say, this is thematically on point. We had a stream where Chud Logic was talking to John for the whole thing. And at the end, he went, Are you the, are you the Arby and the Chief guy? <laughs> <laughs> That's great. I get that sometimes on Twitter. It's, I used to watch your shit when I was 12. <laughs> okay. Well. I mean that. I'm still I think making I've, shit. I've, I've included uh, one of your bits in my Skyrim video, actually. Yes, it's the part where the, the Xbox explodes. Awesome. 
when did you? Well, th- when was season? That. That's, uh, that's cool. When was season two of Arbin the Chief Out? I think that's when I first saw it. I'm trying to calculate season how old two? I was. Two? Jesus, that was probably 2009, 2010. So I would have I'm, been, I'm really, yeah, something like 16. So <laughs> that's pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> it's, that is like really early days of YouTube. Yeah, um, <laughs> that uh, that era. Yeah. It was a different time. It sure was a different time. Hell yeah. Um, yeah. yeah a- a- anything else? I just want to make sure everyone has a chance to say anything they want to say. Uh, Grungo. Oh, nice. That's all. Thank you for that. Yeah, Thank good you. stuff. Well, all right then. I, uh, oh. <laughs> oh, sorry. I, I didn't talk about the project that I'm currently working on. Go for it. Uh, I'm currently working on a classic World of Warcraft video mm. as oh, my okay. next quick retrospective. Like a like a big big old video. It's it's gonna have to be. It's a big old game. Interesting. I I played World of Warcraft for about maybe two or three months. It just wasn't quite my thing. Um, Thank you for your I, service. I I see the appeal. <laughs> I think this was. I played I I played some thick Panda Priest, and <laughs> it, I I remember. I never like disliked it. And I think I had a Taran Paladin. And I and I think I enjoyed it, but it was like, okay, this is fine, but it's not really grabbing me. So mm. I mean yeah. so it, it'll be interesting to From what you uh, describe, you probably played in the post cataclysm era, um, which is when it was largely started going downhill in terms of its design. I maybe I uh I it's uh, I guess my my window into that game is really narrow. Um I've played like uh, Guild Wars Two is really the only MMO that I play, um, and That's I played that one. at launch, and I yeah I still play it. And I enjoy it a lot, um, but it's the only one I've stuck with. Uh, it gels with me a lot. But w- w- WoW, I just couldn't. I can never get into WoW. But great porn, though I will say absolutely so, excellent. That's absolutely. Blizzard's Walmart. Good stuff. Good stuff. Uh, thank you, Blizzard, for providing us <laughs> once again with an excellent source of pornographic <laughs> material. You are doing God's work. So thank you. I'm looking forward to your next IP. And the models they're in. And then it was silence. And then we there was it. silence. Yeah, there we go. We completed the journey, I suppose. Um, Wait, are we are we live? I think so. But not for long. Oh my goodness, Chris. Goodbye, oh my everyone. We'll see yeah. you in the future. No, 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 the Warrior should have tails. God damn it. <laughs>